Talks with Sri Ramana Maharshi. 15th May 1935. Talk 1. A wandering monk Sanyasi was trying to clear his doubt. How to realize that all the world is God. Maharshi. If you make your outlook that of wisdom, you will find the world to be God. Without knowing the Supreme Spirit, Brahman, how will you find his all-pervasiveness? Talk 2. Someone inquired about the nature of perception. Answer, whatever state one is in, the perceptions partake of that state. The explanation is that in the waking state Jagrat the gross body perceives gross names and forms and Swapna the dream state the mental body perceives the mental creations and their manifold forms and names in the Sushapti deep dreamless sleep, the identification with the body being lost, there are no perceptions. Similarly in the transcendental state identity with Brahman places the man in harmony with everything and there is nothing apart from his self. Talk 3. A question was asked as to the nature of happiness. Answer. If a man thinks that his happiness is due to external causes and his possessions, it is reasonable to conclude that his happiness must increase with the increase of possessions and diminish in proportion to their diminution. Therefore if he is devoid of possessions, his happiness should be nil. What is the real experience of man? Does it conform to this view? In deep sleep the man is devoid of possessions, including his own body. Instead of being unhappy he is quite happy. Everyone desires to sleep soundly. The conclusion is that happiness is inherent in man and is not due to external causes. One must realize his self in order to open the store of unalloyed happiness. Talk 4. Maharshi was asked by an educated young man, How do you say that the heart is on the right, whereas the biologists have found it to be on the left? The man asked for authority. Answer, quite so. The physical organ is on the left, that is not denied. But the heart of which I speak is non physical and is only on the right side. It is my experience, no authority is required by me. Still, so you can find confirmation in a Malayalam Ayurvedic book and in Sita Upanishad, and he produced the quotation mantra from the latter and repeated the text loka from the former. Talk 5. Mr. Fridman, an engineer, remarked on the subject of grace. A salt doll diving into the sea will not be protected by a waterproof coat. It was a very happy simile and was applauded as such. Maharshi added, The body is the waterproof coat. Talk 6. A question was asked by a monk Sanyasi about how to prevent the mind from being distracted. Answer, You see the objects on forgetting your own self. If you keep hold of yourself, you will not see the objective world. Talk 7. When asked if occult powers siddhis can be achieved along with omnipotence, Iswaratva, as mentioned in the last verse of Dakshinamurti Ashtakam Maharshi said, Let omnipotence Iswaratva be accomplished first, and then the other question may be raised. Talk 8. Can anyone get any benefit by repeating sacred syllables mantras picked up casually? Answer, no. He must be competent and initiated in such mantras. Maharshi illustrated this by the following story. A king visited his premier in his residence. There he was told that the premier was engaged in repetition of sacred syllables japa. The king waited for him and on meeting him, asked what the japa was. The premier said that it was the holiest of all Gayatri. The king desired to be initiated by the premier, but the premier confessed his inability to initiate him. Therefore the king learned it from someone else, and meeting the minister later he repeated the Gayatri and wanted to know if it was right. The minister said that the mantra was correct, but it was not proper for him to say it. 
When pressed for an explanation, the minister called to a page close by and ordered him to take hold of the king. The order was not obeyed. The order was often repeated and still not obeyed. The king flew into a rage and ordered the same man to hold the minister, and it was immediately done. The minister laughed and said that the incident was the explanation required by the king. How? asked the king. The minister replied, the order was the same and the executor also, but the authority was different. When I ordered the effect was nil, whereas when you ordered there was immediate effect. Similarly with mantras. Talk 9. Someone inquired. Why is it said in scriptures that the sage is like a child? Answer. A child and a sage Johnny are similar in a way. Incidents interest a child only so long as they last. It ceases to think of them after they have passed away. So then, it is apparent that they do not leave any impression on the child, and it is not affected by them mentally. So it is with a sage. Talk 10. A visitor asked how to realize oneself in accordance with Maharshi's instructions, contained in his text of Truth Revealed, verse 9, supplement. The difficulty was in controlling the mind. Answer, it is to be done by controlling the breath. If you practice it by yourself without other help, then the mind is controlled. Otherwise the mind comes under control spontaneously in the presence of a superior power. Such is the greatness of association with the wise Satsanga. Talk 11. Can destiny karma ever come to an end? Answer. The karmas carry the seeds of their own destruction in themselves. Talk 12. A man asked the Maharshi to say something to him. When asked what he wanted to know, he said that he knew nothing and wanted to hear something from the Maharshi. Answer, you know that you know nothing. Find out that knowledge. That is Liberation Mukti. 6th January, 1935, Talk 13. Miss Piggott, an English lady who had read Search in Secret India, came to see the Maharshi. The services of a disciple as interpreter were provided. There were many visitors at the time in the hall, including some ladies with their infants. The place resounded with noise. At length silence prevailed. Suddenly Maharshi, who seemed to be looking at infinite space, was heard to say softly, Monkey. A little baby was then discovered in the doorway unobserved by the mother, who was seated on the other side of the door with a large monkey standing on his hind legs who with both hands was fondling the child not hurting it in the slightest, both being at peace with each other in Maharshi's presence. When Maharshi's voice was heard the monkey jumped away adroitly and disappeared. The incident greatly impressed the lady. 7th January 1935 Is a master necessary for realization? Miss Piggott asked first. Answer. The realization is the result of the Master's grace more than teachings, lectures, meditation, etc. They are only secondary aids, whereas the former is the primary and the essential cause. Devotee. What are the obstacles which hinder realization of the self? Answer. They are habits of mind vasanas. Disciple. How to overcome the mental habits vasanas? Answer, by realizing the self. Disciple, that is a vicious circle. Answer, it is the ego which raises such difficulties, creating obstacles and then suffers from the perplexity of apparent paradoxes. Find out who makes the inquiries and the self will be found. Disciple, what are the aids for realization? Answer, the teachings of the scriptures and of realized souls. Disciple, can such teachings be discussions, lectures and meditations? Answer, yes, all these are only secondary aids, whereas the essential is the Master's grace. Disciple, how long will it take for one to get that? Answer, why do you desire to know? 
disciple, to give me hope. Answer, even such a desire is an obstacle. The self is ever there, there is nothing without it. Be the self and the desires and doubts will disappear. Such self is the witness in sleep, dream and waking states of existence. These states belong to the ego. The self transcends even the ego. Did you not exist in sleep? Did you know then that you were asleep or unaware of the world? It is only in the waking state that you describe the experience of sleep as being unawareness therefore the consciousness when asleep is the same as that when awake. If you know what this waking consciousness is, you will know the consciousness which witnesses all the three states. Such consciousness could be found by seeking the consciousness as it was in sleep. Disciple, in that case I fall asleep. Answer, no harm. Disciple, it is a blank. Answer, for whom is the blank? Find out. You cannot deny yourself at any time. The self is ever there and continues in all states. Disciple, should I remain as if in sleep and be watchful at the same time? Answer, yes. Watchfulness is the waking state. Therefore the state will not be one of sleep but sleepless sleep. If you go the way of your thoughts you will be carried away by them and you will find yourself in an endless maze. Disciple, so then, I must go back tracing the source of thoughts. Answer, quite so, in that way the thoughts will disappear and the self alone will remain. In fact there is no inside or outside for the self. They are also projections of the ego. The self is pure and absolute. Disciple, it is understood intellectually only. Is not intellect a help for realization? Answer, yes up to a certain stage. Even so realize that the self transcends the intellect. The latter must itself vanish to reach the self. Disciple, does my realization help others? Answer, yes certainly. It is the best help possible. But there are no others to be helped. For a realized being sees the self, just like a goldsmith estimating the gold in various jewels. When you identify yourself with the body then only the forms and shapes are there. But when you transcend your body the others disappear along with your body consciousness. Disciple, is it so with plants, trees, etc.? Answer, do they exist at all apart from the self? Find it out. You think that you see them. The thought is projected out from yourself. Find out where from it rises. Thoughts will cease to rise and the self alone will remain. Disciple, I understand theoretically. But they are still there. Answer, yes. It is like a cinema show. There is the light on the screen and the shadows flitting across impress the audience as the enactment of some piece. Similarly also will it be if in the same play an audience also is shown. The seer, the scene will then only be the screen. Apply it to yourself. You are the screen, the self has created the ego, the ego has its accretions of thoughts which are displayed as the world, the trees, plants, etc. of which you are asking. In reality all these are nothing but the self. If you see the self, the same will be found to be all everywhere and always. Nothing but the self exists. Disciple, yes, I still understand only theoretically. Yet the answers are simple and beautiful and convincing. Answer, even the thought I do not realize is a hindrance. In fact, the self alone is. 8th January 1935 Talk 14 an old man came and sat in the hall. Maharshi was reading Sarma Sanskrit recension of Aranachala Akshara Manamalai, the first of the five hymns to Aranachala. The man asked softly, It is said that realization is beyond expression, and expression always fails to describe the realization. How is it? Answer. 
The point has been mentioned in Arana Chala Ashtakam, verse 3 where it is admitted that although the expression of realization is impossible, still its existence is indicated. Soon after there were visible signs of emotion in the man. His breath was deep and hard, and he fell on the floor prostrating humbly and got up only after one or two minutes. Remaining calm a brief while, he left the place. Evidently the man had some illumination. He sought confirmation from a Harshi, who responded fittingly. He found confirmation and humbly and feelingly acknowledged the divine intercession on his behalf. Talk 15 A question was asked about the Upanishadic passage, the Supreme Spirit is subtler than the subtlest and larger than the largest. Answer, even the structure of the atom has been found by the mind. Therefore the mind is subtler than the atom. That which is behind the mind, namely the individual soul, is subtler than the mind. Further, the Tamil Saint Manakavichigar has said of the specks dancing in a beam of sunlight, that if each represents a universe, the whole sunlight will represent the Supreme Being. 19th, January 1935, Talk 16 Mr. Douglas Ainsley, Mr. Grant Duff, an aristocratic English gentleman, 70 years old, nephew of a former governor of Madras, an author and poet formerly attached to the British legation in Athens, Paris and The Hague, had come to Madras as a guest of Government House. He came to see Maharshi with a letter of introduction from Paul Brunton. Next day he returned and remained a little less than an hour in the hall. On both days practically no words were exchanged, only gaze meeting gaze. His habits are abstemious, he remains without food of any kind till 1 p.m. and then lunches, he is said to have coffee and biscuits in the evening and retires without any further food. He has been a bachelor all along, walks a few miles a day on an empty stomach, speaks little and is very graceful in his movements. His voice is low and soft and his words appear to come from the heart. He has friends among whom might be counted the late Sir John Woodroff, Sir Sarvapali Radha Krishnan and Professor Thomas Sanskrit Professor in Oxford University. He expressed a desire to hear the Vedas. On Monday a letter arrived from Riga and the questions therein happened to coincide with the questions the European visitor had asked relating to the existence of departed souls and how best to serve them. The reply sent to Riga was read out to him. Tamil songs from Maharshi's truth revealed and the Vedas were repeated in his presence. He considered the recitations magnificent. He came the next afternoon and to the wonder of others, had an experience on the previous night which he repeated to Maharshi. It was that he had seen something like an electric light within himself in the heart's center on the right side. And he added further that he had seen the sun shining within. Maharshi smiled a little and then had a translation of Atmavidya self, knowledge read out to him wherein there is the cryptic saying that realization consists in reaching the Atman self, which is the expanse of consciousness Chivyaman as distinguished from the mind, which is the expansion of Chithavyaman. This explanation appealed to him. Speaking of him later, Maharshi remarked, Just think of an old man of seventy not choosing to live peacefully in his own house on the income he had earned. How intense has been his earnestness that he has left his native land, dare to see, voyage of six thousand miles, and face the hardships of long railway journeys in a foreign land, ignorant of the language, undergoing the vicissitudes of a lonely life, submitting to the inclemency of a hot climate in surroundings uncongenial and unaccustomed to him. He could have been happy in his own house. It is his longing for internal peace that has brought him here. Quite so. The intensity of his earnestness is revealed by his illuminating experiences here within four days of his arrival, people say. 
with regard to the question concerning departed souls. So long as a man identifies himself with his gross body, the thought materialized as gross manifestations must be real to him. Because his body is imagined to have originated from another physical being, the other exists as truly as his own body. Having existed here once it certainly survives death, because the offspring is still here and feels he has been born of the other. Under these circumstances the other world is true, and the departed souls are benefited by prayers offered for them. On the other hand, considered in a different way, the one reality is the self from whom has sprung the ego which contains within itself the seeds of predispositions acquired in previous births. The self illumines the ego, the predispositions and also the gross senses, whereupon the predispositions appear to the senses to have materialized as the universe, and become perceptible to the ego, the reflection of the self. The ego identifies itself with the body, and so loses sight of the self and the result of this inadvertence is dark ignorance and the misery of the present life. The fact of the ego rising from the self and forgetting it is birth. So it may be said that the birth of the individual has killed the mother. The present desire to regain one's mother is in reality the desire to regain the self which is the same as realizing oneself, or the death of the ego, this is surrender unto the mother, so she may live eternally. Maharshi then read out from the Tamil version of Yoga Vasish to the story of Dirga Tapasi who had two sons, Punya and Papa. After the death of the parents, the younger one mourned the loss and the elder brother consoled him as follows. Why do you mourn the loss of our parents? I shall tell you where they are, they are only within ourselves and are ourselves. For the life current has passed through innumerable incarnations, births and deaths, pleasures and pains, etc., just as the water current in a river flows over rocks, pits, sands, elevations and depressions on its way, but still the current is unaffected. Again the pleasures and pains, births and deaths, are like undulations on the surface of seeming water in the mirage of the ego. The only reality is the self from where the ego appears, and runs through thoughts which manifest themselves as the universe and in which the mothers and fathers, friends and relatives appear and disappear. They are nothing but manifestations of the self so that one's parents are not outside the self. So there is no reason to mourn. Learn it, realize it, and be happy. 24th January, 1935, Talk 17. Mr. Evans Wentz, an English research scholar of Oxford University, brought a letter of introduction for Mr. Brunton and arrived on a visit. He was tired after his journey and required rest. He is quite accustomed to Indian ways of living, having visited this country several times. He has learned the Tibetan language and helped in the translation of the Book of the Dead and the Life of Milerpa, the greatest of Tibetan yogis, and a third book on the Tibetan secret doctrines. In the afternoon he began to ask a few questions. They related to yoga. He wanted to know if it was right to kill animals such as tigers, deer, etc., and use the skin for yoga posture asana. Answer, the mind is the tiger or the deer. Disciple, if everything be illusion then one can take lives. Answer, to whom is illusion? Find that out. In fact, everyone is a killer of the self at Mahan every moment of his life. Disciple, which posture asana is the best? Answer, any asana, possibly sukha. Asana, easy posture, or the half Buddha position. But that is immaterial for jhana, the path of knowledge. Disciple, does posture indicate the temperament? Answer, yes. Disciple, what are the properties and effects of the tiger's skin, wool, or deer skin, etc.? 
Answer, some have found them out and related them in yoga books. They correspond to conductors and non-conductors of magnetism, etc. But it is all immaterial for the path of knowledge, John Amarga. Posture really means location and steadfastness in the self. It is internal. The others refer to external positions. Disciple, which time is most suitable for meditation? Answer, what is time? Disciple, tell me what it is. Answer, time is only an idea. There is only the reality whatever you think it is, it looks like that. If you call it time, it is time. If you call it existence, it is existence and so on. After calling it time, you divide it into days and nights, months, years, hours, minutes, etc. Time is immaterial for the path of knowledge. But some of these rules and discipline are good for beginners. Disciple, what is John Amarga? Answer, concentration of the mind is in a way common to both knowledge and yoga. Yoga aims at union of the individual with the universal, the reality. This reality cannot be new. It must exist even now and it does exist. Therefore the path of knowledge tries to find out how the yoga separation came about. The separation is from the reality only. Disciple, what is illusion? Answer, to whom is the illusion? Find it out. Then illusion will vanish. Generally people want to know about illusion and do not examine to whom it is. It is foolish. Illusion is outside and unknown. But the seeker is considered to be known and is inside. Find out what is immediate, intimate, instead of trying to find out what is distant and unknown. Disciple, does Maharshi advise any physical posture for the Europeans? Answer, it may be advisable. However, it must be clearly understood that meditation is not prohibited in the absence of asanas, or prescribed times, or any accessories of the kind. Disciple, does Maharshi have any particular method to impart to the Europeans in particular? Answer, it is according to the mental equipment of the individual. There is indeed no hard and fast rule. Mr. Evans once began to ask questions mostly relating to yoga preliminaries, for all of which Maharshi replied that they are aids to yoga, which is itself an aid to self-realization, the goal of all. Disciple, is work an obstruction to self-realization? Answer, no. For a realized being the self alone is the reality, and actions are only phenomenal, not affecting the self. Even when he acts he has no sense of being an agent. His actions are only involuntary and he remains a witness to them without any attachment. There is no aim for this action. Even one who is still practicing the path of wisdom jhana can practice while engaged in work. It may be difficult in the earlier stages for a beginner, but after some practice it will soon be effective and the work will not be found a hindrance to meditation. Disciple, what is the practice? Answer, constant search for I, the source of the ego. Find out who am I. The pure I is the reality, the absolute existence consciousness bliss. When that is forgotten, all miseries crop up. When that is held fast, the miseries do not affect the person. Disciple, is not brahmacharya celibacy necessary for realization of the self? Answer. Brahmacharya is living in Brahman. It has no connection with celibacy as commonly understood. A real Brahmachari, that is one who lives in Brahman, finds bliss in the Brahman which is the same as the self. Why then should you look for other sources of happiness? In fact the emergence from the self has been the cause of all the misery. Disciple, celibacy is a sign qua non for yoga. Answer, so it is. Celibacy is certainly an aid to realization among so many other aids. Disciple, is it then not indispensable? 
Can a married man realize the self? Answer, certainly it is a matter of fitness of mind. Married or unmarried, a man can realize the self because that is here and now. If it were not so, but attainable by some efforts at some other time, and if it were new and something to be acquired, it would not be worthy of pursuit. Because what is not natural cannot be permanent either. But what I say is that the self is here and now and alone. Disciple, God being immanent in all, one should not take life of any kind. Is society right in taking the life of a murderer? Can the state do so either? The Christian countries begin to think that it is wrong to do so. Answer, what is it that prompted the murderer to commit the crime? The same power awards him the punishment. Society or the state is only a tool in the hands of the power. You speak of one life taken away. But what about innumerable lives lost in wars? Disciple, quite so. Loss of lives is wrong anyway. Are wars justified? Answer, for a realized man, the one who remains ever in the self, the loss of one or several or all lives either in this world or in all the three worlds makes no difference. Even if he happens to destroy them all, no sin can touch such a pure soul. Maharshi quoted the Gita, chapter 18, verse 17, He who is free from the notion of ego, whose intellect is unattached, though he annihilates all the worlds, he slayeth not, nor is he bound by the results of his actions. Disciple, do not one's actions affect the person in afterbirths? Answer, are you born now? Why do you think of other births? The fact is that there is neither birth nor death. Let him who is born think of death and palliatives therefore. Disciple, how long did it take my hair she to realize the self? Answer, this question is asked because the name and form are perceived. These are the perceptions consequent on the identification of the ego with the gross body. If the ego identifies itself with the subtle mind, as in dream, the perceptions are subtle also. But in sleep there are no perceptions. Was there not the ego still? Unless it was, there cannot be the memory of having slept. Who was it that slept? You did not say in your sleep that you slept. You say it now, in your wakeful state. The ego therefore is the same in wakefulness, dream and sleep. Find out the underlying reality behind these states. That is the reality underlying these. In that state there is being alone. There is no you, nor I, nor he, no present, nor past, nor future. It is beyond time and space, beyond expression. It is ever there. Just as a plantain tree produces shoots at its roots before yielding fruits and perishing, and these shoots, being transplanted, do the same again, so also the original primeval master of antiquity Dakshinamurti, who cleared the doubts of his Rishi disciples in silence, has left shoots which are ever multiplying. The guru is a shoot of that Dakshinamurti. The question does not arise when the self is realized. Disciple, does Maharshi enter the Nirvikalpa Samadhi? Answer. If the eyes are closed, it is nirvikalpa, if open, it is though differentiated, still in absolute repose savakalpa. The ever-present state is the natural state sahaja. 26th January 1935 Talk 18 Mr. Evans once asked, There are yogis with occult powers. What does Maharshi think of them? Answer. The powers are known by hearsay or by exhibition. Thus they are in the realm of the mind only. Disciple, Mr. Brunt mentions a yogi in Madras who is said to hold communion with his master in the Himalayas. Answer, it is not more marvelous than telepathy so commonly known. Telepathy cannot exist without the hearer and television without the seer. What is the difference between hearing from far and from near? It is only the hearer who matters. 
Without the hearer there cannot be hearing, without the seer there cannot be vision. Disciple, so you want me to consider the subject and not the object? Answer, the subject and object appear only after the mind has arisen. The mind comprises them and also the occult powers. Disciple, can the manifestations of light Jothais be seen on Aaron Achala Hill? Answer, yes. Disciple, is there any psychic effect in visiting sacred places like M.T. Kailas Benirs, etc.? Answer, yes. Disciple, is there any benefit accruing by dying in Ben Ayers? Answer, yes, the meaning will be clear if the real Ben Ayers and real dying be understood. Disciple, you mean that they are in the self? Answer, yes. Disciple, there are six centers in the body and there are corresponding centers in the world. Answer, yes. What is in the world is in the body and what is in the body is in the world also. Disciple, is the sacredness of Ben Ayers a matter of faith, or is it externally also real? Answer, both. Disciple, some people are attracted to one place of pilgrimage and others to another. Is it according to their temperaments? Answer, yes. Just consider how all of you born in different places and living in other lands are gathered here today. What is the force which has attracted you here? If this is understood, the other force is also understood. 29th January 1935 Talk 19 Mr. Grant Duff asked, Where are memory and forgetfulness located? Answer, in the mind Chitta. 30th January 1935 Talk 20 Mr. Evans Wentz Is solitude necessary for a Johnny? Answer, solitude is in the mind of man. One might be in the thick of the world and maintain serenity of mind, such a one is in solitude. Another may stay in a forest, but still be unable to control his mind. He cannot be said to be in solitude. Solitude is a function of the mind. A man attached to desire cannot get solitude wherever he may be. A detached man is always in solitude. Disciple, so then one might be engaged in work and be free from desire and keep up solitude. Is it so? Answer, yes. Work performed with attachment is a shackle whereas work performed with detachment does not affect the doer. He is, even while working in solitude. Disciple, they say that there are many saints in Tibet who remain in solitude and are still very helpful to the world. How can it be? Answer, it can be so. Realization of the self is the greatest help that can be rendered to humanity. Therefore, the saints are said to be helpful, though they remain in forests. But it should not be forgotten that solitude is not in forests only. It can be at even in towns, in the thick of worldly occupations. Disciple, it is not necessary that the saints should mix with people and be helpful to them. Answer, the self alone is the reality, the world and the rest of it are not. The realized being does not see the world as different from himself. Disciple, thus then, the saint's realization leads to the uplift of humanity without the latter being aware of it. Is it so? Answer, yes. The help is imperceptible but is still there. A saint helps the whole of humanity, unknown to the latter. Disciple, would it not be better if he mixed with others? Answer. There are no others to mix with. The self is the one and only reality. Disciple. If there be a hundred self-realized men, will it not be to the greater benefit of the world? Answer. When you say self, you refer to the unlimited, but when you add men to it, you limit the meaning. There is only one infinite self. Disciple. Yes, yes, I see. Sri Krishna has said in the Gita that work must be performed without attachment, and such work is better than idleness. 
Is it karma yoga? Answer. What is said is given out to suit the temperament of the hearers. Disciple. In Europe, it is not understood by the people that a man in solitude can be helpful. They imagine that men working in the world can alone be useful. When will this confusion cease? Will the European mind continue waiting in the morass or will it realize the truth? Answer. Never mind Europe or America. Where they accept in your mind. Realize yourself and then all is realized. If you dream and see several men, and then wake up and recall your dream, do you try to ascertain if the persons of your dream creation are also awake? Disciple, what does my hair she think of the theory of universal illusion Maya? Answer, what is Maya? It is only reality. Disciple, is not Maya illusion? Answer, Maya is used to signify the manifestations of the reality. Thus Maya is only reality. Disciple, some say that Sri Sankarakurya was only intellectual and not realized. Is it so? Answer, why worry about Sankarakurya? Realize your own self. Others can take care of themselves. Disciple, Jesus Christ cured people of their diseases. Is that only an occult power city? Answer, was Jesus aware at the time that he was curing men of their diseases? He could not have been conscious of his powers. There is a story related as follows. Jesus had once cured a man of his blindness. The man turned wicked in course of time. Meeting him after some years, Jesus observed his wickedness and asked him why he was so. He replied saying that when he was blind he could not commit any sin. But after Jesus had cured him of blindness he grew wicked and Jesus was responsible for his wickedness. Disciple, was not Jesus a perfected being possessing a cult powers city? Answer, he could not have been aware of his powers sit eyes. Disciple, is it not good to acquire them such as telepathy etc? Answer, telepathy or radio enables one to see and hear from afar. They are all the same, hearing and seeing. Whether one hears from near or far does not make any difference in hearing. Fundamental factor is the hearer the subject. Without the hearer or the seer there can be no hearing or seeing. The latter are the functions of the mind. The occult powers sit eyes are therefore only in the mind. They are not natural to the self. That which is not natural but acquired cannot be permanent and is not worth striving for. They denote extended powers. A man is possessed of limited powers and is miserable. He wants to expand his powers so that he may be happy. But consider if it will be so. If with limited perceptions one is miserable, with extended perceptions the misery must increase proportionately. Occult powers will not bring happiness to anyone, but will make him all the more miserable. Moreover, what are these powers for? The would-be occultist Siddha desires to display the Siddhas so that others may appreciate him. He seeks appreciation, and if it is not forthcoming he will not be happy. There must be others to appreciate him. He may even find another possessor of higher powers. That will cause jealousy and breed unhappiness. The higher occultist Siddha may meet a still higher Siddha and so on until there will come one who will blow up everything in a trice. Such is the highest adept Siddha and he is God or the Self. Which is the real power? Is it to increase prosperity or bring about peace? That which results in peace is the highest perfection Siddha. Disciple but common people in Europe and America would not appreciate such an attitude and would desire a display of powers and instructions by lectures, etc. Answer, lectures may entertain individuals for a few hours without improving them. Silence, on the other hand, is permanent and benefits the whole of humanity. Disciple, but silence is not understood. Answer, it does not matter. 
by silence eloquence is meant. Oral lectures are not so eloquent as silence. Silence is unceasing eloquence. The primal master Dakshinamurti is the ideal. He taught his Rishi disciples by silence. Disciple, and there were disciples for him. It was all right. Now it is different. They must be sought after and helped. Answer, that is a sign of ignorance. The power which created you has created the world. If it can take care of you, it can similarly take care of the world also. Disciple, what does Bhagavan think of the law so mentioned by Jesus Christ? Answer, think what there is to be lost. Is there anything to lose? What matters is only that which is natural. Such must be eternal and cannot be experienced. That which is born must die, that which is acquired must be lost. Were you born? You are ever existent. The self can never be lost. Disciple, Buddha advises the eight. Fold path as being the best so that none might be lost. Answer, yes. Such is called Raja Yoga by the Hindus. Disciple, is yoga advised for a spiritual aspirant? Answer, yoga helps control of mind. Disciple, but does it not lead to occult power siddhis which are said to be dangerous? Answer, but you qualified your question by the words a spiritual aspirant. You did not mean a seeker of power, said I. 31st January 1935, Talk 21. Mr. Alapa Chechere, a member of the Legislative Council of Madras Presidency and an influential Hindu, asked, why is it said that the knowledge born of hearing is not firm, whereas that born of contemplation is firm? Answer. On the other hand, it is said that hearsay knowledge paraksha is not firm, whereas that born of one's own realization of paraksha is firm. It is also said that hearing helps the intellectual understanding of the truth, that meditation makes the understanding clear, and finally that contemplation brings about realization of the truth. Furthermore, they say also that all such knowledge is not firm, and that it is firm only when it is as clear and intimate as a gooseberry in the hollow of one's palm. There are those who affirm that hearing alone will suffice, because a competent person who had already, perhaps in previous incarnations, qualified himself, realizes and abides in peace as soon as he hears the truth told him only once, whereas the person not so qualified must pass through the stages prescribed above before falling into samadhi. Talk 22. He get returned from Madras for a further visit. She asked questions relating to diet regulation. Disciple. What diet is prescribed for a sadhak one who is engaged in spiritual practices? Answer, sapphic food in limited quantities. Disciple, what is sapphic food? Answer, bread, fruits, vegetables, milk, etc. Disciple, some people take fish in North India. May it be done? No answer was made by the Maharshi. Disciple, we Europeans are accustomed to a particular diet. Change of diet affects health and weakens the mind. Is it not necessary to keep up physical health? Answer, quite necessary. The weaker the body, the stronger the mind grows. Disciple, in the absence of our usual diet, our health suffers and the mind loses strength. Answer, what do you mean by strength of mind? Disciple, the power to eliminate worldly attachment. Answer, the quality of food influences the mind. The mind feeds on the food consumed. Disciple, really? How can the Europeans adjust themselves to sapphic food only? Answer, pointing to Mr. Evans, whence you have been taking our food. Do you feel uncomfortable on that account? Mr. Evans, whence? No because I am accustomed to it. Disciple, what about those not so accustomed? Answer, habit is only adjustment to the environment. 
It is the mind that matters. The fact is that the mind has been trained to think certain foods tasty and good. The food material is to be had both in vegetarian and non-vegetarian diet equally well. But the mind desires such food as it is accustomed to and considers tasty. Disciple, are there restrictions for the realized man in a similar manner? Answer, no. He is steady and not influenced by the food he takes. Disciple, is it not killing life to prepare meat diet? Answer, Ahimsa stands foremost in the code of discipline for the yogis. Disciple, even plants have life. Answer, so to the slabs you sit on. Disciple, may we gradually get ourselves accustomed to vegetarian food? Answer, yes. That is the way. 2nd February 1935 Talk 23 Mr. Evans, whence continued another day. May one have more than one spiritual master? Answer, who is a master? He is the self after all. According to the stages of the development of the mind the self manifests as the master externally. The famous ancient saint Avidhuta said that he had more than twenty-four masters. The master is one from whom one learns anything. The guru may be sometimes inanimate also as in the case of Avidhuta. God, guru and the self are identical. A spiritual-minded man thinks that God is all-pervading and takes God for his guru. Later, God brings him in contact with a personal guru and the man recognizes him as all in all. Lastly, this same man is made by the grace of the master to feel that his self is the reality and nothing else. Thus he finds that the self is the master. Disciple, does Sri Bhagavan initiate his disciples? Maharshi kept silent. Thereafter one of the devotees took it upon himself to answer, saying, Maharshi does not see anyone as outside his self. So there are no disciples for him. His grace is all-pervading and he communicates his grace to any deserving individual in silence. Disciple, how does book lore help in self-realization? Answer, only so far as to make one spiritually minded. Disciple, how far does intellect help? Answer, only so far as to make one sink the intellect in the ego and the ego in the self. 4th February, 1935, Talk 24 Miss Pega, why do you take milk but not eggs? Answer, the domesticated cows yield more milk than necessary for their calves and they find it a pleasure to be relieved of the milk. Disciple, but the hen cannot contain the eggs. Answer, but there are potential lives in them. Disciple, thoughts cease suddenly, then I, I rises up as suddenly and continues. It is only in the feeling and not in the intellect. Can it be right? Answer, it is certainly right. Thoughts must cease and reason disappear for I, I to rise up and be felt. Healing is the prime factor and not reason. Disciple, moreover it is not in the head but in the right side of the chest. Answer, it ought to be so. Because the heart is there. Disciple, when I see outside it disappears. What is to be done? Answer, it must be held tight. Disciple, if one is active with such remembrance, will the actions be always right? Answer, they ought to be. However, such a person is not concerned with the right or wrong of his actions. Such a person's actions are God's and therefore, they must be right. Disciple, why then the restrictions of food given for such? Answer, your present experience is due to the influence of the atmosphere you are in. Can you have it outside this atmosphere? The experience is spasmodic. Until it becomes permanent practice is necessary. Restrictions of food are aids for such experience to be repeated. After one gets established in truth the restrictions drop away naturally. 
Moreover, food influences the mind, and it must be kept pure. The lady told a disciple later, I feel the vibrations from him more intensely and I am able to reach the eye center more readily than before. Talk 25 On a former occasion Narasimha Swami, author of Self-Realization, asked, Who am I? How is it to be found? Answer, ask yourself the question. The body animaya kosa and its functions are not I. Going deeper, the mind manamaya kosa and its functions are not I. The next step takes on to the question. Where from do these thoughts arise? The thoughts are spontaneous, superficial or analytical. They operate in intellect. Then, who is aware of them? The existence of thoughts their clear conceptions and their operations become evident to the individual. The analysis leads to the conclusion that the individuality of the person is operative as the perceiver of the existence of thoughts and of their sequence. This individuality is the ego, or as people say I. Vijanamaya Kosa intellect is only the sheath of I and not the I itself. Inquiring further the questions arise, Who is this I? Wherefrom does it come? I was not aware in sleep. Simultaneously with its rise sleep changes to dream or wakefulness. But I am not concerned with dream just now. Who am I now in the wakeful state? If I originated from sleep, then the I was covered up with ignorance. Such an ignorant I cannot be what the scriptures say or the wise ones affirm. I am beyond even sleep, I must be now and here, and what I was all along in sleep and dreams also, without the qualities of such states. I must therefore be the unqualified substratum underlying these three states anandamaya kosa transcended. I is in brief beyond the five sheaths. Next, the residuum left over after discarding all that is not self is the self sat shit ananda. Disciple, how is that self to be known or realized? Answer, transcend the present plane of relativity. A separate being self appears to know something apart from itself non-self. That is, the subject is aware of the object. The seer is trick, the scene is drisia. There must be a unity underlying these two which arises as ego. This ego is of the nature of chit intelligence. A chit insentient object is only negation of chit. Therefore the underlying essence is akin to the subject and not the object. Seeking the drik until all drishya disappears, the drik will become subtler and subtler until the absolute drik alone survives. This process is called Drisya Vilaya, the disappearance of the objective world. Disciple, why should the object's Drisya be eliminated? Cannot the truth be realized even keeping the object as it is? Answer, no. Elimination of Drisya means elimination of separate identities of the subject and object. The object is unreal. All Drisya including ego is the object. Eliminating the unreal, the reality survives. When a rope is mistaken for a snake, it is enough to remove the erroneous perception of the snake for the truth to be revealed. Without such elimination the truth will not dawn. Disciple, when and how is the disappearance of the objective world Drisya Valaya to be effected? Answer. It is complete when the relative subject, namely the mind, is eliminated. The mind is the creator of the subject and the object and is the cause of the dualistic idea. Therefore, it is the cause of the wrong notion of limited self and the misery consequent on such erroneous idea. Disciple, what is this mind? Answer, mind is one form of manifestation of life. A block of wood or a subtle machine is not called mind. The vital force manifests as life activity and also as the conscious phenomena known as the mind. Disciple, what is the relation between mind and object? 
Is the mind contacting something different from it, namely the world? Answer. The world is sensed in the waking and the dream states or is the object of perception and thought, both being mental activities. If there were no such activities as waking and dreaming thought, there would be no perception or inference of a world. In sleep there is no such activity and objects and world do not exist for us in sleep. Hence reality of the world may be created by the ego by its act of emergence from sleep and that reality may be swallowed up or disappear by the soul resuming its nature in sleep. The emergence and disappearance of the world are like the spider producing a gossamer web and then withdrawing it. The spider here underlies all the three states waking, dreaming, and sleep. Such a spider in the person is called Atman self, whereas the same with reference to the world which is considered to issue from the sun is called Brahman Supreme Spirit. He that is in man is the same as he that is in the sun. While self or spirit is unmanifest and inactive, there are no relative doubles, for example, subject and object drikandrisya. If the inquiry into the ultimate cause of manifestation of mind itself is pushed on, mind will be found to be only the manifestation of the real which is otherwise called Atman or Brahman. The mind is termed Sukshma Sarira or subtle body and Jiva is the individual soul. The Jiva is the essence of the growth of individuality. Personality is referred to as Jiva. Thought or mind is said to be its phase, or one of the ways in which the jiva manifests itself the earlier stage or phase of such manifestation being vegetative life. This mind is always seen as being related to or acting on some non, mind or matter, and never by itself. Therefore mind and matter coexist. Talk 26. Disciple. How shall we discover the nature of the mind in other words, its ultimate cause, or the noumenon of which it is a manifestation? Answer. Arranging thoughts in the order of value, the I thought is the all-important thought. Personality, idea or thought is also the root or the stem of all other thoughts, since each idea or thought arises only as someone's thought and is not known to exist independently of the ego. The ego therefore exhibits thought activity. The second and the third persons do not appear except to the first person. Therefore they arise only after the first person appears. So all the three persons seem to rise and sink together. Trace then the ultimate cause of I or personality. The I idea rises to an embodied ego and should be relate to a body or organism. Has it a location in the body or a special relation to any particular spot, as speech which has its center in the brain or amativeness in the brain? Similarly, has I got any center in the brain blood or viscera? Thought life is seen to center round the brain and the spinal cord which in turn are fed by the blood circulating in them, carrying food and air duly mixed up which are transformed into nerve matter. Thus, vegetative life including circulation, respiration, alimentation, etc. or vital force is said to be or reside in the core or essence of the organism. Thus the mind may be regarded as the manifestation of vital force which again may be conceived as residing the heart. Disciple, now for the art of eliminating the mind and developing intuition in its stead, are they two distinct stages with a possible neutral ground which is neither mind nor intuition? Or does the absence of mental activity necessarily involve self-realization? Answer, to the Abhyasi practitioner there are two distinctive stages. There is a neutral ground of sleep, coma, faint, insanity, etc. in which the mental operations either do not exist or consciousness of self does not prevail. Disciple, taking the first part first, how is the mind to be eliminated or relative consciousness transcended? 
Answer, the mind is by nature restless. Begin liberating it from its restlessness, give it peace, make it free from distractions, train it to look inward, make this a habit. This is done by ignoring the external world and removing the obstacles to peace of mind. Disciple, how is restlessness removed from the mind? Answer, external contacts, contacts with objects other than itself make the mind restless. Loss of interest in non-self, veragia is the first step. Then the habits of introspection and concentration follow. They are characterized by control of external senses, internal faculties, etc. Sama, dhamma, etc. Ending in samadhi, undistracted mind. Talk 27. Disciple, how are they practiced? Answer. An examination of the ephemeral nature of external phenomena leads to veragia. Hence inquiry vichara is the first and foremost step to be taken. When vichara continues automatically, it results in a contempt for wealth, fame, ease, pleasure, etc. The eye thought becomes clearer for inspection. The source of eye is the heart the final goal. If, however, the aspirant is not temperamentally suited to vichara marga to the introspective analytical method, he must develop bhakti devotion to an ideal may be God, Kuru, humanity in general, ethical laws, or even the idea of beauty. When one of these takes possession of the individual, other attachments grow weaker, in other words, dispassion varagia develops. Attachment for the ideal simultaneously grows and finally holds the field. Thus ekagrata concentration grows simultaneously and imperceptibly with or without visions and direct aids. In the absence of inquiry and devotion, the natural sedative pranayama breath regulation may be tried. This is known as yoga marga. If life is in peril, the whole interest centers round the one point, the saving of life. If the breath is held, the mind cannot afford to and does not jump at its pet's external objects. Thus there is rest for the mind so long as the breath is held. All attention being turned on breath or its regulation, other interests are lost. Again, passions are attended with irregular breathing, whereas calm and happiness are attended with slow and regular breathing. Paroxysm of joy is in fact as painful as one of pain, and both are accompanied by ruffled breaths. Real peace is happiness. Pleasures do not form happiness. The mind improves by practice and becomes finer just as the razor's edge is sharpened by stropping. The mind is then better able to tackle internal or external problems. If an aspirant be unsuited temperamentally for the first two methods and circumstantially on account of age for the third method, he must try the karma marga doing good deeds, for example, social service. His nobler instincts become more evident and he derives impersonal pleasure. His smaller self is less assertive and has a chance of expanding its good side. The man becomes duly equipped for one of the three aforesaid paths. His intuition may also develop directly by this single method. Disciple, can a line of thought or a series of questions induce self-hypnotism? Should it not be reduced to a single point analyzing the unanalyzable, elementary and vaguely perceived and elusive I? Answer, yes. It is really like gazing into vacancy or a dazzling crystal or light. Disciple, can the mind be fixed to that point? How? Answer, if the mind is distracted, ask the question promptly, to whom do these distracting thoughts arise? That takes you back to the I point promptly. Disciple, how long can the mind stay or be kept in the heart? Answer, the period extends by practice. Disciple, what happens at the end of the period? Answer, the mind returns to the present normal state. 
unity in the heart is replaced by variety of phenomena perceived. This is called the outgoing mind. The heart going mind is called the resting mind. Disciple, is all this process merely intellectual or does it exhibit feeling predominantly? Answer, the latter. Disciple, how do all thoughts cease when the mind is in the heart? Answer, by force of will, with strong faith in the truth of the Master's teaching to that effect. Disciple, what is the good of this process? Answer, a conquest of the will development of concentration. B. Conquest of passions development of dispassion. C. Increased practice of virtue samadvet equality to all. Disciple, why should one adopt the self? Hypnotism by thinking on the unthinkable point. Why not adopt other methods like gazing into light, holding the breath, hearing music, hearing internal sounds, repetition of the sacred syllable pranava or other mantras? Answer, light. Gazing stupefies the mind and produces catalepsy of the will for the time being yet secures no permanent benefit. Breath control benumbs the will for the time being only. Sound, hearing produces similar results unless the mantra is sacred and secures the help of a higher power to purify and raise the thoughts. Talk 28. Disciple. What is the interrelation between regulation of thought and regulation of breath? Answer. Thought intellectual and respiration circulation etc. Vegetative activities are both different aspects of the same the individual life. Both depend upon or metaphorically reside or inhere in life. Personality and other ideas spring from it like the vital activity. If respiration or other vital activity is forcibly repressed, thought also is repressed. If thought is forcibly slowed down and pinned to a point, the vital activity of respiration is slowed down, made even and confined to the lowest level compatible with life. In both cases the distracting variety of thought is temporarily at an end. The interaction is noticeable in other ways also. Take the will to live. That is thought power. That sustains and keeps up life when other vitality is almost exhausted and delays death. In the absence of such will power death is accelerated. So thought is said to carry life with it in the flesh and from one fleshy body to another. Disciple, are there any aids to one? concentration and two, casting off distractions. Answer, physically the digestive and other organs are kept free from irritation. Therefore food is regulated both in quantity and quality. Non-irritants are eaten avoiding chilies, excess of salt, onions, wine, opium, etc. Avoid constipation, drowsiness and excitement and all foods which induce them. Mentally take interest in one thing and fix the mind on it. Let such interest be all-absorbing to the exclusion of everything else. This is dispassion, veragia, and concentration. God or mantra may be chosen. The mind gains strength to grasp the subtle and merge into it. Disciple, distractions result from inherited tendencies. Can they be cast off too? Answer. Yes. Many have done so. Believe it. They did so because they believed they could. The sana's predispositions can be obliterated. It is done by concentration on that which is free from the sanas and yet is their core. Disciple, how long is the practice to continue? Answer, till success is achieved and until yoga liberation becomes permanent. Success begets success. If one distraction is conquered, the next is conquered, and so on, until all are finally conquered. The process is like reducing an enemy's fort by slaying its manpower one by one, as each issues out. Disciple, what is the goal of this process? Answer, realizing the real. 
Disciple, what is the nature of the reality? Answer, a existence without beginning or end eternal. The existence everywhere endless, infinite. The existence underlying all forms, all changes, all forces, all matter and all spirit. The many change and pass away phenomena, whereas the one always endures nominon. D the one displacing the triads in other words the knower the knowledge and the known. The triads are only appearances in time and space, whereas the reality lies beyond and behind them. They are like a mirage over the reality. They are the result of delusion. Disciple, if I also be an illusion, who then casts off the illusion? Answer, the I casts off the illusion of I and yet remains as I. Such is the paradox of self-realization. The realized do not see any contradiction in it. Take the case of Bhakti I approach Aswara and pray to be absorbed in him. I then surrender myself in faith and by concentration. What remains afterwards? In place of the original I, perfect self-surrender leaves a residuum of God in which the I is lost. This is the highest form of devotion parapakti perpati surrender or the height of erigia. You give up this and that of my possessions. If you give up I and mine instead, all are given up at a stroke. The very seed of possession is lost. Thus the evil is nipped in the bud or crushed in the germ itself. Dispash and Varagia must be very strong to do this. Eagerness to do it must be equal to that of a man kept under water trying to rise up to the surface for his life. Disciple, cannot this trouble and difficulty be lessened with the aid of a master or an ish to devote a god chosen for worship? Cannot they give the power to see ourself as it is to change us into themselves to take us into self-realization? Answer. Ishta Devada and Kiru are aids very powerful aids on this path. But an aid to be effective requires your effort also. Your effort is a sign qua non. It is you who should see the sun. Can spectacles in the sun see for you? You yourself have to see your true nature. Not much aid is required for doing it. Disciple what is the relation between my free will and the overwhelming might of the omnipotent? It is omniscience of God consistent with ego's free will? B is omnipotence of God consistent with ego's free will? C are the natural laws consistent with God's free will? Answer, yes. Free will is the present appearing to a limited faculty of sight and will. The same ego sees its past activity as falling into a course of law or rules its own free will being one of the links in that course of law. Omnipotence and omniscience of God are then seen by the ego to have acted through the appearance of his own free will. So he comes to the conclusion that the ego must go by appearances. Natural laws are manifestations of God's will and they have been laid down. Disciple, is the study of science, psychology, physiology, philosophy, etc., helpful for one, this art of yoga liberation? Two, the intuitive grasp of the unity of the real? Answer, very little. Some knowledge is needed for yoga, and it may be found in books. But practical application is the thing needed, and personal example, Personal touch and personal instructions are the most helpful aids. As for the other, a person may laboriously convince himself of the truth to be intuited in other words, its function and nature, but the actual intuition is akin to feeling and requires practice and personal contact. Mere book learning is not of any great use. After realization all intellectual loads are useless burdens and are thrown overboard as jetsam. Jettisoning the ego is necessary and natural. Disciple, how does dream differ from waking? Answer, in dreams one takes on different bodies and they re-enter this body when one dreams of sense contacts. 
Disciple, what is happiness? Is it inhering in the atman or in the object or in the contact between the subject and the object? But we do not see happiness in our affairs. When does it actually arise? Answer, when there is contact of a desirable sort or memory thereof, and when there is freedom from undesirable contacts or memory thereof, we say there is happiness. Such happiness is relative and is better called pleasure. But men want absolute and permanent happiness. This does not reside in objects but in the absolute. It is peace free from pain and pleasure. It is a neutral state. Disciple, in what sense is happiness our real nature? Answer, perfect bliss is Brahman. Perfect peace is of the self that alone exists and is conscious. The same conclusion is arrived at, adjudged metaphysically, and be inferred by Bhakti Marga path of devotion. We pray to God for bliss and receive it by grace. The bestower of bliss must be bliss itself and also infinite. Therefore Iswara is the personal God of infinite power and bliss. Brahman is bliss impersonal and absolute. The finite egos deriving their source from Brahman and then Iswara are in their spiritual nature bliss only. Biologically, an organism functions because such functions are attended with happiness. It is pleasure that helps our growth food exercise rest and gregarious qualities. The psychology and metaphysics of pleasure is perhaps this. Our nature is primarily one entire blissful. Take this as a probable hypothesis. Creation is by the entire Godhead breaking into God and nature Maya or Prakriti. This Maya is of two parts. Para the supporting essence and a pair of the five elements, mind, intellect, and ego eightfold. Ego's perfection is suddenly broken at a point and a want is felt giving rise to a desire to get something or do something. When that want is cured by the fulfillment of that desire, the ego is happy and the original perfection is restored. Therefore happiness may be said to be our natural condition or nature. Pleasure and pain are relative and refer to our finite state, with progress by satisfaction of want. If relative progress is stopped and the soul merges into Brahman of the nature of perfect peace that soul ceases to have relative, temporary pleasure and enjoys perfect peace bliss. Hence self-realization is bliss, it is realizing the self as the limitless spiritual I jhana dristi and not clairvoyance, it is the highest self-surrender. Samsara the world, cycle is sorrow. Disciple, why then is samsara creation and manifestation as finitized so full of sorrow and evil? Answer, God's will. Disciple, why does God will it so? Answer, it is inscrutable. No motive can be attributed to that power, no desire, no end to achieve can be asserted of that one infinite, all, wise and all, powerful being. God is untouched by activities which take place in his presence. Compare the sun and the world activities. There is no meaning in attributing responsibility and motive to the one before it becomes many. But God's will for the prescribed course of events is a good solution of the free will problem vexata questio. If the mind is restless on account of a sense of the imperfect and unsatisfactory character of what befalls us or what is committed or omitted by us, then it is wise to drop the sense of responsibility and free will by regarding ourselves as the ordained instruments of the all-wise and all-powerful, to do and suffer as he pleases. He carries all burdens and gives us peace. Talk 29 on another occasion the evening was calm and cloudy. It was drizzling occasionally and somewhat cool in consequence. The windows of the Isramam hall were closed and Maharshi was seated as usual on the sofa. Facing him sat the devotees. Some visitors had come from Cuddalore. 
a subjudge accompanied by two elderly ladies was among them. The subjudge began the discussion as to the impermanence of all mundane things by putting the question, Has the discrimination between reality and unreality the efficacy in itself to lead us to the realization of the one imperishable? Answer, as propounded by all and realized by all true seekers, fixity in the Supreme Spirit alone can make us know and realize it. It being of us and in us, any amount of discrimination viva chana can lead us only one step forward by making us renouncers, by goading us to discard the seeming abhasa as transitory, and to hold fast to the eternal truth and presence alone. The conversation turned upon the question as to whether is where a prasa divine grace is necessary for the attaining of samrajya universal dominion, or whether a jiva's honest and strenuous efforts to attain it cannot of themselves lead him to that from whence is no return to life and death. The Maharshi with an ineffable smile, which lit up his holy face and which was all-pervasive, shining upon the coterie around him, replied in tones of certainty and with the ring of truth. Divine grace is essential for realization. It leads one to God-realization. But such grace is vouchsafed only to him who is a true devotee or a yogin, who has striven hard and ceaselessly on the path towards freedom. Disciple, there are six setters mentioned in the yoga books, but the jiva is said to reside in the heart. Is it not so? Answer, yes. The jiva is said to remain in the heart in deep sleep and in the brain in the waking state. The heart need not be taken to be the muscular cavity with four chambers which propels blood. There are indeed passages which support the view. There are others who take it to mean a set of ganglia or nerve centers about that region. Whichever view is correct does not matter to us. We are not concerned with anything less than ourselves. That we have certainly within us. There could be no doubts or discussions about that. The heart is used in the Vedas and the scriptures to denote the place whence the notion I springs. Does it spring only from the fleshy ball? It springs within us somewhere right in the middle of our being. The eye has no location. Everything is the self. There is nothing but that. So the heart must be said to be the entire body of ourselves and of the entire universe conceived as I. But to help the practiser Abhyasi we have to indicate a definite part of the universe or of the body. So this heart is pointed out as the seat of the self. But in truth we are everywhere, we are all that is and there is nothing else. Disciple, it is said that divine grace is necessary to attain successful undistracted mind samadhi. Is that so? Answer, we are God Aswara. Iswara Drishti, in other words, seeing ourselves as God is itself divine grace. So we need divine grace to get God's grace. Maharshi smiles and all devotees laugh together. Disciple, there is also divine favor, Iswara Anagraham, as distinct from divine grace, Iswara Prasadam. Is that so? Answer, the thought of God is divine favor. He is by nature grace prasat or eral. It is by God's grace that you think of God. Disciple, is not the Master's grace the result of God's grace? Answer, why distinguish between the two? The Master is the same as God and not different from Him. Disciple, when an endeavor is made to lead the right life and to concentrate thought on the self, there is often a downfall and break. What is to be done? Answer, it will come all right in the end. There is the steady impulse of your determination that sets you on your feet again after every downfall and breakdown. Gradually the obstacles are all overcome and your current becomes stronger. Everything comes right in the end. Steady determination is what is required. Talk 30. 
Mr. Natsa Ayer, the leader of the bar in a South Indian town, an orthodox Brahmin asked, Are the gods Iswara or Vishnu and their sacred regions Kailasa or Vaikuntha real? Answer, as real as you are in this body. Disciple, do they possess a Vyavahara Satya, in other words, phenomenal existence like my body? Or are they fictions like the horn of a hare? Answer, they do exist. Disciple, if so, they must be somewhere. Where are they? Answer, persons who have seen them say that they exist somewhere. So we must accept their statement. Disciple, where do they exist? Answer, in you. Disciple, then it is only idea that which I can create and control. Answer, everything is like that. Disciple, but I can create pure fictions, for example, hair's horn or only part truths, for example, mirage, while there are also facts irrespective of my imagination. Do the gods Iswara or Vishnu exist like that? Answer, yes. Disciple, is he subject to pralia cosmic dissolution? Answer, why? Man becoming aware of the self transcends cosmic dissolution pralia and becomes liberated mukta. Why not God Iswara, who is infinitely wiser and abler? Disciple, do Devas and Pasukas devils exist similarly? Answer, yes. Disciple, how are we to conceive of Supreme Consciousness Chaitanya Brahman? Answer, as that which is. Disciple, should it be thought of as self-effulgent? Answer, it transcends light and darkness. An individual jiva sees both. The self enlightens the individual to see light and darkness. Disciple, should it be realized as I am not the body, nor the agent, nor the enjoyer, etc.? Answer, why these thoughts? Do we now think that we are men, etc.? By not thinking so, do we cease to be men? Disciple, should one realize it then by the scriptural text such as there are no differences here? Answer, why even that? Disciple, if we think I am the real, will it do? Answer, all thoughts are inconsistent with realization. The correct state is to exclude thoughts of ourselves and all other thoughts. Thought is one thing and realization is quite another. Disciple, is it not necessary or at least advantageous to render the body invisible in one's spiritual progress? Answer, why do you think of that? Are you the body? Disciple, no. But advanced spirituality must effect a change in the body. Is it not so? Answer, what change do you desire in the body and why? Disciple, is not invisibility evidence of advanced wisdom jhana? Answer, in that case, all those who spoke, who wrote, and who passed their lives in the sight of others must be considered ignorant ajanis. Disciple, but the sages Vasistha and Valmiki possess such powers. Answer, it might have been their fate Prabhya to develop such powers Siddhai side by side with their wisdom jhana. Why should you aim at that which is not essential, but apt to prove a hindrance to wisdom jhana? Does the sage Johnny feel oppressed by his body being visible? Disciple, no. Answer, a hypnotist can render himself suddenly invisible. Is he therefore a sage Johnny? Disciple, no. Answer, visibility and invisibility refer to a seer. Who is that seer? Solve that first. Other matters are unimportant. Disciple, the Vedas contain conflicting accounts of cosmogony. Ether is said to be the first creation in one place, vital energy prana in another place, something else in yet another, water in still another, and so on. How are these to be reconciled? Do not these impair the credibility of the Vedas? Answer, different seers saw different aspects of truths at different times, each emphasizing someone's view. 
Why do you worry about their conflicting statements? The essential aim of the Veda is to teach us the nature of the imperishable Atman and show us that we are that. Disciple, I am satisfied with that portion. Answer. Then treat all the rest as Arthavada auxiliary arguments or expositions for the sake of the ignorant who seek to trace the genesis of things and matters. Disciple, I am a sinner. I do not perform religious sacrifices, homas, etc. Shall I have painful rebirths for that reason? Pray save me. Answer, why do you say that you are a sinner? Your trust in God is sufficient to save you from rebirths. Cast all burden on him. In the Turvaka Gamut is said, Though I am worse than a dog, you have graciously undertaken to protect me. This delusion of birth and death is maintained by you. Moreover, am I the person to sift and judge? Am I the Lord here? O Mahiswara! It is for you to roll me through bodies by births and deaths or to keep me fixed at your own feet. Therefore have faith and that will save you. Disciple, sir, I have faith and still I encounter difficulties. Weakness and giddiness afflict me after I practice concentration. Answer, breath control pranayama properly performed should increase one's strength. Disciple, I have my professional work and yet I want to be in perpetual Diana. Will they conflict with each other? Answer, there will be no conflict. As you practice both and develop your powers you will be able to attend to both. You will begin to look on business as a dream. Says the Bhagavad Gita. That which is the night of all beings, for the disciplined man is the time of waking when other beings are waking, then is it night for the sage who seeth. Talk 31. A visitor asked. What to do to get liberation moksha? Answer. Learn what liberation is. Disciple. Should I do worship you pasana for it? Answer. Worship is for mind control chitta nirada and concentration. Disciple. Should I do idol worship? Is there any harm in it? Answer. So long as you think you are the body there is no harm. Disciple, how to get over the cycle of births and deaths? Answer, learn what it means. Disciple, should I not leave my wife and family? Answer, how do they harm you? First find out who you are. Disciple, should not one give up wife wealth home? Answer, learn first what samsara is. Is all that samsara? Have there not been men living among them and getting realization? Disciple, what are the steps of practical training sadhana for it? Answer, it depends on the qualifications and the nature of the seeker. Disciple, I am doing idol worship. Answer, go on with it. It leads to concentration of mind. Get one pointed. All will come out right. People think that Frida Moksha is somewhere yonder and should be sought out. They are wrong. Frida Moksha is only knowing the self within yourself. Concentrate and you will get it. Your mind is the cycle of births and deaths, Samsara. Disciple, my mind is very unsteady. What should I do? Answer, fix your attention on any single thing and try to hold on to it. All will be right. Disciple, I find concentration difficult. Answer, go on practicing. Your concentration will be as easy as breathing. That will be the crown of your achievements. Disciple, are not abstinence and pure food helpful? Answer, yes, all that is good. Then Maharshi concentrates and silently gazes at vacancy, and thus sets an example to the questioner. Disciple, do I not require yoga? Answer, what is it but the means to concentration? Disciple, to help concentration, is it not good to have some aids? Answer, breath regulation, etc., are such helps. Disciple, is it not possible to get a vision of God? Answer, yes. You see this and that. Why not see God? 
only you must know what God is. All are seeing God always, but they do not know it. You find out what God is. People see yet see not because they know not God. Disciple, should I not go on with repetition of sacred syllables mantra japa for example Krishna or Rama's name when I worship images? Answer, mental japa is very good. That helps meditation. Mind gets identified with the repetition, and then you get to know what worship puja really is the losing of one's individuality in that which is worship. Disciple, is the universal soul paramatma always different from us? Answer, that is the common belief but it is wrong. Think of him as not different from you, and then you achieve identity of self with God. Disciple, is it not the Advaita doctrine to become one with God? Answer, where is becoming? The thinker is all the while the real. He ultimately realizes the fact. Sometimes we forget our identities as in sleep and dreams. But God is perpetual consciousness. Disciple, is not the master's guidance necessary besides idol worship? Answer, how did you start it without advice? Disciple, from sacred books Puranas. Answer, yes. Someone tells you of God or Bhagavan himself tells you. In the latter case God himself is your master. What matters it who the master is? We really are one with master or Bhagavan. The master is God one discovers it in the end. There is no difference between Humanguru and God Kuru. Disciple, if we have done virtuous action punya the achievement will not leave us. I hope. Answer, you will reap your destiny prarabta that way. Disciple, will not a wise master be a great help in pointing out the way? Answer, yes. If you go on working with the light available, you will meet your master as he himself will be seeking you. Disciple. Is there a difference between Prapati self-surrender and the path of yoga of the sayers? Answer, Jhana Marga and Bhakti Marga Prapati are one and the same. Self-surrender leads to realization just as inquiry does. Complete self-surrender means that you have no further thought of I. Then all your predisposition samskaras are washed off and you are free. You should not continue as a separate entity at the end of either course. Disciple, do not we go to heaven svarga, etc. as the result of our actions? Answer, that is as true as the present existence. But if we inquire who we are and discover the self, what need is there to think of heaven, etc.? Disciple, should I not try to escape rebirth? Answer, yes. Find out who is born and who has the trouble of existence now. When you are asleep do you think of rebirths or even the present existence, etc. So find out whence the present problem arises and there is the solution also. You will discover that there is no birth, no present trouble or unhappiness, etc. All is that. All is bliss, we are freed from rebirth in fact. Why fret over the misery of rebirth? Talk 32. A visitor, the saints Sri Chaitanya and Sri Ramakrishna wept before God and achieved success. Is that not the path to follow? Answer, yes. There was a powerful force Sakti drawing them on through all those experiences. Trust in that huge power to take you on to your goal. Tears are often considered a sign of weakness. These great persons were certainly not weak. These manifestations are only passing signs of the great current carrying them on. We must look to the end achieved. Disciple, can this physical body be made to disappear into nothingness? Answer, why this question? Can you not find out if you are the body? Disciple, can we have disappearance from sight antard henna like the yog? Is vasish? or Viswamitra. Answer, these are only physical matters. Is that the essential object of our interest? Are you not the self? 
Why trouble about other matters? Take the essence, reject other learned theories as useless. They who think that physical disappearance counts in freedom are mistaken. No such thing is needed. You are not the body, what does it matter if it disappears in one way or another? There is no great merit in such phenomena. In what does superiority or inferiority consist? Achievement of the real alone matters. The loss of the I is the main fact, and not the loss of the body. Identity of the self with the body is the real bondage. Leave off the false notion and perceive intuitively the real. That alone matters. If you melt a gold ornament before testing it to be gold, what matters it how it is melted, whole or in parts, or of what shape the ornament was? All that you are interested in is if it is gold. The dead man sees not his body. It is the survivor that thinks about the manner in which the body is parted from. The realized have no death with or without the body. The realized man is equally aware and sees no difference. To him the one state is not superior to the other. To an outsider also the fortunes of a liberated one's body need not be of any concern. Mind your business. Realize the self. After realization there will be time to think of what form of death is preferable to you. It is the false identity of the self with the body that causes the idea of preference, etc. Are you the body? Were you aware of it when you were fast asleep last night? No. What is it that exists now and troubles you? It is I. Get rid of it and be happy. Talk 33. A visitor, the Supreme Spirit Brahman is real. The world jagat is illusion, is the stock phrase of Sri Sankarakarya. Yet others say the world is reality. Which is true? Answer. Both statements are true. They refer to different stages of development and are spoken from different points of view. The aspirant Abhyasi starts with the definition, that which is real exists always, then he eliminates the world as unreal because it is changing. It cannot be real, not this, not this. The seeker ultimately reaches the self and there finds unity as the prevailing note. Then that which was originally rejected as being unreal is found to be a part of the unity. Being absorbed in the reality, the world also is real. There is only being in self-realization, and nothing but being. Again reality is used in a different sense, and is applied loosely by some thinkers to objects. They say that the reflected at Hyasaka reality admits of degrees which are named. 1. Via Viharika Setya everyday life this chair is seen by me and is real. 2. Pratipasaka Satya illusory illusion of a serpent in a coiled rope. The appearance is real to the man who thinks so. This phenomenon appears at a point of time and under certain circumstances. 3. Paramartika Satya ultimate reality is that which remains the same always and without change. If reality be used in the wider sense the world may be said to have the everyday life in illusory degrees via Viharika and Pratipasaka Satya. Some, however, deny even the reality of practical life via Viharika Satya and consider it to be only projection of the mind. According to them it is only Pratipasaka Satya, in other words, an illusion. Yogi Rumiya's account of his experiences. Talk 34. Sitting in Maharshi's presence brings peace of mind. I used to sit in Samadhi for three or four hours together. Then I felt my mind took a form and came out from within. By constant practice and meditation it entered the heart and was merged into it. I conclude that the heart is the resting place of mind. The result is peace. When the mind is absorbed in the heart, the self is realized. This could be felt even at the stage of concentration dharana. I asked Maharshi about contemplation. He taught me as follows. 
When a man dies, the funeral pyre is prepared and the body is laid flat on the pyre. The pyre is lit. The skin is burnt, then the flesh, and then the bones until the whole body falls to ashes. What remains thereafter? The mind. The question arises, how many are there in this body, one or two? If two, why do people say I am not we? There is therefore only one. Whence is it born? What is its nature, Swarupa? Inquiring thus the mind also disappears. Then what remains over is seen to be I. The next question is who am I, the self alone? This is contemplation. It is how I did it. By this process attachment to the body de Havasana is destroyed. The ego vanishes. Self alone shines. One method of getting mind dissolution manalaya is association with great ones the yoga adepts yoga arudhas. They are perfect adepts in samadhi. Self-realization has been easy, natural, and perpetual to them. Those moving with them closely and in sympathetic contact gradually absorb the samadhi habit from them. Talk 35 An educated visitor asked Bhagavan about Devaita and Advaita. Answer, identification with the body is Devaita. Non-identification is Advaita. Talk 36 an aristocratic and distinguished lady visitor from the north accompanied by her private secretary arrived at noon, waited a few minutes and asked Maharshi soon after he returned to the hall after lunch. Disciple, Maharaji, can we see the dead? Answer, yes. Disciple, can the yogis show them to us? Answer, yes. They may. But do not ask me to show them to you, for I cannot. Disciple, do you see them? Answer, yes in dreams. Disciple, can we realize the goal through yoga? Answer, yes. Disciple, have you written on yoga? Are there books on the subject by you? Answer, yes. After she left the master observed, did we know our relatives before their birth that we should know them after their death? Talk 37. What is karma? Ask someone. Answer, that which has already begun to bear fruit is classified as prarabdha karma past action. That which is in store and will later bear fruit is classified as sanchita karma accumulated action. This is multifarious like the grain obtained by villagers as barter for cress greens. Such bartered grain consists of rice, ragi, barley, etc., some floating on, others sinking in water. Some of it may be good, bad, or indifferent. When the most potent of the multifarious accumulated karma begins to bear fruit in the next birth, it is called the prarabdha of that birth. Talk 38. When one of the present attendants came the first time to Bhagavan, he asked, What is the way for liberation? Mihershi replied, The way already taken leads to liberation. 22nd September 1936 Talk 39 Conversing with our Seshajiri Rao, a visitor Mihershi remarked that a cell, Freelai Sajat Majani alone can be a good karma yogi. After the sense of doership has gone, let us see what happens. Sri Sankara advised in action. But did he not write commentaries and take part in disputation? Do not trouble about doing action or otherwise. Know thyself. Then let us see whose action it is. Whose is it? Let action complete itself. So long as there is the doer, he must reap the fruits of his action. If he does not think himself the doer, there is no action for him. He is an ascetic who has renounced worldly life sannyasin. Disciple, how did the ego arise? Answer, it is not necessary to know it. Know the present. Not knowing that, why do you worry about other times? Mihershi said in reply to a question. Is the world within you or without you? Does it exist apart from you? Does the world come and tell you I exist? 
Talk 40. The Brahmin questioner resumed. How do we know that action is ours or not? Answer. If the fruits of actions do not affect the person he is free from action. Disciple. Is intellectual knowledge enough? Answer. Unless intellectually known how to practice it. Learn it intellectually first, then do not stop with that. Practice it. Maharshi then made certain remarks. When you adhere to one philosophical system Siddhanta you are obliged to condemn the others. That is the case with the heads of monasteries Matadapatis. All people cannot be expected to do the same kind of action. Each one acts according to his temperament and past lives. Wisdom, devotion, action jhana, bhakti, karma are all interlocked. Meditation on forms is according to one's own mind. It is meant for ridding oneself of other forms and confining oneself to one form. It leads to the goal. It is impossible to fix the mind and the heart to start with. So these aids are necessary. Krishna says that there is no birth janma to you me, etc. and later says he was born before Aditya etc. Arjuna disputes it. Therefore it is certain that each one thinks of God according to his own degree of advancement. You say you are the body in wakeful state, not the body in sleep. Bodies being several, fold for an individual, should not there be infinite capacities for God? Whichever method one follows, that method is encouraged by the sages. For it leads to the goal like any other method. Talk 41 Disciple, are there heaven and hell? Answer, there must be someone to go there. They are like dreams. We see time and space exist in dream also. Which is true dream or wakefulness? Disciple, so we must rid ourselves of lust, comma, anger, krata, etc. Answer, give up thoughts. You need not give up anything else. You must be there to see anything. It is the self. Self is ever conscious. Disciple, are pilgrimages etc. good? Answer, yes. Disciple, what effort is necessary for reaching the self? Answer, I should be destroyed. Self is not to be reached. Is there any moment when self is not? It is not new. Be as you are. What is new cannot be permanent. What is real must always exist. Disciple, what is sacrifice through wisdom jhana yajna or other sacrifices? Answer, other disciplines exist for it. Practice is for gaining wisdom jhana. Disciple, are jivan muktas living liberated souls of different kinds? Answer, what does it matter if they differ externally? There is no difference in their wisdom jhana. Disciple, when loyal to one master, can you respect others? Answer, Kiru is only one. He is not physical. So long as there is weakness, the support of strength is needed. Disciple, J. Krishnamurti says, No Kiru is necessary. Answer, how did he know it? One can say so after realizing but not before. Disciple, you have gained this state by great effort. What shall we poor souls do? Answer, we are in ourself. We are not in the world. Disciple, heaven and hell, what are they? Answer, you carry heaven and hell with you. Your lust, anger, etc. produce these regions. They are like dreams. Disciple, the Gita says that if a man fixes his attention between the eyebrows and holds his breath, he reaches the supreme state. How is that done? Answer, you are always in the self and there is no reaching it. The eyebrow is only a place where attention is to be fixed. Disciple, you have spoken of the heart as the seat of meditation. Answer, yes it is also that. Disciple, what is heart? Answer, it is the center of the self. The self is the center of centers. The heart represents the psychic center, and not the physical center. Disciple, the term jhana is realized wisdom. 
The same term is used for the method also. Why? Answer. Jhana includes the method also because it ultimately results in realization. Disciple is a man to engage in teaching his knowledge however imperfect. Answer, if his prerabhya be that way. In the seventh chapter, Arjuna asks if karma is a method sadhana. Krishna answers that it is so if done without the sense of doership. So also are karmas approved by scriptures which deny karma. The karma disapproved by them is that which is done with the sense of doership. Do not leave karma. You cannot do so. Give up the sense of doership. Karma will go on automatically. Or karma will drop away from you. Karma be your lot according to prarabdha. It will surely be done whether you will it or not. If karma be not your lot, it will not be done even if you intently engage in it. Tanaka, Sukha, etc. were also in work without ahankara. Karma may be done for fame, or may be done unselfishly and for the public good. Yet even then they want applause. So it is really selfish. Disciple, what is that one thing knowing which all doubts are solved? Answer, know the doubter. If the doubter be held, the doubts will not arise. Here the doubter is transcendent. Again when the doubter ceases to exist, there will be no doubts arising. From where will they arise? All are Johnny's Jivanmuktas. Only they are not aware of the fact. Doubts must be uprooted. This means that the doubter must be uprooted. Here the doubter is the mind. Disciple, what is the method? Answer, who am I is the investigation. Disciple, may we perform japa? Answer, why should you think I am this? Investigate and the thoughts cease. What is namely the self will be revealed as the inescapable residue. Disciple, is hatha yoga necessary? Answer, it is one of the aids not that it is always necessary. It depends upon the person. The chara surpasses pranayama. In Yoga Vasish, Tuchudala advises investigation vachara to Sikhidvaja for killing the ego. Reality can be reached by holding on to prana or intellect. Hatha Yoga is the former. Vachara is the latter. Disciple, is there any individuality for the jhani after realization? Answer, how can he retain individuality? Even ordinarily the elders advise a chamana and pranayama before undertaking any work be it worldly or otherworldly. That means concentration of mind accomplishes the work. Disciple, I meditate neti, neti not this not this. Answer, no that is not meditation. Find the source. You must reach the source without fail. The false I will disappear and the real I will be realized. Former cannot exist apart from the latter. 24 September 1936 Talk 42 Mr. Duncan Greenlee's Medinapoli wrote as follows. One has at times had vivid flashes of a consciousness whose center is outside the normal self and which seems to be inclusive. Without concerning the mind with philosophical concepts, how would Bhagavan advise us to work towards getting, retaining and extending those flashes? Does Abhyasa in such experiences involve retirement? Sri Bhagavan answered. Outside for whom is inside or outside? They can be only so long as there are the subject and object. For whom are these two again? They both will resolve into the subject only. See who is in the subject. The investigation leads you to pure consciousness beyond the subject. Normal self is the mind. This mind is with limitations. The pure consciousness is beyond limitations and reached by investigation as above outlined. 1. Getting self is always there. One seeks to destroy the obstacles to the revelation of the self. 2. 
retaining having once gained the self it will be understood to be here and now. It is never lost. 3. Extending there is no extending the self, for it is always without contraction or expansion. 4. Retirement abiding in the self is solitude, because there is nothing alien to the self. Retirement must be from some one place to another. There is neither the one nor the other apart from the self. All being the self, retirement is impossible and inconsistent. Abhyasa is investigation into the self. 28th March, 1935, Talk 43. Mr. Ranganathan, Collector of Elor, Mr. Ramamurthy, and Mr. Raghavaya, late Dewan of Pujakata State, visited the Asramam. Mr. Ranganathan asked, kindly instruct me as to how the mind may be controlled. Answer, there are two methods. The one is to see what the mind is, then it subsides. The second is to fix your attention on something, then the mind remains quiet. The questioner repeated the question for further elucidation. The same answer was returned with a little more added. The questioner did not look satisfied. Mr. Raghifaya, men of the world that we are, we have some kind of grief or another and do not know how to get over it. We pray to God and still are not satisfied. What can we do? Answer. Trust God. Disciple. We surrender but still there is no help. Answer. Yes. If you have surrendered, you must be able to abide by the will of God and not make a grievance of what may not please you. Things may turn out differently from what they look apparently. Distress often leads men to faith in God. Disciple, but we are worldly. There is the wife, there are the children, friends and relatives. We cannot ignore their existence and resign ourselves to divine will without retaining some little of the personality in us. Answer, that means you have not surrendered as professed by you. You must only trust God. Mr. Ramamurthy, Swamiji, I have read Brun's book A Search in Secret India, and was much impressed by the last chapter, where he says that it is possible to be conscious without thinking. I know that one can think, remaining forgetful of the physical body. Can one think without the mind? Is it possible to gain that consciousness which is beyond thoughts? Answer, yes. There is only one consciousness which subsists in the waking dream and sleep states. In sleep there is no I. The I thought arises on waking and then the world appears. Where was this I in sleep? Was it there or was it not? It must have been there also, but not in the way that you feel now. The present is only the I thought whereas the sleeping I is the real I. It subsists all through. It is consciousness. If it is known, you will see that it is beyond thoughts. Disciple, can we think without the mind? Answer, thoughts may be like any other activities, not disturbing to the supreme consciousness. Disciple, can one read others' minds? The master as usual told him to find his self before worrying about others. Where are others apart from one's own self? Ask the master. Mr. Rag, hey, Aya. How shall we correlate the higher experience with the lower experience meaning spiritual experience with mundane affairs? Answer. There is only one experience. What are the worldly experiences but those built up on the false eye? Ask the most successful man of the world if he knows his self. He will say no. What can anyone know without knowing the self? All worldly knowledge is built upon such a flimsy foundation. Mr. Ramamurthy, how to know the real I is distinct from the false I? Answer, is there anyone who is not aware of himself? Each one knows but yet does not know the self. A strange paradox. Master added later, if the inquiry is made whether mind exists, it will be found that mind does not exist. That is control of mind. 
Otherwise, if the mind is taken to exist and one seeks to control it, it amounts to mind controlling the mind, just like a thief turning out to be a policeman to catch the thief in other words himself. Mind persists in that way alone, but eludes itself. Third, April 1935, Talk 44. Mr. Ekanath Rao, an engineer, asks Sri Bhagavan if solitude is necessary for Vachara. Answer, there is solitude everywhere. The individual is solitary always. His business is to find it out within and not seek it without. Disciple, the workaday world is distracting. Answer, do not allow yourself to be distracted. Inquire for whom there is distraction. It will not afflict you after a little practice. Disciple, even the attempt is impossible. Answer, make it and it will be found not so difficult. Disciple, but the answer does not come for the search inward. Answer, the inquirer is the answer and no other answer can come. What comes afresh cannot be true. What always is, is true. Sixth, April 19. 135 Talk 45. A visitor asked. The path of realization is difficult. Worldly matters are easy of understanding, whereas this is not. Answer, yes. The mind always seeks external knowledge, leaving aside its own inner knowledge. Disciple, a stay of one day with Sri Bhagavan is good, a stay of two days is better, of three days more so, and so on. If it is a continuous stay here, how shall we get on with our mundane work? Answer, stay here or elsewhere must be understood to be the same and to have the same effect. 12th, April 1935, Talk 46. After hearing the Malayalam version of Upaid Sasara chanted, Mr. Ramachandra, a heir of Nadjarquil, asked in a characteristically unsophisticated way about the mind, concentration and control. The master said that the mind is only identity of the self with the body. It is a false ego that is created. It creates false phenomena in its turn and appears to move in them. All these are false. The self is the only reality. If the false identity vanishes, the persistence of the reality becomes apparent. It does not mean that reality is not here and now. It is always there and eternally the same. It is also in everyone's experience. For everyone knows that he is. Who is he? Subjectively, who am I? The false ego is associated with objects, this ego itself is its own object. Objectivity is the falsity. Subject is alone the reality. Do not confound yourself with the object, namely the body. This gives rise to the false ego, consequently of the world, and your movements therein with the resulting misery. Do not think yourself to be this, that or anything, to be so and so, or to be such and such. Only leave off the falsity. The reality will reveal itself. The scriptures say that the self is Nitya Saida, ever present, and yet speak of the removal of a jhana. If self is Nitya always in Siddha present, how can there be a jhana? For whom is the a jhana? These are contradictory. But such statements are for guiding the earnest seeker in the right way. He does not readily understand the only truth if mentioned in plain words as in Natwam Naham Nimjanad Hippa not thou, nor I, nor these kings. Sri Krishna declared the truth but Arjuna could not grasp it. Later Krishna plainly says that people confound him with the body, whereas in reality he was not born nor will he die. Still Arjuna requires the whole Gita for the truth to be made clear to him. Look, the self is only being, not being this or that. It is simple being. Being there is an end of the ignorance. Inquire for whom is the ignorance. The ego arises when you wake up from sleep. 
in deep sleep you do not say that you are sleeping and that you are going to wake up or that you have been sleeping so long. But still you are there. Only when you are awake you say that you have slept. Your wakefulness comprises sleep also in it. Realize your pure being. Let there be no confusion with the body. The body is the result of thoughts. The thoughts will play as usual but you will not be affected. You are not concerned with the body when asleep, so you can always remain. Mr. Ekanatha Rao How can anyone reconcile such activity with the way journeying which is a necessity for worldly people? Answer, actions form no bondage. Bondage is only the false notion. I am the doer. Leave off such thoughts and let the body and senses play their role unimpeded by your interference. 20th, April, 1935, Talk 47 A Malayali visitor expressed his concern for the misery of the world and his opinion that quests for self look selfish in the midst of such suffering environments. His solution appeared to be selfless work. Answer, the sea is not aware of its wave. Similarly, the self is not aware of its ego. Note. This makes clear what Sri Bhagavan means by quest for the source of ego. Talk 48. A visitor asks Sri Bhagavan, you are Bhagavan. So you would know when I shall get jhana. Tell me when I shall be a jhani. Sri Bhagavan replied, if I am Bhagavan there is no one besides the self therefore no jhani or ajani. If otherwise I am as good as you are and know as much as yourself. Either way I cannot answer your question. 24th, April, 1935, Talk 49 Some men ask the master questions which ultimately resolve themselves into one, that I is not perceptible however much they might struggle. The master's reply was in the usual strain. Who is it that says that I is not perceptible? Is there an I ignorant and an I elusive? Are there two I's in the same person? Ask yourself these questions. It is the mind which says that I is not perceptible. Where is that mind from? Know the mind. You will find it a myth. King Danaka said, I have discovered the thief who had been ruining me so long. I will now deal with him summarily. Then I shall be happy. Similarly it will be with others. Disciple, how to know the I? Answer, the I I is always there. There is no knowing it. It is not a new knowledge acquired. What is new and not here and now will be evanescent only. The I is always there. There is obstruction to its knowledge and it is called ignorance. Remove the ignorance and knowledge shines forth. In fact this ignorance or even knowledge is not for Atman. They are only overgrowths to be cleared off. That is why Atman is said to be beyond knowledge and ignorance. It remains as it naturally is that is all. Disciple, there is no perceptible progress in spite of our attempts. Answer, progress can be spoken of in things to be obtained afresh. Whereas here it is the removal of ignorance and not acquisition of knowledge. What kind of progress can be expected in the quest for the self? Disciple, how to remove the ignorance? Answer, while lying in bed in Turuvanamal, are you dream in your sleep that you find yourself in another town? The scene is real to you. Your body remains here on your bed in a room. Can a town enter your room or could you have left this place and gone elsewhere, leaving the body here? Both are impossible. Therefore your being here and seeing another town are both unreal. They appear real to the mind. The eye of the dream soon vanishes, then another eye speaks of the dream. This I was not in the dream. Both the eyes are unreal. There is the substratum of the mind which continues all along, giving rise to so many scenes. And I rises forth with every thought and with its disappearance that I disappears too. Many I are born and die every moment. The subsisting mind is the real trouble. 
That is the thief according to Dinaka. Find him out and you will be happy. Talk 50. Sri Bhagavan read out from the Prabhuta Bharata, Kabir saying that all know that the drop merges into the ocean but few know that the ocean merges into the drop. This is Parabhakti, said he. 5th June, 1935, Talk 51. A young Brahmin twenty-five years of age came on a visit to the master. At his sight he became hysterical and shouted Sivoham Aham Brahma Asmi, You are God, you are Parabrahma. You are my father, father, save me and so on. His hysterics waxing, he beat his chest violently alternately with both his hands, shouting Sivoham, Sivoham. Then again he shouted hysterically gnashing his teeth. I will stamp out materialism, as if he was crushing materialism between his teeth. Then he asked, Either give me power, either give me power, or, or, or I will. He began as if to throttle himself. When gently removed by others, he fell prostrate before Sri Bhagavan, saying, I will take refuge at the feet of my father. Father, you are Partha Sarethi, I am Arjuna. We will stamp out materialism and so on. He was finally taken away from the presence of Maharishi. He washed himself, took some light refreshment and quietly seated himself in the hall for some hours. He abstained from the midday meal. In the afternoon he had another fit when he shouted, I will chop off the head of Krishna if he should come here now. He advised me to give up my job, but does not protect my mother, or let him chop off my head and so on. After some hours of quiet, Sri Bhagavan asked Mr. Sarma to read out a portion of his commentary on Anubayana Appendix to 40 verses. The gist of it is that people, unable to help themselves, ask for divine powers to be utilized for human welfare. This is similar to the story of a lame man who blustered, saying that he would overpower the enemy if only he were helped onto his legs. The intention is good but there is no sense of proportion. The young man on hearing it suddenly sprang to his feet, saluting Sri Bhagavan and saying, Father, Father, I was mistaken. Pardon me. Teach me. I shall abide by what you say and so on. Then again in the evening he prostrated himself, saying, I surrender. 9th June 1935 Talk 52 A man from Kakanada asked, My mind remains clear for two or three days and turns dull for the next two or three days and so it alternates. What is it due to? Answer, it is quite natural. It is the play of brightness sattva, activity rajas and darkness tamas alternating. Do not regret the tamas, but when sattva comes into play hold on to it fast and make the best of it. Disciple, what is the heart? Answer, it is the seat if such could be said of it of the self. Disciple, is it the physical heart? Answer, no. It is the seat wherefrom my eye arises. Disciple, what becomes of the jiva after death? Answer, the question is not appropriate for a jiva now living. A disembodied jiva may ask me if convenient. In the meantime let the embodied jiva solve its present problem and find who he is. There will be an end of such doubts. Disciple, what is Diana? Answer, the word Diana usually signifies meditation on some object, whereas Nididhyasana is used for inquiry into the self. The triads persist until the self is realized. Diana and Nididhyasana are the same so far as the aspirant is concerned, because they involve trinity and are synonymous with bhakti. Disciple, how should Diana be practiced? Answer, Diana serves to concentrate the mind. The predominant idea keeps off all others. Diana varies according to the individual. It may be on an aspect of God, on a mantra, or on the self, etc. 15th, June, 19, 
135 Talk 53 A young man, Mr. Knowles, came for Darson. He had read Paul Brunton's two books. He asked, The Buddhists say that I is unreal, whereas Paul Brunton in The Secret Path tells us to get over the I thought and reach the state of I. Which is true. Answer, there are supposed to be two eyes, the one is lower and unreal, of which all are aware, and the other, the higher and the real, which is to be realized. You are not aware of yourself while asleep. You are aware in wakefulness, waking. You say that you are asleep, you did not know it in the deep sleep state. So then, the idea of diversity has arisen along with the body consciousness, this body consciousness arose at some particular moment. It has origin and end. What originates must be something. What is that something? It is the I consciousness. Who am I? Whence am I? On finding the source, you realize the state of absolute consciousness. Disciple, who is this I? It seems to be only a continuum of sense impression. The Buddhist idea seems to be so too. Answer, the world is not external. The impressions cannot have an outer origin. Because the world can be cognized only by consciousness. The world does not say that it exists. It is your impression. Even so this impression is not consistent and not unbroken. In deep sleep the world is not cognized, and so it exists not for a sleeping man. Therefore, the world is the sequence of the ego. Find out the ego. Finding of its source is the final goal. Disciple, I believe that we should not inflict suffering on other lives. Should we then endure the mosquito bite and submit to it also? Answer, you do not like to suffer yourself. How can you inflict suffering on others? Just keep off mosquitoes since you suffer by their stings. Disciple, is it right that we kill other lives, for example mosquitoes, bugs? Answer, everyone is a suicide. The eternal, blissful, and natural state has been smothered by this life of ignorance. In this way the present life is due to the killing of the eternal, pristine being. Is it not a case of suicide? So then, everyone is a suicide. Why worry about murders and killing? In the course of a later talk, the visitor said, The world sends impressions and I awake. Answer, can the world exist without someone to perceive it? Which is prior? The being consciousness or the rising consciousness? The being consciousness is always there, eternal and pure. The rising consciousness rises forth and disappears. It is transient. Disciple, does not the world exist for others even when I am asleep? Answer, such a world mocks at you also for knowing it without knowing yourself. The world is the result of your mind. Know your mind. Then see the world you will realize that it is not different from the self. Disciple, is not Maharshi aware of himself and his surroundings as clearly as I am? Answer, to whom is the doubt? The doubts are not for the realized. They are only for the ignorant. 16th June 1935 Talk 54 an Andhra Pandit and elderly gentleman had some doubts regarding Kavikantha's exposition of Advaita. He has found it in books that Brahman is free from Sajatiya, Vijitiya and Swagatabeta. Such conditions are satisfied in Vivartavada but not in Paranamavada. In the latter Swagatabeta is bound to be. The master pointed out that Dakshinamurti did not teach anything of the kind. He did not say that Brahman is related to Sakti or not related. All that was was only silence and the doubts of the Sishya's disciples were cleared. The significance is that there is nothing to be learned, discussed and concluded. Everyone knows I am. There is the confusion that the I is the body. Because the I arises from the Absolute and gives rise to Buddhi intellect. 
In Bhuti the eye looks the size and shape of the body, na medheya means that Brahman cannot be apprehended by Bhuti. Brahman right arrow aham, I I right arrow Bhuti intellect. How can such Bhuti crossing over aham discover Brahman? It is impossible. Just get over the false conception of the eye being the body. Discover to whom the thoughts arise. If the present Ines vanishes, the discovery is complete. What remains over is the pure self. Compare deep sleep and wakefulness. Diversity and body are found only in the latter. In the former the self remains without the perception of body or of the world. Happiness reigns there. The Srivakya, Aham Brahmasmi relates to the state and not the mode of mind. One cannot become Brahman by continuing to repeat the mantra. It means that Brahman is not elsewhere. It is yourself. Find that self. Brahman is found. Do not attempt to reach Brahman as if it were in some far-off place. The Pandit remarked that thoughts are so persistent that the Aham cannot be reached. The Master said, The Brahma Akaravriti helps to turn the mind away from other thoughts. Either some such practice is necessary or association with sadhus should be made. The sadhu has already overcome the mind and remains in peace. His proximity helps to bring about such condition in others. Otherwise there is no meaning in seeking a sadhu's company. Dehoaham I am the body is limitation and is the root of all mean and selfish actions and desires. Rama, aham, I am Brahman is passing beyond limitation and signifies sympathy, charity, love etc. which are divine and virtuous. Disciple, how does a grihast, a householder fare in the scheme of moksha liberation? Answer, why do you think you are a grihasta? If you go out as a sannyasi, a similar thought that you are a sannyasi will haunt you. Whether you continue in the household or renounce it and go to the forest, your mind haunts you. The ego is the source of thoughts. It creates the body and the world and makes you think you are a grehasta. If you renounce the world, it will only substitute the thought sannyasi for grehasta and the environments of the forest for those of the household. But the mental obstacles are always there. They even increase in new surroundings. There is no help in the change of environment. The obstacle is the mind. It must be got over whether at home or in the forest. If you can do it in the forest, why not in the home? Therefore, why change the environment? Your efforts can be made even now in whatever environment you may be. The environment never abandons you according to your desire. Look at me. I left home. Look at yourselves. You have come here leaving the home environment. What do you find here? Is this different from what you left? Even if one is immersed in Nirvikalpa Samadhi for years together, when he emerges from it he will find himself in the environment which he is bound to have. That is the reason for the Acharya emphasizing Sahaja Samadhi in preference to Nirvikalpa Samadhi in his excellent work Viveka Chudamani. One should be in spontaneous samadhi that is, in one's pristine state in the midst of every environment. Later on Sri Bhagavan said, Control of breath may be internal or external. The antapranayama, the internal breath regulation, is as follows Naham Chinta, I am not. The body idea is Richaka, exhalation. Koham, who am I? Is Piraka, inhalation. So hum I am he is kumhoka retention of breath. Doing thus the breath becomes automatically controlled. But he pranayama external control is for one not endowed with strength to control the mind. There is no way so sure as that or a sadhu's company. The external practice must be resorted to by a wise man if he does not enjoy a sadhu's company. If in a sad whose company, the sad who provides the needed strength, though unseen by others, pranayama need not be exactly as described in Hatha Yoga. 
if engaged in japa, dhyana, bhakti, etc., just a little control of breath will suffice to control the mind. The mind is the rider and the breath the horse. Pranayama is a check on the horse. By that check the rider is checked. Pranayama may be done just a little. To watch the breath is one way of doing it. The mind abstracted from other activities is engaged in watching the breath. That controls the breath, and in its turn the mind is controlled. If unable to do so, Ritraka and Paraka need not be practiced. Breath may be retained a short while in Japa, Dhyana, etc. Then two good results will follow. 18th June 1935 Talk 55 Disciple can Advaita be realized by japa of holy names, say Rama, Krishna, etc.? Answer, yes. Disciple, is it not a means of an inferior order? Answer, have you been told to make japa or to discuss its order in the scheme of things? Silence. 22nd, June 1935, Talk 56. A youth of twenty asked how to realize the self. He sat down in silence and waited more than an hour, and then was about to leave. While doing so he asked, Disciple, how to realize self? Answer, whose self? Find out. Disciple, who am I? Answer, find it yourself. Disciple, I do not know. Answer, think. Who is it that says I do not know? What is not known? In that statement, who is the I? Disciple, somebody in me. Answer, who is the somebody? In whom? Disciple, maybe some power. Answer, find it. Disciple, how to realize Brahman? Answer, without knowing the self, why do you seek to know Brahman? Disciple, the Sastras say Brahman pervades all in me too. Answer, find the I in me and then there will be time to think of Brahman. Disciple, why was I born? Answer, who was born? The answer is the same for all of your questions. Disciple, who am I then? Answer, smiling, have you come to examine me and ask me? You must say who you are. Disciple, in deep sleep the soul leaves the body and remains elsewhere. When it re-enters I awake. Is it so? Answer, what is it that leaves the body? Disciple, the power perhaps. Answer, find out the power. Disciple, the body is composed of five elements. What are the elements? Answer, without knowing the self, how do you aim at knowing the elements? The young man sat a while and left with permission. The master remarked later, All right, it will work. 23rd June 1935, Talk 57 Sri Bhagavan said that Sushumna is the name mostly mentioned in scriptures. Other names also occur, for example, Para, Atma, Amrita. It is also stated that Sushumna becomes Lina merged in Para. So it may be said that para is the terminology of jhana, whereas sushamna is that of yoga. 24th June 1935 A doubt in Sri Ramana Gita, Answer Chapter Roman 14, Stanza 10 reads, With yet further progress, invisibility also may result. Such in one being pure consciousness only flourishes as a siddha. Chapter Roman 18, last stanza reads, The glory of the Siddhis is past imagination. They are equal to Siva, yea Siva himself, in being able to grant boons. The meaning is that with self-realization, real and incessant tapas results. With the maturing of such tapas some jhanis can make their bodies intangible and invisible. They are known as siddhas. Later, the greatness of the Siddhas is incomprehensible. They are equal to Siva and can even grant boons. So said Sri Bhagavan. There is an Upanishad mantra, Atmaj, Nam Hirchai. 
in Buddhakama one desirous of liberation or wealth must serve a self-realized sage. Here is no mention of seta for granting boons. The jani can do so. The mantras again swim a himni pratishtita abiding in his own grandeur and in tam brahma brahman is infinite will seem confounding when read with the slokas cited above. Sarvam kalvadam brahma all this is brahman. Brahmavid brahmaiva bhavati the knower of brahman becomes brahman itself show that a jani is sarvajina all knower. What then is the distinction between the jani and the siddha? and the ability of the latter to grant boons, implying the absence of it in the former. This was the doubt. The master explained. The Gita questions were asked in a certain spirit. The answers were according to it. People look to the body only and they want siddhis also. With self-realization no powers can extend even into it, and how can they extend beyond? People anxious for siddhis are not content with their idea of jhana and so want siddhis associated with it. They are likely to neglect the supreme happiness of jhana and aspire for siddhis. For this they are going through the by lanes instead of the royal path and so will likely lose their way. In order to guide them aright and keep them on the royal road alone the siddhis are said to accompany jhana. In fact jhana comprises all, and a jhani will not waste even a thought on them. Let the people get jhana and then seek siddhis if they so desire. I have said sarira samshreya siddhiya the siddhis relate to the body because their outlook is concerning the body. A jhani and siddha are not different. In verinditum to bestow boons the boons include atmalabha the gain of self also. The siddhis are not merely of an inferior order, but of the highest order. The sastras are meant to suit varying conditions. Their spirit remains the same. In Halasya Mahima, there is a chapter on the eightfold siddhis. There Siva says that his back to never wastes a thought on them. Again Siva says that he never grants boons. The desires of the devotees are fulfilled according to their prerabdha only. When Iswara himself says so, what of others? In order to display siddhis there must be others to recognize them. That means there is no jhana in the one who displays them. Therefore siddhis are not worthy of any thought. Jhana alone is to be aimed at and gained. Sri Ramana Gita Chapter Romans 17 Verse 4 Translation in Tamil is inaccurate. Sri Bhagavan pointed out the inaccuracy and corrected it. Vaitharbha's question was, In practice the thoughts are found to manifest and subside alternately. Is this jhana? Sri Bhagavan explained the doubt as follows. Some people think that there are different stages in jhana. The self is nitya paraksha, in other words, ever realized, knowingly or unknowingly. Esravana, they argue, should therefore be a paraksha, jhana directly experienced and not paraksha, jhana indirect knowledge. The jhana should result in dukkha nivriti loss of misery whereas esravana alone does not bring it about. Therefore they say, though a paraksha, it is not unshaken, the rising of vasanas is the cause of its being weak not unchanging. When the vasanas are removed, jhana becomes unshaken and bears fruit. Others say asravana is only paraksha, jhana. By manana reflection it becomes a paraksha spasmodically. The obstruction to its continuity is the vasanas, they rise up with reinforced vigor after manana. They must be held in check. Such vigilance consists in remembering equals I am not the body and adhering to the apariksha and abhava direct experience which has been had in course of manana reflection. Such practice is called sana and eradicates the vasanas. Then dawns the sahaja state. That is jhana, sure. The apariksha in manana cannot affect dukkha nivriti loss of misery and cannot amount to moksha. In other words, 
release from bondage because the Visayanas periodically overpower the jhana. Hence it is Idrita weak and becomes firm after the Visayanas have been eradicated by Nididhya Sana one-pointedness. Sri Ramana Gita again. Mr. Ayer, a devotee, was speaking of the chakra Sri Bhagavan said. Atman the self alone is to be realized. Its realization holds all else in its compass. Sakti Ganapati Siddhis etc. are included in it. Those who speak of these have not realized the Atman. Atman is in the heart and is the heart itself. The manifestation is in the brain. The passage from the heart to the brain might be considered to be through sushumna or a nerve with any other name. The Upanishad say paralina meaning that sushumna or such nadis are all comprised in para, in other words the atmanadi. The yogis say that the current rising up to sahasrara brain ends there. That experience is not complete. For jhana they must come to the heart. Hridaya heart is the alpha and omega. 4th July 1935. Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Talk 58. Mr. Ranghanathan. In Srimad Bhagavad Gita there is a passage. One's own dharma is the best, and alien dharma is full of risks. What is the significance of one's own dharma? Answer. It is usually interpreted to mean the duties of the orders and of the different castes. The physical environment must also be taken into consideration. Disciple, if Arnasrama Dharma be meant, such Dharma prevails only in India. On the other hand, the Gita should be universally applicable. Answer, there is Varnasrama in some form or other in every land. The significance is that one should hold on to this single Atman and not swerve therefrom. That is the whole gist of it. Tva equals one's own, in other words, of the self of the Atman. Para equals the others, in other words, of the non-self of the Anama. Atma Dharma is inherence in the self. There will be no distraction and no fear. Troubles arise only when there is a second to one's self. If the Atman be realized be only unitary, there is no second and therefore no cause for fear. The man as he is now confounds the anatma non-self dharma with atma the self dharma and suffers. Let him know the self and abide in it. There is an end of fear and there are no doubts. Even if interpreted as varnasrama dharma the significance is only this much. Such dharma bears fruit only when done selflessly. That is, one must realize that he is not the doer but that he is only a tool of some higher power. Let the higher power do what is inevitable and let me act only according to its dictates. The actions are not mine. Therefore the result of the actions cannot be mine. If one thinks and acts so, where is the trouble? Be it Varnas Rama Dharma or Lokaka Dharma worldly activities, it is immaterial. Finally it amounts to this. Sva equals Atmana of the Self. Para equals Anatmana of the Non-Self. Such doubts are natural. The orthodox interpretation cannot be reconciled with the life of a modern man obliged to work for his livelihood in different capacities. A man from Pandi interposed. Sarvadharma and Paratyajya Mamikam Saranam Vraja leaving all duties surrender to me only. Sri Bhagavan. All sarva is only anatmana of the non-self. The emphasis is on ekam only. To the man who has strong hold of the ekka one where are the dharmas? It means be sunk in the self. Disciple, the Gita was taught for action. Answer, what does the Gita say? Arjuna refused to fight. Krishna said, so long as you refuse to fight, you have the sense of doership. Who are you to refrain or to act? Give up the notion of doership. Until that sense disappears you are bound to act. You are being manipulated by a higher power. You are admitting it by your own refusal to submit to it. Instead recognize the power and submit as a tool. 
or to put it differently, if you refuse you will be forcibly drawn into it. Instead of being an unwilling worker, be a willing one. Rather, be fixed in the self and act according to nature without the thought of doership. Then the results of action will not affect you. That is manliness and heroism. Thus inherence in the self is the sum and substance of Gita teaching. Finally, the master himself added, If a man be established in the self, these doubts would not arise. They arise only until he is established there. Disciple, then of what use is such reply to the inquirer? Answer, the words still have force and will surely operate in due course. Talk 59 Amulvi asked, How does sleep overtake one? Answer, If the inquirer knows who is awake in the wakeful condition he will also know how sleep comes on. The inquiry arises only to the waking man and not to the sleeper. It must be easier to know the waking self than the sleeping self. Disciple, I know how I awoke. But I do not know how sleep comes on. I am aware of my wakeful state. For instance, if anyone takes away my stick, I prevent his doing so, whereas I cannot do so in sleep or in dream. The proof of wakefulness is evident. But what is the proof of sleep? Answer, your ignorance is the evidence of sleep, your awareness is that of wakefulness. Disciple, my wakefulness is known by the opening of my eye. But how does sleep overtake me? Answer, in the same way as sleep overtakes you, wakefulness also overtakes you. Disciple, but I do not perceive how sleep comes on in the same way as I know my wakefulness. Answer, never mind. Disciple, please describe what is sleep without illustrations. Sleep by itself should be known. I want a real picture of sleep. Answer, such picture is sleep itself. Disciple, is it better to reach salvation being married or being a hermit? Answer, whatever you think better. Disciple, Visphamitra had no fall when in the married state, whereas he had a fall in his hermit life. Does it not apply to others also? Answer, Visphamitra was as pure in the hermit life as when he was married. There was no difference. He was as contaminated when married as when he was a hermit. Disciple, was he a Rishi? Answer, when contaminated he was not a Rishi. Disciple, can he become a Rishi even afterwards? Answer, yes. By proper bhakti he could become a good Rishi. Repentance and prayer will set him right. Disciple, with all your penance for so many years what have you got? Answer, I have got what need be got. I see what need be seen. Disciple, can all see the same? Answer, I see only just what all do. It is immanent in all. Disciple, is this the way for seeing it? Answer, method may be anything. From whatever directions the pilgrims may foregather, they must enter the Kaaba only by one road passage or all gather only to enter the Kaaba. Disciple, Please tell me two you paid says on the way to salvation as known by you. Answer, what you paid so do I know? Everything is you paid so. Worship of God is the only you paid so. 5th July, 1935 on Mount of Silence Talk 60. 3 Bhagavan. The silence of solitude is forced. Restrained speech in society amounts to silence. For the man then controls his speech. Seeker must come forth before he speaks. If engaged otherwise speech is restrained. Introverted mind is otherwise active and is not anxious to speak. Mauna as a disciplinary measure is meant for limiting the mental activities due to speech. If the mind is otherwise controlled disciplinary mauna is unnecessary. For mauna becomes natural. The Dharanya has said that twelve years forced mauna brings about absolute mauna that is, makes one unable to speak. It is more like a mute animal than otherwise. That is not mauna. Mauna is constant speech. 
Inactivity is constant activity. 6 July, 19, 135, Talk 61. Mr. Akinatha Rao. How is Diana practiced with eyes open or closed? Answer, it may be done either way. The point is that the mind must be introverted and kept active in its pursuit. Sometimes it happens that when the eyes are closed the latent thoughts rush forth with great vigor. It may also be difficult to introvert the mind with the eyes open. It requires strength of mind to do so. The mind is contaminated when it takes in objects. Otherwise it is pure. The main factor in Diana is to keep the mind active in its own pursuit without taking in external impressions or thinking of other matters. Talk 62. Mr. Ekanatha Rao. What is Firana a kind of indescribable but palpable sensation in the heart center? Answer, Sphirana is felt on several occasions, such as in fear, excitement, etc. Although it is always and all over, yet it is felt at a particular center and on particular occasions. It is also associated with antecedent causes and confounded with the body. Whereas it is all alone and pure, it is the self. If the mind be fixed on the sphirana and one senses it continuously and automatically, it is realization. Again, sphirana is the foretaste of realization. It is pure. The subject and object proceed from it. If the man mistakes himself for the subject, objects must necessarily appear different from him. They are periodically withdrawn and projected, creating the world and the subject's enjoyment of the same. If, on the other hand, the man feels himself to be the screen on which the subject and object are projected, there can be no confusion, and he can remain watching their appearance and disappearance without any perturbation to the self. Talk 63. A high officer asked, if juniors are promoted over oneself, the mind is perturbed. Will the inquiry, Who am I, help the man to soothe the mind under such circumstances? Answer, Yes. Quite so. The inquiry, Who am I, turns the mind inward and makes it calm. Disciple, I have faith in Murdy Diana worship of form. Will it not help me to gain jhana? Answer, Surely it will. Upasana helps concentration of mind. Then the mind is free from other thoughts and is full of the meditated form. The mind becomes it and thus quite pure. Then think who is the worshipper. The answer is I, in other words, the self. So the self is gained ultimately. The present difficulty is that the man thinks that he is the doer. But it is a mistake. It is the higher power which does everything and the man is only a tool. If he accepts that position he is free from troubles, otherwise he courts them. Take for instance, the figure in a Gopram temple tower, where it is made to appear to bear the burden of the tower on its shoulders. Its posture and look are a picture of great strain while bearing the very heavy burden of the tower. But think. The tower is built on the earth and it rests on its foundations. The figure like Atlas bearing the earth is a part of the tower, but is made to look as if it bore the tower. Is it not funny? So is the man who takes on himself the sense of doing. Then the Malayalam version of Aladu Narpadi was read out by a devotee for the benefit of the visitor. After hearing it he asked, what about the reference to duality in practice and unity at the end? Answer, some people think that one must begin practice with dualistic idea. It refers to them. They say that there is God. The man must worship and meditate. Ultimately the jiva merges into God. Others say that the supreme being and the jiva are always separate and never merge into each other. Howsoever it may be at the end, let us not trouble ourselves about it now. All are agreed that the jiva is. Let the man find out the jiva, in other words, his self. 
then there will be time to find out if the self should merge in the Supreme, is a part thereof or remains different from it. Let us not forestall the conclusion. Keep an open mind, dive within and find out the self. The truth will itself dawn upon you. Why should you determine beforehand if the finality is unity absolute or qualified or duality? There is no meaning in it. The ascertainment is now made by logic and by intellect. The intellect arrives light from the self the higher power. How can the reflected and partial light of the intellect envisage the whole and the original light? The intellect cannot reach the self and how can it ascertain its nature? Such is the significance of the reference. Disciple, one of the stanzas says that the scriptures so scrupulously studied in the earlier stages are ultimately of no use. At what stage do they become useless? Answer, when their essence is realized. The scriptures are useful to indicate the existence of the higher power the self and the way to gain it. Their essence is that much only. When that is assimilated the rest is useless. But they are voluminous adapted to the development of the seeker. As one rising up in the scale finds the regions one has passed to be only steps to the higher stage, and so on, the steps ascended become purva paksha successively until the goal is gained. When the goal is reached it remains alone, and all the rest becomes useless. That is how the sastras become useless. We read so much. Do we remember all that we read? But have we forgotten the essentials? The essential soaks in the mind, and the rest is forgotten. So it is with the sastras. The fact is that the man considers himself limited, and there arises the trouble. The idea is wrong. He can see it for himself. In sleep there was no world, no ego, no limited self, and no trouble. Something wakes up from that happy state and says I. To that ego the world appears. Being a speck in the world he wants more and gets into trouble. How happy he was before the rising of the ego. Only the rise of the ego is the cause of the present trouble. Let him trace the ego to its source and he will reach that undifferentiated happy state which is sleepless sleep. The self remains ever the same here and now. There is nothing more to be gained. Because the limitations have wrongly been assumed there is the need to transcend them. It is like the ten ignorant fools who forded a stream and on reaching the other shore counted themselves to be nine only. They grew anxious and grieved over the loss of the unknown tenth man. A wayfarer on ascertaining the cause of their grief counted them all and found them to be ten. But each one of them had counted the others leaving himself out. The wayfarer gave each in succession a blow telling them to count the blows. They counted ten and were satisfied. The moral is that the tenth man was not God anew. He was all along there but ignorance caused grief to all of them. Again, a woman wore a necklace round her neck but forgot it. She began to search for it and made inquiries. A friend of hers, finding out what she was looking for, pointed out the necklace round the seeker's neck. She felt it with her hands and was happy. Did she get the necklace anew? Here again ignorance caused grief and knowledge happiness. Similarly also with the man and the self. There is nothing to be gained anew. Ignorance of the self is the cause of the present misery. Knowledge of the self brings about happiness. Moreover, if anything is to be got anew, it implies its previous absence. What remained once absent might vanish again. So there would be no permanency in salvation. Salvation is permanent because the self is here and now and eternal. Thus the man's efforts are directed towards the removal of ignorance. Wisdom seems to dawn, though it is natural and ever-present. The visitor while taking leave saluted the master and said, It is said that the victim in the tiger's mouth is gone forever. The reference is to a passage in Who Am I, 
where it is stated that a disciple can never revert to the world after he has once fallen into the field of the Guru's gracious look as surely as the prey in the tiger's jaws cannot escape. Talk 64. News of someone's death was brought to Sri Bhagavan. He said good. The dead are indeed happy. They have got rid of the troublesome overgrowth of body. The dead man does not grieve. The survivors grieve for the man who is dead. Do men fear sleep? On the contrary sleep is courted, and on waking up every man says that he slept happily. One prepares the bed for sound sleep. Sleep is temporary death. Death is longer sleep. If the man dies while yet alive he need not grieve over others' death. One's existence is evident with or without the body, as in waking, dream and sleep. Then, why should one desire continuance of the bodily shackles? Let the man find out his undying self and die and be immortal and happy. 13th July 1935 Talk 65 A visitor, is the jagged world perceived even after self-realization? Answer from whom is this question? Is it from a Johnny or from an odd Johnny? Disciple, from an odd Johnny. Answer, realize to whom the question arises. It can be answered if it arises after knowing the doubter. Can a jagat or the body say that it is? Or does the seer say that the jagat or the body is? The seer must be there to see the objects. Find out the seer first. Why worry yourself now with what will be in the hereafter? Sri Bhagavan continued. What does it matter if the jagat is perceived or not perceived? Have you lost anything by your perception of jagat now? Or do you gain anything where there is no such perception in your deep sleep? It is immaterial whether the world is perceived or not perceived. The Ajani sees the Jani active and is confounded. The Jagat is perceived by both, but their outlooks differ. Take the instance of the cinema. There are pictures moving on the screen. Go and hold them. What do you hold? It is only the screen. Let the pictures disappear. What remains over? The screen again. So also here. Even when the world appears, see to whom it appears. Hold the substratum of the eye. After the substratum is held, what does it matter if the world appears or disappears? The odd Johnny takes the world to be real, whereas the Johnny sees it only as the manifestation of the self. It is immaterial if the self manifests itself or ceases to do so. 15th July 19 135 Talk 66 A letter was received containing some learned questions pertaining to memory, sleep and death. It looked at first sight that they were cogent yet baffling to answer. But when the master was approached on the subject he disentangled the skein very nicely, pointing out that all such confusion was due to the non-differentiation of the real eye from the false eye. The attributes and modes pertain to the latter and not to the former. One's efforts are directed only to remove one's ignorance. Afterwards they cease, and the real self is found to be always there. No effort is needed to remain as the self. 21st July 1935 Talk 67 A visitor Mr. Ayer of the South Indian Railway said, There is a trifling halting place in my meditation. When I ask myself who am I, my reasoning proceeds as follows. I see my hand. Who sees it? My eye. How to see the eye? In a mirror. Similarly to see me there must be a mirror. Which is to supply the place of the mirror in me? Is my question. Answer. Then why do you inquire, who am I, why do you say you are troubled and so on? You could as well remain quiet. Why do you rise out of your composure? Disciple, inquiring thus helps me to concentrate. Is concentration the only benefit? Answer, what more do you want? Concentration is the thing. 
What makes you come out of your quiet? Disciple, because I am drawn out. Answer, inquiry of who am I means finding the source of I. When that is found, that which you seek is accomplished. The gist of Sri Bhagavan's word seems to be that one should make a concerted effort and not give it up baffled, with a defeatist mentality. Talk 68. Dr. Radha Kamal Mukherjee, a well-known professor, fair man of middle age with a peaceful look practicing yoga or meditation, has had some occult experiences and desires the mystery to be unraveled by the master. He has written a book and had it published by Messrs. Lawman's Green & Co. London. He finds self-realization hard to attain and requires the master's help. His question. The Upanishadic method of meditation has now disappeared. There was a great sage in Bengal who instructed me in it. After long years of discipline and practice I am having some mystic experiences. I feel sometimes that Bhuma's supreme consciousness is infinitude and that I am finite consciousness. Is that correct? Answer, Bhuma perfection alone is. It is infinite. There arises from it this finite consciousness taking on a new pad he limiting adjunct. This is a pasa or reflection. Merge this individual consciousness into the supreme one. That is what should be done. Disciple, Bhuma is an attribute of supreme consciousness. Answer, Bhuma is the supreme where one does not see any other, hears nothing, it is perfection. It is indefinable and indescribable. It is as it is. Disciple, there is a vastness experienced. Probably it is just below Bhuma but close to it. Am I right? Answer. Boom alone is. Nothing else. It is the mind which says all this. Disciple. Transcending the mind I feel the vastness. Answer. Yes, yes. The professor turned to the lady seated just a little further away from him and interpreted in Hindi to her. She. What is the difference between meditation and distraction? Answer, no difference. When there are thoughts, it is distraction. When there are no thoughts, it is meditation. However, meditation is only practice as distinguished from the real state of peace. She, how to practice meditation? Answer, keep off thoughts. She, how to reconcile work with meditation? Answer, who is the worker? Let him who works ask the question. You are always the self. You are not the mind. It is the mind which raises these questions. Work proceeds, always in the presence of the self only. Work is no hindrance to realization. It is the mistaken identity of the worker that troubles one. Get rid of the false identity. The professor is not the state of non-consciousness close to infinite consciousness? Answer. Consciousness alone remains and nothing more. Disciple. Sri Bhagavan's silence is itself a powerful force. It brings about a certain peace of mind in us. Answer. Silence is never-ending speech. Vocal speech obstructs the other speech of silence. In silence one is in intimate contact with the surroundings. The silence of Dakshin Amrity removed the doubts of the four sages. Truth expounded by silence. Silence is said to be exposition. Silence is so potent. For vocal speech organs of speech are necessary and they precede speech. But the other speech lies even beyond thought. It is in short transcendent speech or unspoken words paravac. Disciple, is there knowledge and realization? Answer, absence of knowledge is sleep. There is knowledge and realization. But this knowledge differs from the ordinary one of the relation of subject and object. It is absolute knowledge. Knowledge has two meanings. One, 
Vakyartha equals Vritti equals literal meaning. 2. Lakshartha equals Jhana equals Self equals Swarupa equals Secondary significance. Disciple, with Vritti one sees knowledge. Answer, quite so he also confounds Vritti with knowledge. Vritti is a mode of mind. You are not the mind. You are beyond it. The lady. There is sometimes an irresistible desire to remain in Brahmakar Vritti. Answer, it is good. It must be cultivated until it becomes Sahaja natural. Then it culminates as Swarupa, one's own self. Later Sri Bhagavan explained, Vritti is often mistaken for consciousness. It is only a phenomenon and operates in the region of Abhasa reflected consciousness. The knowledge lies beyond relative knowledge and ignorance. It is not in the shape of Vritti. There are no subject and object in it. Vritti belongs to the Rajasic active mind. The sattvic mind mind is repose is free from it. The sattvic is the witness of the rajasic. It is no doubt true consciousness. Still it is called sattvic mind because the knowledge of being witness is the function of abhasa reflected consciousness only. Mind is the abhasa. Such knowledge implies mind. But the mind is by itself inoperative. Therefore it is called sattvic mind. Such is the Jivan Mukta's state. It is also said that his mind is dead. Is it not a paradox that a Jivan Mukta has a mind and that it is dead? This has to be conceded in argument with ignorant folk. It is also said that Brahman is only the Jivan Mukta's mind. How can one speak of him as Brahmavid knower of Brahman? Brahman can never be an object to be known. This is, however, in accordance with common parlance. Savic mind is surmised of the Jivan Mukta and of Iswara. Otherwise, they argue, how does the Jivan Mukta live and act? The Savic mind has to be admitted as a concession to argument. The Savic mind is in fact the absolute consciousness. The object to be witnessed and the witness finally merge together and absolute consciousness alone reigns supreme. It is not a state of sanya blank or ignorance. It is the Swarupa real self. Some say that mind arises from consciousness followed by reflection apasa. Others say that the apasa reflection arises first followed by the mind. In fact both are simultaneous. The professor asks Sri Bhagavan to extend his grace to him, although he would soon be a thousand miles off. Sri Bhagavan said that time and space are only concepts of mind. The Farupa the real self lies beyond mind, time and space. Distance does not count in the self. The lady with him was most reluctant to leave the master and return home. The master said, think that you are always in my presence. That will make you feel right. They left after dusk. Talk 69. There were reports of the above said professor's university lectures in the Hindu. The lecture had emphasized the necessity for birth control and discussed the various possibilities of making the man feel his responsibilities so that birth control might be automatic. The master on hearing it casually remarked, Let them find out the method of dying. Here death refers to that of the ego ahankar. 24th July 1935 Talk 70 Sri Raju Sastragal asked Sri Bhagavan about Nada, Bindu and Kala. Answer. They are in Vedanta terminology prana, mana, buddhi the life, current, mind and intellect. In the Tantras Nada is said to be subtle sound with Taj's light in it. This light is said to be the body of Seva. When it develops and sound is submerged, it becomes Bindu. To be full of light Tejamaya is the aim. Kala is a part of the Bindu. Talk 71. Chronological sequence of the Masters stay in different places at Turavanamalai, 1896. 
arrived at Turvana Malai and stayed in the temple premises beneath the tree in the interior of the underground cellar, Pathala Lingam, sometimes in the Gopurams, etc. 1897 early, removed to Giramurtam. Stayed in the shrine and in the adjoining mango grove 18 months. 1898 September in Pavalakanru. 1899 February on the hill in caves, the Mango Tree Cave and Virupaksha Cave. 1905. Stayed in Pashman Coil for six months during the plague ravages. Again on the hill. 1908. January, February, and March in Pashman Coil. Again on the hill. 1916. Skandas Ramam. 1922. The Raman Asramam site on the southern slope of the hill. 25th September 1935. Talk. 72. Mr. Ayer, a railway officer, asked about Japa. Answer. The utterance and then remembrance and later meditation are the successive stages finally ending in involuntary and eternal Japa. The Japa Karta doer of Japa of that kind is the self. Of all the Japas who am I is the best. 27th September 1935 Talk 73 Mr. Akanatha Rao the engineer asked, What about the despondency of not obtaining any encouragement from the Master much less His Grace? Answer, it is ignorance only. The quest must be made as to who is despondent and so on. It is the phantom of the ego arising after sleep which falls a prey to such thoughts. In deep sleep the person was not afflicted. Who is afflicted now while awake? The sleep state is about the normal one. Let him search and find out. Disciple. But there is no incentive for want of encouragement. Answer. Does not one find some kind of peace while in meditation? That is the sign of progress. That peace will be deeper and more prolonged with continued practice. It will also lead to the goal. Bhagavad Gita chapter Roman 14 the final verses speak of Ganatita one who has transcended the Guinness. That is the final stage. The earlier stages are Asada, Sava, impure being, Misra Sava mixed being and Sutta Sava pure being. Of these the impure being is when overpowered by Rajas and Tamas. The mixed being is that state in which the being Sava asserts itself spasmodically. The Sutta Sava overpowers Rajas and Tamas. After these successive stages there comes the state transcending Gunas. Talk 74 Mr. Fridman, the engineer, writes in one of his letters, Maharshi is with me not only when I think of him, but also when I am not thinking of him. Otherwise, how do I live? Talk 75. Mr. Grant Duff, formerly in a foreign embassy, writes, Pay my respects to Maharshi. He appears to me in my thoughts not only as an answer to my questions, but also as presence. 29th September 1935 Talk 76 Mr. Ayer said that he was not convinced how spiritual life could be reconciled to worldly activities. The Master in answer cited some verses from Yoga Vasishta. The original is said to be millions of verses, of which only 32,000 stanzas are now found in the Sanskrit text. It was condensed to 6,000 and called Lagkuvasishta. The latter has been rendered in Tamil in 2,050 stanzas. Disciple, without the mind concentrating on it, the work cannot be performed satisfactorily. How is the mind to be spiritually disposed and the work kept going as well? Answer, the mind is only a projection from the self, appearing in the waking state. In deep sleep, you do not say whose son you are and so on. As soon as you wake up you say you are so and so, and recognize the world and so on. 
The world is only laka. Laka equals laki edi laka. What is perceived is the world. That which is seen is laka or the world, which is the eye that sees it. That is the ego which rises and sinks periodically. But you exist always. Therefore, that which lies beyond the ego is consciousness, the self. In deep sleep, mind is merged and not destroyed. That which merges reappears. It may happen in meditation also, but the mind which is destroyed cannot reappear. The yogi's aim must be to destroy it and not to sink in leya. In the peace of dhyana, leya ensues, but it is not enough. It must be supplemented by other practices for destroying the mind. Some people have gone into samadhi with a trifling thought, and after a long time awakened in the trail of the same thought. In the meantime, generations have passed away in the world. Such a yogi has not destroyed his mind. Its destruction is the non-recognition of it as being apart from the self. Even now, the mind is not. Recognize it. How can you do it if not in everyday activities? They go on automatically. Know that the mind promoting them is not real, but a phantom proceeding from the self. That is how the mind is destroyed. Talk seventy-seven. The master, while referring to the Bible for "Be still and know that I am God," Psalm forty-six, found in the Ecclesiastes. There is one alone, and there is no second. And the wise man's heart is at the right hand, and a fool's heart is at the left. Talk seventy-eight. A man from Masala asked the master, "How to realize the self?" Answer: Every one has experience of the self every moment of his life. Disciple: But the self is not realized as one would like. Answer: Yes. The present experience is viparita, different from real. What is not is confounded with what is. Disciple, how to find the atman? Answer: There is no investigation into the atman. The investigation can only be into the non-self. Elimination of the non-self is alone possible. The self, being always self-evident, will shine forth of itself. The self is called by different names: Atman, God, Kundalini, Mantra, etc. Hold any one of them, and the self becomes manifest. God is no other than the self. Kundalini is now showing forth as the mind. When the mind is traced to its source, it is Kundalini. Mantra Japa leads to elimination of other thoughts and to concentration on the mantra. The mantra finally merges into the self and shines forth as the self. Disciple, how long is a guru necessary for self-realization? Answer: Guru is necessary so long as there is the lagu. Pun on guru equals heavy, lagu equals light. Lagu is due to the self-imposed but wrong limitation of the self. God, on being worshipped, bestows steadiness and devotion, which leads to surrender. On the devotee surrendering, God shows His mercy by manifesting as the Guru. The Guru, otherwise God, guides the devotee, saying that God is in you and He is the Self. This leads to introversion of the mind and finally to realization. Effort is necessary up to the state of realization. Even then, the self should spontaneously become evident; otherwise, happiness will not be complete. Up to that state of spontaneity, there must be effort in some form or another. Disciple, our workaday life is not compatible with such efforts. Answer: Why do you think that you are active? Take the gross example of your arrival here. You left home in a cart, took train, alighted at the railway station here. Got into a cart there and found yourself in this asramam. When asked, you say that you traveled here all the way from your town. Is it true? Is it not a fact that you remained as you were, and there were movements of conveyances all along the way? Just as those movements are confounded with your own, so also the other activities. They are not your own. They are God's activities. Disciple. 
such idea will lead to blankness of mind and the work will not progress well. Answer, go up to that blankness and tell me afterwards. Disciple, they say that a visit to sages helps self-realization. Answer, yes. So it does. Disciple, will not my present visit to you bring it about? Answer, after a short pause what is to be brought about? To whom? Consider investigate. To whom is this doubt? If the sources trace the doubt will disappear. Talk 79. An engineer asked. The animals seem to conform to their own natural laws in spite of their environment and changes. Whereas man flouts social law and is not bound by any definite system. He seems to be degenerating whereas the animals are steady. Is it not so? Answer, after a long time. The Upanishads and scriptures say that human beings are only animals unless they're realized beings. Possibly they're worse also. 3rd October 1935 Talk 80 A very devoted and simple disciple had lost his only son, a child of three years. The next day he arrived at the ashramam with his family. The master spoke with reference to the answer. Training of mind helps one to bear sorrows and bereavements with courage. But the loss of one's offspring is said to be the worst of all griefs. Grief exists only so long as one considers oneself to be of a definite form. If the form is transcended one will know that the oneself is eternal. There is no death nor birth. That which is born is only the body. The body is the creation of the ego. But the ego is not ordinarily perceived without the body. It is always identified with the body. It is the thought which matters. Let the sensible man consider if he knew his body in deep sleep. Why does he feel it in the waking state? But although the body was not felt in sleep, did not the self exist then? How was he in deep sleep? How is he when awake? What is the difference? Ego rises up and that is waking. Simultaneously thoughts arise. Let him find out to whom are the thoughts. Where from do they arise? They must spring up from the conscious self. Apprehending it even vaguely helps the extinction of the ego. Thereafter the realization of the one infinite existence becomes possible. In that state there are no individuals other than the eternal existence. Hence there is no thought of death or wailing. If a man considers he is born he cannot avoid the fear of death. Let him find out if he has been born or if the self has any birth. He will discover that the self always exists, that the body which is born resolves itself into thought, and that the emergence of thought is the root of all mischief. Find where from thoughts emerge. Then you will abide in the ever-present inmost self and be free from the idea of birth or the fear of death. A disciple asked how to do it. Answer. The thoughts are only Vasana's predispositions, accumulated in innumerable births before. Their annihilation is the aim. The state free from Vasana's is the primal state and eternal state of purity. Disciple, it is not clear yet. Answer, everyone is aware of the eternal self. He sees so many dying but still believes himself eternal. Because it is the truth. Unwillingly the natural truth asserts itself. The man is deluded by the intermingling of the conscious self with the insentient body. This delusion must end. Disciple, how will it end? Answer, that which is born must end. The delusion is only concomitant with the ego. It rises up and sinks. But the reality never rises nor sinks. It remains eternal. The master who has realized says so, the disciple hears, thinks over the words and realizes the self. There are two ways of putting it. The ever-present self needs no efforts to be realized, realization is already there. 
illusion alone is to be removed. Some say the word from the mouth of the master removes it instantaneously. Others say that meditation, etc., are necessary for realization. Of the right, only the standpoints differ. Disciple, is Diana necessary? Answer, the Upanishads say that even the earth is in eternal Diana. Disciple, how does karma help it? Will it not add to the already heavy load to be removed? Answer, karma done unselfishly purifies the mind and helps to fix it in meditation. Disciple, what if one meditates incessantly without karma? Answer, try and see. The Vasanas will not let you do it. Diana comes only step by step with the gradual weakening of the Vasanas by the grace of the Master. 15th, October 19, 135 Talk, 81. Dr. Bernhard Bay, an American chemist who had interested himself in Vedanta for the last twenty years now in India, came on a visit to the Master. He asked, How is a piyasa to be made? I am trying to find the light. He himself explained a payasa as concentration equals one-pointedness of mind. The master asked what was his abhyasa till now. The visitor said he concentrated on the nasal base, but his mind wandered. Answer, is there a mind? Another devotee gently put in. The mind is only a collection of thoughts. Answer, to whom are the thoughts? If you try to locate the mind, the mind vanishes and the self alone remains. Being alone, there can be no one-pointedness or otherwise. Disciple, it is so difficult to understand this. If something concrete is said, it can be readily grasped. Japa, Diana, etc. are more concrete. Answer, who am I, is the best Japa. What could be more concrete than the self? It is within each one's experience every moment. Why should he try to catch anything outside, leaving out the self? Let each one try to find out the known self instead of searching for the unknown something beyond. Disciple, where shall I meditate on the Atman? I mean in which part of the body? Answer, the self should manifest itself. That is all that is wanted. A devotee gently added. On the right of the chest, there is the heart, the seat of the Atman. Another devotee. The illumination is in that center when the self is realized. Answer, quite so. Disciple, how to turn the mind away from the world? Answer, is there the world? I mean apart from the self? Does the world say that it exists? It is you who say that there is a world. Find out the self who says it. 16th October 1935 Talk 82 A question was raised about the differences in the various samadhis. Answer. When the senses are merged in darkness it is deep sleep. When merged in light it is samadhi. Just as a passenger when asleep in a carriage is unaware of the motion, the halting or the unharnessing of the horses, so also Ajani in Sahaja Samadhi is unaware of the happenings, waking, dream and deep sleep. Here sleep corresponds to the unharnessing of the horses. And Samadhi corresponds to the halting of the horses, because the senses are ready to act just as the horses are ready to move after halting. In Samadhi the head does not bend down because the senses are there though inactive, whereas the head bends down in sleep because the senses are merged in darkness. In Kavala Samadhi the activities vital and mental waking dream and sleep are only merged ready to emerge after regaining the state other than Samadhi. In Sahaja Samadhi the activities, vital and mental, and the three states are destroyed never to reappear. However, others notice the Johnny active, for example, eating, talking, moving, etc. He is not himself aware of these activities, whereas others are aware of his activities. They pertain to his body and not to his real self, Swarupa.
For himself, he is like the sleeping passenger, or like a child interrupted from sound sleep and fed, being unaware of it. The child says the next day that he did not take milk at all, and that he went to sleep without it. Even when reminded, he cannot be convinced. So also in Sahaja Samadhi, Sushumna Paralina. Here Sushumna refers to Tapo Marj, whereas the Paranati refers to Jana Marga. Talk 83. The Master relating some stories of the Bhaktas told how Sri Krishna served Eknath for twelve years, how Panjaranga relieved Sakubai from her home prison and enabled her to visit Pandharpur. Then he recollected the appearance of a mysterious Mulvi on his way from Madura to Turavanamalai in 1896, how he appeared, spoke and disappeared suddenly. Talk 84 Mr. Grant Duff asked the Master if any mongoose had had anything to do with him. The Master said yes. It was the occasion of Ardra and Jayanti. I was living up the hill in Skandasramam. Streams of visitors were climbing up the hill from the town of Mongoose, larger than the ordinary size of golden hue not gray as a mongoose is with no black spot on its tail as is usual with the wild mongoose, past these crowds fearlessly. People took it to be a tame one belonging to someone in the crowd. The animal went straight to Palana Swami, who was having a bath in the spring by the Virupaksha cave. He hooked the creature and patted it. It followed him into the cave, inspected every nook and corner and left the place and joined the crowd to pass up to Skandasrama. I noticed it. Everyone was struck by its attractive appearance and its fearless movements. It came up to me, got on my lap and rested there some time. Then it raised itself up, looked about and moved down. It went round the whole place and I followed it lest it should be harmed by the unwary visitors or by the peacocks. Two peacocks of the place looked at it inquisitively, whereas the mongoose moved nonchalantly from place to place and finally disappeared into the rocks on the southeast of the Asrama. Talk 85 The same gentleman asked the master about the material relation between memory and will and their relation to the mind. Answer, they are functions of the mind. The mind is the outcome of the ego and the ego is from the self. 6th November 1935 Talk 86 The Master gave the true significance of the Christian faith thus. Christ is the ego. The cross is the body. When the ego is crucified and it perishes, what survives is the absolute being God, cf. I and my Father are one and this glorious survival is called Resurrection. Talk 87 Major Chadwick, an ardent English devotee, asked, Why did Jesus call out my God? My God! While being crucified? Answer, it might have been an intercession on behalf of the two thieves who were crucified with him. Again a Johnny has attained liberation even while alive, here and now. It is immaterial as to how, where, and when he leaves his body. Some jhanis may appear to suffer, others may be in samadhi, still others may disappear from sight before death. But that makes no difference to their jhana. Such suffering is apparent only to the onlooker and not to the jhani, for he has already transcended the mistaken identity of the self with the body. Talk 88. The same gentleman asked. What is the significance of Christ in the illumination of sin? Paul? Answer. Illumination is absolute not associated with forms. After sin, Paul became self-conscious he identified the illumination with Christ consciousness. Disciple. But Paul was not a lover of Christ then. Answer. Love or hatred is immaterial. The thought of Christ was there. It is similar to Ravana's case. Christ, consciousness and self-realization are all the same. Talk 89. Maharshi, Karpura, Arati is symbolic of the burning away of the mind by the light of illumination. 
Vibhiti sacred ashes, is Siva absolute being and Kunkuma vermilion powder, is Sakti consciousness. Vibhuti is of two kinds, Paravibhuti and Aparavibhuti. The sacred ashes are of the latter class. The para is what remains over after all the dross has been burned away by the fire of realization. It is absolute being. Talk 90. Again the Trinity was explained. God the Father represents as far as God the Holy Spirit represents Atman. God the Son represents Kiru. Is Therogur at Medi Murti Beda Viba Jinviyam of Advayaptadaya Dakshinamurtainama. Meaning that God appears to his devotee in the form of a Kiru son of God and points out to him the immanence of the Holy Spirit. That is to say that God is spirit, that this spirit is immanent everywhere and that the self must be realized, which is the same as realizing God. Talk 91 a Bengali visitor asked, How is the mind controlled? Answer, What do you call the mind? Disciple, When I sit down to think of God, thoughts wander away to other objects. I want to control those thoughts. Answer, In the Bhagavad Gita, it is said that it is the nature of the mind to wander. One must bring one's thoughts to bear on God. By long practice the mind is controlled and made steady. The wavering of the mind is a weakness arising from the dissipation of its energy in the shape of thoughts. When one makes the mind stick to one thought the energy is conserved and the mind becomes stronger. Disciple, what is the meaning of the strength of the mind? Answer, its ability to concentrate on one thought without being distracted. Disciple, how is that achieved? Answer, by practice. A devotee concentrates on God, a seeker, follower of the Janamarga, seeks the self. The practice is equally difficult for both. Disciple, even if the mind is brought to bear on the search for the self, after a long struggle the mind begins to elude him and the man is not aware of the mischief until after some time. Answer, so it would be. In the earlier stages the mind reverts to the search at long intervals. With continued practice it reverts at shorter intervals until finally it does not wander at all. It is then that the dormant sakti manifests. The sapphic mind is free from thoughts whereas the rajasic mind is full of them. The sapphic mind resolves itself into the life current. Disciple. Can one keep the mind away from entering into the phase of thoughts before one experiences the current? Answer, yes the current is pre-existent. 7th November 1935 Talk 92 A visitor said, Some say that one should practice meditation on gross objects only. It may be disastrous if one constantly seeks to kill the mind. Answer, for whom is it disastrous? Can there be disaster apart from the self? Unbroken I, I is the ocean infinite, the ego I thought, remains only a bubble on it and is called jiva, in other words, individual soul. The bubble too is water, when it bursts it only mixes in the ocean. When it remains a bubble, it is still a part of the ocean. Ignorant of this simple truth, Innumerable methods under different denominations, such as yoga, bhakti, karma, each again with many modifications, are being taught with great skill and in intricate detail only to entice the seekers and confuse their minds. So also are the religions and sects and dogmas. What are they all for? Only for knowing the self. Their aids and practices required for knowing the self. Objects perceived by the senses are spoken of as immediate knowledge pratyaksha. Can anything be as direct as the self always experienced without the aid of the senses? Sense perceptions can only be indirect knowledge and not direct knowledge. Only one's own awareness is direct knowledge, as is the common experience of one and all. 
No aids are needed to know one's own self, in other words, to be aware. The one infinite, unbroken whole plenum becomes aware of itself as I. This is its original name. All other names, for example, Am, are later growths. Liberation is only to remain aware of the self. The Mahavakya I am Brahman is its authority. Though the I is always experienced, yet one's attention has to be drawn to it. Only then does knowledge dawn. Thus the need for the instruction of the Upanishads and of wise sages. 9th November 1935 Talk 93 All are aware of their own self only. Wonder of wonders. They take what is not as what is or they see the phenomena apart from the self. Only so long as there is the knower is their knowledge of all kinds direct, inferential, intellectual, etc. To the knower vanish they all vanish together with him. Their validity is of the same degree as his. Talk 94 A man prayed to the master to pardon his sins. He was told that it would be enough if he took care to see that his mind did not trouble him. 13th November 1935 Talk 95 A question was raised as follows by Major Chadwick Mr. Edward Carpenter. A certain mystic has written in a book that he had self-realization on some occasions and that its effects lasted sometimes afterwards only to be gradually lost. Whereas Sri Ramana Gita says, Grant I not equals bondage snapped once is snapped forever. In the case of this mystic, the bondage seems to have persisted even after self-realization. How can it be so? The master cited Kavalya as follows the disciple after realizing the all-shining unitary unbroken state of being, knowledge, Bliss surrendered himself to the Master and humbly prayed to know how he could repay the Master's grace. The Master said, My reward consists in your permanent unbroken bliss. Do not slip away from it. Disciple, having once experienced the supreme bliss, how can one stray away from it? Answer, Oh yes. It happens. The predisposition adhering to him from time immemorial will draw him out and so ignorance overtakes him. Disciple, what are the obstacles to remaining steady in unbroken bliss? How can they be overcome? Answer, the obstacles are 1. Ignorance which is forgetfulness of one's pure being. 2. Doubt which consists in wondering if even the experience was of the real or of the unreal. 3. Error which consists in the I am the body idea and thinking that the world is real. These are overcome by hearing the truth, reflection on it and concentration. The Master continued. Experience is said to be temporary or permanent. The first experience is temporary and by concentration it can become permanent. In the former the bondage is not completely destroyed, it remains subtle and reasserts itself in due course. But in the latter it is destroyed root and branch never to appear again. The expression Yoga Barash, to those who have fallen down from Yoga, in Srimad Bhagavad Gita refers to the former class of men. Disciple, is then hearing the truth meant only for a limited few? Answer, it is of two kinds. The ordinary one is to hear it enunciated and explained by a master. However, the right one is to raise the question for oneself and seek and find the answer in oneself as the unbroken I. I. To be reflecting on this experience is the second stage. To remain one pointed in it is the third stage. Disciple, can the temporary experience be called samadhi? Answer, no. It forms part of the third stage. Disciple, it looks then as if even hearing the truth is limited to a very few. Answer, the seekers fall into two classes, Kritapasaka and Akritapasaka. The former having already overcome his predisposition by steady devotion, 
His mind thus made pure has had some kind of experience, but does not comprehend it. As soon as instructed by a competent master, permanent experience results. The other class of seeker needs great effort to achieve this end. How will the hearing of the truth, reflection, and concentration help him? They comprise upasana, the nearest approach to truth, and will end in his self-realization. The fourth stage is the final one of liberation. Even there, some distinction is made according to the degree. As one, the knower of the Brahman Brahmavid, two Brahmavid Vara, three Brahmavid Varya, four Brahmavid Varish. To but all of them are in fact liberated even while alive. Talk ninety six, Major Chadwick. Of what nature is the realization of Westerners who relate that they have had flashes of cosmic consciousness? Answer: It came as a flash and disappeared as such. That which has a beginning must also end. Only when the ever-present consciousness is realized will it be permanent. Consciousness is indeed always with us. Everyone knows I am. No one can deny his own being. The man in deep slumber is not aware, while awake he seems to be aware. But it is the same person. There is no change in the one who slept and the one who is now awake. In deep sleep, he was not aware of his body. There was no body consciousness. In the wakeful state, he is aware of his body. There is body consciousness. Therefore, the difference lies in the emergence of body consciousness, and not in any change in the real consciousness. Body and body consciousness arise together and sink together. All this amounts to saying that there are no limitations in deep sleep, whereas there are limitations in the waking state. These limitations are the bondage, the feeling the body is I is the error, this false sense of I must go. The real I is always there. It is here and now. It never appears anew and disappears again. That which is must also persist forever. That which appears anew will also be lost. Compare deep sleep and waking. The body appears in one state, but not in the other. Therefore, the body will be lost. The consciousness was pre-existent and will survive the body. In fact, there is no one who does not say "I am." The wrong knowledge of "I am the body" is the cause of all the mischief. This wrong knowledge must go. That is realization. Realization is not acquisition of anything new, nor it is a new faculty. It is only removal of all camouflage. Major Chadwick, I try to shake off the body. Answer: A man shakes off his clothes and remains alone and free. The self is unlimited and is not confined to the body. How can the body be shaken off? Where we leave it? Wherever it is, it is his still. Major Chadwick, laughter. Answer: The ultimate truth is so simple. It is nothing more than being in the pristine state. This is all that need be said. Still, it is a wonder that to teach this simple truth there should come into being so many religions, creeds, methods, and disputes among them, and so on. Oh, the pity! Oh, the pity! Major Chadwick. But people will not be content with simplicity; they want complexity. Answer: Quite so, because they want something elaborate and attractive and puzzling. So many religions have come into existence, and each of them is so complex, and each creed in each religion has its own adherents and antagonists. For example, an ordinary Christian will not be satisfied unless he is told that God is somewhere in the far-off heavens, not to be reached by us unaided. Christ alone knew Him, and Christ alone can guide us. Worship Christ and be saved. If told the simple truth, the kingdom of heaven is within you, he is not satisfied, and will read complex and far-fetched meanings in such statements. Mature minds alone can grasp the simple truth in all its nakedness. Major Chadwick later expressed a certain involuntary fear while meditating. 
He feels the spirit separated from the gross body and the sensation creates a fright. Answer, to whom is the fright? It is all due to the habit of identifying the body with the self. Repeated experience of separation will make one familiar and the fright will cease. 19th November, 1935, Talk 97 One Mr. Ramakandar, a gentleman from Ambala, asked where the heart is and what realization is. Answer. The heart is not physical, it is spiritual. Hridayam equals Hrit plus I am, this is the center. It is that from which thoughts arise, on which they subsist, and where they are resolved. The thoughts are the content of the mind, and they shape the universe. The heart is the center of all. Yatova de Mani Butani Jayante, that from which these beings come into existence, etc., is said to be Brahman in the Upanishads. That is the heart. Brahman is the heart. Disciple, how to realize the heart? Answer, there is no one who even for a trice fails to experience the self, for no one admits that he ever stands apart from the self. He is the self. The self is the heart. Disciple, it is not clear. Answer, in deep sleep you exist, awake you remain. The same self is in both states. The difference is only in the awareness and the non-awareness of the world. The world rises with the mind and sets with the mind. That which rises and sets is not the self. The self is different, giving rise to the mind, sustaining it and resolving it. So the self is the underlying principle. When asked who you are, you place your hand on the right side of the breast and say I am. There you involuntarily point out the self. The self is thus known. But the individual is miserable because he confounds the mind and the body with the self. This confusion is due to wrong knowledge. Elimination of wrong knowledge is alone needed. Such elimination results in realization. Disciple, how to control the mind? Answer, what is mind? Whose is the mind? Disciple, mind always wanders. I cannot control it. Answer. It is the nature of the mind to wander. You are not the mind. The mind springs up and sinks down. It is impermanent transitory whereas you are eternal. There is nothing but the self. To in here in the self is the thing. Never mind the mind. If its source is sought, it will vanish leaving the self unaffected. Disciple, so one need not seek to control the mind? Answer. There is no mind to control if you realize the self. The mind vanishing, the self shines forth. In the realized man the mind may be active or inactive, the self alone remains for him. For the mind, the body and the world are not separate from the self. They rise from and sink into the self. They do not remain apart from the self. Can they be different from the self? Only beware of the self. Why worry about these shadows? How do they affect the self? Talk 98. Bhagavan further explained. The self is the heart. The heart is self-luminous. Light arises from the heart and reaches the brain, which is the seat of the mind. The world is seen with the mind, that is, by the reflected light of the self. It is perceived with the aid of the mind. When the mind is illumined, it is aware of the world. When it is not itself so illumined, it is not aware of the world. If the mind is turned in towards the source of light, objective knowledge ceases and self alone shines forth as the heart. The moon shines by the reflected light of the sun. When the sun has set, the moon is useful for revealing objects. When the sun has risen, no one needs the moon, although the pale disk of the moon is visible in the sky. So it is with the mind and the heart. The mind is useful because of its reflected light. It is used for seeing objects. When it is turned inwards, the source of illumination shines forth by itself, and the mind remains dim and useless like the moon in daytime. 
Talk 99. A sannyasi asked. It is said that the self is beyond the mind and yet the realization is with the mind. Mano na manut manasana madam and manasavadam aptaviam the mind cannot think it. It cannot be thought of by the mind and the mind alone can realize it. How are these contradictions to be reconciled? Answer, Atman is realized with Amrutamana's dead mind, in other words, mind devoid of thoughts and turned inward. Then the mind sees its own source and becomes that. It is not as the subject perceiving an object. When the room is dark a lamp is necessary to illumine and eyes to cognize objects. But when the sun is risen there is no need of a lamp, and the objects are seen, and to see the sun no lamp is necessary. It is enough that you turn your eyes towards the self-luminous sun. Similarly with the mind. To see the objects the reflected light of the mind is necessary. To see the heart it is enough that the mind is turned towards it. Then the mind loses itself and the heart shines forth. Talk 1. Hundred. Later Sri Bhagavan quoted from Kavalya some verses and explained. The modes of mind take shape as external objects and the light reflected on the modes illumines the objects. Now neglecting the modes of mind, look for the light illumining them. The mind becomes still and the light remains self-shining. The undulating mind, in other words, the mind associated with Raja's equals activity and Tama's equals darkness is commonly known as the mind. Devoid of Raja's and Tama's it is pure and self-shining. This is self-realization. Therefore the mind is said to be the means for it. Maya cannot obscure Sa, but it does obscure Chit and Ananda, making them appear as particulars. Maya cannot obscure Sa, but it does obscure Chit and Ananda, making them appear as particulars. Sat equals being equals the substratum adhara. From this proceeds the particular, namely the jiva who veiled by ignorance identifies himself with the gross body. Here ignorance stands for not investigating the self. Jiva is in fact knowledge only, yet owing to ignorance the wrong identity with the gross body results. Again, the master illustrated it with the red hot iron ball. A ball of iron plus fire together form red, hot iron ball. The world plus chit equals pure knowledge together form the jiva equals the individual. Talk 1, 101. A gentleman from Ambala asked, What is the rationalistic explanation of Draupadi's sorry becoming endless? Answer, spiritual matters cannot be fitted into rationalism. Spirituality is transcendental. The miracle was after Draupadi had surrendered herself. The secret lies in surrender. Disciple, how to reach the heart. Answer, where are you now that you want to reach the heart? Are you standing apart from the self? Disciple, I am in my body. Answer, in a particular spot or all over. Disciple, all over. I am extending all over the body. Answer, where from do you extend? Disciple, I do not know. Answer, yes. You are always in the heart. You are never away from it in order that you should reach it. Consider how you are in deep sleep and in the waking state. These states are also not yours. They are of the ego. The consciousness remains the same and undifferentiated all through. Disciple, I understand but I cannot feel it so. Answer, whose is the ignorance? Find it out. Disciple, all this is so difficult. Answer, the idea of difficulty is itself wrong. It will not help you to gain what you want. Again, I ask. Who finds it difficult? Disciple, I see that I am coming round to I. Answer, because you are always that and never away from that. There is nothing so simple as being the self. It requires no effort, no aid. 
one has to leave off the wrong identity and be in his eternal, natural, inherent state. Talk 1, 102. He returned with a request next day. He said, it is said that one should receive instruction from a guru. Mere reading of books is not helpful. I have read many books, but there is no practical help derived from such learning. Please tell me what I should do, how I should do it, at what times, in which places, and so on. The master remained silent. His silence seemed to say, here and now, be at peace and tranquil. That is all. But the questioner could not interpret it that way. He wanted something concrete. Talk 103. The next day Sri Bhagavan said, These people want some japa, dhyana, or yoga, or something similar. Without their saying what they have been doing so far, what more can be said to them? Again, why japa, its phala, sruti, etc.? Who is it that makes the japa? Who gets the fruits thereof? Can they not look to the self? Or again, even if instructed by others to do japa or dhyana, they do it for some time, but are always looking to some results, for example, visions, dreams, or thaumaturgic powers. If they do not find them, they say they are not progressing where the tapas is not effective. Visions, etc., are no signs of progress. Mere performance of tapas is its progress also. Steadiness is what is required. Moreover, they must entrust themselves to their mantra or their god and wait for its grace. They don't do so. Japa even once uttered has its own good effect whether the individual is aware or not. 28th November, 1935, Talk 1, 104. Mr. Kishrill, an officer of the Railway Board, Government of India, hails from Delhi. He looks simple, gentle, and dignified in behavior. He is gastric ulcer and has arranged for his board and lodging in the town. Five years ago he took up the study of devotional literature. He is a bhakta of Sri Krishna. He could feel Krishna in all that he saw. Krishna often appeared to him and made him happy. His work was going on without any effort on his part. Everything seemed to be done for him by Krishna himself. Later he came in contact with the Mahatma who advised him to study Vedanta and take to near Kara Upasana, in other words, devotion to formless being. He has since read about 700 books of philosophy in Vedanta, including the Upanishads, Ashtavakra, Avidhuta and Srimad Bhagavad Gita. He has also studied Sri Bhagavan's works in English and is much impressed by them. Once when he was in the jaws of death, no other thought haunted him but that he had not yet visited Sri Bhagavan in his life. So he has come here on a short visit. He prays only for Sri Bhagavan's touch and his grace. The Master said to him, Atmevaham Gudeksa, in other words, I am Atman. Atman is the Guru and Atman is grace also. No one remains without the Atman. He is always in contact. No external touch is necessary. Disciple, I understand. I do not mean external touch. Answer, nothing is more intimate than the Atman. Disciple, again Sri Krishna appeared to me three months back and said, why do you ask me for Nirakara Upasana? It is only Sarva Butesu Cha Atmanam Sarva Butani Cha Atmani. The self in all and all in the self. Answer, that contains the whole truth. Even this is Upacharika indirect. There is in fact nothing but the Atman. The world is only a projection of the mind. The mind originates from the Atman. So Atman alone is the one being. Disciple, yet it is difficult to realize. Answer, there is nothing to realize. It is the eternal, pure, aware and liberated state. It is natural and eternal. There is nothing new to gain. On the other hand, a man must lose his ignorance. That is all. This ignorance must be traced to its origin. To whom is this ignorance? 
of what is one ignorant. There are the subject and the object. Such duality is characteristic of the mind. The mind is from the Atman. Disciple, yes. Ignorance itself cannot exist. He finally surrendered, saying, Just as a doctor learns what is wrong with the patient and treats him accordingly, so may Sri Bhagavan do with me. He also said that he had lost all inclination to study books and learn from them. Talk 1, 105. Maharshi, Yina, Srutam Srutam, Bhavati Shanda Jiya Upanishad. By knowing which, all the unknown becomes known. Madhava Swami Bhagavan's attendant. Are there nine methods of teaching the Mahavakya Tatvamasi in the Shanda Jiya Upanishad? Answer. No. Not so. The method is only one. Adalaka started teaching Sat Eva Samya. There is only being. Illustrating it with Svetakitu's fast. 1. Sat the being in the individual is made obvious by the fast. 2. This Sat being is similar in all as honey gathered from different flowers. 3. There is no difference in the sat of individuals as illustrated by this state of deep sleep. The question arises if so, why does not each know it in sleep? 4. Because the individuality is lost. There is only sat left. Illustration. Rivers lost in the ocean. If lost, is there sat? 5. Surely as when a tree is pruned it grows again. That is a sure sign of its life. But is it there even in that dormant condition? 6. Yes, take the instance of salt and water. The presence of the salt and water is subtle. Though invisible to the eye, it is recognized by other senses. How is one to know it? What is the other means? 7. By inquiry, as the man left in the Gandhara forest regained his home. 8. In evolution and involution, in manifestation and resolution, sat alone exists. Taja parasyam divatayam the light marriages in the supreme. 9. An insincere man is hurt by the touch of fire test. His insincerity is brought out by fire. Sincerity is self-evident. A true man or a self-realized man remains happy without being affected by the false appearances namely the world, birth and death, etc. Whereas the false or ignorant man is miserable. 29th November 1935 Talk 106 Swami Yogananda with four others arrived at 8.45 am. He looks big but gentle and well-groomed. He has dark flowing hair hanging over his shoulders. The group had lunch in the asramam. Mr. Wright, his secretary, asked, How shall I realize God? Answer, God is an unknown entity. Moreover, he is external. Whereas the self is always with you and it is you. Why do you leave out what is intimate and go in for what is external? Disciple, what is this self again? Answer, the self is known to everyone but not clearly. You always exist. The being is the self. I am is the name of God. Of all the definitions of God, none is indeed so well put as the biblical statement I am that I am in Exodus chap. 3. There are other statements, such as Brahmavaham, Ahem Brahmas me and Soham but none is so direct as the name Jehovah equals I am. The absolute being is what is it is the self. It is God. Knowing the self God is known. In fact God is none other than the self. Disciple, why are there good and evil? Answer, they are relative terms. There must be a subject to know the good and evil. That subject is the ego. Trace the source of the ego. It ends in the self. The source of the ego is God. This definition of God is probably more concrete and better understood by you. Disciple, so it is. How to get bliss? Answer, bliss is not something to be got. On the other hand, you are always bliss. 
This desire is born of the sense of incompleteness. To whom is this sense of incompleteness? Inquire. In deep sleep you were blissful. Now you are not so. What is interposed between that bliss and this non-bliss? It is the ego. Seek its source and find your bliss. There is nothing new to get. You have, on the other hand, to get rid of your ignorance which makes you think that you are other than bliss. For whom is this ignorance? It is to the ego. Trace the source of the ego. Then the ego is lost and bliss remains over. It is eternal. You are that here and now. That is the master key for solving all doubts. The doubts arise in the mind. The mind is born of the ego. The ego rises from the self. Search the source of the ego and the self is revealed. That alone remains. The universe is only expanded self. It is not different from the self. Disciple, what is the best way of living? Answer. It differs according as one is a jhani or a jhani. A jhani does not find anything different or separate from the self. All are in the self. It is wrong to imagine that there is the world, that there is a body in it, and that you dwell in the body. If the truth is known, the universe and what is beyond it will be found to be only in the self. The outlook differs according to the sight of the person. The sight is from the eye. The eye must be located somewhere. If you are seeing with the gross eyes you find others gross. If with subtle eyes in other words the mind others appear subtle. If the eye becomes the self, the self being infinite, the eye is infinite. There is nothing else to see different from the self. He thanked Maharshi. He was told that the best way of thanking is to remain always as the self. Talk 107. Later the yogi asked, How is the spiritual uplift of the people to be affected? What are the instructions to be given them? Answer, they differ according to the temperaments of the individuals and according to the spiritual rightness of their minds. There cannot be any instruction on mass. Disciple, why does God permit suffering in the world? Should he not with his omnipotence do away with it at one stroke and ordain the universal realization of God? Answer, suffering is the way for realization of God. Disciple, should he not ordain differently? Answer, it is the way. Disciple, are yoga, religion, etc. antidotes to suffering? Answer, they help you to overcome suffering. Disciple, why should there be suffering? Answer, who suffers? What is suffering? No answer. Finally the yogi rose up, prayed for Sri Bhagavan's blessings for his own work and expressed great regret for his hasty return. He looked very sincere and devoted and even emotional. Talk 108 In continuation of Dialogue 105 Adalaka explained that all proceeds from sad is illustrated by deep sleep. Body takes food. Food requires water. Water requires heat to digest the food. Penjo Mulamanvichcha, it is sat parasyam devadam merged in the being. We are sat sampan emerged in the being. How is it that we do not realize it? Answer. Just as the honey gathered from different flowers forms the bulk in a honeycomb, and each drop does not indicate where from it has been collected, so also sat Sampana in deep sleep death etc. People do not recognize their individualities. They slip into that state unawares. But when they wake up they regain their original individual characteristics. Disciple Honey, though collected from different flowers, becomes the bulk and does not possess individual characteristics. But the individual parts do not also exist in the drops, and they do not return to their sources. Whereas the individuals after going to deep sleep wake up individuals as formerly. How is it? Answer. 
Just as the rivers discharged into the ocean lose their individualities, still the waters evaporate and return as rain on the hills and through rivers to the ocean. So also the individuals going to sleep lose their individualities and yet return as individuals according to their previous vasanas unawares. Thus, even in death, sad is not lost. Disciple, how can that be? Answer, see how a tree whose branches are cut grows again. So long as the life source is not affected it will grow. Similarly the samskaras anamnesis sink into the heart in death, they do not perish. They will in right time sprout forth from the heart. That is how the jivas are reborn. Disciple, how does the wide universe sprout forth from such subtle samskaras remaining sunk in the heart? Answer. Just as a big banyan tree sprouts from a tiny seed, so the wide universe with names and forms sprouts forth from the heart. Disciple. If the origin is sad, why is it not felt? Answer. The salt in the lump is visible, it is invisible in solution. Still its existence is known by taste. Similarly sat, though not recognized by the intellect, can still be realized in a different way, in other words, transcendentally. Disciple, how? Answer, just as a man blindfolded and left by robbers in a jungle inquires his way home and returns there, so also the ignorant one blinded by ignorance inquires of those not so blinded and seeks his own source and returns to it. Then, Gurupeds Avang Manasi Sampadiate Mana Prane Pranasajasi Teja Parasyam Devatayam Eti. Disciple, if so, a Jani or an Ajani dies in the same manner. Why is an Ajani reborn whereas a Jani is not? Answer, just as an innocent man Satyubhisanda is not affected by the test of touching red hot iron but a thief is affected, so also the sad Brahma Satyubhisanda, in other words, a jani enters into sat consciously emerges, whereas the other enters unaware and is thrown out unawares also. 13th December 1935 Talk 1, 109 Two gentlemen from Ambala, the Punjab had been here for a few weeks. Just before taking leave of Sri Bhagavan one of them asked how he should remove the spiritual drowsiness of his friends or of other people in general. Answer, have you removed your own spiritual drowsiness? The force which is set up to remove your own drowsiness will also operate in other centers. There is the will, power with which you can act on others. But it is on a lower plane and not desirable. Take care of yourself first. Disciple, how to remove my own drowsiness? Answer, whose drowsiness is it? Inquire. Turn within. Turn all your inquiries towards search for self. The force set up within you will operate on others also. 14th December, 1935 Talk 110 an American lady asked Bhagavan what his experiences of Samadhi were. When suggested that she should relate her experiences and ask if they were right, she replied that Sri Bhagavan's experiences ought to be correct and should be known, whereas her own were unimportant. She thus wanted to know if Sri Bhagavan felt his body hot or cold in Samadhi, if he spent the first three and a half years of his stay at Turuvanamalai, in prayers and so on. Answer, Samadhi transcends mind and speech and cannot be described. For example, the state of deep slumber cannot be described, Samadhi state can still less be explained. Disciple, but I know that I am unconscious in deep sleep. Answer, consciousness and unconsciousness are only modes of the mind. Samadhi transcends the mind. Disciple, still you can say what it is like. Answer, you will know only when you are in Samadhi. 16th December 1935 Talk 1, 111 a Telugu gentleman asked about Brahma Bhavana. Answer. 
not to think I am Brahman or all is Brahman is itself Jivan Mukti. He asked about inspired action. Answer, let activities go on. They do not affect the pure self. 17th December 1935 Talk 1, 112 Mr. Brunton, while reading Upadza Manjari, came across the statement that the ego, the world and God are all unreal. He desired to use a different word for God or at least a qualifying adjective, for example, the creative force or personal God. Sri Bhagavan explained that God means Samashti in other words, all that is, plus the being in the same way as I means the individual plus the being, and the world means the variety plus being. The being is in all cases real. The all, the variety, and the individual is in each case unreal. So also in the union of the real and the unreal, the mixing up or the false identification is wrong. It amounts to saying sadasad vilakshana, in other words, transcending the real and the unreal sad in a sad. Reality is that which transcends all concepts, including that of God. Inasmuch as the name of God is used, it cannot be true. The Hebrew word Jehovah equals I am expresses God correctly. Absolute being is beyond expression. The word cannot be replaced nor need it be replaced. The Englishman casually said that in prehistoric ages there was spirituality but not high intellect, whereas intellect has now developed. Sri Bhagavan pointed out that intellect raises the question whose intellect? The answer is of the self. So intellect is a tool of the self. The self uses intellect for measuring variety. Intellect is not the self nor apart from the self. The self alone is eternal. Intellect is only a phenomenon. People speak of the development of variety as being the development of intellect. Intellect was always there. The Creator created just as before. Consider your own state day by day. There is no intellect in dreamless deep sleep. But it is there now. There is no intellect in a child. It develops with age. How could there be manifestation of intellect without its seed in the sleep state and in the child? Why go to history to teach this fundamental fact? The level of truth of history is only the level of truth of the individual. Talk 1, 113 A Telugu gentleman asked about karma yoga. Sri Bhagavan said that the man should act as an actor on the stage. In all actions there is the sat as the underlying principle. Remember it and act. He asked about the purity of mind Chitta Sadai. Sri Bhagavan said that Chitta Sadai is to engage in one thought only to the exclusion of all others. It is otherwise called one-pointedness of the mind. The practice of meditation purifies the mind. 23rd December 1935 Talk 114 Baron von Veltheim Ostran, an East German Baron, asked, There should be harmony between knowledge of the self and knowledge of the world. They must develop side by side. Is it right? Does Maharshi agree? Answer, yes. Disciple, Beyond the intellect and before wisdom dawns there will be pictures of the world passing before one's consciousness. Is it so? Sri Bhagavan pointed out the parallel passage in Dakshinamrti Stotram to signify that the pictures are like reflections in a mirror, again from the Upanish, as in the mirror, so in the world of mains, as in the water, so in the world of Gandharvas, as shadow and sunlight in Brahma Loka. Disciple, there is spiritual awakening since 1930 all the world over. Does Maharshi agree? Maharshi said, The development is according to your sight. The Baron again asked if Maharshi would induce a spiritual trance and give him a message which is unspoken but still understandable. No answer was made. 
25th December 1935 Talk 115 Mr. Fridman Even without any initial desires there are some strange experiences for us. Wherefrom do they arise? Answer, the desire may not be there now. Enough if it was there before. Though forgotten by you now it is bearing fruit in due course. That is how the Johnny is said to have Prarabta left for him. Of course it is only according to others' point of view. Talk 1, 116. Disciple, Jiva is said to be bound by karma. Is it so? Answer, let karma enjoy its fruits. As long as you are the doer, so long are you the enjoyer. Disciple, how to get release from karma. Answer, see whose karma it is. You will find you are not the doer. Then you will be free. This requires grace of God for which you should pray to him, worship him and meditate on him. The karma which takes place without effort, in other words, involuntary action, is not binding. Even a jhani is acting as seen by his bodily movements. There can be no karma without effort or without intention sankalpas. Therefore there are sankalpas for all. They are of two kinds one, one binding band hetu and the other two, mukti hetu not binding. The former must be given up and the latter must be cultivated. There is no fruit without previous karma, no karma without previous sankalpa. Even mukti must be the result of effort so long as the sense of doership persists. Talk 1, 117. A Salonis. What is the first step for realization of self? Please help me towards it. There is no use reading books. Another. This one man's request is that of us all. Answer, quite so. If the self be found in books it would have been already realized. What wonder can be greater than that we seek the self in books? Can it be found there? Of course books have given readers the sense to ask this question and to seek the self. Disciple, books are utterly useless. They may all be burnt. Spoken word alone is useful. Grace alone is useful. Others spoke according to their own light, until finally they returned to the original question, but Sri Bhagavan remained silent. Talk 1, 118. Mr. Rangachari, a Telugu pandit in Vor, his college at Velour, asked about Nishkama Karma. There was no reply. After a time Sri Bhagavan went up the hill and a few followed him, including the pandit. There was a thorny stick lying on the way which Sri Bhagavan picked up. He sat down and began leisurely to work at it. The thorns were cut off, the knots were made smooth, the whole stick was polished with a rough leaf. The whole operation took about six hours. Everyone was wondering at the fine appearance of the stick made of a spiky material. A shepherd boy put in his appearance on the way as the group moved off. He had lost his stick and was at a loss. Sri Bhagavan immediately gave the new one in his hand to the boy and passed on. The pandit said that this was the matter of fact answer to his question. Talk 1, 119. Again at the same time there were four dogs in the asramam. Sri Bhagavan said that those dogs would not accept any food not partaken by himself. The pandit put the matter to the test. He spread some food before them. They would not touch it then Sri Bhagavan after a time put a small morsel of it into his mouth. Immediately they fell to and devoured the food. Talk 1, 120. Later a man brought two peacocks with their eyes screened. When let loose in Maharshi's presence they flew away to a distance. They were brought back, but still they flew away. Sri Bhagavan then said, It is no use trying to keep them here. They are not ripe in their minds as these dogs. However much they tried to keep the peacocks, they would not remain there even a minute. Talk 1, 121 Talks between the master and two Moslems on a previous occasion. 
Disciple, has God a form? Answer, who says so? Disciple, well, if God has no form is it proper to worship idols? Answer, leave God alone because he is unknown. What about you? Have you a form? Disciple, yes. I am this and so and so. Answer, so then, you are a man with limbs about three and a half cubits high with beard etc. Is it so? Disciple, certainly. Answer, then do you find yourself so in deep sleep? Disciple, after waking I perceive that I was asleep. Therefore by inference I remain thus in deep sleep also. Answer, if you are the body why do they bury the corpse after death? The body must refuse to be buried. Disciple, no, I am the subtle jiva within the gross body. Answer, so you see that you are really formless, but you are at present identifying yourself with the body. So long as you are formful why should you not worship the formless God as being formful? The questioner was baffled and perplexed. 1st January 1936 Talk 122 A crowd had gathered here during Christmas. Disciple, how to attain unity consciousness? Answer, being unity consciousness, how to attain it? Your question is its own answer. Disciple, what is Atman's self, and Atman non-self, and Paramatman supreme self? Answer, Atman is Jivatman the individual self, and the rest are plain. The self is ever-present Nityasada. Each one wants to know the self. What kind of help does one require to know one's self? People want to see the self as something new. But it is eternal and remains the same all along. They desire to see it as a blazing light, etc. How can it be so? It is not light, not darkness, not tijo, not tama. It is only as it is. It cannot be defined. The best definition is I am that I am. These rudis speak of the self as being the size of one's thumb the tip of the hair, an electric spark, vast, subtler than the subtlest, etc. They have no foundation in fact. It is only being, but different from the real and the unreal. It is knowledge, but different from knowledge and ignorance. How can it be defined at all? It is simply being. Again Sri Bhagavan said that in the whole Thayiman of our literature, he preferred one stanza which says, Ego disappearing another AI spontaneously manifests in full glory, etc. Again he cites Skandar Anabhuti. Not real, nor unreal, not darkness, nor light it is. One man said that a Siddha of Kumbhakanam claimed to overcome the defects in Sri Sankara's system which deals only with transcendentalism and not the workaday life. One must be able to exercise superhuman powers in ordinary life, that is to say, one must be a Siddha in order to be perfect. Sri Bhagavan pointed out a stanza in Thayimanavar which condemns all Siddhas. Further he said that Thayimanavar mentions Mount of Silence in numerous places, but defines it in only one verse. Mauna is said to be that state which spontaneously manifests after the annihilation of the ego. That state is beyond light and darkness, but still it is called light since no other proper word could be found for it. 3rd, January 1936 Talk 1, 123 Dr. Mohammed Hafiz Sid a Muslim professor of Persian and Urdu in the University of Allahabad asked, What is the purpose of this external manifestation? Answer, this manifestation had induced your question. Disciple, true. I am covered by Maya. How to be free from it? Answer, who is covered by Maya? Who wants to be free? Disciple, master being asked who? I know that it is ignorant me composed of the senses, mind and body. I tried this inquiry who, after reading Paul Brunton's book, 
Three or four times I was feeling elated and the elation lasted some time and faded away. How to be established in I? Please give me the clue and help me. Answer, that which appears and you must also disappear in due course. Disciple, please tell me the method of reaching the eternal truth. Answer, you are that. Can you ever remain apart from the self? To be yourself requires no effort since you are always that. Talk 1, 124. Another impatient questioner elaborated long premises and finished asking why some children die a premature death. He required the answer not to satisfy the grown-up ones who look on but the babies who are the victims. Answer, let the victims ask. Why do you ask and desire the answer from the standpoint of the child? Talk 1, 125. The Muslim professor asked. When I am here my mind is sapphic. As soon as I turn my back on this, my mind hankers after so many objects. Answer, are the objects different from you? There can be no objects without the subject. Disciple, and how shall I know it? Answer, being that what do you want to know? Are there two cells for the one to know the other? Disciple, again I repeat sir, how to know the truth of all this and experience the same? Answer, there is no gaining of anything new. All that is required is to rid the self of ignorance. This ignorance is the identification of the self with the non-self. Disciple, yes. Still, I do not understand. I must have your help. Everyone here is waiting on you for your grace. You yourself must have sought originally the help of a guru or of God. Extend that grace to others now and save me. Before I came here I desired to see you very much. But somehow I could not find an opportunity to do so. In Bangalore I made up my mind to return to my place. I met Mr. Fridman and others who sent me here. You have dragged me here. My case is like Paul Brunton's in Bombay, when he was dragged here having cancelled his passage home. I hesitated at first on arrival. I wondered if I would be permitted to approach you and converse with you. My doubts were soon set at rest. I find that all are equal here. You have established an equality among all. I dine with you and others. If I should say so to my people in UP, they would not believe it. The Brahmins would not drink water with me, nor chew pan with me. But here you have taken me and others like me in your fold. Though Gandhi is striving hard he cannot bring about such a state of affairs in the country. I am very happy in your presence. I regard you as God. I consider Sri Krishna to be true God because he has said, Whomsoever one may worship, the worshipper worships me only and I save him. Whereas all others have said, Salvation is through me only Krishna alone is so broad, minded and has spoken like God. You observe the same kind of equality. 4th, January, 1936 Talk 1, 126 Dr. Sid again asked, Should anyone desirous of spiritual progress take to action or renunciation pravridi, marga or navridi marga? Answer, do you go out of the self? What is meant by giving up? An American engineer asked about satsanga association with sages. Answer, sat is within us. Disciple, in the book Who Am I, you have said the heart is the seat of the mind. Is it so? Answer, the mind is Atman. Disciple, is it Atman itself or its projection? Answer, the same. Disciple, the Westerners look on the mind as the highest principle, whereas the Easterners think the contrary why. Answer, where psychology ends, their philosophy begins. This is experience, the mind is born, we see it, even without the mind we exist. There is everyone's experience to prove it. Disciple, in deep sleep I do not seem to exist. Answer, you say so in awake. 
It is the mind which speaks now. You exist in deep sleep beyond mind. Disciple, Western philosophy admits the higher self as influencing the mind. Talk 1, 127. The American engineer asked, Does distance have any effect upon grace? Answer, time and space are within us. You are always in yourself. How do time and space affect it? Disciple, in radio those who are nearer here sooner. You're Hindu, we are American. Does it make any difference? Answer, no. Disciple, even thoughts are read by others. Answer, that shows that all are one. 5th January 1936 Talk 1, 128 There were some French ladies and gentlemen and American as visitors to the Asrama. They asked Sri Bhagavan several questions. Among them one was, What is the message of the East to the West? Answer, all go to the same goal. To another question Sri Bhagavan said, How do you say I am? Do you take a light to find yourself? Or did you come to know it on reading books? How? The questioner said, By experience. Answer, yes. Experience is the word. Knowledge implies subject and object. But experience is non-terminal, eternal. 6th January 1936 Talk 1, 129 An elderly gentleman, formerly a co-worker with Narasimha Swami and author of some visas, Ted Vita work, visited the place for the first time. He asked about rebirths, if it is possible for the Linga Sarira subtle body to get dissolved and be reborn in two years after death. Answer, yes. Surely, not only can one be reborn, one may be twenty or forty or even seventy years old in the new body, though only two years after death. Three Bhagavan cited Lila's story from Yoga Vasishta. Sreyo Hai Janam Abhyas, Ad Jan, at Dayanam Dayanat Karmafala Tiaga. Here Jhana stands for knowledge without practice, Abhyasa stands for practice without knowledge, Diana stands for practice with knowledge. Knowledge without practice accompanying it is superior to practice without knowledge. Practice with knowledge is superior to knowledge without practice accompanying it. Karma Fala Tiaganish Kama Karma as of Ajani action without desire is superior to knowledge with practice. Disciple, what is the difference between yoga and surrender? Answer, surrender is bhakti yoga. To reach the source of the I thought is the destruction of the ego, is the attainment of the goal, is perpati surrender jhana etc. Talk 1, 130. Lakshman Brahmachari from Sri Ramakrishna Mission asked, Inquiry of who am I or of the I thought being itself a thought, how can it be destroyed in the process? Answer, when Sita was asked who was her husband among the Rishis, Rama himself being present there as a Rishi in the forest by the wives of the Rishis, she denied each one as he was pointed out to her, but simply hung down her head when Rama was pointed out. Her silence was eloquent. Similarly, the Vedas also are eloquent in neti neti not this not this and then remain silent. Their silence is the real state. This is the meaning of exposition by silence. When the source of the I thought is reached it vanishes and what remains over is the self. Disciple, Patanjali Yoga Sutras speak of identification. Answer, identification with the Supreme is only the other name for the destruction of the ego. Talk 1, 131. Mr. Subarao asked, what is Mukya Prana the chief Prana? Answer, it is that from which the ego and the Prana rise. It is sometimes called Kundalini. Consciousness is not born at any time, it remains eternal. But ego is born, so also the other thoughts. 
associated with the absolute consciousness they shine forth, not otherwise. Disciple, what is moksha liberation? Answer, moksha is to know that you were not born. Be still and know that I am God. To be still is not to think. Know and not think is the word. Disciple, there are said to be six organs of different colors in the chest, of which the heart is said to be two finger breadths to the right of the middle line. But the heart is also formless. Should we then imagine it to have a shape and meditate on it? Answer, no. Only the quest who am I is necessary. What remains all through deep sleep and waking is the same. But in waking there is unhappiness and the effort to remove it. Asked who wakes up from sleep you say I. Now you are told to hold fast to this I. If it is done the eternal being will reveal itself. Investigation of I it is the point and not meditation on the heart center. There is nothing like within or without. Both mean either the same thing or nothing. Of course there is also the practice of meditation on the heart center. It is only a practice and not investigation. Only the one who meditates on the heart can remain aware when the mind ceases to be active and remains still, whereas those who meditate on other centers cannot be so aware but infer that the mind was still only after it becomes again active. Talk 1, 132. An educated man asked, Is there an absolute being? What is its relation to the relative existence? Answer, are they different from each other? All the questions arise only in the mind. The mind arises with waking and subsides in deep sleep. As long as there is a mind, so long will there be such questions and doubts. Disciple, there must be stage after stage of progress for gaining the absolute. Are there grades of reality? Answer, there are no grades of reality. There are grades of experience for the jiva and not of reality. If anything can be gained anew, it could also be lost, whereas the absolute is central here and now. Disciple, if so, how do I remain ignorant of it, Avarana? Answer, for whom is this ignorance failing? Does the Absolute tell you that it is failed? It is the Jiva who says that something veils the Absolute. Find out for whom this ignorance is. Disciple, why is there imperfection in perfection? That is, how did the Absolute become relative? Answer, for whom is this relativity? For whom is this imperfection? The Absolute is not imperfect and cannot ask. The insentient cannot ask the question. Between the two something has risen up which raises these questions and which feels this doubt. Who is it? Is it the one who has now arisen? Or is it the one who is eternal? Being perfect, why do you feel yourself imperfect? Such is the teaching of all the religions. Whatever may be the experiences, the experiencer is one and the same. I is purna perfection. There is no diversity in sleep. That indicates perfection. Disciple, being perfect, why do I not feel it? Answer, nor is imperfection felt in deep sleep. The I in sleep being perfect, why does the waking I feel imperfect? Because the one who feels imperfect is a spurious offshoot, a differentiation from the infinite, a segregation from God. Disciple, I am the same in all the three states. Did this ego submerge me or did I entangle myself into it? Answer, did anything come up without you? Disciple, I am always the same. Answer, because you see it, this appears to have come up. Did you feel this difficulty in deep sleep? What is new now? Disciple, the senses and the mind. Answer, who says this? Is it the sleeper? If so, he should have raised the question in deep sleep also. The sleeper has been lost hold of, some spurious offshoot has differentiated himself and speaks now. Can anything new appear without that which is eternal and perfect? This kind of dispute is itself eternal. 
Do not engage in it. Turn inward and put an end to all this. There will be no finality in disputations. Disciple, show me that grace which puts an end to all this trouble. I have not come here to argue. I want only to learn. Answer, learn first what you are. This requires no sastras, no scholarship. This is simple experience. The state of being is now and here all along. You have lost hold of yourself and are asking others for guidance. The purpose of philosophy is to turn you inward. If you know yourself, no evil can come to you. Since you ask me, I have taught you. The ego comes up only holding you the self. Hold yourself and the ego will vanish. Until then the sage will be saying there is. The ignorant will be asking where? Disciple, the crux of the problem lies in know thyself. Answer, yes. Quite so. Talk 133. There are two schools in Advaita. 1. Drishti Srishti Simultaneous Creation and 2. Srishti Drishti Gradual Creation. There is the Tantric Advaita which admits three fundamentals Jagat Jaiva is fair world soul God. These three are also real. But the reality does not end with them. It extends beyond. That is the Tantric Advaita. The reality is limitless. The three fundamentals do not exist apart from the absolute reality. All agree that reality is all-pervading, thus as Fura pervades the jiva therefore the jiva has eternal being. His knowledge is not limited. Limited knowledge is only imagined by him. In truth his is infinite knowledge. Its limit is silence. This truth was revealed by Dakshinamurti. For those who still perceive these three fundamentals they are said to be realities. They are concomitant with the ego. True, the images of gods are described in great detail. Such description points only to the final reality. Otherwise why is the special significance of each detail also given? Think. The image is only a symbol. Only that which lies beyond name and form is reality. Seva Siddhanta and Vedanta have the common aim of the same truth. Otherwise how could Sri Sankarakurya, the greatest exponent of Advaita, sing praises of gods? Obviously he did so knowingly. The questioner earnestly explained that his faith in Seva Siddhanta, Vedanta, etc. was shaken after reading Baha'i literature. Please save me, he said. Answer, know the self which is here and now, you will be steady and not waver. Disciple, the Baha'is read others' minds. Answer, yes, that is possible. Your thoughts were read by another. There must be one to know your mind. That is the truth always present which is to be realized. Truth does not waver. Disciple, Show me grace. Answer, grace always is and is not given. Why do you consider the pros and cons of Bahala or others being incarnations or otherwise? Know thyself. Regard everything as truth. Regard him also as the truth. Can he exist besides truth? Your beliefs may change but not truth. Disciple, show me the truth of Siddhanta etc. Answer, follow their instructions and then if you have doubts you may ask. Adherence to those instructions will take you only to Mauna. Differences are perceived in external objects only. If you follow their instructions all differences will be lost. No one but the son of a king can be called a prince. So also only that which is perfect is called perfection. One should not be content with mere discipleship, initiation, ceremony of surrender, etc. These are external phenomena. Never forget the truth underlying all phenomena. Disciple, what is the significance of the silence of Dakshinamurti? Answer, many are the explanations given by scholars and sages. Have it any way you please. 14th, January. 
1936, Talk 134. A question about the heart was raised. Sri Bhagavan said that one should seek the self and realize it. The heart will play its part automatically. The seat of realization is the heart. It cannot be said to be either in or out. Disciple, did Bhagavan feel the heart as the point of realization in his first or early experience? Answer, I began to use the word after seeing literature on the subject. I correlated it with my experience. 15th, January 1936 Talk 1, 135 Three European ladies from the Theosophical Conference came here and asked, Is the whole scheme the plan really good? Or is it in the nature of an error a mistake of which we have to make the best? Answer, the plan is indeed good. The error is on our part. When we correct it in ourselves the whole scheme becomes all right. Disciple, have you any formula to teach us how to bring it about through a remembrance of what we do during sleep? Answer, no formula is needed. Everyone has the experience that he slept happily and knew nothing then. Nothing else was experienced. Disciple, the answer does not satisfy me. We wander in the astral plane in our sleep but we do not remember it. Answer, the astral plane is concerned with dreams not with deep sleep. Disciple, what do you consider to be the cause of world suffering? And how can we help to change it as individuals? Or be collectively? Answer, realize the real self. It is all that is necessary. Disciple, can we hasten our illumination for greater service? And how? Answer, as we are not able to help ourselves, so we have to surrender ourselves to the Supreme completely. Then he will take care of us as well as the world. Disciple, what do you consider the goal? Answer, self-realization. Disciple, is there any way to meet the appointed guru for each? Answer, intense meditation brings it about. Talk 1, 136. Dr. Mies, a young Dutchman, was here for a few days. He asked Sri Bhagavan, I have an impression that in deep sleep I have something akin to samadhi. Is it so? Answer, it is the waking eye that asks the questions, not the eye in sleep. If you attain the state of wakeful sleep which is the same as samadhi while still awake, doubts will not arise. Samadhi is one's natural state. It is the undercurrent in all the three states. This that is I is not in those states, but these states are in it. If we get samadhi in our waking state that will persist in deep sleep also. The distinction between consciousness and unconsciousness belongs to the realm of mind, which is transcended by the state of the real self. Disciple, is the Buddhist view that there is no continuous entity answering to the ideas of the individual soul correct or not? Is this consistent with the Hindu notion of a reincarnating ego? Is the soul a continuous entity which reincarnates again and again, according to the Hindu doctrine, or is it a mere mass of mental tendencies samskaras? Answer, the real self is continuous and unaffected. The reincarnating ego belongs to the lower plane, namely thought. It is transcended by self-realization. Reincarnations are due to a spurious offshoot. Therefore it is denied by the Buddhists. The present state is due to a mixing up of the chit sentient with jata and sentient. Talk 1, 137. Lakshman Brahmachari of Sri Ramakrishna Mission asked, Can one imagine oneself as witness of the thoughts? Answer. It is not the natural state. It is only an idea bhavana an aid to stilling the mind. The self is ever the witness whether so imagined or not. There is no need to so imagine except for that purpose. But it is best to remain as one's self. Talk 1, 138. 
the financial secretary of Mysore asked. Is Paul Brunton's secret path useful for Indians as well? Answer, yes for all. Disciple, the body, the senses, etc. are not I. This is common amongst us. But how to practice it? Answer, by the threefold method mentioned therein. Disciple, is breath control necessary for inquiry? Answer, not quite. Disciple, there is a blankness intervening, it is said in the book. Answer, yes. Do not stop there. See for whom the blankness appears. Disciple, for devotees there is no blankness, it is said. Answer, even there there is the latent state, Leah, the mind wakes up after some time. Disciple, what is the experience of samadhi? Answer, it is as it is. For onlookers it may seem to be a swoon. Even to the practiser it may appear so in the early experiences. After a few repeated experiences it will be all right. Disciple, do they soothe natties or do they excite them by such experiences? Answer, they are excited at first. By continued experience it becomes common and the man is no longer excited. Disciple, Proceeding on safe lines there should be no unpleasantness. Excitement is uncongenial to smooth being and working. Answer. A wandering mind is on the wrong way, only a devotional mind is on the right way. 19th January 1936 Talk 1, 139 Mr. Elapa Chechir, a member of the Legislative Council from Salem, asked, is it enough to introvert the mind or should we meditate on I am Brahman? Answer, to introvert the mind is the prime thing. The Buddhists consider the flow of I thought to be liberation, whereas we say that such flow proceeds from its underlying substratum the only reality. Why should one be meditating I am Brahman? Only the annihilation of I is liberation. But it can be gained only by keeping the I I always in view. So the need for the investigation of the I thought. If the I is not let go, no blank can result to the seeker. Otherwise meditation will end in sleep. There is only one I all along, but what arises up from time to time is the mistaken I thought whereas the intuitive I always remains self-shining in other words, even before it becomes manifest. The birth of the gross body does not amount to one's own birth, on the other hand, the birth of the ego is one's own birth. For liberation nothing new remains to be gained. It is the original state and continues unchanged too. Talk 1, 140 Disciple, what is reality? Answer, reality must be always real. It is not with forms and names. That which underlies these is the reality. It underlies limitations, being itself limitless. It is not bound. It underlies unrealities, itself being real. Reality is that which is. It is as it is. It transcends speech beyond the expressions, for example, existence, non existence, etc. Talk 1, 141. The same gentleman later, after quoting a verse from Kavalya, asked, Can jhana be lost after being once attained? Answer, jhana once revealed takes time to steady itself. The self is certainly within the direct experience of everyone, but not as one imagines it to be. It is only as it is. This experience is samadhi. Just as fire remains without scorching against incantations or other devices but scorches otherwise, so also the self remains veiled by vasanas and reveals itself when there are no vasanas. Owing to the fluctuation of the vasanas, jhana takes time to steady itself. Unsteady jhana is not enough to check rebirths. Jhana cannot remain unshaken side by side with vasanas. True that in the proximity of a great master, 
the visanas will cease to be active, the mind becomes still and samadhi results, similar to fire not scorching because of other devices. Thus the disciple gains true knowledge and right experience in the presence of the Master. To remain unshaken in it further efforts are necessary. He will know it to be his real being and thus be liberated even while alive. Samad he with closed eyes is certainly good, but one must go further until it is realized that actionlessness and action are not hostile to each other. Here of loss of samadhi while one is active is the sign of ignorance. Samad he must be the natural life of everyone. There is a state beyond our efforts or effortlessness. Until it is realized effort is necessary. After tasting such bliss, even once one will repeatedly try to regain it. Having once experienced the bliss of peace no one would like to be out of it or engaged himself otherwise. It is as difficult for a jhani to engage in thoughts as it is for an odd jhani to be free from thought. The common man says that he does not know himself, he thinks many thoughts and cannot remain without thinking. Any kind of activity does not affect a jhani, his mind remains ever in eternal peace. 20th January 1936 Talk 1, 142 Mr. Perkasa Rao from Biswata. Does not illusion become inoperative even before identity with Brahman results Brahmakara Vridi? Or does it persist even afterwards? Answer. Illusion will not persist after vasanas are annihilated. In the interval between the knowledge of the identity and annihilation of vasanas, there will be illusion. Disciple, how can the world influence a man even after identity with Brahman? Answer, first do it and see. You can then raise this question if necessary. Disciple, can we know it in the same way as we know our identity? Answer, are you different from the mind? How do you expect it to be known? Disciple, can the full scope of the chitta be known? Answer, oh! Is this the identity of Brahman? Ignorance vanishing, the residue reveals itself. It is experience not in the category of knowledge. 23rd, January, 1936, Talk 1, 143 Mr. Brudden asks Sri Bhagavan if the hill here is hollow. Answer, the Puranas say so. When it is said that the heart is a cavity, penetration into it proves it to be an expanse of light. Similarly the hill is one of light. The caves etc. are covered up by the light. Disciple, are there caves inside? Answer, in visions I have seen caves, cities with streets etc. and a whole world in it. Disciple, are there siddhas too in it? Answer, all the siddhas are reputed to be there. Disciple, are there only siddhas or others also? Answer, just like this world. Disciple, siddhas are said to be in the Himalayas. Answer, Kailas is on the Himalayas, it is the abode of Seva. Whereas this hill is Seva himself. All the paraphernalia of his abode must also be where he himself is. Disciple, does Bhagavan believe that the hill is hollow etc.? Answer. Everything depends on the viewpoint of the individual. You yourself have seen hermitages etc. on this hill in a vision. You have described such in your book. Disciple, yes. It was on the surface of the hill. The vision was within me. Answer, that is exactly so. Everything is within oneself. To see the world there must be a spectator. There could be no world without the self. The self is all comprising. In fact self is all. There is nothing besides the self. Disciple, what is the mystery of this hill? Answer, just as you have said in secret Egypt, the mystery of the pyramid is the mystery of the self, so also the mystery of this hill is the mystery of the self. Major Chadwick, I do not know if the self is different from the ego. 
Answer, how were you in your deep sleep? Disciple, I do not know. Answer, who does not know? Is it not the waking self? Do you deny your existence in your deep sleep? Disciple, I was and I am, but I do not know who was in deep sleep. Answer, exactly. The man awake says that he did not know anything in this state of sleep. Now he sees the objects and knows that he is there, whereas in deep sleep there were no objects, no spectator, etc. The same one who is now speaking was in deep sleep also. What is the difference between these two states? There are objects and play of senses now which were not in sleep. A new entity, the ego, has risen up in the meantime. It plays through the senses, sees the objects, confounds itself with the body and says that the self is the ego. In reality, what was in deep sleep continues to exist now too. The self is changeless. It is the ego that has come between. That which rises and sets is the ego, that which remains changeless is the self. Talk 1, 144. Mr. Perkasa Rao. What is the root cause of Maya? Answer, what is Maya? Disciple, Maya is wrong knowledge, illusion. Answer, for whom is the illusion? There must be one to be deluded. Illusion is ignorance. The ignorant self sees the objects according to you. When the objects are not themselves present, how can Maya exist? Maya is Yama, Maya is what is not. What remains over is the true self. If you say that you see the objects, or if you say that you do not know the real unity, then err are there two selves, one the knower and the other the noble object. No one will admit of two selves in himself. The awakened man says that he himself was in deep slumber but not aware. He does not say that the sleeper was different from the present one. There is only one self. That self is always aware. It is changeless. There is nothing but the self. Disciple, what is the astral body? Answer, do you not have a body in your dream? Is it not different from the recumbent body on the bed? Disciple, do we survive after death? Does the astral body outlive physical death? Answer, just as in dreams you wake up after several novel experiences, so also after physical death another body is found and so on. Disciple, they say that the astral body lives for forty years after death. Answer, in the present body you say the dream body is astral. Did you say so in the dream body? What is astral now would appear real then. The present body itself is astral according to that viewpoint. What is the difference between one astral body and another? There is no difference between the two. Mr. Brunton, there are degrees of reality. Answer, to say the dream body is unreal now, and to say that this body was unreal in the dream, does not denote degrees of reality. In deep sleep there is no experience of the body at all. There is always only one, and that is the self. Talk 1, 145. Mr. Brunton, why do religions speak of gods, heaven, hell, etc.? Answer, only to make the people realize that they are on a par with this world and that the self alone is real. The religions are according to the viewpoint of the seeker. Take the Bhagavad Gita for instance. When Arjuna said that he would not fight against his own relatives, his elders, etc., in order to kill them and gain the kingdom, Sri Krishna said, not that these, you or I, were not before, are not now, nor will not be hereafter. Nothing was born, nothing was dead, nor will it not be so hereafter, and so on. Later as he developed the theme and declared that he had given the same instruction to the sun, through him to Ikshvaku, etc. Arjuna raised the doubt, how could it be? You were born a few years ago. They lived ages ago. Then Sri Krishna, understanding Arjuna's standpoint, said, Yes, there have been so many incarnations of myself and yourself, 
I know them all but you do not know. Such statements appear contradictory, but still they are correct according to the viewpoint of the questioner. The Christ also declared that he was even before Abraham. Disciple, what is the purpose of such descriptions in religions? Answer, only to establish the reality of the self. Disciple, Bhagavan always speaks from the highest standpoint. Sri Bhagavan with a smile. People would not understand the simple and bare truth the truth of their everyday, ever-present and eternal experience. That truth is that of the self. Is there anyone not aware of the self? They would not even like to hear it, whereas they are eager to know what lies beyond heaven hell reincarnation. Because they love mystery and not the bare truth, religions pamper them only to bring them round to the self. Wandering hither and thither you must return to the self only. Then, why not abide in the self even here and now? The other worlds require the self as a spectator or speculator. Their reality is only of the same degrees as that of the spectator or thinker. They cannot exist without the spectator, etc. Therefore, they are not different from the self. Even the ignorant man sees only the self when he sees objects. But he is confused and identifies the self with the object, in other words, the body and with the senses and plays in the world. Subject and object all merge in the self. There is no seer nor object seen. The seer and the seen are the self. There are not many selves either. All are only one self. 26 January 1936 Talk 1 146 In reply to Miss Lena Sarabhai, a cultured Indian lady of high rank, Sri Bhagavan said, The state of equanimity is the state of bliss. The declaration in the Ved, as I am this or that is only an aid to gain equanimity of mind. Disciple, so it is wrong to begin with a goal, is it? Answer, if there be a goal to be reached it cannot be permanent. The goal must already be there. We seek to reach the goal with the ego but the goal exists before the ego. What is in the goal is even prior to our birth, in other words, to the birth of the ego. Because we exist the ego appears to exist too. If we look on the self as the ego then we become the ego, if as the mind we become the mind, if as the body we become the body. It is the thought which builds up sheaths in so many ways. The shadow on the water is found to be shaking. Can anyone stop the shaking of the shadow? If it should cease to shake, you would not notice the water but only the light. Similarly to take no notice of the ego and its activities, but see only the light behind. The ego is the I thought. The true I is the self. Disciple, it is one step to realization. Answer, realization is already there. The state free from thoughts is the only real state. There is no such action as realization. Is there anyone who is not realizing the self? Does anyone deny his own existence? Speaking of realization, it implies two selves, the one to realize, the other to be realized. What is not already realized, is sought to be realized. Once we admit our existence, how is it that we do not know ourself? Disciple, because of the thoughts the mind. Answer, quite so. It is the mind that stands between and veils our happiness. How do we know that we exist? If you say because of the world around us, then how do you know that you existed in deep sleep? Disciple, how to get rid of the mind? Answer, is it the mind that wants to kill itself? The mind cannot kill itself. So your business is to find the real nature of the mind. Then you will know that there is no mind. When the self is sought, the mind is nowhere. Abiding in the self, one need not worry about the mind. Disciple, how to get rid of fear. Answer, what is fear? It is only a thought. If there is anything besides the self, there is reason to fear. 
Who sees the second anything external? First the ego arises and sees objects as external. If the ego does not rise, the self alone exists and there is no second, nothing external. For anything external to oneself implies the seer within. Seeking it there will arise no doubt, no fear, not only fear, all other thoughts centered round the ego will disappear along with it. Disciple, this method seems to be quicker than the usual one of cultivating qualities alleged necessary for salvation. Answer, yes. All bad qualities center round the ego. When the ego is gone, realization results by itself. There are neither good nor bad qualities in the self. The self is free from all qualities. Qualities pertain to the mind only. It is beyond quality. If there is unity, there will also be duality. The numeral one gives rise to other numbers. The truth is neither one nor two. It is as it is. Disciple, the difficulty is to be in the thought, free state. Answer. Leave the thought, free state to itself. Do not think of it as pertaining to you. Just as when you walk, you involuntarily take steps, so too in your actions, but the thought, free state is not affected by your actions. Disciple. What is it that is discriminative in action? Answer. Discrimination will be automatic, intuitive. Disciple. So intuition alone matters. Intuition develops also. Answer. Those who have discovered great truths have done so in the still depths of the self. The ego is like one's shadow thrown on the ground. If one attempts to bury it, it will be foolish. The self is only one. If limited, it is the ego. If unlimited, it is infinite and is the reality. The bubbles are different from one another and numerous, but the ocean is only one. Similarly, the egos are many, whereas the self is one and only one. When told that you are not the ego, realize the reality. Why do you still identify yourself with the ego? It is like saying, Don, think of the monkey while taking medicine. It is impossible. Similarly, it happens with common folk. When the reality is mentioned, why do you continue to meditate Sivoham or Aham Brahmasmi? The significance must be traced and understood. It is not enough to repeat the bare words or think of them. Reality is simply the loss of the ego. Destroy the ego by seeking its identity. Because the ego is no entity, it will automatically vanish and reality will shine forth by itself. This is the direct method. Whereas all other methods are done only retaining the ego. In those paths there arise so many doubts and the eternal question remains to be tackled finally. But in this method the final question is the only one and it is raised from the very beginning. No sadness are necessary for engaging in this quest. There is no greater mystery than this namely, ourselves being the reality we seek to gain reality. We think that there is something hiding our reality, and that it must be destroyed before the reality is gained. It is ridiculous. A day will dawn when you will yourself laugh at your past efforts. That which will be on the day you laugh is also here and now. Disciple, so it is a great game of pretending. Answer, yes. In Yoga Vasishtha, it is said, what is real is hidden from us, but what is false is revealed as true. We are actually experiencing the reality only still, we do not know it. Is it not a wonder of wonders? The quest to am I is the axe with which to cut off the ego. Talk 147 in answer to a Kanair Sannyasi, Sri Bhagavan said, There are different grades of mind. Realization is of perfection. Can be comprehended by the mind. Sarvajnatva the state of all. Knowing is to be sarvam the all. The all pertains only to the mind. The known and unknown together form the all. 
After transcending the mind you remain as the self. The present knowledge is only of limitation. That knowledge is unlimited. Being so it cannot be comprehended by this knowledge. Cease to be a knower then there is perfection. 27th January 1936 Talk 1, 148 a Gujarati gentleman said that he was concentrating on sound nada and desired to know if the method was right. Answer, meditation on nada is one of the several approved methods. The adherents claim a very special virtue for the method. According to them, it is the easiest and the most direct method. Just as a child is lulled to sleep by lullabies, so Nada soothes one to the state of Samadhi, again just as a king sends his state musicians to welcome his son on his return from a long journey, so also Nada takes the devotee into the Lord's abode in a pleasing manner. Nada helps concentration. After it is felt the practice should not be made an end in itself. Nada is not the objective, the subject should firmly be held otherwise a blank will result. Though the subject is there even in the blank he would not be aware of the cessation of not of different kinds. In order to be aware even in that blank one must remember his own self. Not a upasana, meditation on sound is good, it is better if associated with investigation vichara. In that case the nada is made up of chinmaya and also tamaya of knowledge and of self. Nada helps concentration. 28th January 1936 Talk 1, 149 In reply to a sadhu who asked if bhakti consisted in forgetting the body etc. Sri Bhagavan said, Would you care for the body? Practice bhakti and don't worry about what happens to the body. Talk 1, 150. Miss and Mr. Kelly, an elderly couple from America, and others of their company desired to know what they should do to gain concentration in face of discomforts of sitting and the sting of mosquitoes, etc. Answer, the discomforts will not worry you if your concentration is right. Do not mind the discomforts. Keep your mind steady in meditation. If you have not the strength and endurance to bear mosquito stings, how do you hope to gain realization of the self? Realization must be amidst all the turmoils of life. If you make yourself comfortable and go to bed, you fall asleep. Face the troubles but keep yourself steady in meditation. 31st January 1936 Talk 1, 151 the American gentleman is a little hard of hearing. Being accustomed to be self-reliant from his youth, he naturally feels worried on account of his hearing becoming defective. Maharshi, you were not self-reliant, you were ego-reliant. It is good that ego-reliance is banished and that you become truly self-reliant. Again Bhagavan said, There is no cause for worry. Subjugation of senses is a necessary preliminary for self-realization. One sense is subdued for you by God himself. So much the better. The questioner said that he appreciated the humor, but that still his self-respect suffered. Answer, the self is only one. Do you feel hurt if you blame yourself or scorn yourself for your errors? If you hold the self there is no second person to scorn you. When you see the world you have lost hold of the self. On the contrary hold the self and the world will not appear. 1st February 1936 Talk 1, 152 Miss Kelly desired to know how she should best learn to meditate. Sri Bhagavan asked if she had made Japa rolling beads as Roman Catholics do. She said, No. Answer. Have you thought of God, his qualities, etc.? Disciple, I have read, talked, etc. about such themes. Answer, well, if the same be revolved in the mind without open expression through the senses it is meditation. Disciple, I mean meditation is signified in the secret path, and who am I? Answer, 
long for it intensely so that the mind melts in devotion. After the camphor burns away no residue is left. The mind is the camphor, when it has resolved itself into the self without leaving even the slightest trace behind, it is realization of the self. 4th February, 1936 Talk 1, 153 some Peshawaris, among them a judicial commissioner and a young man well read and earnest, with a strong belief in the existence of Paramatman's supreme self as different from the Jivatman individual self, raised some questions. Tri Bhagavan clinched his various doubts by this one statement. Remove the Upadhyas adjuncts Jivan and Parama from the Atman and say if you still find the difference. If later these doubts still persist, ask yourself, who is the doubter? Who is the thinker? Find him. These doubts will vanish. 5th February 1936 Talk 154 The next day he asked about Pranayama. Answer, Pranayama according to Jhana is. 1. Not Aham. I am not this equals out breathing. 2. Koham who am I equals in breathing. 3. Soham, I am he equals retention of breath. This is vichara. This vichara brings about the desired result. For when not so advanced as to engage in it, some meditation brings about suspension of breath and the mind ceases to be restless. Control of mind spontaneously affects control of breath, rather kavala kampalka, spontaneous retention of breath, without attention to inhalation or exhalation results. For one unable to do this also, regulation of breath is prescribed for making the mind quiescent. Quiescence lasts only so long as the breath is controlled. So it is transient. The goal is clearly not pranayama. It extends on Tapratya Hara Dharana Dhyana and Samadhi. Those stages deal with the control of mind. Such control becomes easier for the man who had earlier practiced pranayama. Pranayama leads him to the higher stages involving control of mind. Therefore control of mind is the aim of yoga also. A more advanced man will naturally go direct to control of mind without wasting his time in practicing control of breath. A simple development of pranayama alone may confer siddhis which so many hanker for. When asked if there are any food restrictions, Sri Bhagavan said, Meat a heat a buck, agreeable food in moderate quantity. When asked about the efficacy of bhakti, Sri Bhagavan said, so long as there is vibhakti, there must be bhakti. So long as there is vyoga, there must be yoga. So long as there is duality, there must be God and devotee. Similarly also in vichara. So long as there is vichara, there is duality too. But merging into the source there is unity only. So it is with bhakti too. Realizing the God of devotion, there will be unity only. God too is thought of in and by the self. So God is identical with the self. If one is told to have bhakti for God, and he does so straight away, it is all right. But there is another kind of man who turns round and says, There are two, I and God. Before knowing the far-off God, let me know the more immediate and intimate I. For him the vichar marga has to be taught. There is in fact no difference between bhakti and vichara. Talk 1, 155. The same man again asked about the nature of samadhi and the means to get samadhi. Answer, when the one who asks the nature of samadhi and the method of getting into it vanishes, samadhi will result. Major Chadwick. It is said that one look of a mahatma is enough that idols, pilgrimages, etc are not so effective. I have been here for three months, but I do not know how I have been benefited by the look of Maharshi. Answer, the look has a purifying effect. Purification cannot be visualized. 
Just as a piece of coal takes long to be ignited, a piece of charcoal takes a short time and a mass of gunpowder is instantaneously ignited, so it is with grades of men coming in contact with Mahatmas. Mr. Cohen, I get into meditation and reach a point which may be called peace and a contemplative mood. What should be the next step? Answer, peace is self-realization. Peace need not be disturbed. One should aim at peace only. Disciple, but I do not have the satisfaction. Answer, because your peace is temporary. If made permanent, it is called realization. 9th February 1936 Talk 1, 156 Disciple, is solitude helpful for practice? Answer, what do you mean by solitude? Disciple, to keep away from others. Answer, why should it be done? It is actuated only by fear. Even in solitude there is the fear of intrusion by others and of solitude being spoiled. Moreover, how are thoughts to be erased in solitude? Should it not be done in the present environment? Disciple, but the mind is distracted now. Answer, why do you let go the mind? Solitude amounts to making the mind still. This can be done in a crowd too. Solitude cannot efface one's thoughts. Practice does it. The same practice can be made here too. Talk 1, 157. Disciple, in the quest of I, the seeker is at a certain stage directed to keep the mind in a negative attitude for grace to enter. How can a negative yield positive result? Answer, the self is always there not to be newly got. Disciple, I mean to ask, what has been done in the negative attitude to deserve the grace? Answer, are you asking this question without grace? Grace is in the beginning, middle, and end. Grace is the self. Because of the false identification of the self with the body, the guru is considered to be with body. But from the guru's outlook, the guru is only the self. The self is one only. He tells that the self alone is. Is not then the self your guru? Where else will grace come from? It is from the self alone. Manifestation of the self is a manifestation of grace and vice versa. All these doubts arise because of the wrong outlook and consequent expectation of things external to oneself. Nothing is external to the self. Disciple, all our questions are from our standpoint and Sri Bhagavan's replies are from his standpoint. The questions are not only answered, but are also undermined. 11th February 1936 Talk 1, 158 Mr. Fridman, Danaka was a Johnny and still he ruled his dominions. Does not action require activity of the mind? What is the rationale of the working of a Johnny's mind? Answer, you say Danaka was a Johnny and yet active etc. Does Janaka ask the question? The question is in your mind only. The Johnny is not aware of anything besides the self. He has no doubts of the kind. Disciple, probably it is like a dream. Just as we speak of our dreams, so they think of their actions. Answer, even the dream etc. is in your mind. This explanation too is in your mind only. Disciple, yes. I see. All is Ramanamiya made up of the self. Answer, if so there will be no duality and no talk. Disciple, a man on realizing the self can help the world more effectively. Is it not so? Answer, if the world be apart from the self. 12th February, 1936 Talk 1, 159 Mr. Cohen desired to know if trance is a sign qua non for self-realization. Answer, you are always in the self now in trance and deep sleep in realization. If you lose hold of the self and identify yourself with the body or the mind, these states appear to overtake you, 
and it also looks like a blank in trance, etc., whereas you are the self and ever-present. Disciple, Sri Aurobindo says that the light which resides in the head must be brought down to the heart below. Answer, is not the self already in the heart? How can the all-pervading self be taken from one place to another? Disciple, is a karma yogi or a back to two subject to trance? Answer, when you concentrate on one point you merge in it and this merging is called trance. The other features disappear and the self alone remains over. The karmi or bhakta also must experience the same. Talk 160. Disciple, what is the hridaya and what the sphirina therein? How do they appear? Answer, the hridaya and the sphirina are the same as the self. The sphirina requires a basis for its manifestation. This is explained in the book Vichara Sangraham Self-Inquiry. Disciple, how does the Sphiran appear as light movement or what? Answer, how can it be described in words? It includes all these it is the self. Fix your attention on it, and do not let go the idea of its ultimate character. 13th February 1936 Talk 1, 161 an elderly man from Anantapur, after hearing the Vedas recited in the hall, stood up and asked, It is said that the non-Brahmins should not hear the recital of the Vedas. Answer, mind your business. Take care of what you came here for. Why do you waste your time in these matters? I heard the recital, you say. Who is that I? Without knowing the I, you are using the word. If its significance be known, there will be no doubt. Find the eye first and you may afterwards speak of other matters. Continuing, Sri Bhagavan said, The SM, rightists say something. They are not appropriate now. I will reform the world, rewrite the SM, rightists. Saying so, people are cutting capers in the world from time immemorial. Such reformers have come and gone, but the ancient Sem writers still stand. Why waste time over such matters? Let each one mind his business. All will be well. 23rd February 19, 136 Talk 1, 162 A Maharashtra lady of middle age who had studied Jane Ainsworthy, Bhagavata and Vichara Sagara, and was practicing concentration between the eyebrows, had felt shivering in fear, and did not progress. She required guidance. Meher, she told her not to forget the seer. The sight is fixed between the eyebrows, but the seer is not kept in view. If the seer be always remembered, it will be all right. 24th February 1936 Talk 1, 163 Dr. Henry Hand, an American of about 70, asked what is ego? Answer, ego being internal and not external to you it must be clear to yourself. Disciple, what is its definition? Answer, the definition also must proceed from the ego. The ego must define itself. Disciple, what is soul? Answer, find the ego the soul is found. Disciple, are they then the same? Answer, soul can be without the ego, but the ego cannot be without the soul. They are like bubble in the ocean. Disciple, that clarifies the matter. What is Atman? Answer, Atman and soul are the same. Talk 1, 164. Another American asked about thought forms. Answer, trace the source of thoughts, they will disappear. Disciple, thoughts materialize. Answer, if there be thoughts they will materialize. If they disappear there is nothing to materialize. Moreover if you are physical the world is physical and so on. Find out if you are physical. Disciple, how shall I be useful to God's world? Answer, find out if I is different from the divine part of the world. Not being able to help yourself yet you are seeking the divine part of it to help you to help the world. 
The divinity is directing and controlling you. Where do you go in deep sleep? Where from do you come out? Disciple, I have been influenced by deeds and thoughts. Answer, thoughts and deeds are the same. Disciple, is there any way of sensing superphysical phenomena, for example, guardian angels? Answer, the state of the object is according to the state of the seer. Disciple, a group of seers see the same. Answer, because there is only one seer behind all, and there is diversity of phenomena. Do you perceive diversity in deep sleep? Disciple, we see Abraham Lincoln who died long ago. Answer, is there the object without the seer? The experiences may be real. The objects are only according to the seer. Disciple, an assistant of mine was killed in the war. A photo was taken of another group nine years after his death. His picture appears in the photo. How is it? Answer, possibly thoughts have materialized. Go to the root of it. Disciple, how? Answer, if the way is external, directions are possible, but it lies within. Seek within. The self is always realized. Something not already realized might be sought afresh. The self is within your experience. Disciple, yes. I realize myself. Answer, myself. Are there two my and self? Disciple, I do not mean it. Answer, who is it that has or has not realized? Disciple, there is only one self. Answer, the question can arise only if there be two. Abandon the wrong identification of the self with the non-self. Disciple, I mean the higher stage of consciousness. Answer, there are no stages. Disciple, why does not a man get illumination instantly? Answer, the man is illumination itself. He is illumining. Disciple, is your teaching different from that of others? Answer, the path is one and the realization is only one. Disciple, but people speak of so many methods. Answer, depending on their own state of mentality. Disciple, what is yoga? Answer, yoga union is for one and yoga separation. But there is only one. If you realize the self there will be no difference. Disciple, is there efficacy in bathing in the Ganges? Answer, the Ganges is within you. This Ganges does not make you feel cold or shiver. Bathe in it. Disciple, should we rid Gita once in a while? Answer, always. Disciple, may we read the Bible? Answer, the Bible and the Gita are the same. Disciple, the Bible teaches that man is born in sin. Answer, the man is sin. There was no man since in deep sleep. The body, thought brings out the idea of sin. The birth of thought is itself sin. To another question the master said, Everyone sees only the self. The divine forms are only like bubbles in the ocean of reality, or like pictures moving on a screen. Disciple, the Bible says that the human soul may be lost. Answer, the I thought is the ego and that is lost. The real I is I am that I am. Disciple, there is conflict in the teachings of Aurobindo and of the mother. Answer, first surrender the self and then harmonize the conflicts. Disciple, what is renunciation? Answer, giving up of the ego. Disciple, is it not giving up possessions? Answer, the possessor too. Disciple, the world will change if the people will give up their possessions for the benefit of others. Answer, first give yourself up and then think of the rest. In answer to another question Sri Bhagavan said, The methods appear easy according to the nature of the individual. It depends on what he has practiced before. Disciple, can we not get realization instantaneously? Answer, realization is nothing new. It is eternal. 
There is no question of instantaneous or gradual realization. Disciple, is there reincarnation? Answer, reincarnation can be if you are incarnate now. Even now you are not born. To another question. Answer, the ego is the root of all diseases. Give it up. There will be no disease. Disciple, if all renounce will there be a practical world? Who will plow? Who will harvest? Answer, realize first and then see. The help through realization transcends all the help through words, thoughts and deeds, etc. If you understand your own reality then that of the rishis and masters will be clear to you. There is only one master and that is the self. Disciple, why do masters insist on silence and receptivity? Answer, what is silence? It is eternal eloquence. Disciple, what is receptive attitude of mind? Answer, not to be distracted in mind. Disciple, is there use in bringing America and India closer by bringing the intelligentsia of the two countries together, say by exchange of professors, etc.? Answer, such events will take place automatically. There is a power guiding the destinies of nations. These questions arise only when you have lost touch with reality. Is America apart from you or India apart? Get hold of it and see. Disciple, Sri Ramakrishna prepared Vivekananda. What is the power behind? Answer, the power is only one in all. Disciple, what is the nature of that force? Answer, just like iron filings drawn towards a magnet. The force is inside and not outside. Ramakrishna was in Vivekananda. If you think Vivekananda to be a body, Ramakrishna also is a body. But they are not bodies. Vivekananda could not go into Samad, he had not Ramakrishna been within him. Disciple, why should one suffer when stung by a scorpion? Answer, what is the cause of the appearance of the body and of the world? Disciple, it is part of the cosmic mind. Answer, let the cosmic mind worry about such happenings. If the individual wants to know, let him discover his self. Disciple, about yogic mysteries of drinking nitric acid, swallowing poisons, walking on fire, etc., are these due to a state of vibration? Answer, let the physical body question it. You are not physical. Why worry about what you are not? If the self had any form it might be affected by objects. But the self has no form therefore it is immune from contact with things. Disciple, what is the significance of the sea of love? Answer, spirit, holy ghost, realization, love, etc. are all synonymous. Disciple, very, very illuminating conversation. Mr. Subarau, what is Visishtadvaita? Answer, the same as this. Disciple, they do not admit Maya. Answer, Sarvam is Brahman we say. They repeat Brahman remains qualified Visishta and all. Disciple, they say that the world is a reality. Answer, we say so too. Acharya has only said, find out the reality behind the world. What is called illusion by one is called changefulness by another. The end is the same in both. Dr. Hand. Maharshi. Do not think we are bad boys. Answer. Do not tell me so. But you need not think you are bad boys. All laughed and dispersed at 5 p.m. Three bag of an a minute later. If they remain a day longer they will become silent. Talk 1. 165. Mr. Subbar Rao. Do not men go into Samadhi? Answer. Is there no Samadhi now? Disciple. Is it eternal? Answer. If not, how can it be real? Disciple, then. Answer. There is no then, no now. Disciple. It appears so. Answer. To whom? Disciple. To the mind. 
Answer, what is mind? Who am I, disciple? Remain silence. Talk 166. A man asked if it was possible to ward off old age and disease by the intake of divine force. Answer, you can ward off the body itself. Disciple, how to take in the divine force? Answer, it is already there. No need to take it in. It can be done only if it is out of you. But it is only you. There is no taking in or giving out. Disciple, is there any necessity to obey physical laws, in other words dieting? Answer, these are an imagination only. Talk 167. A man was worried because he could not succeed in concentrating the mind. Answer, is it not only when even now? It always remains when only. Diversity lies in your imagination only. Unitary being need not be acquired. Talk 168. It was mentioned to Sri Bhagavan that a self-realized being needs no food etc. Answer, you understand according to your state only. Talk 1, 169. Disciple, how to control the mind. Answer, catch hold of the mind. Disciple, how? Answer, what is mind? Find it out. It is only an aggregate of thoughts. Disciple, how to root out sexual impulse. Answer, by rooting out the false idea of the body being self. There is no sex in the self. Disciple, how to realize it. Answer, because you think you are the body, you see another as the body. Difference in sex arises. But you are not the body. Be the real self. Then there is no sex. Talk 1, 170. Disciple. Can a yogi know his past lives? Answer, do you know the present life so well that you wish to know the past? Find out the present life, then the rest will follow. Even with our present limited knowledge we suffer so much. Why do you wish to burden yourself with more knowledge and suffer more? Disciple, can fasting help realization? Answer, but it is temporary. Mental fast is the real aid. Fasting is not an end in itself. There must be spiritual development side by side. Absolute fasting makes the mind weak too. You cannot derive sufficient strength for the spiritual quest. Therefore take moderate food and go on practicing. Disciple, they say that after breaking a month's fast, ten days afterwards the mind becomes pure and steady and remains so forever. Answer, yes if the spiritual quest has been kept upright through the fast also. Talk 1, 171. To another question master said, The best is heart-to-heart -heart speech and heart-to-heart -heart hearing. That is the best upaitsa. Disciple, is not guidance from Kiru necessary? Answer, are you apart from Kiru? Disciple, is proximity helpful? Answer. Do you mean physical proximity? What is the good of it? The mind alone matters. Mind must be contacted. 28 February 1936 Talk 1 172 A visitor. What is the difference between meditation dhyana and investigation vichara? Answer. Both amount to the same. Those unfit for investigation must practice meditation. In this practice the aspirant forgetting himself meditates I am Brahman or I am Siva thus he continues to hold to Brahman or Siva. This will ultimately end on the residual being as Brahman or Siva which he will realize to be pure being, in other words the self. He who engages in investigation starts holding on to himself, asks who am I, and the self becomes clear to him. Disciple, will the knowledge gained by direct experience be lost afterwards? Answer, Kivya Navanita says it may be lost. Experience gained without rooting out all the vasanas cannot remain steady. 
efforts must be made to eradicate the Vasanas. Otherwise rebirth after death takes place. Some say direct experience results from hearing from one's master. Others say it is from reflection, yet others say from one-pointedness and also from samadhi. Though they look different on the surface, ultimately they mean the same. Knowledge can remain unshaken only after all the vasanas are rooted out. 29th February 1936 Talk 1, 173 Disciple, Lord, how can the grip of the ego be slackened? Answer, by not adding new vasanas to it. Disciple, any amount of japa has not slackened the grip. Answer, how so? It will duly slacken and vanish. 2nd March, 1936, Talk 1, 174. Dr. Han, the American gentleman, asked, Are there two methods for finding the source of the ego? Answer, there are no two sources and no two methods. There is only one source and only one method. Disciple, what is the difference between meditation and inquiry into the self? Answer, meditation is possible only if the ego be kept up. There is the ego and the object meditated upon. The method is indirect. Whereas the self is only one. Seeking the ego, in other words, its source ego disappears. What is left over is the self. This method is the direct one. Disciple, then what am I to do? Answer, to hold on to the self. Disciple, how? Answer, even now you are the self. But you are confounding this consciousness or ego with the absolute consciousness. This false identification is due to ignorance. Ignorance disappears along with the ego. Killing the ego is the only thing to accomplish. Realization is already there. No attempt is needed to attain realization. For it is nothing external, nothing new. It is always and everywhere here and now, too. 3rd March 1936 Talk 175 Mr. Subber Rao asked, The Visishtadvatins say that Atma Sakshatkara self-realization is preliminary to Paramatma Sakshatkara God-realization. The difficulty seems to be considerable. Answer, what is Atma Sakshat Kara? Are there two Atmas that one realizes the other? There are not two selves. First get Atma Sakshat Kara and then judge what follows. Disciple, the Bhagavad Gita says there is God whose body is made up of all the souls. Answer, all are agreed on the annihilation of the ego. Let us get to business on the agreed point. Nanajivava different individualities are mentioned by some Advaitins also. All that is immaterial to one's spiritual uplift. First realize the self and then see what lies further. 7th March 1936 Talk 1, 176 Dr. Hand intends leaving the Asramam tomorrow, visit the Himalayas Hardwar, return here, Go to Bombay and embark for Egypt, Palestine, Europe, and finally to his native land, America. He wants to go to the peak of the hill and desires Sri Bhagavan to accompany him. Sri Bhagavan might go up as high as is convenient for him and then wait for him to finish the climb and catch him at an appointed spot on the hill. Sri Bhagavan smiled and asked him if he had heard of the experience of Dr. Beasley. Dr. Hand. He is my friend. He has told me everything wonderful. I am older than you, Maharshi. But do not give me up as a back number. I can climb up the hill as a boy would. When did you go to the peak last? Answer. About eleven years before. What did Dr. Beasley say? Disciple. It is in strict confidence. I shall tell you everything if you are left alone with me. Maharshi simply smiled. Disciple, Maharshi, are you conscious of a brotherhood of invisible rishis? Answer, if invisible, how to see them? Disciple, 
in consciousness. Answer. There is nothing external in consciousness. Disciple. Is there not the individuality? I fear to lose my individual being. Is there not in consciousness the consciousness of being human? Answer. Why fear to lose individuality? What is your state in dreamless sleep? Are you conscious of your individuality then? Disciple. It is possible. Answer. But what is your experience? If individuality be there, would it be deep sleep? Disciple. That depends on the interpretation. What does Maharshi say? Answer. Maharshi cannot speak for your experience. He does not force anything down your throat. Disciple. I know. That is why I like him and his teaching so much. Answer. Do you not really prepare your bed and are you not anxious to lose your individuality in deep sleep? Why fear it? Disciple, what is the nirvana of Buddha? Answer, loss of individuality. Disciple, I dread that loss. Can there not be human consciousness in nirvana? Answer, are there two selves in that case? Consider your present experience of sleep and say, Disciple, I should think it possible to retain individual consciousness in nirvana. I fear the loss of individuality. Later, the questioner went up and round the hill and wandered about 15 miles between 12 noon and 8 p.m. He returned tired and gave a very lucid speech on agriculture, social conditions, caste system, spiritual quality of the Indians, etc. 10th March, 1936 Talk 1, 177 Disciple, what is Mahat? Answer, the projected light from absolute consciousness. Just as a seed swells up before sprouting and then sprouts and grows, so also the absolute consciousness projects light, manifests as the ego and grows up as the body and the universe. Major Chadwick is it the same as cosmic consciousness? Answer, yes it is so before the birth of the ego in the universe. It comprises them all. Just as all the pictures thrown on the screen are visible by the light projected from a spot, so also the body and the other objects are all visible in that reflected consciousness. It is therefore also cosmic consciousness. Again, in the microcosm, the body and all other objects are all contained in the brain. The light is projected on the brain. The impressions in the brain become manifest as the body and the worlds. Because the ego identifies itself with limitations, the body is considered separate and the world separate. Lying down on your bed in a closed room with eyes closed you dream of London, the crowds there and you among them. A certain body is identified as yourself in the dream. London and the rest could not have entered into the room and into your brain however, such wide space and duration of time were all perceptible to you. They must have been projected from the brain. Although the world is so big and the brain so small, is it not a matter of wonder that such a big creation is contained in such small compass as one's brain? Though the screen is limited, still all the pictures of the cinema pass on it and are visible there. You do not wonder how such a long procession of events could be manifest on such a small screen. Similarly with the objects and the brain. Disciple, then cosmic consciousness is not the same as realization? Answer, cosmic consciousness is behind the ego. It may be called Asvara, and the ego is Jaiva. Asvara may also be said to be the absolute. There is no difference there. The consciousness which pervades even Asvara is the absolute one. Talk 1, 178. Disciple, what is the flame mentioned in Vichara Sangraha? It is said to be Atmajayoti and one is directed to find the reality behind it. Answer. The Vedas mention the flame. 
that flame is to be identified with the ego consciousness. 11th March 1936 Talk 179 Mr. Fridman had asked Swami Ramdas something, to which he replied that there would be no more births for himself. The engineer had pointed out there should be no anxiety regarding rebirth. There will be the same Rama, the same Ramdas, the same search for Rama and the same bliss of realization. What objection could be there for the repetition of this Ramalila? Ramdas had admitted that there could be no objection, that it would be an enjoyment and a game. The engineer further said that Ramdas added that Ramdas had found Rama merged in him and happy in that union. They are the same, still there was Ramdas, there was Rama, there was the union, there was the bliss. That is eternal. Saying it, he asked what Sri Bhagavan would say to it. Answer, it is all as true as the present events. Talk 1, 180. Later, the same gentleman said that sleep was a state of oblivion and the wakeful state was the mind's activity. The mind was in a potential state in sleep. Answer, were you not in sleep? Disciple, yes I was. But in a state of oblivion. There must be a witness of oblivion and of the mind which says that I am continuous in both states. Answer, who is this witness? You speak of witness. There must be an object and a subject to witness. These are creations of the mind. The idea of witness is in the mind. If there was the witness of oblivion did he say, I witness oblivion. You with your mind said just now that there must be a witness. Who was the witness? You must reply I. Who is that I again? You are identifying yourself with the ego and say I. Is this ego I the witness? It is the mind that speaks. It cannot be witness of itself. With self-imposed limitations, you think that there is a witness of mind and of oblivion. You also say, I am the witness. That one who witnesses the oblivion must say, I witness oblivion. The present mind cannot arrogate to itself that position. The whole position becomes thus untenable. Consciousness is unlimited. On becoming limited it simply arrogates to itself the position. There is really nothing to witness. It is. Simple being. Talk 1. 181. Disciple. Yad Gatva Na Nivartante Tadama Paramem Mama. Which is that Dhamma? Is it not the absolute state beyond cosmic consciousness? Answer, yes. Disciple, non-nivartante would mean not covered by ignorance again. Answer, yes. Disciple, does it follow by inference that those who reach cosmic consciousness have not escaped from the clutches of ignorance? Answer, that is what is meant by saying that all lokas, even the Brahma loka, do not release one from rebirth. See also the Bhagavad Gita. Reaching me there is no rebirth. All others are in bondage. Moreover, so long as you think that there is Gadi movement as implied in the word Gava having gone to there is Punar of Riddhi return also. Again Gadi implies your pervagaman on birth. What is birth? It is birth of ego. Once born you reach something, if you reach it you return also. Therefore leave off all this verbiage. Be as you are. See who you are and remain as the self, free from birth, going, coming and returning. Disciple, true. However often this truth is heard, still it eludes us and we forget it. Answer, quite so. Reminders are often necessary. Talk 1, 182. In the course of the day, an interesting photo was missing. Sri Bhagavan appeared concerned about it. Mr. Fridman asked how Sri Bhagavan viewed all these matters. Sri Bhagavan said, Suppose you dream that you are taking me to Poland. You wake up and ask me. I dreamt so and so. Did you dream so or know it? Or how do you view it? Disciple, 
but you are not aware of the happenings in front of you? Answer, these are all workings of the mind and the questions also. Then again Sri Bhagavan related an episode in Sri Rama's search for Sita. Parvati asked Seva why Rama, the perfect being, was grieving at the loss of Sita. Saiva said that Rama was still perfect. If the perfection need be tested and made clear, Parvati might appear as Sita before Rama and see what happened. So she did. Rama ignored her appearance and was still crying out, Ha! Sita! Ha! Sita! And moved on like a blind man without taking any notice of Parvati. 13th March 1936 Talk 1, 183 A gentleman from Bombay said, I asked Mother in Sri Aurobindo Ashram the following question. I keep my mind blank without thoughts arising so that God might show himself in his true being. But I do not perceive anything. The reply was to this effect. The attitude is right. The power will come down from above. It is a direct experience. So he asked what further he should do. Answer, be what you are. There is nothing to come down or become manifest. All that is needful is to lose the ego that what is is always there. Even now you are that. You are not apart from it. The blank is seen by you. You are there to see the blank. What do you wait for? The thought I have not seen, the expectation to see and the desire of getting something, are all the working of the ego. You have fallen into the snares of the ego. The ego says all these and not you. Be yourself and nothing more. Talk 1, 184. Meharshi. To imagine Mulet Hara at the bottom, the heart at the center, or the head at the top or over all these is all wrong. In one word to think is not your real nature. Talk 1, 185. Meharshi, in the sacred literature the following are seen, said without uttering, showed remaining still as ever, etc. Which is this unspoken word? It is only silence, pranava, or the Mahavakya. For these are also called the word. Talk 1, 186. Meharshi, we read a newspaper and all the articles therein, but do not care to know anything about the paper itself. We take the chaff but not the substance. The substratum on which all this is printed is the paper and if we know the substratum all else will be known, like wall and paintings. Disciple, you said the only one which exists is the real. What is that only one? Answer. The one only is the sat, the existence that appears as the world, the things that we see and we ourselves. Disciple, what is Atman? Is there a finality for the Atman? Answer, first learn what is Atman. If we know this then we can query as to whether it has a finality or not. Which do you call Atman? Disciple, Jiva is Atman. Answer, learn what Jiva is. What is the difference between Jiva and Atman? Is Jiva itself Atman, or is there any separate thing as Atman? There is an end for what you observe, that which is created has a destruction or end. That which is not created has no end. That which exists cannot be observed. It is unobservable. We must find out what it is that appears, the destruction of that which appears is the end. That which exists, exists forever, that which newly appears is later lost. Disciple, what happens after birth in human form, what happens toth jiva? Answer, let us know first what we are. We do not understand what we are, and until we know what we are there is no room for such a question. Please note, Bhagavan obviously here refers to the confusion of body as Atman Dihatma Bhuti which is the cause for this confusion of ideas of death and birth, for Atman has no birth or death, it is untainted by the elements of earth, fire, air and water, etc. Eta Roman 2, 11 Asachiam, Anvasakas Tvam Prajnavadamcha Bhashas, etc. 
What is it that had birth? Whom do you call a man? If instead of seeking explanation for birth, death and after death matters, the question is raised as to who and how you are now, these questions will not arise. You are the same while asleep deep sleep in dream and in waking state. Is the I thought jiva or the body jiva? Is this thought or nature? Or is the experience that we live etc. our nature? Disciple, why is Atmavachara necessary? Answer, if you do not make Atmavachara then Lokavachara creeps in. That which is not is sought for, but not that which is obvious. When once you have found what you seek, Vichara inquiry also ceases and you rest in it. As long as one is confusing the body with the Atman, Atman is said to be lost and one is said to seek for it. But the Atman itself is never lost. It always exists. A body is said to be Atman and Indriya is said to be Atman, then there is the Divatman and Paramatman and what not. There are a thousand and one things called Atman. Who for Atman is to know that which is really Atman. Samadhi. Kavala and Sahaja Talk 1, 187. Disciple. I maintain that the physical body of the man sunk in Samadhi as a result of unbroken contemplation of the self becomes motionless for that reason. It may be active or inactive. The mind fixed in such contemplation will not be affected by the body or the senses being restless. A disturbance of the mind is not always the forerunner of physical activity. Another man asserts that physical unrest certainly prevents nerva kalpa, samadhi or unbroken contemplation. What is your opinion? You are the standing proof of my statement. Answer. Both of you are right, you refer to Sahaja Nirvi Kalpa, and the other refers to Kavala Nirvi Kalpa. In the one case the mind lies immersed in the light of the self whereas the same lies in the darkness of ignorance and deep sleep. The subject discriminates one from the other samadhi stirring up from samadhi, and activity thereafter, unrest of the body, of the sight of the vital force and of the mind, the cognizance of objects and activity are all obstructions for him. In Sahaja, however, the mind has resolved itself into the self and has been lost. Differences and obstructions mentioned above do not therefore exist here. The activities of such a being are like the feeding of a somnolent boy, perceptible to the onlooker but not to the subject. The driver sleeping on his moving cart is not aware of the motion of the cart, because his mind is sunk in darkness. Similarly the Sahaja, Johnny remains unaware of his bodily activities because his mind is dead having been resolved in the ecstasy of Chit Ananda Self. The two words contemplation and Samadhi have been used loosely in the question. Contemplation is a forced mental process, whereas samadhi lies beyond effort. Characteristics of sleep 1. Mind alive 2. Sunk in oblivion Characteristics of kavala 1. Mind alive 2. Sunk in light 3. Like a bucket with a rope left lying in the water in a well 4. To be drawn out by the other end of the rope Characteristics of sahaja 1. Mind dead 2. Resolved into the self. 3. Like a river discharged into the ocean and its identity lost. 4. A river cannot be redirected from the ocean. Talk 1. 188. The essence of mind is only awareness or consciousness. When the ego, however, dominates it, it functions as the reasoning, thinking or sensing faculty. The cosmic mind being not limited by the ego, has nothing separate from itself, and is therefore only aware. This is what the Bible means by I am that I am. The ego-ridden mind has its strength sapped, and is too weak to resist the torturing thoughts. The egoless mind is happy in deep, dreamless sleep. Clearly therefore bliss and misery are only modes of mind, 
but the weak mode is not easily interchangeable with the strong mode. Activity is weakness and consequently miserable, passivity is strength and therefore blissful. The dormant strength is not apparent and therefore not availed of. The cosmic mind, manifesting in some rare being, is able to affect the linkage in others of the individual weak mind with the universal strong mind of the inner recess. Such a rare being is called the Kirur God in manifestation. 19th May 19, 136 Talk 1, 189 Mr. Oliver Lacombe, a middle-aged Frenchman who was on a visit to India being delegated by the Institute of Indian Civilization of the University of Paris, came here from French India. Among others he had desired to meet Maharshi, he came and stayed here about three hours. He had read in the Sanskrit original, the Bhagavad Gita, the Upanishads and the Sutras with commentaries by Sri Sankara and Ramanuja. He asked, Is Maharshi's teaching the same as Sankara's? Answer, Maharshi's teaching is only an expression of his own experience and realization. Others find that it tallies with Sri Sankara's. Disciple, quite so. Can it be put in other ways to express the same realization? Answer, a realized person will use his own language. Three Bhagavan added, silence is the best language. Disciple, what does Maharshi say about Hatha Yoga or Tantric practices? Answer, Maharshi does not criticize any of the existing methods. All are good for the purification of the mind. Because the purified mind alone is capable of grasping his method and sticking to its practice. Disciple, which is the best of the different yogas, karma, jhana, bhakti or hatha? Answer, see stanza 10 of Upaid Sasara. To remain in the self amounts to all these in their highest sense. Maharshi added, In dreamless sleep there is no world, no ego and no unhappiness. But the self remains. In the waking state there are all these, yet there is the self. One has only to remove the transitory happenings in order to realize the ever-present beatitude of the self. Your nature is bliss. Find that on which all the rest are superimposed and you then remain as the pure self. Disciple, yes. It amounts to the removal of alien limitations for discovering the ever-present self. That is what Sankara says. There is no attainment or loss. Answer, quite so. Aside, he understands. Disciple, how is work to be done ordinarily for an aspirant? Answer, without self-identification with the actor. For instance, did you intend visiting this place while in Paris? Disciple, no. Answer, you see how you are acting without your intention to do so? The Gita says that a man cannot remain without acting. The purpose of one's birth will be fulfilled whether you will it or not. Let the purpose fulfill itself. Disciple, why are there so many methods mentioned? For instance, Sri Ramakrishna says that bhakti is the best means for salvation. Answer, it is according to the standpoint of the aspirant. You have studied the Gita. Sri Krishna said, there was never a time when I and you and these kings were not, nor will they not be in future. That which is unreal never exists. That which is real never disappears. All that ever was even now is and will ever be. Again, I taught this truth to Aditya, he taught it to Manu, etc. Arjuna asked, How can it be? You were born some years back and only recently. How could you have taught Aditya? Three Krishna answered. Yes. We have had several births in the past. I know mine whereas you do not know yours. I tell you what happened in those past births. Look. That Krishna who began saying there was not I nor were you nor these kings says now that he had several births before. 
Krishna does not contradict himself, though it looks like it. He conforms to the outlook of Arjuna and speaks to him from his level. There is a parallel passage in the Bible where Jesus says, Before Abraham was, I am. The teachings of the sages are suited to the time, place, people and other surroundings. The visitor said he was leaving with regret. Maharshi smilingly interrupted, There is no leaving or returning. The Frenchman at once said he has transcended time and space. He returned to Pondicherry. 30th May 1936 Talk 1, 190 There is a pet squirrel in the hall which usually retires into its cage before nightfall. Just as Maharishi was telling it to retire for the night a visitor who had announced that he had attained the transcendent consciousness suggested that water might be offered to it, since it was likely to be thirsty on this hot evening. His presumption to understand animals evoked no response. He repeated it. After a few minutes silence Maharishi said, you are probably thirsty after your long meditation in the hot sun on the hotter rocks and you would like to drink a jug of water. Disciple, quite so. I have taken water. Answer, the squirrel is not so thirsty. Because you were practicing austerities in the heat of the sun you should feel thirsty. Why prescribe it for the squirrel? Meher she added. I noticed him standing on the hot rocks facing the sun with eyes closed. I stood there for a while but did not want to disturb him and came away. These people do as they please. Disciple, what I did I did not intend beforehand. It was spontaneous. Answer, oh, I see. Whatever we others do we do with intention. You seem to have transcended all. Disciple, this is not the first time I did so. You yourself inspire me and make me do all these things. Yet you ask me why I did it. How is it? Answer, I see. You are doing actions being controlled by me. Then the fruits also should be considered similarly to be mine and not yours. Disciple, so they are undoubtedly. I act not of my free will. But inspired by you. I have no will of my own. Answer, enough of this rubbish. So did Dariat Hana of old in the Mahabharata say Janami Dharmam Naka me Pravriti, Janami Adharmam Naka me Nirvriti Kenapi Devana Hridis, Thaitna Yatha Niktas Matatha Karomi. What is the difference between you two? Disciple, I see no difference. But I have no will and act without it. Answer, you have risen high above the common run. We others are acting with personal will. Disciple, how sir? You have said in one of your works that action can be automatic. Answer, enough enough. You and another visitor behave as transcendental beings. You are both fully learned. You need not learn more. I would not have said all this had you not been coming here frequently. Do as you please. These eccentricities of the beginner's stage will become known in their true light after some time. Disciple, but I have been in this state for such a long time. Answer, enough. Talk 1, 191. Mr. Cohen, a resident disciple, was speaking of yoga method. Miharshi remarked, Patanjali's first sutra is applicable to all systems of yoga. The aim is the cessation of mental activities. The methods differ. So long as there is effort made towards that goal, it is called yoga. The effort is the yoga. The cessation can be brought about in so many ways. 1. By examining the mind itself. When the mind is examined, its activities cease automatically. This is the method of jhana. The pure mind is the self. 2. Looking for the source of the mind is another method. The source may be said to be God or self or consciousness. 3. Concentrating upon one thought make all other thoughts disappear. Finally that thought also disappears and 4. Hatha Yoga. 
All methods are one and the same inasmuch as they all tend to the same goal. It is necessary to be aware while controlling thoughts. Otherwise it will lead to sleep. That awareness, the chief factor, is indicated by the fact of Patanjali emphasizing pratyahara, dharana, dhyana, samadhi even after pranayama. Pranayama makes the mind steady and suppresses thoughts. Then why develop further? Because awareness then is the one necessary factor. Such states can be imitated by taking morphia, chloroform, etc. They do not lead to moksha because they lack awareness. 3rd, June 19, 136, Talk 1, 192. Maharshi explained in the course of conversation. Whoever desires liberation, everyone wants only happiness, happiness to us found in the enjoyment of the senses. This question was asked of a guru, and the latter answered, Quite so. That happiness which is the result of enjoyment by the senses is the same as that of liberation. That desire of such liberation is one of the four qualifications for attainment. This is common to all. Though all are eligible for this knowledge self-knowledge, in fact there may not be found any individual in the world who possesses all the qualities and perfection necessary for an aspirant as mentioned in Yoga Sutras etc. Still pursuit of self-knowledge should not be abandoned. Everyone is the self by his own experience. Still he is not aware, he identifies the self with the body and feels miserable. This is the greatest of all mysteries. One is the self. Why not abide as the self and be done with miseries? In the beginning one has to be told that he is not the body because he thinks that he is the body only, whereas he is the body in all else. The body is only a part. Let him know it finally. He must first discern consciousness from insentience and be the consciousness only. Later let him realize that insentience is not apart from consciousness. This is discrimination viveka. The initial discrimination must persist to the end. Its fruit is liberation. Talk 1, 193. Meherishi observed. Free will and destiny are ever existent. Destiny is the result of past action. It concerns the body. Let the body act as may suit it. Why are you concerned with it? Why do you pay attention to it? Free will and destiny last as long as the body lasts. But wisdom jhana transcends both. The self is beyond knowledge and ignorance. Should anything happen, it happens as the result of one's past actions, of divine will and of other factors. Talk 1, 194. Mr. Subar Rao, a visitor from Amalapuram, asked, How to control the mind? Answer, get hold of the mind. Disciple, how? Answer, mind is intangible. In fact, it does not exist. The surest way of control is to seek it. Then, its activities cease. 6th June 19, 136 Talk 1, 195 Mr. Jarka, a gentleman from the University of Benares, holding the Master of Science degree, said that he was stricken with grief due to bereavement of wife and children. He sought peace of mind and asked how to get it. Answer. It is in the mind that birth and death, pleasure and pain, in short the world and ego exist. If the mind is destroyed, all these are destroyed too. Note that it should be annihilated, not just made latent. For the mind is dormant in sleep. It does not know anything. Still, on waking up, you are as you were before. There is no end of grief. But if the mind be destroyed, the grief will have no background and will disappear along with the mind. Disciple, how to destroy the mind? Answer, seek the mind. On being sought, it will disappear. Disciple, I do not understand. Answer, the mind is only a bundle of thoughts. 
The thoughts arise because there is the thinker. The thinker is the ego. The ego, if sought, will vanish automatically. The ego and the mind are the same. The ego is the root thought from which all other thoughts arise. Disciple, how to seek the mind? Answer, dive within. You are now aware that the mind rises up from within. So sink within and seek. Disciple, I do not yet understand how it is to be done. Answer, you are practicing breath control. Mechanical breath control will not lead one to the goal. It is only an aid. While doing it mechanically take care to be alert in mind and remember the I thought and seek its source. Then you will find that where breath sinks, there I thought arises. They sink and rise together. The I thought also will sink along with breath. Simultaneously, another luminous and infinite I I will become manifest, which will be continuous and unbroken. That is the goal. It goes by different names God, Self, Kundalini Sakti, Consciousness, Yoga, Bhakti, Jhana, etc. Disciple, not clear yet. Answer, when the attempt is made, it will of itself take you to the goal. 9th June 19, 136 Talk 1, 196 A visitor asked about the three methods mentioned in Ramana Gita Chapter 2. Maharshi pointed out that breath retention is an aid to control of mind, in other words, suppression or annihilation of thoughts. One person may practice breath control, inhalation, exhalation and retention or retention only. Still another type of practicing meditator, on controlling the mind, controls the breath and its retention automatically results. Watching the inhalation and exhalation is also breath control. These methods are only apparently threefold. They are in fact really one because they lead to the same goal. They are however differently adopted according to the stage of the aspirant and his antecedent predisposition or tendencies. Really there are only two methods inquiry and devotion. One leads to the other. Disciple, seeking the eye there is nothing to be seen. Answer, because you are accustomed to identify yourself with the body and sight with the eyes therefore, you say you do not see anything. What is there to be seen? Who is to see? How to see? There is only one consciousness which manifesting as I thought identifies itself with the body, projects itself through the eyes and sees the objects around. The individual is limited in the waking state and expects to see something different. The evidence of his senses will be the seal of authority. But he will not admit that the seer, the seen and the sight are all manifestations of the same consciousness, namely, I, I. Contemplation helps one to overcome the illusion that the self must be visual. In truth there is nothing visual. How do you feel the I now? Do you hold a mirror before you to know your own being? The awareness is the I. Realize it and that is the truth. Disciple, on inquiry into the origin of thoughts there is a perception of I. But it does not satisfy me. Answer, quite right. The perception of I is associated with a form maybe the body. There should be nothing associated with the pure self. The self is the unassociated, pure reality in whose light the body, the ego, etc. shine. On stilling all thoughts the pure consciousness remains over. Just on waking from sleep and before becoming aware of the world there is that pure I I. Hold to it without sleeping or without allowing thoughts to possess you. If that is held firm, it does not matter even though the world is seen. The seer remains unaffected by the phenomena. Talk 1, 197. Gull and Shir and Bairamji, two Parsi ladies of Ahmedabad, arrived this day. They spoke at night to Maharshi. That Gavan. We have been spiritually inclined from our childhood. 
We have read several books on philosophy and are attracted by Vedanta. So we read the Upanishads, Yoga Vasishtha, Bhagavad Gita, etc. We try to meditate, but there is no progress in our meditation. We do not understand how to realize. Can you kindly help us towards realization? Answer, how do you meditate? Disciple, I begin to ask myself who am I, eliminate body is not I, the breath is not I, the mind is not I and I am not able to proceed further. Answer, well that is so far as the intellect goes. Your process is only intellectual. Indeed, all the scriptures mention the process only to guide the seeker to know the truth. The truth cannot be directly pointed out. Hence this intellectual process. You see the one who eliminates all the not I cannot eliminate the I. Say I am not this or I am that. There must be the I. This I is only the ego or the I thought. After the rising up of this, I thought all other thoughts arise. The I thought is therefore the root thought. If the root is pulled out all others are at the same time uprooted. Therefore seek the root I, question yourself, who am I, find out its source. Then all these will vanish, and the pure self will remain ever. Disciple, how to do it? Answer, the I is always there in deep sleep, in dream, and in wakefulness. The one in sleep is the same as that who now speaks. There is always the feeling of I. Otherwise do you deny your existence? You do not. You say I am, find out who is. Disciple, even so I do not understand. I, you say, is the wrong I now. How to eliminate this wrong I? Answer, you need not eliminate the wrong I. How can I eliminate itself? All that you need do is to find out its origin and abide there. Your efforts can extend only thus far. Then the beyond will take care of itself. You are helpless there. No effort can reach it. Disciple, if I am always here and now, why do I not feel so? Answer, that is it. Who says it is not felt? Does the real I say it or the false I? Examine it. You will find it is the wrong I. The wrong I is the obstruction. It has to be removed in order that the true I may not be hidden. The feeling that I have not realized is the obstruction to realization. In fact, it is already realized. There is nothing more to be realized. Otherwise, the realization will be new. It has not existed so far. It must take place hereafter. What is born will also die. If realization be not eternal, it is not worth having. Therefore, what we seek is not that which must happen afresh. It is only that which is eternal but not now known due to obstructions, it is that we seek. All that we need do is to remove the obstruction. That which is eternal is not known to be so because of ignorance. Ignorance is the obstruction. Get over this ignorance and all will be well. The ignorance is identical with the I thought. Find its source and it will vanish. The I thought is like a spirit which, although not palpable, rises up simultaneously with the body, flourishes and disappears with it. The body consciousness is the wrong I. Give up this body consciousness. It is done by seeking the source I. The body does not say I am, it is you who say, I am the body. Find out who this I is. Seeking its source it will vanish. Disciple, then will there be bliss? Answer, bliss is coeval with being consciousness. All the arguments relating to the eternal being of that bliss apply to bliss also. Your nature is bliss. Ignorance is now hiding that bliss. Remove the ignorance for bliss to be freed. Disciple, should we not find out the ultimate reality of the world, individual and God? Answer. These are all conceptions of the I. They arise only after the advent of the I thought. Did you think of them in your deep sleep? 
you existed in deep sleep and the same you are now speaking. If they be real should they not be in your sleep also? They are only dependent upon the I thought. Again does the world tell you I am the world, does the body say I am body you say, this is the world, this is body and so on. So these are only your conceptions. Find out who you are and there will be an end of all your doubts. Disciple, what becomes of the body after realization? Does it exist or not? We see realized beings acting like others. Answer. This question need not arise now. Let it be asked after realization if need be. As for the realized beings let them take care of themselves. Why do you worry about them? In fact after realization the body and all else will not appear different from the self. Disciple, being always being consciousness, bliss, why does God place us in difficulties? Why did he create us? Answer, does God come and tell you that he has placed you in difficulties? It is you who say so. It is again the wrong I. If that disappears, there will be no one to say that God created this or that. That which is does not even say I am. For does any doubt rise that I am not? Only in such a case should one be reminding oneself I am a man. One does not. On the other hand, if a doubt arises whether he is a cow or a buffalo he has to remind himself that he is not a cow, etc., but I am a man. This would never happen. Similarly with one's own existence and realization. 10th, June, 1936, Talk 1, 198. Some ladies asked if there is rebirth of man as a lower animal. Answer. Yes, it is possible, as illustrated by Jada Bharata, the scriptural anecdote of a royal sage having been reborn as a deer. Disciple, is the individual capable of spiritual progress in the animal body? Answer, not unlikely, though it is exceedingly rare. Disciple, what is Guru's grace? How does it work? Answer, Guru is the self. Disciple, how does it lead to realization? Answer, Esfero Guru Atmeti. God is the same as Guru in self. A person begins with dissatisfaction. Not content with the world, he seeks satisfaction of desires by prayers to God. His mind is purified. He longs to know God more than to satisfy his carnal desires. Then God's grace begins to manifest. God takes the form of a guru and appears to the devotee, teaches him the truth, purifies the mind by his teachings and contact, the mind gains strength, is able to turn inward, with meditation it is purified yet further, and eventually remains still without the least ripple. That stillness is the self. The Giru is both exterior and interior. From the exterior he gives a push to the mind to turn inward. From the interior he pulls the mind towards the self and helps the mind to achieve quietness. That is grace. Hence there is no difference between God, Giru and self. Talk 1, 199. The ladies later asked several questions relating to their present inability to realize the already realized eternal self. The sign of realization would be bliss which was absent. Mihar, she said, there is only one consciousness. But we speak of several kinds of consciousness as Buddha consciousness, self-consciousness. They are only relative states of the same absolute consciousness. Without consciousness, time and space do not exist. They appear in consciousness. It is like a screen on which these are cast as pictures and move as in a cinema show. The absolute consciousness is our real nature. Disciple, from where do these objects arise? Answer, just from where you rise. Know the subject first and then question about the object. Disciple, it is only one aspect of the question. Answer, the subject comprehends the object also. 
that one aspect is an all-comprehensive aspect. See yourself first and then see the objects. What is not in you cannot appear outside. Disciple, I am not satisfied. Answer, satisfaction can be only when you reach the source. Otherwise restlessness exists. Disciple, is the supreme being with or without attributes? Answer, no first if you are with or without attributes. Disciple, what is samadhi? Answer, one's own true nature. Disciple, why then is effort necessary to attain it? Answer, whose is the effort? Disciple, Maharshi knows that I am ignorant. Answer, do you know that you are ignorant? Knowledge of ignorance is no ignorance. All scriptures are only for the purpose of investigating if there are two consciousnesses. Everyone's experience proves the existence of only one consciousness. Can that one divide itself into two? Is any division felt in the self? Awaking from sleep one finds oneself the same in the wakeful as well as in the sleep states. That is the experience of each one. The difference lies in seeking in the outlook. Because you imagine that you are the seer separate from the experience, this difference arises. Experience shows that your being is the same all through. Disciple, from where did ignorance come? Answer, there is no such thing as ignorance. It never arises. Everyone is knowledge itself. Only knowledge does not shine easily. The dispelling of ignorance is wisdom which always exists for example, the necklace remaining round the neck, though supposed to have been lost, or each of the ten fools failing to count himself and counting only the others. To whom is knowledge or ignorance? Disciple, can we not proceed from external to internal? Answer, is there any difference like that? Do you feel the difference external and internal in your sleep? This difference is only with reference to the body and arises with but a consciousness I thought. The so-called waking state is itself an illusion. Turn your vision inward, and then the whole world will be full of supreme spirit. The world is said to be illusion. Illusion is really truth. Even the material sciences trace the origin of the universe to someone primordial matter subtle, exceedingly subtle. God is the same both to those who say the world is real, and to their opponents. Their outlook is different. You need not entangle yourself in such disputations. The goal is one and the same for all. Look to it. 14th, June 1936 Talk 200 Mr. Cohen desired an explanation of the term blazing light used by Paul Brunton in the last chapter of A Search in Secret India. Maharshi Since the experience is through the mind, only it appears first as a blaze of light. The mental predispositions are not yet destroyed. The mind is however functioning in its infinite capacity in this experience. As for nirvikalpa samadhi in other words samadhi of non-differentiation undifferentiated, supreme beatific repose, it consists of pure consciousness, which is capable of illumining knowledge or ignorance, it is also beyond light or darkness. That it is not darkness is certain, can it be however said to be not light? At present objects are perceived only in light. Is it wrong to say that realization of oneself requires a light? Here light would mean the consciousness which reveals as the self only. The yogis are said to see photosoms of colors and lights preliminary to self-realization by the practice of yoga. Once before Goddess Parvati practiced austerities for realizing the Supreme. She saw some kinds of light. She rejected them because they emanated from the Self, leaving the Self as it was ever before. She determined that they were not Supreme. She continued her austerities and experienced a limitless light. 
she determined that this also was only a phenomenon and not the supreme reality. Still, she continued her austerities until she gained transcendental peace. She realized that it was supreme that the self was the sole reality. The Taittiriya Upanishad says, Seek Brahman through penance. Later on, penance is Brahman. Another Upanishad says, Itself is penance which is again made up of wisdom alone. There the sun shines not, nor the moon, nor the stars, nor fire, all these shine forth by its light. Talk 2, 101. The Parsi ladies asked for an illustration to explain why the self, though ever present and most intimate, is not being realized. Maharshi cited the stories of one, Svakanthabaranam Katha, the story of the necklace on the neck itself not being detected. Two, Dasama of the ten fools who counted only nine, each of them omitting to count himself. Three, the lion's cub brought up in a herd of goats. Four, Karna not knowing his real parentage. And five, the king's son brought up in a low class family. They further asked for Maharshi's opinion of Sri Aurobindo's yoga and his claim to have probed beyond the experiences of the Vedic Rishis and the mother's opinion of the fitness of her disciples to begin with the realization of the Upanishadic Rishis. Answer, Aurobindo advises complete surrender. Let us do that first and await results and discuss further if need be afterwards and not now. There is no use discussing transcendental experiences by those whose limitations are not divested. Learn what surrender is. It is to merge in the source of the ego. The ego is surrendered to the self. Everything is dear to us because of love of the self. The self is that to which we surrender our ego and let the supreme power, in other words, the self, do what it pleases. The ego is already the self's. We have no rights over the ego, even as it is. However, supposing we had, we must surrender them. Disciple, what about bringing down divine consciousness from above? Answer, as if the same is not already in the heart. O oh Arjuna, I am in the expanse of the heart, says Sri Krishna. He who is in the sun is also in this man, says a mantra in the Upanishads. The kingdom of God is within, says the Bible. All are thus agreed that God is within. What is to be brought down? From where? Who is to bring what and why? Realization is only the removal of obstacles to the recognition of the eternal, immanent reality. Reality is. It need not be taken from place to place. Disciple. What about Aurobindo's claim to start from self-realization and develop further? Answer, let us first realize and then see. Then Maharshi began to speak of similar theories. The Visishtadvatins say that the self is first realized and the realized individual soul is surrendered to the universal soul. Only then is it complete. The part is given up to the whole. That is liberation in Sayajya Union. Simple self-realization stops at isolating the pure self, says Vasishtadvaita. The Siddhas say that the one who leaves his body behind as a corpse cannot attain mukti. They are reborn. Only those whose bodies dissolve in space in light or away from sight attain liberation. The Advaitins of Sankara's school stop short at self-realization, and this is not the end, the Siddhas say. There are also others who extol their own pet theories as the best, for example, late Venkaswami Rao of Kumbhakanam, Brahmananda Yogi of Kadipa, etc. The fact is, there is reality. It is not affected by any discussions. Let us abide as reality and not engage in futile discussions as to its nature, etc. 15th, June 19. 136 Talk 2, 102. 
A sad-looking Punjabi gentleman announced himself to Maharishi as having been directed to him by Sri Sankarakuriya of Kamakadapitam, from jails far near Puri Jagannath. He is a world tourist. He has practiced Hatha Yoga and some contemplation along the lines of I am Brahman. In a few moments a blank prevails, his brain gets heated and he gets afraid of death. He wants guidance from Maharshi. Answer, who sees the blank? Disciple, I know that I see it. Answer, the consciousness overlooking the blank is the self. Disciple, that does not satisfy me. I cannot realize it. Answer, the fear of death is only after the I thought arises. Whose death do you fear? For whom is the fear? There is the identification of the self with the body. So long as there is this, there will be fear. Disciple, but I am not aware of my body. Answer, who says that he is not aware? Disciple, I do not understand. He was then asked to say what exactly was his method of meditation. He said, I am Brahman. Answer, I am Brahman is only a thought. Who says it? Brahman itself does not say so. What need is there for it to say it? Nor can the real I say so. For I always abides as Brahman. To be saying it is only a thought. Whose thought is it? All thoughts are from the unreal I, in other words the I thought. Remain without thinking. So long as there is thought there will be fear. Disciple, as I go on thinking of it there is forgetfulness, the brain becomes heated and I am afraid. Answer, yes, the mind is concentrated in the brain and hence you get a hot sensation there. It is because of the I thought. So long as there is thought there will be forgetfulness. There is the thought I am Brahman, forgetfulness supervenes, then the I thought arises and simultaneously the fear of death also. Forgetfulness and thought are for I thought only. Hold it, it will disappear as a phantom. What remains over is the real I. That is the self. I am Brahman is an aid to concentration. It keeps off other thoughts. That one thought alone persists. See whose is that thought. It will be found to be from I. Where from is the I thought? Probe into it. The I thought will vanish. The Supreme Self will shine forth of itself. No further effort is needed. When the one real I remains alone, it will not be saying, I am Brahman. Does a man go on repeating I am a man? Unless he is challenged, why should he declare himself a man? Does anyone mistake oneself for a brute that he should say no? I am not a brute. I am a man. Similarly Brahman or I being alone, there is no one there to challenge it and so there is no need to be repeating I am Brahman. 17th, June 19, 136 Talk 2, 103 Mr. Varma, Financial Secretary of the Posts and Telegraphs Department, Delhi, he has read Paul Brennan's search in secret India and the secret path. He lost his wife with whom he had led a happy life for eleven or twelve years. In his grief he seeks solace. He does not find solace in reading books wants to tear them up. He does not intend to ask questions. He simply wants to sit here and derive what solace he can in the presence of Maharshi. Maharshi as if in a train of thoughts spoke now and then to the following effect. It is said the wife is one, half of the body. So her death is very painful. This pain is however due to one's outlook being physical. It disappears if the outlook is that of the self. The Brahadaranyaka Upanishad says, The wife is dear because of the love of the self. If the wife and others are identified with the self, how then will pain arise? Nevertheless such disasters shake the mind of philosophers also. We are happy in deep sleep. We remain then as the pure self. The same we are just now too. 
In such sleep there was neither the wife nor others nor even I. Now they become apparent and give rise to pleasure or pain. Why should not the self, which was blissful in deep sleep, continue its blissful nature even now? The sole obstruction to such continuity is the wrong identification of the self with the body. The Bhagavad Gita says, The unreal hath no being, the real never ceaseth to be. The truth about both hath been perceived by the seers of the essence of things. The real is ever real, the unreal is ever unreal. Again, he is not born, nor doth he die, nor having been, ceaseth he any more to be unborn, perpetual, eternal, ancient. He is not slain when the body is slaughtered. Accordingly, there is neither birth nor death. Waking is birth and sleep is death. Was the wife with you when you went out to the office or in your deep sleep? She was away from you. You were satisfied because of your thought that she was somewhere whereas now you think that she is not. The difference lies in the different thoughts. That is the cause of pain. The pain is because of the thought of the wife's non-being. All this is the mischief of the mind. Though in other words the mind creates pain for himself even when there is pleasure. But pleasure and pain are mental creations. Again, why mourn the dead? They are free from bondage. Mourning is the chain forged by the mind to bind itself to the dead. What if anyone is dead? What if anyone is ruined? Be dead yourself, be ruined yourself. In that sense there is no pain after one's death. What is meant by this sort of death? Annihilation of the ego, though the body is alive. If the ego persists the man is afraid of death. The man mourns another's death. He need not do so if he predeceases them by waking up from the ego dream, which amounts to killing the ego sense. The experience of deep sleep clearly teaches that happiness consists in being without the body. The wise also confirm it, speaking of liberation after the body is given up. Thus the sage is awaiting the casting off of the body. Just as a laborer carrying a load on his head for the sake of wages bears the burden with no pleasure, carries it to the destination, and finally unburdens himself with relief and joy, so also the sage bears this body awaiting thorough and destined time to discard it. If now you are relieved of one half of the burden, in other words, the wife, should you not be thankful and be happy for it, Nevertheless, you cannot be so because of your physical outlook. Even men who ought to know better, and who have known the teaching about liberation after death etc. glorify liberation along with the body and call it some mysterious power of keeping the body eternally alive. There will be no pain if the physical outlook is given up and if the person exists as the self. Warning is not the index of true love. It betrays love of the object of its shape only. That is not love. True love is shown by the certainty that the object of love is in the self and that it can never become non-existent. Maharshi cited the story of Ahalya and Indra from Yoga Vasish to in this connection. Still, it is true, pain on such occasions can only be assuaged by association with the wise. 18th, June 1936, Talk 2, 104. Maharshi on Self Illumination. The I concept is the ego. Illumination is the realization of the real self. It is ever shining forth as I I in the intellectual sheath. It is pure knowledge, relative knowledge is only a concept. The bliss of the blissful sheath is also but a concept. Unless there is the experience, however subtle it is, one cannot say I slept happily. From his intellect he speaks of his blissful sheath. The bliss of sleep is but a concept to the person, the same as intellect. However, the concept of experience is exceedingly subtle in sleep. 
Experience is not possible without simultaneous knowledge of it, in other words, relative knowledge. The inherent nature of the self is bliss. Some kind of knowledge has to be admitted, even in the realization of supreme bliss. It may be said to be subtler than the subtlest. The word vijana, clear knowledge, is used both to denote the realization of the self and knowing the objects. The self is wisdom. It functions in two ways. When associated with the ego, the knowledge is objective vijana. When divested of the ego and the universal self is realized, it is also called vijana. The word raises a mental concept. Therefore, we say that the self-realized sage knows by his mind, but his mind is pure. Again, we say that the vibrating mind is impure and the placid mind is pure. The pure mind is itself Brahman. Therefore, it follows that Brahman is not other than the mind of the sage. The Mandoka Upanishad says, "The knower of Brahman becomes the self of Brahman." Is it not ludicrous? To know him and become him, they are mere words. The sage is Brahman. That is all. Mental functioning is necessary to communicate his experience. He is said to be contemplating the unbroken expanse. The Creator Sukha and others are also said never to swerve from such contemplation. Such contemplation is again a mere word. How is that to be contemplated unless it is divided into the contemplator and the contemplated? When undivided, how is contemplation possible? What function can infinity have? Do we say that a river, after its discharge into the ocean, has become an ocean like river? Why should we then speak of contemplation, which has become unbroken, as being that of unbroken infinity? Statement must be understood in the spirit in which it is made. It signifies the merging into the infinite. Self-illumination or self-realization is similar to it. The self is ever shining. What does this illumination mean then? The expression is an implied admission of mind function. The gods and the sages experience the infinite continuously and eternally, without their vision being obscured at any moment. Their minds are surmised by the spectators to function, but in fact they do not. Such surmise is due to the sense of individuality in those who draw inferences. There is no mental function in the absence of individuality. Individuality and mind functions are coexistent. The one cannot remain without the other. The light of the self can be experienced only in the intellectual sheath. Therefore, vijana of whatever kind of object or of the self depends on the self being pure knowledge. Talk two hundred five. Mr. Cohen had been cogitating on the nature of the heart. If the spiritual heart beats, if so, how? Or if it does not beat, then how is it to be felt? Answer: This heart is different from the physical heart. Beating is the function of the latter. Former is the seat of spiritual experience. That is all that can be said of it. Just as a dynamo supplies motive power to whole systems of lights, fans, etc., so the original primal force supplies energy to the beating of the heart, respiration, etc. Disciple, how is the I I consciousness felt? Answer: As an unbroken awareness of I. It is simply consciousness. Disciple, can we know it when it dawns? Answer: Yes, as consciousness, you are that even now. There will be no mistaking it when it is pure. Disciple, why do we have such a place as the heart for meditation? Answer: Because you seek consciousness. Where can you find it? Can you reach it externally? You have to find it internally. Therefore, you are directed inward. Again, the heart is only the seat of consciousness, or the consciousness itself. Disciple, on what should we meditate? Answer: Who is the meditator? Ask the question first. Remain as the meditator. There is no need to meditate. Talk two 
Hundred six. Mr. Das, a lecturer in physics of Allahabad University, asked, "Does not intellect rise and fall with the man?" Answer: Whose is the intellect? It is man's. Intellect is only an instrument. Disciple: Yes. Does it survive man's death? Answer: Why think of death? See what happens in your sleep. What is your experience there, disciple? But sleep is transient, whereas death is not. Answer: Sleep is intermediate between two waking states. So also death is between two successive births. Both are transient, disciple. I mean, when the spirit is disembodied, does it carry the intellect with it? Answer: Spirit is not disembodied. The bodies differ. It may not be a gross body; it will then be a subtle body, as in sleep, dream, or dead dream. Intellect does not alter; the bodies may differ according to circumstances. Disciple: The spirit body is the astral body then. Answer: The intellect is the astral body now. Disciple: How can it be? Answer: Why not? You seem to think that the intellect cannot be limited like a body; it is only an aggregate of certain factors. What else is the astral body, disciple? But intellect is a sheath. Answer: Yes. Without intellect, no sheath is cognized. Who says that there are five sheaths? Is it not the intellect that declares thus? Talk two hundred seven. Deep sleep is only the state of non-duality. Can the difference between the individual and universal souls persist there? Sleep implies forgetfulness of all differences. This alone constitutes happiness. See how carefully people prepare their beds to gain that happiness. Soft cushions, pillows, and all the rest are meant to induce sound sleep. That is to say, to end wakefulness. And yet the soft bed, etc., are of no use in the state of deep sleep itself. The implication is that all efforts are meant only to end ignorance. They have no use after realization. Talk two hundred eight. It is enough that one surrenders one's self. Surrender is to give one's self up to the original cause of one's being. Do not delude yourself by imagining such source to be some god outside you. One source is within yourself. Give yourself up to it. That means that you should seek the source and merge in it. Because you imagine yourself to be out of it, you raise the question: Where is the source? Some contend that the sugar cannot taste its own sweetness, and that a taster must taste and enjoy it. Similarly, an individual cannot be the supreme and enjoy the bliss of that state. Therefore, the individuality must be maintained on the one hand and God, head on the other, so that enjoyment may result. Is God insentient like sugar? How can one surrender oneself and yet retain one's individuality for supreme enjoyment? Furthermore, they say also that the soul. Reaching the divine region and remaining there serves the supreme being. Can the sound of the word "service" deceive the Lord? Does He not know? Is He waiting for these people's service? Would not He, the pure consciousness, ask in turn, "Who are you apart from me that presume to serve me?" Still more, they assume that the individual soul becomes pure by being divested of the ego and fit for being the body of the Lord. Thus, the Lord is the Spirit, and the purified souls constitute His body and limbs. Can there be a soul for the souls? How many souls are there? The answer must be: there are many individual souls and one supreme soul. What is soul in that case? It cannot be the body, etc. What remains over after all these are eliminated must be said to be the soul. Thus, even after realizing the soul as that which cannot be discarded, the supreme soul must be known to exist. In that case, how was the soul realized to be the ultimate reality after discarding all that was alien to it?
Should this be right, the soul which was described as that inalienable reality is not the true soul. All such confusion is due to the word soul atma. The same word atma is used to signify the body, the senses, the mind, the vital principle, the individual soul and the supreme being. This wide application of the word has given rise to the idea that the individual soul jivatma goes to constitute the body of the supreme paramatma. I, O Arjuna, am the self seated in the heart of all beings. Bhagavad Gita 10-20 the stanza shows that the Lord is the Atma Self of all beings. Does it say the Self of the Selves? If on the other hand, you merge in this Self there will be no individuality left. You will become the Source itself. In that case what is surrender? Who is to surrender what and to whom? This constitutes devotion, wisdom and investigation. Among the Vaishnavites too St. Namalvar says, I was in a maze sticking to I and mine, I wandered without knowing myself. On realizing myself I understand that I myself am you, and that mine in other words my possessions is only you. Thus you see devotion is nothing more than knowing oneself. The school of qualified monism also admits it. Still adhering to their traditional doctrine, they persist in affirming that the individuals are part of the supreme his limbs as it were. Their traditional doctrine says also that the individual soul should be made pure and then surrendered to the supreme then the ego is lost and one goes to the regions of Vishnu after one's death. Then finally there is the enjoyment of the supreme or the infinite. To say that one is apart from the primal source is itself a pretension. To add that one divested of the ego becomes pure and yet retains individuality only to enjoy or serve the supreme is a deceitful stratagem. What duplicity is this first to appropriate what is really his and then pretend to experience or serve him? Is not all this already known to him? 19th, June 19, 136, Talk 2, 109. Mr. Das, the physics lecturer, asked about free will and destiny. Answer, whose will is it? It is mine, you may say. You are beyond will and fate. Abide as that and you transcend them both. That is the meaning of conquering destiny by will. Fate can be conquered. Fate is the result of past actions. By association with the wise the bad tendencies are conquered. One's experiences are then viewed to their proper perspective. I exist now. I am the enjoyer. I enjoy fruits of action. I was in the past and shall be in the future. Who is this I? Finding this I to be pure consciousness beyond action and enjoyment, freedom and happiness are gained. There is then no effort, for the self is perfect and there remains nothing more to gain. So long as there is individuality, one is the enjoyer and doer. But if it is lost, the divine will prevails and guides the course of events. The individual is perceptible to others who cannot perceive divine force. Restrictions and discipline are for other individuals and not for the liberated. Free will is implied in the scriptural injunctions to be good. It implies overcoming fate. It is done by wisdom. The fire of wisdom consumes all actions. Wisdom is acquired by association with the wise, or rather, its mental atmosphere. Talk 2, 110. Man owes his movements to another power, whereas he thinks that he does everything himself just like a lame man bluffing that, were he helped to stand up, he would fight and chase away the enemy. Action is impelled by desire. Desire arises only after the rise of the ego, and this ego owes its origin to a higher power on which its existence depends. It cannot remain apart. Why then prattle I do I act or I function? A self-realized being cannot help benefiting the world. 
His very existence is the highest good. Talk 2, 111. Mr. Das, the physics lecturer, asked. Yoga means union. I wonder union of which with which. Answer, exactly. Yoga implies prior division, and it means later union of one with another. Who is to be united with whom? You are the seeker seeking union with something. That something is apart from you. Yourself is intimate to you. You are aware of the self. Seek it and be it. That will expand as the infinite. And there will be no question of yoga, etc. Whose is the separation via yoga? Find it. Disciple. Are the stones, etc., destined to be always so? Answer. Who sees stones? They are perceived by your senses, which are in turn actuated by your mind. So they are in your mind. Whose mind is it? The questioner must find it himself. If the self be found this question will not arise. The self is more intimate than the objects. Find the subject and the objects will take care of themselves. The objects are seen by different persons according to their outlook and these theories are evolved. But who is the seer, the cognizer of these theories? It is you. Find yourself. Then there is an end of these vagaries of the mind. Disciple, what is this mind? Answer, a bundle of thoughts. Disciple, where from has it its origin? Answer, consciousness of the self. Disciple, then thoughts are not real. Answer, they are not, the only reality is the self. Talk 2, 112. Meharshi observed. Pradekshana, the Hindu right of going round the object of worship, is all is within me. The true significance of the act of going round Aranachala is said to be as effective as circuit round the world. That means that the whole world is condensed into this hill. The circuit round the temple of Aranachala is equally good and self. Circuit in other words, turning round and round is as good as the last. So all are contained in the self. Says the Ribhu Gaita. I remain fixed whereas innumerable universes becoming concepts within my mind rotate within me. This meditation is the highest circuit pradikshana. 20th June 1936 Talk 2, 113 Mr. Das asked why the mind cannot be turned inward in spite of repeated attempts. Answer, it is done by practice and dispassion and that succeeds only gradually. The mind having been so long a cow accustomed to graze stealthily on others' estates, is not easily confined to her stall. However much her keeper tempts her with luscious grass and fine fodder, she refuses the first time, then she takes a bit, but her innate tendency to stray away asserts itself, and she slips away on being repeatedly tempted by the owner. She accustoms herself to the stall. Finally, even if let loose, she would not stray away. Similarly with the mind. If once it finds its inner happiness, it will not wander outward. Talk 2, 114. Mr. Iknatha Rao, a frequent visitor, asked, Are there not modulations in contemplation according to circumstances? Answer, yes. There are at times there is illumination and then contemplation is easy at other times contemplation is impossible even with repeated attempts. This is due to the working of the three gunas qualities in nature. Disciple. Is it influenced by one's activities and circumstances? Answer. Those cannot influence it. It is the sense of doership kartravabuddhi that forms the impediment. 22nd June 1936 Talk 2, 115 Maharshi was reading Pope's translation of Turavachakam and came across the stanzas describing the intense feeling of bhakti as thrilling the whole frame, melting the flesh and bones, etc. He remarked, 
Manic Havoc Hakar is one of those whose body finally resolved itself in a blazing light, without leaving a corpse behind. Another devotee asked how it could be. Maharshi said the gross body is only the concrete form of the subtle stuff the mind. When the mind melts away and blazes forth as light, the body is consumed in that process. Nandanar is another whose body disappeared in blazing light. Major Chadwick pointed out that Elisha disappeared in the same way. He desired to know if the disappearance of Christ's body from the tomb was like that. Answer, no. Christ's body was left as a corpse which was at first entombed, whereas the others did not leave corpses behind. In the course of conversation, Maharshi said that the subtle body is composed of light and sound, and the gross body is a concrete form of the same. The lecturer in physics asked if the same light and sound were cognizable by senses. Answer, no. They are supersensual. It is like this. One is far a universal, gross universe. Subtle, sound and light. Prima, atma self and param transcendental. Two, jiva individual, gross, body, subtle. Mind and prana, primal. Atma self and param transcendental. Isfera universal and jiva individual are ultimately the same. The subtle body of the creator is the mystic sound pranava, which is sound and light. The universe resolves into sound and light and then into transcendence param. Talk 2, 116. Meharsi gave the meaning of Aruna Chala. Aruna equals red, bright like fire. The fire is not ordinary fire which is only hot. This is Janagni fire of wisdom which is neither hot nor cool. Achala equals a hill. So it means hill of wisdom. 29th, June, 1936, Talk 2, 117. Mr. Bose, an engineer from Bombay, asked, Does Bhagavan feel for us and show grace? Answer, You are neck deep in water and yet cry for water. It is as good as saying that one neck deep in water feels thirsty, or a fish in water feels thirsty, or that water feels thirsty. Disciple, how may one destroy the mind? Answer, is there a mind in the first place? What you call mind is an illusion. It starts from the I thought. Without the gross or subtle senses you cannot be aware of the body or the mind. Still it is possible for you to be without these senses. In such a state you are either asleep or aware of the self only. Awareness of self is ever there. Remain what you truly are and this question will not arise. Disciple, is the body consciousness an impediment to realization? Answer, we are always beyond the body or the mind. If however, you feel the body as the self, then it is of course an impediment. Disciple, is the body or the mind of any use for the self? Answer, yes, inasmuch as it helps self-realization. 30th June 1936 Talk 2, 118 Maharshi has been looking into the Seva Purana this day. He says, Seva has the transcendental and immanent aspects as represented by his invisible, transcendental being and the Linga aspect respectively. The Linga originally manifested as Arunachala stands even to this day. This manifestation was when the moon was in the constellation of Orion Ardra in December. However was first worshipped on Sivaratri Day which is held sacred even now. In the sphere of speech Pranava, the mystic sound Om represents the transcendental Nirguna and the Panchak Shari, the five-syllabled mantra represents the immanent aspect Saguna. Again, Sri Bhagavan recounts the anecdote of Parvati testing Rama. The story is as follows. Rama and Lakshmana were wandering in the forest in search of Sita. Rama was grief-stricken. 
Just then Siva and Parvati happened to pass close by. Siva saluted Rama and passed on. Parvati was surprised and asked Siva to explain why he, the Lord of the universe, being worshipped by all, should stop to salute Rama, an ordinary human who having missed his consort was grief-stricken and moving in anguish in the wilderness and looking helpless. Siva then said, Rama is simply acting as a human being would under the circumstances. He is nevertheless the incarnation of Vishnu and deserves to be saluted. You may test him if you choose. Parvati considered the matter, took the shape of Sita and appeared in front of Rama as he was crying out the name of Sita in great anguish. He looked at Parvati appearing as Sita smiled and asked, Why Parvati, are you here? Where is Sambhu? Why have you taken the shape of Sita? Parvati felt abashed and explained how she went there to test him and sought an explanation for Siva saluting him. Rummer replied, We are all only aspects of Siva, worshipping him at sight and remembering him out of sight. Talk 2, 119 Ramakrishna Swami, along Resident disciple asked Maharshi the meaning of Tvairana Chala Sarvam, a stanza in the five hymns. Maharshi explained it in detail, saying that the universe is like a painting on a screen, the screen being the red hill, Arana Chala. That which rises and sinks is made up of what it rises from. The finality of the universe is the god Arana Chala. Meditating on him or on the seer, the self, there is a mental vibration I to which all are reduced. Tracing the source of I, the primal I I alone remains over, and it is inexpressible. The seat of realization is within, and the seeker cannot find it as an object outside him. That seat is bliss and is the core of all beings. Hence it is called the heart. The only useful purpose of the present birth is to turn within and realize it. There is nothing else to do. Disciple, how is annihilation of predispositions to be accomplished? Answer, you are in that condition in realization. Disciple, does it mean that, holding on to the self, the tendency should be scorched as they begin to emerge? Answer, they will themselves be scorched if only you remain as you truly are. 1st July 19, 136 Talk 2, 120 Mr. Das, the physics lecturer, asked, Contemplation is possible only with control of mind and control can be accomplished only by contemplation. Is it not a vicious circle? Answer, yes, they are interdependent. They must go on side by side. Practice and dispassion bring about the result gradually. Dispassion is practice to check the mind from being projected outward. Practice is to keep it turned inward. There is a struggle between control and contemplation. It is going on constantly within. Contemplation will in due course be successful. Disciple, how to begin? Your grace is needed for it. Answer, grace is always there. Dispassion cannot be acquired, nor realization of the truth, nor inherence in the self in the absence of Guru's grace, the Master quoted. Practice is necessary. It is like training a roguish bull confined to his stall by tempting him with luscious grass and preventing him from straying. Then the Master read out a stanza from Turavakakam, which is an address to the mind, saying, O humming bee, namely mind, why do you take the pains of collecting tiny specks of honey from innumerable flowers? There is one from whom you can have the whole storehouse of honey by simply thinking or seeing or speaking of him. Get within and hum to him, Hermkara. Disciple. Should one have a form in one's mind supplemented with reading or chanting God's name in one's meditation? Answer, what is mental conception except it be meditation? Disciple, should the form be supplemented by repetition of mantras or dwelling on divine attributes? 
answer when japa is the predominating tendency vocal japa becomes eventually mental which is the same as meditation talk 2 121 mr bose a four means duality a good answer one who questions like that had better adopt the path of inquiry form is not for him disciple in my meditation a blank interposes i see no figure answer of course not disciple what about the blank answer who sees the blank you must be there there is consciousness witnessing the blank disciple does it mean that i must go deeper and deeper answer yes there is no moment when you are not second july 19 136 talk 2 122 dr papat lalohara a visitor has studied several books including you paid sasara and visited several saints sadhus and yogis probably 1005 hundred as he puts their number a sad who in trimback has told him that he has still debts to pay which if done will enable him to have realization his only debt as he conceived it was the marriage of his son it has since been performed and he now feels himself free from karmic indebtedness he therefore seeks sri bhagavan's guidance for freedom from mental unhappiness which persists in spite of his not being indebted Answer, which text of you paid Sasara did you read? Disciple, the Sanskrit text. Answer, it contains the answer to your question. Disciple, my mind cannot be made steady by any amount of effort. I have been trying it since 1918. The master quoted from you paid Sasara. Merging the mind into the heart certainly comprises meritorious duty karma devotion bhakti yoga and supreme wisdom jhana that is the whole truth in a nutshell disciple that does not satisfy my search for happiness i am unable to keep my mind steady the master quoted again from the same book continuous search for what the mind is results in its disappearance that is the straight path disciple how to search for the mind then Answer, the mind is only a bundle of thoughts. The thoughts have their root in the I thought. He quoted, whoever investigates the origin of the I thought for him the ego perishes. This is the true investigation. The true I is then found shining by itself. Disciple, this I thought rises for me. But I do not know the self. Answer, all these are only mental concepts. You are now identifying yourself with a wrong eye, which is the I thought. This I thought rises and sinks, whereas the true significance of I is beyond both. There cannot be a break in your being. You who slept are also now awake. There is not unhappiness in your deep sleep, whereas it exists now. What is it that has happened now so that this difference is experienced? There was no I thought in your sleep, whereas it is present now. The true I is not apparent and the false I is parading itself. This false I is the obstacle to your right knowledge. Find out where from this false I arises. Then it will disappear. You will be only what you are in other words, absolute being. Disciple, how to do it? I have not succeeded so far. Answer, search for the source of the I thought. That is all that one has to do. The universe exists on account of the I thought. If that ends there is an end of misery also. The false I will end only when its source is sought. Dr. Lohara asked for the meaning of one stanza in Upadzasara. Answer, the one then in sleep is also now awake. There was happiness in sleep but misery and wakefulness. There was no I thought in sleep, but it is now while awake. The state of happiness and of no I thought in sleep is without effort. The aim should be to bring about that state even now. That requires effort. Talk 2, 123. Dr. Lohara. 
Why does the mind not sink into the heart even while meditating? Answer. A floating body does not readily sink unless some means are adopted for making it do so. Breath control makes the mind quiescent. The mind must be alert and meditation pursued unremittingly even when it is at peace. Then it sinks into the heart. Or the floating body might be loaded with weights and made to sink. So also association with the wise will make the mind sink into the heart. Such association is both mental and physical. The extremely visible being of the guru pushes the mind inward. He is also in the heart of the seeker and so he draws the ladders inward, bent mind into the heart. This question is asked only when the man begins to meditate and finds it difficult. Let him practice breath control just a little and the mind will be purified. It does not now sink into the heart because the latent tendencies stand as obstacles. They are removed by breath control or association with the wise. In fact the mind is always in the heart. But it is restive and moves about on account of latent tendencies. When the tendencies are made ineffective, it will be restful and at peace. By breath control the mind will be only temporarily quiescent because the tendencies are still there. If the mind is transformed into the self, it will no longer give trouble. That is done by meditation. Talk 2, 124. A disciple asked how he could recognize his own natural primal condition. Answer. Absolute freedom from thoughts is the state conducive to such recognition. From the Attendance Notes Talk 2, 125 When Sri Bhagavan and Rangaswami, an attendant, were on the rocks, Bhagavan noticed someone in the asramam rocking in a rocking chair, and remarked to the attendant. Siva made over all his own possessions to Vishnu and wandered away in the forests and wilderness and cemeteries, and lived on food begged by him. In his view non-possession is higher in the scale of happiness than possession of things. Disciple, what is that higher happiness? Answer, to be free from anxieties. Possessions create anxieties such as their safeguarding, their utilization, etc. Non-possession does not bring any anxieties in its train. Therefore Siva resigned everything in favor of Vishnu and he himself went away happy. Divestment of possessions is the highest happiness. 3rd July 19, 136 Talk 2, 126 A visitor from Turukoiler asked if the study of the sacred books will reveal the truth. Answer, that will not suffice. Disciple, why not? Answer, Samadhi alone can reveal it. Thoughts cast a veil over reality and so it cannot be clear in states other than Samadhi. Disciple, is there thought in Samadhi? Or is there not? Answer, there will only be the feeling I am and no other thoughts. Disciple, is not I am a thought? Answer, the egoless I am is not thought. It is realization. The meaning or significance of I is God. The experience of I am is to be still. 4th July 1936 Talk 2, 127 The Master observed, Being of the nature of bliss, why does one continue to crave for happiness? To be rid of that craving is itself salvation. The scriptures say, you are that. The imparting of that knowledge is their purpose. The realization must be by your finding out who you are and abiding as that, in other words yourself. To be repeating, I am that or not, this is only a waste of time. For the worthy disciple, the work lies within himself and not without. As Bhagavan was descending the hill, one of the workers, just outside the asramam, stopped work and was about to prostrate before the master. Then the master said, to engage in your duty is the true prostration. The master's attendant asked, How? Answer, 
to perform one's duty carefully is the greatest service to God. Then smiling he entered the hall. Talk 2, 128. At lunch a visitor from Neller asked the master for a tiny bit of food prasad from his dish. Answer, eat without thinking of the ego. Then what you eat becomes Bhagavan's prasad. After lunch the master continued humorously. If I had given you one morsel for my plate, each one would ask for a morsel too. What will be left for me if I distribute the whole plate to others? So you see that it is not devotion. There is no significance in eating a morsel from my plate. Be a true devotee. 8th July 1936 Talk 2 129 At 8 a.m. the pet squirrel was watching for an opportunity to run out. The master remarked, All wish to rush out. There is no limit to going out. Happiness lies within and not without. 20th July 1936 Talk 2 130 A visitor, can one realize the truth by learning the scriptures and study of books? Answer, no. So long as predispositions remain latent in the mind, realization cannot be achieved. Sastra learning is itself a vasana. Realization is only in samadhi. Talk 2, 131. A visitor asked, What is mauna silence? Answer, mauna is not closing the mouth. It is eternal speech. Disciple, I do not understand. Answer, that state which transcends speech and thought is mauna. Disciple, how to achieve it? Answer, hold some concept firmly and trace it back. By such concentration silence results. When practice becomes natural it will end in silence. Meditation without mental activity is silence. Subjugation of the mind is meditation. Deep meditation is eternal speech. Disciple, how will worldly transaction go on if one observes silence? Answer, when women walk with water pots on their heads and chat with their companions they remain very careful, their thoughts concentrated on the loads on their heads. Similarly when a sage engages in activities, these do not disturb him because his mind abides in Brahman. Talk 2, 132. The master said on another occasion, Only the sage is a true devotee. Talk 2, 133. Disciple, what is the result of Rama Japa repetition of God Rama's name? Answer, Ra is reality, Ma is the mind, their union is the fruit of Rama Japa. Utterance of words is not enough. The elimination of thoughts is wisdom. It is the absolute existence. Talk 2, 134. A Muslim visitor asked about a sana physical posture. Answer. Abidance in God is the only true posture. Talk 2, 135. Mr. Ayer, a disciple, was excited because someone in the town had spoken disparagingly of the master. He did not retort and came away excited. So he asked master what penalty should be paid for his failure to defend him. Answer, patience, more patience, tolerance, more tolerance. Talk 2, 136. On the death of King George V, two devotees were discussing the matter in the hall. They were very upset. The master said to them, Whoever dies or is lost, what is that to you? Die yourself and lose yourself, becoming one with love. Talk 2, 137. A man brought with him a silver idol of Subramanya and copper idols of Valley and Devanai. He said to Sri Bhagavan, I have been worshipping them for the last ten years, but have been rewarded only with calamities. What shall I do with them? When I asked others, they attribute my worries to some fault in the makeup of the idols, for instance, the difference in the metals of their make. Is it so? Answer, 
Did they say that it was wrong to worship? Talk 2, 138. In answer to some question, Maharshi said, There is a state when words cease and silence prevails. Disciple, how to communicate thought to each other? Answer, that is only when there is the notion of two. Disciple, how to get peace? Answer, that is the natural state. The mind obstructs the innate peace. Our investigation is only in the mind. Investigate the mind, it will disappear. There is no entity by name mind. Because of the emergence of thoughts we surmise something from which they start. That we term mind. When we probe to see what it is, there is nothing like it. After it has vanished, peace will be found to remain eternal. Disciple, what is booty intellect? Answer, the thinking or discriminating faculty. These are mere names. Be it the ego, the mind, or the intellect, it is all the same. Whose mind? Whose intellect? The egos. Is the ego real? No. We can found the ego and call it intellect or mind. Disciple, Emerson says, soul answers soul by itself, not by description or words. Answer, quite so. However much you learn, there will be no bounds to knowledge. You ignore the doubter but try to solve the doubts. On the other hand, hold on to the doubter and the doubts will disappear. Disciple, then the question resolves itself to knowing the self. Answer, quite so. Disciple, how to know the self? Answer, see what the self is. What you consider to be the self is really either the mind or the intellect or the I thought. The other thoughts arise only after the I thought. So hold on to it. The others will vanish leaving the self as the residuum. Disciple, the difficulty lies in reaching it. Answer, there is no reaching it at all because it is eternal here and now. If the self were to be gained anew, it would not be permanent. Disciple, how to obtain equanimity or peace or equilibrium of mind? What is the best way? Answer, I have already answered it. Investigate the mind. It is eliminated and you remain over. Let your standpoint become that of wisdom then the world will be found to be God. So the question is one of outlook. You pervade all. To yourself and all are understood. But you have now lost hold of yourself and go about doubting other things. Disciple. How to know the self? Answer. Are there two eyes? How do you know your own existence? You see yourself with these eyes? Question yourself. How does this question arise? Do I remain to ask it or not? Can I find myself as in a mirror? Because your outlook has been outward bent, it has lost sight of the self and your vision is external. The self is not found in external objects. Turn your look within and plunge down, you will be the self. Disciple, is discovery of the self dependent on the observance of caste rules? Or should we flout them? Answer, not in the beginning. Observe them to start with. Caste rules serve as a check on the vagaries of the mind. It is thus purified. Disciple, the unknowable can be attained only by the grace of the unknowable. Answer, he helps the attainment. That is the grace. Disciple, how to check the mind? Answer, will a thief betray himself? Will the mind find itself? The mind cannot seek the mind. You have ignored what is real and are holding on to the mind which is unreal and also trying to find what it is. Was there mind in your sleep? It was not. It is now here. It is therefore impermanent. Can the mind be found by you? The mind is not you. You think you are the mind and therefore ask me how it is checked. If it is there it can be checked. But it is not. Understand this truth by search. Search for unreality is fruitless. Therefore seek the reality, in other words, the self. That is the way to rule over the mind. 
There is only one thing real. Disciple, what is the one real thing? Answer, that is what is the others are only appearances. Diversity is not its nature. We are reading the printed characters on paper but ignore the paper which is the background. Similarly you are taken up by the manifestations of the mind and let go the background. Whose fault is it? Disciple, is there a limit to the self? Answer, what is the self? Disciple, the individual soul is the self. Answer, what is the individual soul? Is there any difference between the two or are they identical? Any new appearances are bound to disappear. Anything created will certainly be destroyed. The eternal is not born nor does it die. We are now confounding appearances with reality. Appearance carries its end in itself. What is it that appears newly? If you cannot find it surrender to the substratum of appearances unreservedly then the reality will be left over as the residue. Disciple, what happens to the man after death? Answer, engage yourself in the living present. The future will take care of itself. Do not worry about the future. The state before creation and the process of creation are dealt with in the scriptures in order that you may know the present. Because you say you are born therefore they say, yes, and add that God created you. But do you see God or anything else in your sleep? If God be real why does he not shine forth in your sleep also? You are always now the same as you were in sleep. You are not different from that one in sleep. But why should there be difference in the feelings or experiences of the two states? Did you ask while asleep the question regarding your birth? Or where do I go after death? Why think of all these now in the wakeful state? Let what is born think of its birth and the remedy, its cause and ultimate results. What is birth? Is it of the I thought or of the body? Is I separate from the body or identical with it? How did this I thought arise? Is the I thought your nature or is anything else of your nature? Disciple, who is to ask these questions? Answer, exactly that is it. There is no end to it all. Disciple, are we then to keep quiet? Answer, Doubts cease to afflict when the confusion moha is surpassed. Disciple, your statements amount to cessation of achara investigation. Answer, if atma vachara self-investigation ceases, loka vachara world investigation takes its place. Laughter in the hall. Engage in self-investigation. Then the non-self will disappear. The self will be left over. This is self-investigation of the self. The one word self is equivalent to the mind, body, man, individual, the supreme and all else. Talk 2, 139. Mr. Fridman. One imagines things and enjoys them by strength of imagination. Such creations are possible to Brahma the Creator. Can the same statement apply to his creature man? Answer. This is also your thought. Disciple, Krishnamurti says that man should find out the I. Then I dissolves away being only a bundle of circumstances. There is nothing behind the I. His teaching seems to be very much like Buddha's. Answer, yes yes beyond expression. Talks with Sri Ramana Maharshi Volume 2. 23rd August, 1936, Talk 2, 140. Disciple, the world is materialistic. What is the remedy for it? Answer, materialistic or spiritual, it is according to your outlook. Make your outlook right. The Creator knows how to take care of His creation. Disciple, what is the best thing to do for ensuring the future? Answer, take care of the present, the future will take care of itself. Disciple, the future is the result of the present. So what should I do to make it good? Or should I keep still? Answer, whose is the doubt? 
Who is it that wants a course of action? Find the doubter. If you hold the doubter, the doubts will disappear. Having lost hold of the self, the thoughts afflict you. The world is seen, doubts arise, also anxiety for the future. Hold fast to the self, these will disappear. Disciple, how to do it? Answer, this question is relevant to matters of non-self but not to the self. Do you doubt the existence of your own self? Disciple, no. But still, I want to know how the self could be realized. Is there any method leading to it? Answer, make effort. Just as water is got by boring a well, so also you realize the self by investigation. Disciple, yes. But some find water readily and others with difficulty. Answer, but you already see the moisture on the surface. You are hazily aware of the self. Pursue it. When the effort ceases the self shines forth. Disciple, how to train the mind to look within. Answer, by practice. The mind is the intelligent phase leading to its own destruction for self to manifest. Disciple, how to destroy the mind? Answer, water cannot be made dry water. Seek the self, the mind will be destroyed. 29th August 1936 Talk 2 141 Disciple, how to avoid misery? Answer, has misery a shape? Misery is only unwanted thought. The mind is not strong enough to resist it. Disciple, how to gain such strength of mind? Answer, by worship of God. Disciple, meditation of the God of immanence is hard to understand. Answer, leave God alone. Hold yourself. Disciple, how to do japa repetition of mantras. Answer, it is of two kinds gross and subtle. The latter is meditation on it, and it gives strength to the mind. Disciple, but the mind does not get steady for meditation. Answer, it is due to lack of strength. Talk 2, 142. A Gujarati gentleman asks Sri Bhagavan. They say that choice is offered to us to enjoy merits or demerits after our death. Their succession will be according to our choice. Is it so? Answer, why raise these questions relating to events after death? Why ask was I born? Am I reaping fruits of my past karma and so on? They will not be raised some time hence when you fall asleep. Why? Are you now different from the one in sleep? You are not. Why do these questions arise now and not in sleep? Find out. Talk 2, 143. A middle-aged, weak-looking man came with a walking stick in his hand, placed it before Bhagavan, bowed low and sat near Maharshi. He got up and with great humility offered the stick to Bhagavan, saying that it was sandalwood. Sri Bhagavan told him to keep it for himself, because nothing of Bhagavan's can be safeguarded. Being common property but coveted by some, it will be taken away by any visitor with or without Bhagavan's permission. Then the donor may be displeased. But the man still humbly insisted. Sri Bhagavan could not resist his supplications and said, Keep it yourself as prasad from Bhagavan. The man then requested that the stick might first be taken and then given to him by Sri Bhagavan with blessings. Sri Bhagavan received it, smelled it, said it was fine, nodded and handed it back to the man, saying, Keep it. It will make you always remember me. Talk 2, 144. A Maharani Sahiba spoke in a gentle and low voice, but quite audibly. Disciple, Maharaji, I have the good fortune to see you. My eyes have had the pleasure of seeing you, my ears the pleasure of hearing your voice. I am blessed with everything that a human being would like to have. Her Highness's voice choked. With great strength of mind she rallied and proceeded slowly. I have all that I want, a human being would want. But, but, I, 
I do not have peace of mind. Something prevents it. Probably my destiny. There was silence for a few minutes. Then Maharshi, in his usual sweet manner, spoke. Answer, all right. What need be said has been said. Well, what is destiny? There is no destiny. Surrender and all will be well. Throw all the responsibility on God. Do not bear the burden yourself. What can destiny do to you then? Disciple, surrender is impossible. Answer, yes. Complete surrender is impossible in the beginning. Partial surrender is certainly possible for all. In course of time that will lead to complete surrender. Well, if surrender is impossible, what can be done? There is no peace of mind. You are helpless to bring it about. It can be done only by surrender. Disciple, partial surrender, well, can it undo destiny? Answer, oh yes. It can. Disciple, is not destiny due to past karma? Answer, if one is surrendered to God, God will look to it. Disciple, this being God's dispensation, how does God undo it? Answer, all are in him only. Disciple, how is God to be seen? Answer, within. If the mind is turned inward, God manifests as inner consciousness. Disciple, God is in all in all the objects we see around us. They say we should see God in all of them. Answer, God is in all and in the seer. Where else can God be seen? He cannot be found outside. He should be felt within. To see the object's mind is necessary. To conceive God in them is a mental operation. But that is not real. The consciousness within, purged of the mind, is felt as God. Disciple, there are, say, beautiful colors. It is a pleasure to watch them. We can see God in them. Answer, they are all mental conceptions. Disciple, there are more than colors. I mention colors only as an example. Answer, they are also similarly mental. Disciple, there is the body also the senses and the mind. The soul makes use of all these for knowing things. Answer, the objects or feelings or thoughts are all mental conceptions. The mind rises after the rise of the I thought or the ego. Where from does the ego rise? From the abstract consciousness or pure intelligence. Disciple, is it the soul? Answer, soul, mind, or ego are mere words. There are no entities of the kind. Consciousness is the only truth. Disciple, then that consciousness cannot give any pleasure. Answer, its nature is bliss. Bliss alone is. There is no enjoyer to enjoy pleasure. Enjoyer and joy both merge in it. Disciple, there are pleasure and pain in ordinary life. Should we not remain with only pleasure? Answer, pleasure consists in turning and keeping the mind within, pain in sending it outward. There is only pleasure. Absence of pleasure is called pain. One's nature is pleasure bliss and and a disciple. Is it the soul? Answer, soul and God are only mental conceptions. Disciple, is God only a mental conception? Answer, yes. Do you think of God in sleep? Disciple, but sleep is a state of dullness. Answer, if God be real he must remain always. You remain in sleep and in wakefulness just the same. If God be as true as yourself, God must be in sleep as well as the self. This thought of God arises only in the wakeful state. Who thinks now? Disciple, I think. Answer, who is this I? Who says it? Is it the body? Disciple, the body speaks. Answer, the body does not speak. If so, did it speak in sleep? Who is this I? Disciple, I within the body. Answer, are you within the body or without? Disciple, 
I am certainly within the body. Answer, do you know it to be so in your sleep? Disciple, I remain in my body and sleep also. Answer, are you aware of being within the body in sleep? Disciple, sleep is a state of dullness. Answer, the fact is you are neither within nor without. Sleep is the natural state of being. Disciple, then sleep must be a better state than this. Answer, there is no superior or inferior state. In sleep and dream and in the wakeful state you are just the same. Sleep is a state of happiness, there is no misery. The sense of want, of pain, etc. arises only in the wakeful state. What is the change that has taken place? You are the same in both, but there is difference in happiness. Why? Because the mind has risen now. This mind rises after the I thought. The thought arises from consciousness. If one abides in it, one is always happy. Disciple, the sleep state is the state when the mind is quiet. I consider it a worse state. Answer, if that were so, why do all desire sleep? Disciple, it is the body when tired that goes to sleep. Answer, does the body sleep? Disciple, yes. It is the condition in which the wear and tear of the body is repaired. Answer, let it be so. But does the body itself sleep or wake up? You yourself said shortly before that the mind is quiet in sleep. The three states are of the mind. Disciple, are they not states of the soul functioning through the senses, etc.? Answer, they are not of the soul or of the body. The soul remains always uncontaminated. It is the substratum running through all these three states. Wakefulness passes off, I am, the dream state passes off, I am, the sleep state passes off, I am. They repeat themselves, and yet I am. They are like pictures moving on the screen in a cinema show. They do not affect the screen. Similarly also I remain unaffected although these states pass off. If it is of the body are you aware of the body in sleep? Disciple, no. Answer, without knowing the body to be there how can the body be said to be in sleep? Disciple, because it is still found after waking up. Answer, the sense of body is a thought, the thought is of the mind. The mind rises after the I thought the I thought is the root thought. If that is held, the other thoughts will disappear. There will then be no body, no mind, not even the ego. Disciple, what will remain then? Answer, the self in its purity. Disciple, how can the mind be made to vanish? Answer, no attempt is made to destroy it. To think or wish it is itself a thought the thinker is saw, the thoughts will disappear. Disciple, will they disappear of themselves? It looks so difficult. Answer, they will disappear because they are unreal. The idea of difficulty is itself an obstacle to realization. It must be overcome. To remain as the self is not difficult. Disciple, it looks easy to think of God in the external world, whereas it looks difficult to remain without thoughts. Answer, that is absurd to look at other things is easy and to look within is difficult. It must be contrarywise. Disciple, but I do not understand. It is difficult. Answer, this thought of difficulty is the chief obstacle. A little practice will make you think differently. Disciple, what is the practice? Answer, to find out the source of I. Disciple, that was the state before one's birth. Answer, why should one think of birth and death? Are you really born? The rising of the mind is called birth. After mind the body thought arises, and the body is seen. Then the thought of birth, the state before birth, death, the state after death, all these are only of the mind. Whose is the birth? Disciple, am I not now born? Answer, so long as the body is considered, birth is real. 
but the body is not I. The self is not born nor does it die. There is nothing new. The sages see everything in and of the self. There is no diversity in it. Therefore there is neither birth nor death. Disciple, if sleep be such a good state why does not one like to be always in it? Answer, one is always only in sleep. The present waking state is no more than a dream. Dream can take place only in sleep. Sleep is underlying these three states. Manifestation of these three states is again a dream, which is in its turn another sleep. In this way these states of dream and sleep are endless. Similar to these states, birth and death also are dreams in a sleep. Really speaking there are no birth and death. 8th September 1936 Talk 2, 145 Mrs. Call, by and Sharon by Byron G., two Parsi ladies, were asking questions round one central point. All their questions amounted to one. I understand that the self is beyond the ego. My knowledge is theoretical and not practical. How shall I gain practical realization of the self? Answer, realization is nothing to be got afresh. It is already there. All that is necessary is to be rid of the thought. I have not realized. Disciple, then one need not attempt it. Answer, no. Stillness of mind or peace is realization. There is no moment when the self is not. So long as there is doubt or the feeling of non-realization, attempt must be made to rid oneself of these thoughts. The thoughts are due to identification of the self with the non-self. When the non-self disappears the self alone remains. To make room anywhere it is enough that things are removed from there. Room is not brought in afresh. Nay, more room is there even in cramping. Absence of thoughts does not mean a blank. There must be one to know the blank. Knowledge and ignorance are of the mind. They are born of duality. But the self is beyond knowledge and ignorance. It is light itself. There is no necessity to see the self with another self. There are no two selves. What is not self is non-self. The non-self cannot see the self. The self has no sight or hearing. It lies beyond these all alone this pure consciousness. A woman with her necklace round her neck imagines that it has been lost and goes about searching for it until she is reminded of it by a friend she has created her own sense of loss, her own anxiety of search and then her own pleasure of recovery. Similarly the self is all along there whether you search for it or not. Again just as the woman feels as if the lost necklace has been regained, so also the removal of ignorance and the cessation of false identification reveal the self which is always present here and now. This is called realization. It is not new. It amounts to elimination of ignorance and nothing more. Blankness is the evil result of searching the mind. The mind must be cut off root and branch. See who the thinker is, who the seeker is. Abide as the thinker, the seeker. All thoughts will disappear. Disciple, then there will be the ego, the thinker. Answer, that ego is pure ego purged of thoughts. It is the same as the self. So long as false identification persists, doubts will persist, questions will arise. There will be no end of them. Doubts will cease only when the non-self is put an end to. That will result in realization of the self. There will remain no other there to doubt or ask. All these doubts should be solved within oneself. No amount of words will satisfy. Hold the thinker. Only when the thinker is not held do objects appear outside or doubts arise in the mind. Talk 2, 146. Language is only a medium for communicating one's thoughts to another. It is called in only after thoughts arise, other thoughts arise after the I thought rises, the I thought is the root of all conversation. 
When one remains without thinking one understands another by means of the universal language of silence. Silence is ever speaking, it is a perennial flow of language, it is interrupted by speaking. These words obstruct that mute language. There is electricity flowing in a wire. With resistance to its passage, it glows as a lamp or revolves as a fan. In the wire it remains as electric energy. Similarly also silence is the eternal flow of language, obstructed by words. What one fails to know by conversation extending to several years can be known in a trice in silence, or in front of silence for example, Dakshin Emery, and his four disciples. That is the highest and most effective language. Talk 2, 147. There arose a doubt if I, I consciousness be the same as Nirvikalpa Samadhi or anything interior to it. Sri Bhagavan said that the tiny hole in the heart remains always closed, but it is opened by Vichara with the result that I, I, consciousness shines forth. It is the same as Samadhi. Disciple, what is the difference between fainting and sleep? Answer, sleep is sudden and overpowers the person forcibly. A faint is slower and there is a tingle of resistance kept up. Realization is possible in a faint and impossible in sleep. Disciple, what is the state just before death? Answer, when a person gasps for breath it indicates that the person is unconscious of this body, another body has been held and the person swings to and fro. While gasping there is a more violent gasp at intervals, and that indicates the oscillation between the two bodies due to the present attachment not having been completely snapped. I noticed it in the case of my mother and of Palana Swami. Disciple, does the new body involved in that state represent the next reincarnation of the person? Answer, yes. While gasping the person is in something like a dream, not aware of the present environment. It must be remembered that Sri Bhagavan had been with his mother from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. until she passed away. He was all along holding her head with one hand, the other hand placed on her bosom. What does it signify? He himself said later that there was a struggle between himself and his mother until her spirit reached the heart. Evidently the soul passes through a series of subtle experiences, and Sri Bhagavan's touch generates a current which turns the soul back from its wandering into the heart. The samskaras, however, persist and the struggle is kept up between the spiritual force set up by his touch and the innate samskaras, until the latter are entirely destroyed and the soul is led into the heart to rest in eternal peace, which is the same as liberation. Its entry into the heart is signified by a peculiar sensation perceptible to the Mahatma similar to the tinkling of a bell. When Maharshi attended on Palani Swami on his death bed, he took away his hand after the above signal. But Palani Swami's eyes opened immediately, signifying that the spirit had escaped through them, thereby indicating a higher rebirth, but not liberation. Having once noticed it with Palaniswami, Maharshi continued touching his mother for a few minutes longer even after the signal of the soul passing into the heart and thus ensured her liberation. This was confirmed by the look of perfect peace and composure on her features. 15th September 1936 Talk 2, 148 Three Bhagavan said, the jani says, I am the body. The ajani says, I am the body. What is the difference? I am is the truth. The body is the limitation. The ajani limits the eye to the body. I remains independent of the body in sleep. The same eye is now in the wakeful state. Though imagined to be within the body, I is without the body. The wrong notion is not I am the body. I says so. Body is insentient and cannot say so. 
The mistake lies in thinking that I is what I is not. I is not insentient. I cannot be the inert body. The body's movements are confounded with I and misery is the result. Whether the body works or not I remains free and happy. The Ajani's I is the body only. That is the whole error. The Ajani's I includes the body and everything else. Clearly some intermediate entity arises and gives rise to the confusion. Mr. Vaidyanatha Ayer, a lawyer, asked, If the Jani says I am the body, what happens to him in death? Answer, he does not identify himself with the body even now. Disciple, but you said just before that the Jani says I am the body. Answer, yes. His I includes the body. But there cannot be anything apart from I for him. If the body falls away there is no loss for the eye. I remains the same. The body feels dead let it raise the question. Being inert it cannot. I never dies and does not ask the question. Who then dies? Who asks questions? Disciple, for whom are all the sastras then? They cannot be for the real eye. They must be for the unreal eye. The real one does not require them. It is strange that the unreal should have so many sastras for him. Answer, yes. Quite so. Death is only a thought and nothing more. He who thinks raises troubles. Let the thinker tell us what happens to him in death. The real I is silent. One should not think I am this, I am not that. To say this or that is wrong. They are also limitations. Only I am is the truth. Silence is I. If one thinks I am this, another thinks I am this, and so on. There is a clash of thoughts, and so many religions are the result. The truth remains as it is, not affected by any statements, conflicting or otherwise. Disciple, what is death? Is it not the falling away of the body? Answer, do you not desire it in sleep? What goes wrong then? Disciple, but I know I shall wake up. Answer, yes, thought again. There is the preceding thought I shall wake up. Thoughts rule the life. Freedom from thoughts is one's true nature bliss. 24 September 1936 Talk 2 149 Maharshi Ignorance ajana is of two kinds. 1. Forgetfulness of the self. 2. Obstruction to the knowledge of the self. Aids are meant for eradicating thoughts. These thoughts are the remanifestations of predispositions remaining in seed form. They give rise to diversity from which all troubles arise. These aids are hearing the truth from the master Esravana, etc. The effects of Esravana may be immediate, and the disciple realizes the truth all at once. This can happen only for the well-advanced disciple. Otherwise, the disciple feels that he is unable to realize the truth, even after repeatedly hearing it. What is it due to? Impurities in his mind, ignorance, doubt and wrong identity are the obstacles to be removed. Uh, to remove ignorance completely, he has to hear the truth repeatedly, until his knowledge of the subject matter becomes perfect. B. To remove doubts, he must reflect on what he has heard, ultimately his knowledge will be free from doubts of any kind. C. To remove the wrong identity of the self with the non-self such as the body, the senses, the mind or the intellect his mind must become one-pointed. All these things accomplished, the obstacles are at an end and samadhi results, that is, peace reigns. Some say that one should never cease to engage in hearing, reflection and one-pointedness. These are not fulfilled by reading books, but only by continued practice to keep the mind withdrawn. The aspirant may be Kritapasaka or Akritapasaka. The former is fit to realize the self, even with the slightest stimulus, only some little doubt stands in his way. 
it is easily removed if he hears the truth once from the master. Immediately he gains the samadhi state. It is presumed that he had already completed esravana, reflection, etc., in previous births. They are no more necessary for him. For the other all these aids are necessary. For him doubts crop up even after repeated hearing, therefore he must not give up aids until he gains the samadhi state. Esravana removes the illusion of the self being one with the body, etc. Reflection makes it clear that knowledge is self. One-pointedness reveals the self as being infinite and blissful. 27 September 1936 Talk 2, 150 A certain devotee asked Maharshi about some disagreeable statements made by a certain man well known to Maharshi. He said, I permit him to do so. I have permitted him already. Let him do so even more. Let others follow suit. Only let them leave me alone. If because of these reports no one comes to me, I shall consider it a great service done to me. Moreover, if he cares to publish books containing scandals of me, and if he makes money by their sale, it is really good. Such books will sell even more quickly and in larger numbers than others. Look at Miss Mayo's book. Why should he not also do it? He is doing me a very good turn. Saying so, he laughed. 29th September 1936 There was again a reference to the same subject when Maharshi was alone. The vilifier seems to be getting into hot waters on account of his inconsiderate action. When it was mentioned Maharshi seemed to be concerned for the man's safety and he said with obvious sympathy, even if allowed to have his own way for earning money, the man gets into trouble. If he availed himself of our indulgence and acted sensibly, he could have got on well. But what can we do? Talk 2, 151. An aristocratic lady looking very intelligent, though pensive, asked, we had heard of you, Maharaji, as the kindest and noblest soul. We had long desired to have your darsan. I came here once before, on the fourteenth of last month, but could not remain in your holy presence as long as I wished. Being a woman and also young, I could not stand the people around, and so broke away hurriedly after asking one or two simple questions. There are no holy men like you in our part of the country. I am happy as I have everything I want, but I do not have that peace of mind which brings happiness. I now come here seeking your blessing so that I may gain it. Answer, Bhakti fulfills your desire. Disciple, I want to know how I can gain that peace of mind. Kindly be pleased to advise me. Answer, yes devotion and surrender. Disciple, am I worthy of being a devotee? Answer, everyone can be a devotee. Spiritual fare is common to all and never denied to anyone be the person old or young, male or female. Disciple, that is exactly what I am anxious to know. I am young and a grihini housewife. There are duties of grihase the dharma the household. Is devotion consistent with such a position? Answer, certainly. What are you? You are not the body. You are pure consciousness. Rehase the Dharma and the world are only phenomena appearing on that pure consciousness. It remains unaffected. What prevents you from being your own self? Disciple, yes, I am already aware of the line of teaching of Maharshi. It is the quest for the self. But my doubt persists if such quest is compatible with Grihase the life. Answer, the self is always there. It is you. There is nothing but you. Nothing can be apart from you. The question of compatibility or otherwise does not arise. Disciple, I shall be more definite. Though a stranger, I am obliged to confess the cause of my anxiety. I am blessed with children. A boy, a good brahmachari, passed away in February. I was grief-stricken. 
I was disgusted with this life. I want to devote myself to spiritual life. But my duties as a Grihini do not permit me to lead a retired life. Hence my doubt. Answer, retirement means abidance in the self. Nothing more. It is not leaving one set of surroundings and getting entangled in another set nor even leaving the concrete world and becoming involved in a mental world. The birth of the sun, his death, etc., are seen in the self only. Recall the state of sleep. Were you aware of anything happening? If the sun or the world be real, should they not be present with you in sleep? You cannot deny your existence in sleep, nor can you deny you were happy then. You are the same person now speaking and raising doubts. You are not happy according to you, but you are happy in sleep. What has transpired in the meantime that happiness of sleep has broken down? It is the rise of ego. That is the new arrival in the Jagrat state. There was no ego in sleep. The birth of the ego is called the birth of the person. There is no other kind of birth. Whatever is born is bound to die. Kill the ego, there is no fear of recurring death for what is once dead. The self remains even after the death of the ego. That is bliss, that is immortality. Disciple, how is that to be done? Answer, see for whom these doubts exist. Who is the doubter? Who is the thinker? That is the ego. Hold it. The other thoughts will die away. The ego is left pure, see where from the ego arises. That is pure consciousness. Disciple, it seems difficult. May we proceed by Bhakti Marga? Answer, it is according to individual temperament and equipment. Bhakti is the same as Vichara. Disciple, I mean meditation, etc. Answer, yes. Meditation is on a form that will drive away other thoughts. The one thought of God will dominate others. That is concentration. The object of meditation is thus the same as that of Achara. Disciple, do we not see God in concrete form? Answer, yes. God is seen in the mind. The concrete form may be seen. Still, it is only in the devotee's mind. The form and appearance of God manifestation are determined by the mind of the devotee. But it is not the finality. There is the sense of duality. It is like a dream, vision. After God is perceived, Vichara commences. That ends in realization of the self. Vichara is the ultimate route. Of course, if you find Vichara practicable, others find Bhakti easier. Disciple, did not Mr. Breton find you in London? Was it only a dream? Answer, yes. He had the vision. He saw me in his mind. Disciple, did he not see this concrete form? Answer, yes, still in his mind. Disciple, how shall I reach the self? Answer, there is no reaching the self. If the self were to be reached, it would mean that the self is not now in here, but that it should be God anew. What is God afresh will also be lost. So it will be impermanent. What is not permanent is not worth striving for. So I say the self is not reached. You are the self. You are already that. The fact is that you are ignorant of your blissful state. Ignorance supervenes and draws a veil over the pure bliss. Attempts are directed only to remove this ignorance. This ignorance consists in wrong knowledge. The wrong knowledge consists in the false identification of the self with the body, the mind, etc. This false identity must go and there remains the self. Disciple, how is that to happen? Answer, by inquiry into the self. Disciple, it is difficult. Can I realize the self, Maharaj? Kindly tell me. It looks so difficult. Answer, you are already the self. 
Therefore, realization is common to everyone. Realization knows no difference in the aspirants. This very doubt can I realize? Or the feeling I have not realized are the obstacles. Be free from these also. Disciple, but there should be the experience. Unless I have the experience, how can I be free from these afflicting thoughts? Answer, these are also in the mind. They are there because you have identified yourself with the body. If this false identity drops away, ignorance vanishes and truth is revealed. Disciple, yes, I feel it difficult. There are disciples of Bhagavan who have had his grace and realized without any considerable difficulty. I too wish to have that grace. Being a woman and living at a long distance, I cannot avail myself of Maharshi's holy company as much as I would wish and as often as I would. Possibly I may not be able to return. I request Bhagavan's grace. When I am back in my place, I want to remember Bhagavan. May Bhagavan be pleased to grant my prayer. Answer, where are you going? You are not going anywhere. Even supposing you are the body, has your body come from Lucknow to Turuvanamalai? You had simply sat in the car in one conveyance or another had moved and finally you say that you have come here. The fact is that you are not the body. The self does not move. The world moves in it. You are only what you are. There is no change in you. So then even after what looks like departure from here, you are here and there and everywhere. These scenes shift. As for grace, grace is within you. If it is external, it is useless. Grace is the self. You are never out of its operation. Grace is always there. Disciple, I mean that when I remember your form, my mind should be strengthened and that response should come from your side too. I should not be left to my individual efforts which are after all only weak. Answer, grace is the self. I have already said, if you remember Bhagavan you are prompted to do so by the self. Is not grace already there? Is there a moment when grace is not operating in you? Your remembrance is the forerunner of grace. That is the response, that is the stimulus, that is the self and that is grace. There is no cause for anxiety. Disciple, can I engage in spiritual practice even remaining in samsara? Answer, yes certainly. One ought to do so. Disciple, is not samsara a hindrance? Do not all the holy books advocate renunciation? Answer, samsara is only in your mind. The world does not speak out saying I am the world. Otherwise, it must be ever there not excluding your sleep. Since it is not in sleep, it is impermanent. Being impermanent, it has no stamina. Having no stamina, it is easily subdued by the self. The self alone is permanent. Renunciation is non-identification of the self with the non-self. On the disappearance of ignorance, the non-self ceases to exist. That is true renunciation. Disciple, why did you then leave your home in your youth? Answer, that is my prayer of to fate. One's course of conduct in this life is determined by one's prayer of to. My prayer of to is this way. Your prayer of to is that way. Disciple, should I not also renounce? Answer, if that had been your prayer of to, the question would not have arisen. Disciple, I should therefore remain in the world and engage in spiritual practice. Well, can I get realization in this life? Answer, this has been already answered. You are always the self. Earnest efforts never fail. Success is bound to result. Disciple, will Maharshi be pleased to extend grace to me also? Maharshi smiled and said, Amam. With blessings and salutation, the interview came to a close and the party departed directly. 30th September 1936 Talk 2, 152 Disciple, 
Sri Ramakrishna touched Vivekananda and the latter realized bliss. Is it possible? Answer, Sri Ramakrishna did not touch all for that purpose. He did not create Atma. He did not create realization. Vivekananda was ripe. He was anxious to realize. He must have completed the preliminary course in his past births. Such is possible for right persons only. Disciple, can the same miracle be worked for all? Answer, if they are fit. Fitness is the point. A strong man controls the weaker man. A strong mind controls the weaker mind. That was what happened in the case cited. The effect was only temporary. Why did Vivekananda not sit quiet? Why did he wander about after such a miracle? Because the effect was only temporary. Disciple, how is the mind to dive into the heart? Answer, the mind now sees itself diversified as the universe. If the diversity is not manifest it remains in its own essence, that is the heart. Entering the heart means remaining without distractions. The heart is the only reality. The mind is only a transient phase. To remain as oneself is to enter the heart. Because a man identifies himself with the body he sees the world separate from him. This wrong identification arises because he has lost his moorings and has swerved from his original state. He is now advised to give up all these false ideas, to trace back his source and remain as the self. In that state there are no differences. No questions will arise. All the sastras are meant only to make the man retrace his steps to the original source. He need not gain anything new. He must only give up his false ideas and useless accretions. Instead of doing it he tries to catch hold of something strange and mysterious because he believes that his happiness lies elsewhere. That is the mistake. If one remains as the self there is bliss. Probably he thinks that being quiet does not bring about the state of bliss. That is due to his ignorance. The only practice is to find out to whom these questions arise. Disciple, how to control lust, anger, etc. Answer, whose are these passions? Find out. If you remain as the self, there will be found to be nothing apart from the self. Then there will be no need to control, etc. Disciple, if a person whom we love dies, grief results. Shall we avoid such grief by either loving all alike or by not loving at all? Answer, if one dies, it results in grief for the other who lives. The way to get rid of grief is not to live. Kill the one who grieves. Who will remain then to suffer? The ego must die. That is the only way. The two alternatives amount to the same state. When all have become the one self, who is there to be loved or hated? Disciple, what is the sun marga? What is the moon marga? Which of them is easier? Answer, Ravi Marga Sun, Marga is Jhana. Moon Marga is Yoga. They think that after purifying the 72,000 nadis in the body, Sushumna is entered and the mind passes up to the Sahasrara, and there is nectar trickling. These are all mental concepts. The man is already overwhelmed by world concepts. Other concepts are now added in the shape of this yoga. The object of all these is to rid the man of concepts and to make him in here as the pure self in other words, absolute consciousness, bereft of thoughts. Why not go straight to it? Why add new encumbrances to the already existing ones? 1st October 1936 Talk 2, 153 Mr. Pierce Principal, Sindhya School Gwalior, Bhagavan has stated in Sad Vidya Anubandam Supplement Sloka 36. The illiterates are certainly better off than the literates whose egos are not destroyed by the quest of the self. 
This being so, could Bhagavan advise a schoolmaster who feels this to be true how to carry on education in such a way that the desire for literacy and intellectual knowledge may not obscure the more important search for the self? Are the two incompatible? If they are not, then from what age, and by what means can young people best be stimulated towards the search for the real truth within? Answer pride of learning and desire for appreciation are condemned and not learning itself. Learning leading to search for truth and humility is good. A request from the same seeker. The above questioner has spent two very precious days in physical proximity to Bhagavan Maharshi whom he has not seen since seventeen years ago. He visited him for a few minutes on the hillside. His duties now compel him to take his body far away again to the north, and it may be years before he can return. He humbly requests Bhagavan to make a strong link with him, and to continue to help him with his grace, in the quest of the self. Maharshi had a gentle smile for this. Talk 2, 154 Mr. Duncan Greenlees quoted a few verses from Srimad Bhagavatam to the following effect. See the self in yourself like the pure ether in all beings in and out. Unashamed fall prostrate before even an outcast, a cow or an ass. So long as I am not perceived in all, worship all with body and mind. With right knowledge see all as Brahma. This once clear, all doubts are at an end and you will remain withdrawn in the self. He then raised the following questions. Disciple is this a true path to the realization of the one self? Is it not easier for some thus to practice seeing Bhagavan in whatever meets the mind than to seek the supermental through the mental inquiry who am I? Answer, yes. When you see God in all, do you think of God or do you not? You should certainly keep God in your mind for seeing God all round you. Keeping God in your mind becomes Diana. Diana is the stage before realization. Realization is in the self only. Diana must precede it. Whether you make Diana of God or of self, it is immaterial. The goal is the same. But you cannot escape the self. You want to see God in all, but not in yourself. If all are God, are you not included in that all? Yourself being God, is it a wonder that all are God? There must be a seer and thinker for even the practice. Who is he? Disciple. Through poetry, music, japa, badge and beautiful landscapes, reading the lives of spiritual heroes, etc. One sometimes experiences a true sense of all unity. Is that feeling of deep blissful quiet wherein the personal self has no place the entering into the heart whereof Bhagavan speaks? Will practice of that lead to a deeper samadhi, and so ultimately to a full vision of the real? Answer. Again, there is happiness at agreeable sights, etc. It is the happiness inherent in the self. That happiness is not alien and after. You are diving into the pure self on occasions which you consider pleasurable. That diving reveals the self-existent bliss. But the association of ideas is responsible for foisting this bliss onto other things or happenings. In fact, it is within you. On these occasions you are plunging into this self, though unconsciously. If you do so consciously you call it realization. I want you to dive consciously into the self, in other words, into the heart. Talk 255 Disciple if the self be always realized, we should only keep still. Is that so? Answer, if you can keep still without engaging in any other pursuits, it is very good. If that cannot be done, where is the use of being quiet so far as realization is concerned? So long as one is obliged to be active, let him not give up the attempt to realize the self. Talk 2, 156 a question was asked regarding the position of one whose jhana is weak in the scheme of things. 
The doubt was if that man did Johnny had stopped short of Kavala Nervikalpa. Answer, Kavala Nervikalpa happens even in the Tanumanasi stage of attenuated mind. Disciple, the middling and superior Johnnies are said to be given muktas. Kavala Nervikalpa is in Tanumanasa. Where does one whose jhana is weak fit in? Answer, he comes in Savapati realization whereas the middling and the superior ones come in a Samsakti and Pidarthabhavini respectively. This division is dull middling and superior is according to the momentum of Parabya. If it is strong he is weak, if it is middling he is middling too, if Prarabdha is weak he is superior, if it is very weak he is in Tariyaga. There is no difference in the Samadhi state or the jhana of the jhanis. Pacification is only from the standpoint of the observer. Disciple, is Tanumanasi the same as Mumakshutva? Answer, no. The six qualities, discrimination, dispassion, and Mumakshutva, etc. precede Subhetsha. The first stage follows Mumakshutva, then comes Vicharana search, then the tenuous mind. Direct perception is in Savapati realization. There is no need to discuss similar points. Given Mukti and Vaidhamukti are differently described by different authorities. Vaidhamukti is sometimes said to occur even when the man is seen with a body. The fact is that Mukti is another name for Ahamai. The seven jhana bhumika stages of knowledge are 1. Subhetsha desire for enlightenment 2. Vicharana hearing and reflection 3. Tenumanasi tenuous mind 4. Sattvapati self-realization 5. Asam Sakti non-attachment 6. Pidarthabhavani absolute non-perception of objects 7. Turiyoga beyond words. Those who have attained the last four bhumikas are respectively called Brahmavit, Brahmavidvara, Brahmavidvaraya, and Brahmavidvarishtha. Talk 2, 157. Disciple, a certain young man from Dindigal spoke to Sri Bhagavan, saying that he had learnt by his stay for a few days that all that he need do was to inquire, Who am I? He wanted to know if any discipline was to be observed and started with the question, Where should I do the inquiry? Meaning if he should do it in Kuru Sanid, he the presence of the Master. Answer, the inquiry should be from where the eye is. Disciple, people labor for gaining the summum bonum of life. I think that they are not on the right track. Sri Bhagavan has made considerable tapas and achieved the goal. Sri Bhagavan is also desirous that all should reach the goal and willing to help them to that end. His vicarious tapas must enable others to reach the goal rather easily. They need not undergo all the hardships which Sri Bhagavan has already undergone. Their way has been made easy for them by Sri Bhagavan. Am I not right? Miharshi smiled and said, If that were so everyone would easily reach the goal, but each one must work for himself. Talk 2, 158 Disciple, a young man from Mysore gave a written slip to Sri Bhagavan and waited for an answer. He had asked Sri Bhagavan to say where other Mahatmas could be found whom he might approach for guidance. He confessed that he had left his home without informing his elders in order that he might seek God through Mahatmas. True, he knew nothing of God or of search for him. Therefore he desired to see Mahatmas. Sri Bhagavan simply returned the note saying, I must answer any and every question. Unless I do so I am not great. The boy tore away the slip and wrote another, which said, You are kind to squirrels and hares. You fondle them when they struggle to run away from you. Yet you are indifferent to human beings. For instance, I have left my home and am waiting here for a fortnight. I have had no food some days. I am struggling. Still, you do not care for me. Answer, look here. I am not endowed with television. 
God has not bestowed that gift on me. What shall I do? How can I answer your questions? People call me Maharshi and treat me like this. But I do not see myself as a Maharshi. On the other hand, everyone is a Maharshi to me. It is good that you in this early age are attempting to seek God. Concentrate on Him. Do your work without desiring the fruits thereof. That is all that you should do. Talk 2, 159. Not a bind you and call a correspond to prana, mind and intellect. Is far as beyond not a sound. Nada, jayoti, light, etc., are mentioned in yoga literature. But God is beyond these. The circulation of blood, respiration of air, and other functions of the body are bound to produce sound. That sound is involuntary and continuous. That is nada. Talk 2, 160. An extract from our hermit in the Himalayas was found in the Sunday Times. It related to recapitulation of past incarnations. In it Paul Brunton has mentioned the Buddhist methods of gaining that faculty. Sri Bhagavan said, There is a class of people who want to know all about their future or their past. They ignore the present. The load from the past forms the present misery. The attempt to recall the past is mere waste of time. Talk 2, 161 there was a reference to reincarnation. Reincarnation of Shanti Devi tallies with the human standards of time. Whereas the latest case reported of a boy of seven is different. The boy is seven years now. He recalls his past births. Inquiries go to show that the previous body was given up ten months ago. The question arises how the matter stood for six years and two months previous to the death of the former body. Did Thessal occupy two bodies at the same time? Three Bhagavan pointed out that the seven years is according to the boy, ten months is according to the observer. The difference is due to these two different upadhis. The boy's experience extending to seven years has been calculated by the observer to cover only ten months of his own time. Sri Bhagavan again referred to Lila's story in Yoga Vasishta. Talk 2, 162. Dr. Sid, a Muslim professor, is now here. A skeptic friend of his had confronted him with the question, What miracle does your Maharshi work? He had replied that the ordinary people being no better than animals are made men and that we being only his children are endowed with strength by Maharshi. He desired to know if he was right in replying to him. Refreshing peace within is the highest miracle. Maharshi possesses it. What is that to us? The other man asked. I replied the same peace is bestowed on all visitors to be shared by them. Mr. Paul Brunton has mentioned it in his book. Everyone feels it every day in Maharshi's presence. The whole conversation was mentioned to Sri Bhagavan with the following addition. Parasurama has said that he felt some refreshing peace within when he met Samvrita on the way. So he made him out to be a great saint. Is not such peace the sole criterion of a Mahatma's presence? Is there anything else? Sri Bhagavan said. A Madva Saint Tatvaroy R had composed a barony on his master Swarupan and Pandits objected to the composition, saying that it was reserved to such as have killed more than a thousand elephants in battle, whereas Swarupan and was an idle man sitting somewhere unknown to people, and he did not deserve that pain jiric. Tafaroy R. asked them all to assemble before his master, so that they might see for themselves if he could slay one thousand elephants at a time. They did so. As soon as they appeared they were struck dumb and remained in beatific peace for a few days without the least movement. When they regained their senses, they saluted both the master and the disciple, saying that they were more than satisfied. Thwarupan and excelled the warriors in that he could subdue the egos, which is a much more formidable task, 
than slaying a thousand elephants. Mihershi said that the moral was clear. He says the sole criterion of a Mahatma's presence. 20th October, 1936, Talk 2, 163. Dr. Sid. Sri Bhagavan says that the heart is the self. Psychology has it that malice, envy, jealousy, and all passions have their seat in the heart. How are these two statements to be reconciled? Answer, the whole cosmos is contained in one pinhole in the heart. These passions are part of the cosmos. They are avidya ignorance. Disciple, how did avidya arise? Answer, avidya is like maya, she who is not is maya illusion. Similarly, that which is not is ignorance. Therefore, the question does not arise. Nevertheless, the question is asked. Then ask, whose is the avidya? Avidya is ignorance. It implies subject and object. Become the subject and there will be no object. Disciple, what is avidya? Answer, ignorance of self. Who is ignorant of the self? The self must be ignorant of self. Are there two selves? Talk 2, 164. Disciple, does Bhagavan see the world as part and parcel of himself? How does he see the world? Answer, the self alone is a nothing else. However, it is differentiated owing to ignorance. Differentiation is threefold. One, of the same kind. Two, of a different kind, and three, as parts in itself. The world is not another self similar to the self. It is not different from the self, nor is it part of the self. Disciple, is not the world reflected on the self? Answer, for reflection there must be an object and an image. But the self does not admit of these differences. Disciple, does not then Bhagavan see the world? Answer, whom do you mean by Bhagavan? Disciple, a jiva advanced more than I. Answer, if you understand your jiva, the other jiva is also understood. Disciple, I do not want to discuss. I want to learn. Please instruct me. Answer, because you desire to learn, discussion is unavoidable. Leave all this aside. Consider your sleep. Are you then aware of bondage or do you seek means for release? Are you then aware of the body itself? The sense of bondage is associated with the body. Otherwise there is no bondage, no material to bind with and no one to be bound. These appear however in your wakeful state. Consider to whom they appear. Disciple to the mind. Answer watch the mind. You must stand aloof from it. You are not the mind, and the self will remain ever. Disciple, does Sri Bhagavan believe in evolution? Answer, evolution must be from one state to another. When no differences are admitted, how can evolution arise? Disciple, why does Sri Krishna say, after several rebirths the seeker gains knowledge and thus knows me? There must be evolution from stage to stage. Answer, how does Bhagavad Gita begin? Neither I was not nor you nor these chiefs, etc. Neither it is born nor does it die, etc. So there is no birth, no death, no present as you look at it. Reality was, is, and will be. It is changeless. Later Arjuna asked Sri Krishna how he could have lived before Aditya. Then Krishna, seeing Arjuna was confounding him with a gross body, spoke to him accordingly. The instruction is for the one who sees diversity. In reality there is no bondage, nor mukti for himself or for others from the jani standpoint. Disciple, are all in liberation? Answer, where is all? There is no liberation either. Who be only if there was bondage? There was really no bondage and so, it follows, there is no liberation. Disciple, but to evolve through births, there must be practice years of abhyasa. Answer, 
Abhyasa is only to prevent any disturbance to the inherent peace. There is no question of years. Prevent this thought at this moment. You are only in your natural state whether you make Abhyasa or not. Another man asked. Why do not all realize the self in that case? Answer. It is the same question in another guise. Why do you raise this question? Inasmuch as you raise this question of Abhyasa, it shows you require Abhyasa. Make it. But to remain without questions or doubts is the natural state. God created man, and man created God. They both are the originators of forms and names only. In fact, neither God nor man was created. 21st October 1936 Talk 2 165. The aristocratic lady again came after a few days, went straight to Bhagavan, saluted him and said, I came last time with my husband and children. I was thinking of their food and time was pressing. So I could not stay here as long as I would have wished. But I was later worried over the hurried nature of the visit. I have returned now to sit quiet and imbibe Sri Bhagavan's grace. May he give me strength of mind. The hall was already kept clear of people. She sat on a crude carpet in front of Sri Bhagavan. Sri Bhagavan said smiling. Yes. Silence is perpetual speaking. Ordinary speech hinders that heart-to-heart -heart talk. She agreed and sat quiet. Sri Bhagavan was sitting reclining on the sofa. His eyes were fixed in her direction with a gracious smile on his lips. Both remained silent and motionless for about an hour. Prasad was distributed. The lady said, Now I want to return. The river between Bangalore and this place is in floods. On my way here a bus was overturned in the floods. My car came later and I saw the sad accident. Still, I was not afraid to ford the river. My car came out safe. I would like to return in daytime. This time I shall not say is the last time I shall come as I said on former occasions. I do not know, but it may be so. Yet Maharshi should give me strength of mind. I long for bhakti. I want more of this longing. Even realization does not matter for me. Let me be strong in my longing. Answer, if the longing is there, realization will be forced on you even if you do not want it. Subhaksha is the doorway for realization. Disciple, let it be so. But I am content with longing. Even when I am away from this place, I must not relax in my devotion. May Sri Bhagavan give me the necessary strength. Such longing could only be through His grace. I am personally too weak. Again, when I was here on a previous occasion, I asked several questions. But I could not follow Sri Bhagavan's answers. I thought I would not ask any more questions, but only sit quiet in His presence imbibing grace which might be extended to me. So I do not pursue Maharshi with more questions this time. Only let me have his grace. Answer, your repeated visits to this place indicate the extension of grace. She was surprised and said, I was going to ask Maharshi if he called me. For all of a sudden my husband told me this morning, There are two days free. If you want you may visit Maharshi in return. I was very agreeably surprised and pleased. I took it to be a call from Maharshi. She also expressed a desire to reside near Maharshi and ask for his blessings. Maharshi said, A higher power is leading you. Be led by the same. Disciple, but I am not aware of it. Please make me aware of it. Answer, the higher power knows what to do and how to do it. Trust it. Talk 2, 166. The Muslim professor asked. It is said that one should give up desire. But there are the needs of the body which are irrepressible. What is to be done? Answer, an aspirant must be equipped with three requisites. 
1. Iksha 2. Bhakti and 3. Asrata Iksha means satisfaction of bodily wants without attachment to the body such as hunger and thirst and evacuation. Unless it is done meditation cannot progress. Bhakti and Srata are already known. Disciple, there are two kinds of desires, the baser and the nobler. Is it our duty to transmute the baser one to the nobler? Answer, yes. Disciple, well Bhagavan, you said there are three requisites of which Iksha is the satisfaction of natural wants without attachment to the body, etc. I take food three or four times a day and attend to bodily wants so much so that I am oppressed by the body. Is there a state when I shall be disembodied so that I might be free from the scourge of bodily wants? Answer, it is the attachments raga dwesha which are injurious. The action is not bad in itself. There is no harm in eating three or four times. But only do not say, I want this kind of food and not that kind and so on. Moreover, you take those meals in twelve hours of wakeful state whereas you are not eating in the hours of sleep. Does sleep lead you to mukti? It is wrong to suppose that simple inactivity leads one to mukti. Disciple, there are said to be seda mukta liberated in body and vida mukta liberated without body. Answer. There is no liberation and where are muktas? Disciple. Do not Hindu sastras speak of mukti? Answer, mukti is synonymous with the self. Given mukti liberation while alive and vidha mukti liberation after the body falls are all for the ignorant. The jhani is not conscious of mukti or banda bondage. Bondage, liberation and orders of mukti are all said for an odd jhani in order that ignorance might be shaken off. There is only mukti and nothing else. Disciple, it is all right from the standpoint of Bhagavan. But what about us? Answer, the difference he and I are the obstacles to jhana. Disciple, but it cannot be denied that Bhagavan is of a high order whereas we are limited. Will Bhagavan make me one with him? Answer, were you aware of limitations in your sleep? Disciple, I cannot bring down the state of my sleep in the present state and speak of it. Answer, you need not. These three states alternate before the unchanging self. You can remember your state of sleep. That is your real state. There were no limitations then. After the rise of the I thought the limitations arose. Disciple, how to attain the self? Answer. Self is not to be attained because you are the self. Disciple, yes. There is an unchanging self and a changing one in me. There are two selves. Answer, the changefulness is mere thought. All thoughts arise after the arising of the I thought. See to whom the thoughts arise. Then you transcend them and they subside. This is to say, tracing the source of the I thought you realize the perfect I I. I is the name of the self. Disciple, shall I meditate on I am Brahman Aham Brahmasmi? Answer, the text is not meant for thinking I am Brahman. Aham I is known to everyone. Brahman abides as Aham in everyone. Find out the I. The I is already Brahman. You need not think so. Simply find out the I. Disciple, is not discarding of the sheaths mentioned in the Sastras? Answer, after the rise of the I thought there is the false identification of the I with the body, the senses, the mind, etc. I is wrongly associated with them, and the true I is lost sight of. In order to shift the pure I from the contaminated I this discarding is mentioned. But it does not mean exactly discarding of the non-self, but it means the finding of the real self. The real self is the infinite I I, in other words I is perfection. It is eternal. It has no origin and no end. The other I is born and also dies. It is impermanent. See to whom are the changing thoughts. They will be found to arise after the I thought. Hold the I thought. 
They subside. Trace back the source of the I thought. The self alone will remain. Disciple, it is difficult to follow. I understand the theory. But what is the practice? Answer, the other methods are meant for those who cannot take to the investigation of the self. Even to repeat a ham brahmasmi or think of it, a doer is necessary. Who is it? It is I. Be that I. It is the direct method. The other methods also will ultimately lead everyone to this method of the investigation of the self. Disciple, I am aware of the I. Yet my troubles are not ended. Answer, this I thought is not pure. It is contaminated with the association of the body and senses. See to whom the trouble is. It is to the I thought. Hold it. Then the other thoughts vanish. Disciple, yes. How to do it? That is the whole trouble. Answer, think I, I, I and hold to that one thought to the exclusion of all others. 23rd October 1936 Talk 2, 167 While speaking of the animal companions in the hall, Sri Bhagavan quoted a Tamil stanza by Avi. When the old lady was going along, she heard on one occasion someone praising Kambar. She replied with a stanza which means, Each is great in its own way. What is Kambar's greatness when compared with a bird which builds its nest so fine, the worms which give lack, the honey bee which builds the comb, the ants which build cities, and the spider its web? Bhagavan then began to describe their activities. While living on the hill he had seen a hut built of stones and mud and roofed with thatch. There was constant trouble with white ants. The roof was pulled down and the walls demolished to get rid of the mud which harbored the ants. Sri Bhagavan saw that the hollows protected by stones were made into towns. These were skirted by walls plastered black, and there were roads to neighboring cities which were also similarly skirted with black plastered walls. The roads were indicated by these walls. The interior of the town contained holes in which ants used to live. The whole wall was thus tenanted by white ants which ravaged the roofing materials above. Sri Bhagavan had also watched a spider making its web and described it. It is seen in one place, then in another place, again in a third place. The fiber is fixed at all these points. The spider moves along it, descends, ascends and goes round and round, and the web is finished. It is geometrical. The net is spread out in the morning and rolled up in the evening. Similarly the wasps build their nests of lac crude and so on. So then each animal has got some remarkable instinct. Kambar's learning is not to be wondered at because it is God's will, as it is in the other cases. Talk 2, 168. Dr. Sid. What is salvation? What did Christ mean by it? Answer. Salvation for whom? And from what? Disciple. Salvation for the individual and from the sorrows and sufferings of the world. Answer. Whose are the sorrows, etc.? Disciple. Of the mind. Answer. Are you the mind? Disciple, I shall now explain how this question arose. I was meditating. I began to reflect on the grace shown by Christ to some devotees who got salvation. I consider that Sri Bhagavan is similar. Is not salvation the result of similar grace? That is what I mean by my questions. Answer, yes. Right. Disciple. The booklet Who Am I speaks of Swarupadrishti seeing the essence. Then there must be a seer and the seen. How can this be reconciled with the ultimate unity? Answer. Why do you ask for salvation, release from sorrow, etc.? He who asks for them sees them also. The fact is this. Drishti sight is consciousness. It forms the subject and object. Can there be drishti apart from the self? 
the self is all drishti etc. Disciple, how to discern the ego from the perfect I I answer, that which rises and falls is the transient I. That which has neither origin nor end is the permanent I I consciousness. Disciple, will continuous thought on the self make the mind more and more refined so that it will not think of anything but the highest? Answer, there is the peaceful mind which is the supreme. When the same becomes restless, it is afflicted by thoughts. Mind is only the dynamic power sakti of the self. Disciple, are the sheaths material and different from the self? Answer, there is no difference between matter and spirit. Modern science admits that all matter is energy. Energy is power or force sakti. Therefore all are resolved in siva and sakti in other words, the self and the mind. The kosas are mere appearances. There is no reality in them as such. Disciple, how many hours a day should one devote to meditation? Answer, your very nature is meditation. Disciple, it will be so when ripe but not now. Answer, you become conscious of it later. That does not mean that your nature is now different from meditation. Disciple, what about practice? Answer, meditation must always be practiced. Disciple, a Persian mystic says, There is nothing but God. The Quran says, God is immanent in all. Answer, there is no all apart from God for him to pervade. He alone is. Disciple, is it morally right for a man to renounce his household duties when he once realizes that his highest duty is atma chintana continuous thought on the self? Answer. This desire to renounce things is the obstacle. The self is simple renunciation. The self has renounced all. Disciple, it is true from Bhagavan's standpoint. Before us my work demands the best part of my time and energy. Often I am too tired to devote myself to Amachintana. Answer, the feeling I work is the hindrance. Inquire who works. Remember who am I, the work will not bind you. It will go on automatically. Make no effort either to work or to renounce work. Your effort is the bondage. What is bound to happen will happen. If you are destined to cease working, work cannot be at even if you hunt for it. If you are destined to work, you cannot leave it. You will be forced to engage in it. So leave it to the higher power. You cannot renounce or hold as you choose. Talk 2, 169. Disciple, how is all immanent God said to reside in Daharakasa ether of the heart? Answer, do we not reside in one place? Do you not say that you are in your body? Similarly, God is said to reside in Hrpandaraka, the heart lotus. The heart lotus is not a place. Some name is mentioned as the place of God because we think we are in the body. This kind of instruction is meant for those who can appreciate only relative knowledge. Being immanent everywhere there is no particular place for God. Because we think we are in the body we also believe that we are born. However we do not think of the body of God or of method of realization in our deep slumber. Yet in our waking state we hold on to the body and think we are in it. The supreme being is that from which the body is born, in which it lives and into which it resolves. We however think that we reside within the body. Hence such instruction is given. The instruction means. Look within. Talk 2, 170. Mr. Subbaray. Maya, a lecturer in English in Nellor asked, Brahman is the one by whom all this is pervaded yena sarvamidam thithum. But then how does Sri Krishna specify the Vidhutis in chapter X of Bhagavad Gita? Answer. The specifications are in reply to a definite question by Arjuna who required to know the Lord's Vidhutis for convenience of worship upasana sokariya. The fact is that God is all. There is nothing apart from him. 
disciple, the individual is said to give up decayed bodies jurnani sararani and to take up new ones navani. Would this statement apply to infant deaths also? Answer, you do not know in the first place what is jurnani and what is navani. Secondly, jurna and nava are relative terms. What is old to a king may be new to a beggar. The truth is that the individuality signifies the state of embodiment till the time of liberation. Talk 2, 171. Dr. Sid. How is grace to be obtained? Answer. Similar to obtaining the self. Disciple. Practically, how is it to be for us? Answer. By self-surrender. Disciple. Grace was said to be the self. Should I then surrender to my own self? Answer, yes. To the one from whom grace is sought. God, Kuru and self are only different forms of the same. Disciple, please explain so that I may understand. Answer, so long as you think you are the individual you believe in God. On worshipping God, God appears to you as Kuru. On serving Kuru he manifests as the self. This is the rationale. Talk 2, 172. Disciple, there are widespread disasters spreading havoc in the world, for example, famine and pestilence. What is the cause of this state of affairs? Answer, to whom does all this appear? Disciple, that one do. I see misery around. Answer, you were not aware of the world and its sufferings in your sleep, you are conscious of them in your wakeful state. Continue in that state in which you were not afflicted by these. That is to say, when you are not aware of the world, its sufferings do not affect you. When you remain as the self, as in sleep, the world and its sufferings will not affect you. Therefore look within. See the self. There will be an end of the world and its miseries. Disciple, but that is selfishness. Answer, the world is not external. Because you identify yourself wrongly with the body you see the world outside, and its pain becomes apparent to you. But they are not real. Seek the reality and get rid of this unreal feeling. Disciple, there are great men, public workers who cannot solve the problem of the misery of the world. Answer, they are ego-centered and therefore their inability. If they remained in the self, they would be different. Disciple, why do not Mahatmas help? Answer, how do you know that they do not help? Public speeches, physical activity, and material help are all outweighed by the silence of Mahatmas. They accomplish more than others. Disciple, what is to be done by us for ameliorating the condition of the world? Answer, if you remain free from pain, there will be no pain anywhere. The trouble now is due to your seeing the world externally and also thinking that there is pain there. But both the world and the pain are within you. If you look within, there will be no pain. Disciple, God is perfect. Why did he create the world imperfect? The work shares the nature of the author. But here it is not so. Answer, who is it that raises the question? Disciple, I the individual. Answer, are you apart from God that you ask this question? So long as you consider yourself the body you see the world as external. The imperfections appear to you. God is perfection. His work also is perfection. You see it as imperfection because of your wrong identification. Disciple, why did the self manifest as this miserable world? Answer, in order that you might seek it. Your eyes cannot see themselves. Place a mirror before them and they see themselves. Similarly with the creation. See yourself first, and then see the whole world as the self. Disciple, so it amounts to this that I should always look within. Answer, yes. Disciple, should I not see the world at all? Answer, you are not instructed to shut your eyes from the world. 
you are only to see yourself first and then see the whole world as the self. If you consider yourself as the body the world appears to be external. If you are the self the world appears as Brahman. Talk 2, 173. Dr. Sid asked. I have been reading the five hymns. I find that the hymns are addressed to Aranachala by you. You are an Advaitin. How do you then address God as a separate being? Answer, the devotee God and the hymns are all the self. Disciple, but you are addressing God. You are specifying this Aranachala hill as God. Answer, you can identify the self with the body. Should not the devotee identify the self with Aranachala? Disciple, if Aranachala be the self, why should it be specially picked out among so many other hills? God is everywhere. Why do you specify him as Aranachala? Answer, what has attracted you from Malahabad to this place? What has attracted all these people around? Disciple, Sri Bhagavan. Answer, how was I attracted here? By Aranachala. The power cannot be denied. Again Aranachala is within and not without. The self is Aranachala. Disciple, several terms are used in the holy books Atman, Paramatman, Para, etc. What is the gradation in them? Answer, they mean the same to the user of the words. But they are understood differently by persons according to their development. Disciple, but why do they use so many words to mean the same thing? Answer, it is according to circumstances. They all mean the self. Para means not relative or beyond the relative that is to say, the absolute. Disciple, should I meditate on the right chest in order to meditate on the heart? Answer, the heart is not physical. Meditation should not be on the right or the left. Meditation should be on the self. Everyone knows I am who is the I. It will be neither within nor without, neither on the right nor on the left. I am that is all. The heart is the center from which everything springs. Because you see the world, the body and so on, it is said that there is a center for these, which is called the heart. When you are in the heart, the heart is known to be neither the center nor the circumference. There is nothing else. Whose center could it be? Disciple, may I take it that the self and the non-self are like substance and its shadow? Answer, substance and shadow are for the one who sees only the shadow and mistakes it for the substance and sees its shadow also. But there is neither substance nor shadow for the one who is aware only of the reality. Disciple, Buddha, when asked if there is the ego, was silent. When asked if there is no ego, he was silent. Asked if there is God, he was silent. Asked if there is no God, he was silent. Silence was his answer for all these. Mahayana and Hinayana schools have both misinterpreted his silence because they say that he was an atheist. If he was an atheist, why should he have spoken of nirvana, of births and deaths, of karma, reincarnations and dharma? His interpreters are wrong. Is it not so? Answer, you are right. 27th, October, 1936, Talk 2, 174. The Muslim professor asked how Vaishnavism can be reconciled to Advaitism. Answer, the Vaishnavites call themselves Visishtadvitins. This is also Advaita. Just as the individual body comprises the soul, the ego and the gross body, so also God comprises Paramatma, the world and the individuals. Disciple, does not Bhakti imply duality? Answer, Swa Swarupanisand and Ambaktariti Abhidhi reflection on one's own self is called Bhakti. Bhakti and self in queer, year one and the same. The self of the Advaitins is the god of the Bhaktas. Disciple, is there a spiritual higher? Archy of all the original propounders of religions watching the spiritual welfare of the humans. 
answer, let them be or let them not be. It is only a surmise at the best. Atma is pratyaksha self-evident. Know it and be done with speculation. One may admit such a higher archy, another may not. But no one can gainsay the Atma. Disciple, what does Sri Bhagavan think of Pravriti and Navriti Margas? Answer, yes. Both are mentioned. What of that? Disciple, which is the better of the two? Answer, if you see the self pure and simple it is Nivriti, if you see the self with the world it is Pravriti. In other words, inward turned mind and Tarmaki Manas is Nivriti, outward, going mind by Hermaki Manas is Pravriti. Anyway, there is nothing apart from the self. Both are the same. Similarly also with the spiritual hierarchy, they cannot exist apart from the self. They are only in the self and remain as the self. Realization of the self is the one goal of all. 5th November 1936 Talk 2, 175 In the course of conversation, someone referred to the fact that when Mr. Brunton and the lady were walking home in the night, they saw a bright glow on half the hill moving slowly and gently from north to south. Sri Bhagavan said, This hill is said to be wisdom in visible shape. Disciple, how is it visible to the physical eye? Answer, Samandar had sung, The one who fascinated my heart with a captivator of my heart I sing of him in my mind. The heart is captivated, consequently the mind must have sunk into the heart, and yet there is the remembrance which enables the saint to sing of God later. Then the experience of a young disciple was mentioned. The young man educated and in good circumstances, in good health and sober mind, was once facing Sri Bhagavan's picture in his home and meditating on the figure. The figure suddenly appeared animated with life, which threw the young man into a spasm of fear. He called out for his mother. His mother came and asked him what the matter was. He was surrounded by his relatives who were perplexed by his appearance. He was aware of their presence, but was still overpowered by a mysterious force which he tried to resist. He became unconscious for a short time. Fear seized him as he regained consciousness. He became anxious and tried to bring him round with medicines. When later he came to Turuvenamalai he had some foreboding of similar experience. The proximity of Sri Bhagavan prevented any untoward happening. But whenever he wandered away from the hall he found the force almost irresistible in himself in the grip of fear. Sri Bhagavan said, is it so? No one told me this before. A devotee asked if it was not Saktipata descent of divine power? Answer, yes it is. A madman clings to samskaras whereas a jhani does not. That is the only difference between the two. Jhana is madness of a kind. Disciple, but Saktipata is said to occur in Karmasamya, in other words, when merit and demerit are equal. Answer, yes. Malaparapaka, Karmasamya and Saktipata mean the same. A man is running the course of his samskaras. When taught he is the self, the teaching affects his mind and imagination runs riot. He feels helpless before the onrushing power. His experiences are only according to his imagination of the state I am the self, whatever he may conceive it to be. Saktipata alone confers the true and right experience. When the man is right for receiving the instruction and his mind is about to sink into the heart, the instruction imparted works in a flash, and he realizes the self all right. Otherwise, there is always the struggle. Manonasa jhana and chitika grata, annihilation of the mind, knowledge and one-pointedness means the same. Talk 2, 176. The U.P. lady arrived with her brother, a woman companion and a burly bodyguard. When she came into the hall, she saluted Maharshi with great respect and feeling, 
and sat down on a wool blanket in front of Sri Bhagavan. Sri Bhagavan was then reading Trilinga in Telugu on the reincarnation of a boy. The boy is now thirteen years old and reading in the government high school in a village near Lucknow. When he was three years he used to dig here and there, when asked, he would say that he was trying to recover something which he had hidden in the earth. When he was four years old, a marriage function was celebrated in his home. When leaving, the guests humorously remarked that they would return for this boy's marriage. But he turned round and said, I am already married. I have two wives. When asked to point them out, he requested to be taken to a certain village, and there he pointed to two women as his wives. It is now learnt that a period of ten months elapsed between the death of their husband and the birth of this boy. When this was mentioned to the lady, she asked if it was possible to know the after-death state of an individual. Sri Bhagavan said, Some are born immediately after, others after some lapse of time. A few are not reborn on this earth, but eventually get salvation in some higher region, and a very few get absolved here and now. Gee, I do not mean that. Is it possible to know the condition of an individual after his death? Answer, it is possible. But why try to know it? All facts are only as true as the seeker. Gee, the birth of a person, his being and death are real to us. Answer, because you have wrongly identified your own self with the body, you think of the other one in terms of the body. Neither you are nor the other is the body. She. But from my own level of understanding I consider myself and my son to be real. Answer. The birth of the I thought is one's own birth, its death is the person's death. After the I thought has arisen the wrong identity with the body arises. Thinking yourself the body, you give false values to others and identify them with bodies. Just as your body has been born, grows and will perish, so also you think the other was born, grew up and died. Did you think of your son before his birth? Thought came after his birth and persists even after his death. Inasmuch as you are thinking of him, he is your son. Where has he gone? He has gone to the source from which he sprang. He is one with you. So long as you are, he is there too. If you cease to identify yourself with the body, but see the real self, this confusion will vanish. You are eternal. The others also will similarly be found to be eternal. Until this truth is realized there will always be this grief due to false values arising from wrong knowledge and wrong identity. Gee, let me have true knowledge by Sri Bhagavan's grace. Answer. Get rid of the I thought. So long as I is alive, there is grief. When I ceases to exist, there is no grief. Consider the state of sleep. She. Yes. But when I take to the I thought, other thoughts arise and disturb me. Answer. See whose thoughts they are. They will vanish. They have their root in the single I thought. Hold to it and they will disappear. Again the master pointed to the story of Panya and Papa in Yoga Vasishto, where Panya consoles Papa on the death of their parents and turns him to realizing the self. Further, creation is to be considered in its two aspects, Asvara Srishti God's creation and Jiva Srishti individual's creation. Of these two, the universe is the former, and its relation to the individual is the latter. It is the latter which gives rise to pain and pleasure, irrespective of the former. A story was mentioned from Panchadasi. There were two young men in a village in South India. They went on a pilgrimage to North India. One of them died. The survivor who was earning something decided to return only after some months. In the meantime he came across a wandering pilgrim whom he asked to convey the information regarding himself and his dead companion to the village in South India. 
The wandering pilgrim did so, but by mistake changed the names. The result was that the dead man's parents rejoiced in his safety and the living one's parents were in grief. Thus you see, pain or pleasure has no reference to facts but to mental conceptions. Deva Srishti is responsible for it. Kill the jiva and there is no pain or pleasure, but the mental bliss persists forever. Killing the jiva is to abide in the self. Chi. I hear all this. It is beyond my grasp. I pray Sri Bhagavan to help me to understand it all. I had been to a waterfall in Mysore. The cascade was a fascinating sight. The water streamed out in the shapes of fingers trying to grasp the rocks, but were rushed on by the current to the depths below. I imagine this to be the state of the individuals clinging to their present surroundings. But I cannot help clinging. I cannot imagine that we are no better than seasonal flowers, fruits and leaves on trees. I love flowers but still this idea has no hold on me. After a few minutes, she pointed out that she had intended to ask Maharshi about death and matters relating to it but did not however do it. Yet Maharshi was reading the related matter in the newspaper and the same topic came up for enlightenment. She left after seeing the cow Lakshmi. 9th November, 1936 Talk 2, 177 Mr. Cohen, what is will? I mean where does it fit in in the five coses? Answer, the I thought arises first and then all other thoughts. They comprise the mind. The mind is the object and the I is the subject. Can there be will without the I? It is comprised in the I. The I thought is the Vijanamaya Kosa intellectual sheath. Will is included in it. Sri Bhagavan said further. Anamaya Kosa is the gross body sheath. The senses with the prana and the karmandriyas form the pranamaya kosa sense sheath. The senses with the mind form the manamaya kosa mind sheath. They are the jnanandriyas. The mind is formed of thoughts only item this is the object and aham, I is the subject. The two together form the vijanamaya kosa intellect sheath. Tenth. November 1936 Talk 2, 178 Miss W. Umaidvi, a Polish lady convert to Hinduism, had traveled in Kashmir and brought views from Kashmir at which we were looking. Three Bhagavan humorously remarked, We have seen those places without the trouble of travel. Disciple, I wish to go to Kailas. Answer, one can see these places only if destined, not otherwise. After seeing all, there will still remain more if not in this hemisphere, maybe in the other. Knowledge implies ignorance of what lies beyond what is known. Knowledge is always limited. After some time, Sri Bhagavan continued. Apar was decrepit and old and yet began to travel to Kailas. Another old man appeared on the way and tried to dissuade him from the attempt, saying that it was so difficult to reach there. Apar was however obdurate and said that he would risk his life in the attempt. Huinger asked him to dip himself in a tank close by. Apar did so and found Kailas then and there. Where did all this happen? In Turavayar nine miles from Tanjore. Where is Kailas then? Is it within the mind or outside it? If Turuvayar be truly Kailas, it must appear to others as well. But Apar alone found it so. Similarly it is said of other places of pilgrimage in the south, that they are the abodes of Seva, and devotees found them so. This was true from their standpoint. Everything is within. There is nothing without. Talk to. 179. Disciple, how long does it take a man to be reborn after death? Is it immediately after death or some time after? Answer, you do not know what you were before birth, yet you want to know what you will be after death. Do you know what you are now? Birth and rebirth pertain to the body. 
you are identifying the self with the body. It is a wrong identification. You believe that the body has been born and will die, and confound the phenomena relating to the one with the other. Know your real being and these questions will not arise. Birth and rebirth are mentioned only to make you investigate the question and find out that there are neither births nor rebirths. They relate to the body and not to the self. Know the self and be not perturbed by doubts. Talk 2, 180. Disciple, can you help me to get rid of Maya? Answer, what is Maya? Disciple, attachment to the world. Answer, was the world in your deep sleep? Was there attachment to it? Disciple, there was not. Answer, were you there or not? Disciple, maybe. Answer, then do you deny having existed in sleep? Disciple, I do not. Answer, you are therefore now the same one as there was in sleep. Disciple, yes. Answer, what is it then that raises the question of Maya just now? Disciple, the mind was not in sleep. The world and the attachment to it are of the mind. Answer, that is it. The world and the attachment to it are of the mind, not of the self. Disciple, I was ignorant in sleep. Answer, who says that he was ignorant? Is he not ignorant now? Is he a Johnny? Ignorance is now mentioned by the contaminated self here. Disciple, was the self pure then in sleep? Answer, it did not raise any doubts. It did not feel imperfect or impure. Disciple, such self is common to all, even in a dead body. Answer, but the man in sleep or in dead body does not raise questions. Consider who raises questions. It is you. Were you not in sleep? Why was there no imperfection? The pure self is simple being. It does not associate itself with objects and become conscious as in the wakeful state. What you now call consciousness in the present state is associated consciousness requiring brain, mind, body, etc. to depend upon. But in sleep consciousness persisted without these. Disciple, but I do not know the consciousness in sleep. Answer, who is not aware of it? You admit, I am. You admit I was in sleep. The state of being is yourself. Disciple, do you mean to say that sleep is self-realization? Answer, it is the self. Why do you talk of realization? Is there a moment when the self is not realized? If there be such a moment, the other moment might be said to be one of realization. There is no moment when the self is not nor when the self is not realized. Why pick out sleep for it? Even now you are self-realized. Disciple, but I do not understand. Answer, because you are identifying the self with the body. Give up the wrong identity and the self is revealed. Disciple, but this does not answer my question to help me to get rid of Maya, in other words, attachment. Answer, this attachment is not found in sleep. It is perceived and felt now. It is not your real nature. On whom is this accretion? If the real nature is known these exist not. If you realize the self the possessions are not perceived. That is getting rid of Maya. Maya is not objective, that it could be got rid of in any other way. 15th November 1936 Sparks from the Anvil I talk to 181 A certain man who claims to have been Sri Maharshi's quantum disciple has filed a suit in the court praying for a declaration that he is the legitimate Sarvatikari of the Asrama. Sri Maharshi was examined on commission. There was a crowd but the proceedings went on smoothly in the room on the northeast. The following are a few titbits therefrom. Sri Bhagavan's answers were quite spontaneous and smooth. Question. To which Asramam does Sri Bhagavan belong? Answer, A.C.S. from man beyond the four stages. Question, what is it? Answer, 
It is beyond the four commonly known as sramas. Question. Is it sastraic? Answer. Yes. It is mentioned in the sastras. Question. Are there others of the same type besides yourself? Answer. There may be. Question. Have there been any? Answer. Sukha, Rishabha, Jada, Bharata and others. Question. You left home at an early age because you had no attachment for home and property. But here there is property in the asramam. How is it? Answer. I do not seek it. Property is thrust on me. I neither love nor hate it. Question. Are they given to you? Answer. They are given to the Swami, whoever he may be. The body is considered the Swami in the world. That body is this. It reduces itself to myself. Question. In that case the attachment to property is now renewed. Is it so? Answer. I do not hate it that is all I said. Question. In practical life it amounts to what I say. Answer. Just as we live and move in practical matters. Question. Do you give you paidish? Have you ever done it? Answer. Visitors ask questions. I answer them as well as I know. It is for them to treat my words as they please. Question. Is it you paidish? Answer. How shall I say how others take it? Question. Have you disciples? Answer. I do not give you paidish in the ceremonial manner. For instance, keeping a kumba, making puja to it and whispering to the person. The person may call himself my disciple or devotee. I do not consider anyone to be my disciple. I have never sought you paidish from anyone nor do I give ceremonial you paidish. If the people call themselves my disciples I do not approve or disapprove. In my view all are alike. They consider themselves fit for being called disciples. What can I say to them? I do not call myself a disciple or a guru. Question. How did you approve the building of Skandasramam on the hill which was temple, land, without previously obtaining permission from the authorities? Answer. Guided by the same power which made me come here and reside on the hill. Question. When you threw away your cash, etc., within an hour after your arrival in this place, you did so because you did not desire possessions. You never touch money. There were no possessions for several years after your arrival here. How is it that donations are now accepted by the ashramam? Answer. This practice grew up at a later stage because a few associates began to use my name to collect funds. I did not approve off their action nor check them. So it is going on. One man leaves, another steps in, but the process goes on. I do not desire that contributions should be accepted. But people do not heed that advice. I do not desire to give ineffective advice. I do not therefore check them. Since money comes and property grows spontaneously. Question. Why do you not sign your name? Answer. The author of self-realization has furnished his answer for this question. Moreover, by what name am I to be known? I myself do not know. People have given me several names from time to time since my arrival here. If I should sign by one name, all would not understand it. So I used to say to the people seeking autographs that, even if they should show my signature, people in general would not believe it to be true. Question. You do not touch money nor other offerings, I trust. Answer. People sometimes place fruits in my hands. I touch them. Question. If you receive one kind of offering, why should you not receive money also? Answer. I cannot eat money. What shall I do with it? Why should I take that with which I do not know what to do? Question. Why do visitors stop at the asrama? Answer. They must know why. Question. You have no objection to anyone coming and staying here, I suppose. Answer. No. Question. 
you have similarly no objection to any length of their stay? Answer, no. If I do not find it agreeable, I will go away. That is all. A lawyer devotee asked Sri Bhagavan if the previous day's examination by commission caused much strain. Answer, I did not use my mind and so there was no strain. Let them examine me for a thousand days. I done mind. 16th November 1936 Talk 2 182 Disciple, does the tantric sadhana bring about self-realization? Answer, yes. Disciple, which worship in Tantra is the best? Answer, it depends on temperament. Disciple, what part does Kundalini play in bringing about self-realization? Answer, Kundalini rises from any lakshya that you have. Kundalini is pranasakti life current. Disciple, different deities are said to reside in different chakras. Does one see them in course of sadhana? Answer, they can be seen if desired. Disciple, does the path to self-realization go through samadhi? Answer, they are synonymous. Disciple, it is said that the guru can make his disciple realize the self by transmitting some of his own power to him. Is it true? Answer, yes. The Giru does not bring about self-realization. He simply removes the obstacles to it. The self is always realized. Disciple, is there absolute necessity of a Giru for self-realization? Answer, so long as you seek self-realization the Giru is necessary. Giru is the self. Take Giru to be the real self and yourself as the individual self. The disappearance of this sense of duality is removal of ignorance. So long as duality persists in you the Giru is necessary. Because you identify yourself with the body you think the Giru too to be some body. You are not the body nor is the Giru. You are the self and so is the Giru. This knowledge is gained by what you call self-realization. Disciple. How can one know whether a particular individual is competent to be a guru? Answer, by the peace of mind found in his presence and by the sense of respect you feel for him. Disciple, if the guru happens to turn out incompetent, what will be the fate of the disciple who has implicit faith in him? Answer, each one according to his merits. Disciple, what are your opinions about social reform? Answer, self-reform automatically brings about social reform. Confine yourself to self-reform. Social reform will take care of itself. Disciple, what is your opinion about Gantiji's Harijan movement? Answer, ask him. Disciple, is it necessary to take bath if we touch dead bodies? Answer, the body is a corpse. So long as one is in contact with it one must bathe in the waters of the self. Disciple, if the Advaita is final, why did Madhvacharya teach Dvaita? Answer, is yourself Dvaita or Advaita? All systems agree on self-surrender. Attain it first, then there will be time to judge whose view is right or otherwise. Disciple, why do you not preach to the people to set them on the right path? Answer, you have already decided by yourself that I do not preach. Do you know who I am and what preaching is? Disciple, is the shaving of widows among Brahmins not cruel? Answer, this may be asked of Dharma Sastras or reformers. Reform yourself first and let us then see about the rest. 17th, November, 1936, Talk 2, 100. 83. Disciple, how can one become Jitta Sangadasha free from the stain of association? Answer, by Sat Sangha association with the wise. Sat Sangav Nisangadvam Nisangav Nirmohavam Nirmohav Nishaladavam Nishaladav Jivan Mukti. Sat Sangha means Sangha association with Sat. Sat is only the self. 
Since the self is not now understood to be sat, the company of the sage who has thus understood it is sought. That is sat sangha. Introversion results. Then sat is revealed. For whom is association? For whom is dosha? Disciple to the self. Answer, no. The self is pure and unaffected. The impurities affect only the ego. Disciple, can the soul remain without the body? Answer, it will be so a short time hence in deep slumber. The self is bodiless. Even now it is so. Disciple, can a sannyasi remain in the midst of samsara? Answer, so long as one thinks that he is a sannyasi, he is not one. So long as one does not think of samsara, he is not a samsari. On the other hand, he is a sannyasi. 18th November 1936 Talk 2, 184 Disciple, it is said in Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Realize the self with pure intellect and also by service to Guru and by inquiry. How are they to be reconciled? Answer, Iswara Guru Admedi Iswara, Guru and self are identical. So long as the sense of duality persists in you, you seek a guru considering that he stands apart. He however teaches you the truth and you gain the insight. Disciple, kindly explain ahamiko name kaskit nahamanyasya kasyakit naham pasyami yasya ham tamna pasyami yomama I am alone, none is mine of none else am I. I see none whose I am, none who is mine. Answer, this sloka occurs in different scriptures, holy books, for example, Bhagavata, Mahabharata, etc. It also forms the motto of chapter Roman 11 in self-realization. Ahem I is only one. Egos are different. They are in the one self. The self is not affected by the egos. I is one only. I is the truth. All that follows is meant to refute the sense of duality. Talk 2, 185 Disciple, if the self be itself aware, why am I not aware of the same even now? Answer, there is no duality. Your present knowledge is due to the ego and only relating. Relative knowledge requires a subject and an object. Whereas the awareness of the self is absolute and requires no object. Remembrance also is similarly relative, requiring an object to be remembered and the subject to remember. When there is no duality, who is to remember whom? Disciple, what happens to the created ego when the body dies? Answer, ego is I thought in its subtle form it remains a thought, whereas in its gross aspect it embraces the mind, the senses and the body. They disappear in deep slumber along with the ego. Still the self is there, similarly it will be in death. Ego is not an entity independent of the self in order that it must be created or destroyed by itself. It functions as an instrument of the self and periodically ceases to function. That is to say it appears and disappears, this might be considered to be birth and death. Relative knowledge pertains to the mind and not to the self. It is therefore illusory and not permanent. Take a scientist for instance. He formulates a theory that the earth is round and goes on to prove it and establish it on an incontrovertible basis. When he falls asleep the whole idea vanishes, his mind is left a blank. What does it matter if the world remains round or flat when he is asleep? So you see the futility of all such relative knowledge. One should go beyond such relative knowledge and abide in the self. Real knowledge is such experience and not apprehension by the mind. Disciple, why does not Sri Bhagavan go about and preach the truth to the people at large? Answer, how do you know that I am not doing it? Does preaching consist in mounting a platform and haranguing to the people around? Preaching is simple communication of knowledge. It may be done in silence too. 
What do you think of a man listening to a harangue for an hour and going away without being impressed by it so as to change his life? Compare him with another who sits in a holy presence and leaves after some time with his outlook on life totally changed. Which is better, to preach loudly without effect, or to sit silently, sending forth intuitive forces to play on others? Again, how does speech arise? There is abstract knowledge unmanifest. From it, there rises the ego, which gives rise to thoughts and words successively. So then, abstract knowledge down arrow, ego down arrow, thoughts down arrow, words words are therefore the great grandson of the original source. If words can produce an effect, how much more powerful should the preaching through silence be? Judge for yourself. Talk two, hundred eighty six. Disciple. Why can we not remain in sushupti as long as we like and be also voluntarily in it, just as we are in the waking state? Answer: Sushupti continues in this state also. We are ever in sushupti. That should be consciously gone into and realized in this very state. There is no real going into or coming from it. Becoming aware of that is samadhi. An ignorant man cannot remain long in sushupti because he is forced by nature to emerge from it. His ego is not dead, and it will rise up again. But the wise man attempts to crush it in its source. It rises up again and again for him to impel by nature. In other words, prarabdha. That is, both in jani and odd jani, ego is sprouting forth. But with this difference, namely the Ajani's ego, when it rises up, is quite ignorant of its source, or he is not aware of his sushupti in the dream and jagrat states. Whereas Ajani, when his ego rises up, enjoys his transcendental experience with this ego, keeping his lakshya aim always on its source. This ego is not dangerous. It is like the skeleton of a burnt rope. In this form, it is ineffective. By constantly keeping our aim on our source, our ego is dissolved in its source, like a doll of salt in the ocean. Disciple Sri Ramakrishna says that nirvikalpa samadhi cannot last longer than twenty-one days. If persisted in, the person dies. Is it so? Answer: When the prarabdha is exhausted, the ego is completely dissolved without leaving any trace behind. This is final liberation. Unless prarabdha is completely exhausted, the ego will be rising up in its pure form, even in given muktas. I still doubt the statement of the maximum duration of twenty-one days. It is said that people cannot live if they fast thirty or forty days. But there are those who have fasted longer, say a hundred days. It means that there is still prarabdha for them. Disciple. How is realization made possible? Answer: There is the absolute self from which a spark proceeds, as from fire. The spark is called the ego. In the case of an ignorant man, it identifies itself with an object simultaneously with its rise. It cannot remain independent of such association with objects. This association is a jhana or ignorance, whose destruction is the objective of our efforts. If its objectifying tendency is killed, it remains pure, and also merges into the source. The wrong identification with the body is dehatma buddhi. I am the body idea. This must go before good results follow. Disciple, how to eradicate it? Answer: We exist in sushupti without being associated with the body and mind, but in the other two states we are associated with them. If one with the body, how can we exist without the body in sushupti? We can separate ourselves from that which is external to us, and not from that which is one with us. Hence, the ego is not one with the body. This must be realized in the waking state. Avastatraya, the three states of waking, dream, and deep sleep, should be studied only for gaining this outlook. The ego, in its purity, is experienced in intervals between two states or two thoughts. 
Ego is like that caterpillar which leaves its hold only after catching another. Its true nature can be found when it is out of contact with objects or thoughts. Realize this interval with the conviction gained by the study of Avasthatreya, the three states of consciousness. Disciple, how do we go to sleep and how do we wake up? Answer, just at nightfall the hen clucks and the chicks go and hide themselves under her wings. The hen then goes to roost in the nest with the chicks in her protection. At dawn the chicks come out and so does the hen. The mother hen stands for the ego which collects all the thoughts and goes to sleep. Then rise the rays emerge forth and are collected again at sunset. Similarly, when the ego displays itself, it does so with all its paraphernalia. When it sinks, everything disappears with it. Disciple, what does Sushupti look like? Answer, in a cloudy dark night no individual identification of objects is possible and there is only dense darkness, although the seer has his eyes wide open. Similarly in Sashupti the seer is aware of simple nescience. Sri Bhagavan is said to have remarked to an inquisitive person, What is the meaning of this talk of truth and falsehood in the world which is itself false? 27th November 1936 Talk 2, 187 A Punjabi gentleman, a doctor by profession, came here with his wife to visit Sri Bhagavan. He was in the hall when Sri Bhagavan came in after lunch, then he asked, How should I meditate? I do not have peace of mind. Answer, Peace is our real nature. It need not be attained. Our thoughts must be obliterated. Disciple, I have been trying to obliterate them but I am not successful. Answer, The Gita method is the only one for it. Whenever mind strays away bring it back to bear on meditation. Disciple, I cannot bring my mind to meditate. Another devotee. An elephant when free puts its trunk here and there and feels restless. If a length of chain is given to it, the trunk holds it and is no longer restless. Similarly, mind without an aim is restless, with an aim it remains at peace. Disciple, no, no. It is all theory. I have read many books. But no use. It is practically impossible to make the mind concentrate. Answer, concentration is impossible so long as there are predispositions. They obstruct bhakti also. The interpreter advised the questioner to study who am I. The doctor was ready with his protestations. I have read it also. I cannot still make my mind concentrate. Answer, by practice and dispassion. Abhyasa Varajya Abhyam. Disciple, Varajya is necessary. Answer, Abhyasa and Varajya are necessary. Varajya is the absence of diffused thoughts. Abhyasa is concentration on one thought only. The one is the positive and the other the negative aspect of meditation. Disciple, I am not able to do so by myself. I am in search of a force to help me. Answer, yes, what is called grace. Individually we are incapable because the mind is weak. Grace is necessary. Sadhu Seva is meant only for it. There is however nothing new to get. Just as a weak man comes under the control of a stronger one, the weak mind of a man comes under control easily in the presence of the strong, minded sadhus. That which is his only grace there is nothing else. The questioner said, I request your blessings for the good of myself. Bhagavan said, Yes, yes. He left with his wife. 29th November 1936 Talk 2, 188 Explaining Maya Vedanta and Swatantra of Pratyupena, independence of recognition, Sri Bhagavan said, The Vedantines say that Maya is the Sakti of illusion premised in Seva. Maya has no independent existence. Having brought out the illusion of the world as real, 
she continues to play upon the ignorance of the victims. When the reality of her not being is found, she disappears. Recognition says that Sakti power is coeval with Seva. The one does not exist without the other. Siva is unmanifest, whereas Sakti is manifest on account of her independent will Swatantra. Her manifestation is the display of the cosmos on pure consciousness, like images in a mirror. The images cannot remain in the absence of a mirror. So also the world cannot have an independent existence. Swatantra comes eventually an attribute of the Supreme. Sri Sankara says that the Absolute is without attributes and that Maya is not and has no real being. What is the difference between the two? Both agree that the display is not real. The images of the mirror cannot in any way be real. The world does not exist in reality Vastuta. Both schools mean the same thing. Their ultimate aim is to realize the Absolute Consciousness. The unreality of the cosmos is implied in recognition pratyabhana, whereas it is explicit in Vedanta. If the world be taken as chit consciousness, it is always real. Vedanta says that there is no nana diversity, meaning that it is all the same reality. There is agreement on all points except in words and the method of expression. 30th November 1936 Talk 2 189. While discussing karma, Sri Bhagavan said, Karma has its fruit falla. They are like cause and effect. The interrelation of a cause and its effect is due to a sakti whom we call God. God is falla dite a dispenser of fruit. A visitor had been speaking of the self having forgotten its true nature. Sri Bhagavan after some time said, People speak of memory and oblivion of the fullness of the self. Oblivion and memory are only thought forms. They will alternate so long as there are thoughts. But reality lies beyond these. Memory or oblivion must be dependent on something. That something must be foreign too otherwise there cannot be oblivion. It is called I by everyone. When one looks for it, it is not found because it is not real. Hence I is synonymous with illusion or ignorance maya, avidya or ajana. To know that there never was ignorance is the goal of all the spiritual teachings. Ignorance must be of one who is aware. Awareness is jhana. Jhana is eternal and natural. And jhana is unnatural and unreal. Disciple, having heard this truth, why does not one remain content? Answer, because samskaras have not been destroyed. Unless the samskaras cease to exist, there will always be doubt and confusion sandhya viparita. All efforts are directed to destroying doubt and confusion. To do so their roots must be cut. There it's are the samskaras. These are rendered ineffective by practice as prescribed by the Guru. The Guru leaves it to the seeker to do this much so that he might himself find out that there is no ignorance. This truth mentioned is in the stage of the hearing of the truth as Ravana. That is not dare to affirm. For making it unshaken, one has to practice reflection manana and one-pointedness nididya sana. These two processes scorch the seeds of asanas, so that they are rendered ineffective. Some extraordinary persons get ardhya jhana unshaken knowledge even on hearing the truth only once sakuch ravana matrina. Because they are karthapasaka advanced seekers, whereas the akothapasaka raw seekers take longer to gain ardhya jhana unshaken knowledge. People ask. How did ignorance avidya arise at all? We have to say to them, ignorance never arose. It has no real being. That which is is only vidya knowledge. Disciple, why then do I not realize it? Answer, because of the samskaras. However, find out who does not realize and what he does not realize. Then it will be clear that there is no avidya ignorance. Talk 2. 190.
Mr. Sagarmal, a Marwari gentleman, a cotton merchant from Bombay, seems learned in Srimad Bhagavad Gita. He asked. Srimad Bhagavad Gita says, Mata Paritaram Nanyat Kinchit and later on Sutter Managana Iva there is nothing different from me and later on like beads strung on a thread. If there is nothing but Sri Krishna, how can the world be said to be like beads on a string? Answer, it means that the sutra string and the mani jewel beads are not apart from me. There are no manigan a row of beads apart from the string sutra, and no string apart from me. The sloka emphasizes unity and not multiplicity which is only on the surface. Disciple, unity can only be after merging into Bhagavan. True but till then there must be diversity. That is Samsara. Answer, where are we now? Are we apart from Bhagavan? The Samsara and we are all in Bhagavan. Disciple, but that is the experience of the Janis. Differentiation persists until jhana dawns. So there is samsara for me. Answer, samskara predisposition is samsara cycle of births and deaths. Disciple, right. All this is Vasudeva, this truth has been forgotten by us. So we cannot identify ourselves with God. Answer, where is forgetfulness? Disciple, like Svapna. Answer, who's Svapna? Disciple, Javas. Answer, who is Jiva? Disciple, it is Paramatmas. Answer, let Paramatma ask then. Disciple, I shall make my doubt clear by means of an illustration. Answer, whoever wants the doubt to be illustrated and made clear. Direct experience pratyaksha does not require examples for elucidation. Disciple, there is pratyaksha and also forgetfulness. Answer, what is forgotten and by whom? Disciple, listen. One dreams the dream, world disappears on waking. Answer, wake up similarly from the present dream. Disciple, prakti nature is too powerful. Answer, see the Purusha Lord also. What can prakti do then? Disciple, there is a grant, I not between them. Answer, whose is that not? Is it of the Lord or of nature? Or of both? Disciple, due to Brahman. Answer, then Brahman must ask or must be asked. To whom is Svapna? Or the not? You are always saying I ask. Who is that I? Disciple, I do not perceive. Answer, I is eternal. It would vanish if it were anything particular. It is perfection. So it is not found as an object. Disciple, but I am imperfect. Answer, why bring in imperfection? Why are you not perfect? Did you feel imperfection in your sleep? Why do you not remain so even now? Bring sleep into the waking state Jagrat Sushapti and you will be all right. Yanisa sarva bhut anam pasyado mane. That which is night for the ignorant is day for the wise. Disciple, yes, if he is a Muni sage. Answer, who is a Muni? Is he not a man? Disciple, do you not feel a slap if given to you? Is there no differentiation? Is it jhana? Answer, a man under chloroform or under the influence of drink does not feel it. Is he a jhani? Is jhana inconsistent with that feeling? Disciple, there is seer seen in sight. They are not characteristic of jhana. Answer, in sleep, in trance, in absent-mindedness, there is no differentiation. Do you call it jhana? What has happened in these states? Is that which then was absent now? That which is exists forever. The difference is due to the mind. The mind is sometimes present at other times absent. There is no change in the reality. Reality is always bliss ananda. Disciple. Bliss is the outcome of practice. What is that practice? 
Answer, Sadhana is the inquiry to find out to whom all these doubts arise. Disciple, it is for the ego ahamkara. Answer, where from does ahamkara arise? Disciple, guidance is necessary to show me the way. Answer, go within and find the route. You cannot find it from without nor should you seek it externally. Disciple, I am unable to find the ego by search. I stop there. Answer, how can you get it? It is not apart from you. Leave alone not finding it. Where are you now? Do you mean to say I am not? Disciple, what or how am I? Answer, do not trouble yourself about it. Let it be as it is. Why do you care? Did you care for the whole or part samashti vayashti in your sleep? The same person is present now too. You are the same in sleep and in waking. Disciple, sleep and waking are different states having different effects. Answer, how does it matter to you? The self is the same all through. Disciple, the mind is not steady in meditation. Answer, whenever it wanders, turn it inward again and again. Disciple, when dukkha misery overpowers me, inquiry is impossible. Answer, because the mind is too weak. Make it strong. Disciple, by what means? Answer, satsanga, isfera, eridhana, pranayama, association with the wise, worship of God, breath control. Disciple, what happens? Answer, misery is removed, our aim is removal of misery. You do not acquire happiness. Your very nature is happiness. Bliss is not newly earned. All that is done is to remove unhappiness. These methods do it. Disciple, association with the wise may strengthen the mind. There must also be practice. What practice should be made? Answer, Yes. Practice is necessary too. Practice means removal of predispositions. Practice is not for any fresh gain, it is to kill the predispositions. Disciple, Abhyasa practice should give me that power. Answer, practice is power. Thoughts are reduced to a single thought the mind is said to have grown strong. When practice remains unshaken, it becomes sahaja natural. Disciple, what is such practice? Answer, inquiring into the self. That is all. Atmani of avasamnayat. Fix the mind on the self. Disciple, what is the aim to be kept in view? Practice requires an aim. Answer, atman is the aim. What else can there be? All other aims are for those who are incapable of atmalakshya having the self for the aim. They lead you ultimately to atmavachara inquiry into the self. 1. Pointedness is the fruit of all kinds of practice. One may get it quickly, another after a long time. Everything depends on the practice. Disciple, peace is extolled more than anything else. How shall we gain it? Answer, it is your very nature. Forgetfulness never overtakes the self. The self is now confounded with non-self, and that makes you speak of forgetfulness of the self, peace, etc. Oblivion will never rear up its head if this confusion is put an end to. Disciple, how is that done? Answer, inquiry into the self. One pointedness means cessation of mental activities. Forgetfulness must be for the self well of what? Of the self? Are there then two selves? Practice removes the samskaras. Disciple, but samskaras are infinite and eternal from beginningless time. Answer, this itself is a samskara. Give up that idea and all samskaras will disappear at once. That is visranti repose, anti peace. Peace is ever present. But you hold it down and rise over it and thus disturb it. Then you say, I want peace. Disciple, will peace be gradual? Answer, yes. 
make the mind gradually still sanais and you permit says the Bhagavad Gita. After some time the visitor asked if one Mr. G had been here on or about the twentieth instant. He himself had heard of Maharshi from him. Mr. G was full of joy after his visit here. Answer, how can I know the names of all the visitors? He might have been here. All are full of joy. There is no name, no form. Name is however needed for via Vihara empirical life. 5th December 19, 136 sparks from the anvil. 2. Talk 2, 191. Question. You spoke of eighty asrama beyond the asramas, beyond the orders of life the other day. Is there any authority for it? Is it mentioned anywhere? Maharshi. Yes, in the Upanishads, the Sutta Samhita Skanda Purana Bhagavata Bharata and other works. 5. Question. Are there any restrictions or discipline for that state? Answer. There are characteristics of it mentioned. Question. There are gurus for each asrama. Is there a guru for eighty asrama? Answer. Yes. Question. But you do not admit a guru. Answer. There is a Kiru for everyone. I admit a Kiru for me also. Question, who is your Kiru? Answer, the self. Question, for whom? Answer, for myself. The Kiru may be internal or external. He may reveal himself internally or communicate externally. Question, can the Adias from his own property? Answer, there is no restriction for them. They may do what they please. Sukha is said to have married and begotten children also. Question. The Adias Rami is like a householder in that case. Answer. I have already said that he is above the four recognized asramas. Question. If they can marry, own property, etc., they are only grihasthas. Answer. That may be your view. Question. Can they own property and convey the same to others? Answer, they may or may not. All depends on their prarabdha. Question, is there any karma for them? Answer, their conduct is not regulated according to any rules or codes. Question, when visitors want to stay here, say two or three days, do they take your permission? Answer, the permission from the management is permission for me. The visitors come here for me, the management is for me. Wherever there is mutual agreement, I do not interfere. When visitors come here and I admit them, will others dare go against my wishes? My consent is implied in the actions which take place with mutual goodwill. Sri Bhagavan was shown a stanza in his own handwriting in praise of himself as Subramanya. Sri Bhagavan said that the handwriting was his own whereas the ideas were Paramal Swamis. Question. But do you not agree with the statement made in it? Answer. In the same way as an idol is praised as Subramanya. 13 December 19, 136 Talk 2, 192 in reply to a question if Timatras are the operating factors in dreams, Sri Bhagavan said, No. Tandmatras are such much subtler than that. Although the dream creations are subtle as compared with the gross world of the wakeful state, yet the dream creations are gross compared to Tanmatras. Tanmatras after Panchakarana give rise to the form of the Antakarnas in her organ mind. There too by the different sets of operating causes. Influenced by Sava the predominance of Ether Akasa, it gives rise to Jhana knowledge whose seat is the brain Vayu air gives rise to Mana's mind Teja's light gives rise to Bhuti intellect Jala water gives rise to Chitta memory etc. Taifa the earth gives rise to Ahan Kiritgo. They are Samashti collective for the reason that they can operate collectively or individually with any or all of the senses or organs. By Rajaguna they are changed to Janinendriyas in the Vyashti individual, by Tamaguna Tokarmendriyas in the Vyashti the individual. 
The relation between the external world and the individual now becomes easy because the ten matras are common to them. The ten matras proceed from Prakriti. The statements on creation differ considerably. There is mention Yugapatsishti simultaneous creation and Kramasishti gradual creation. The significance is not emphasis on creation but on the original source. Talk 2, 193. Mr. Eyer, there is no way found to go inward by means of meditation. Answer, where else are we now? Our very being is that. Disciple, being so we are ignorant of it. Answer, ignorant of what and whose is the ignorance? If ignorant of the self, are there two selves? Disciple, there are no two selves. The feeling of limitation cannot be denied. Due to limitations. Answer, limitation is only in the mind. Did you feel it in deep sleep? You exist in sleep. You do not deny your existence then. The same self is now and here in the wakeful state. You are now saying that there are limitations. What has now happened is that there are these differences between the two states. The differences are due to the mind. There was no mind in sleep whereas it is now active. The self exists in the absence of the mind also. Disciple, although it is understood, it is not realized. Answer, it will be by and by with meditation. Disciple, meditation is with mind and how can it kill the mind in order to reveal the self? Answer, meditation is sticking to one thought. That single thought keeps away other thoughts. Distraction of mind is a sign of its weakness. By constant meditation it gains strength in other words to say, its weakness of fugitive thought gives place to the enduring background free from thoughts. This expanse devoid of thought is the self. Mind in purity is the self. Sri Bhagavan continued in reply to the former questioner. Everyone says I am the body. It is the experience of the sage as also of the ignorant. The ignorant man believes that the self is confined to the body only, whereas the wise man believes that the body cannot remain apart from the self. The self is infinite for him and includes the body also. Mr. Bose said that he felt peace in his presence which lasts some time after. He added, Why is it not enduring? Answer, that peace is the real nature. Contrary ideas are only superimpositions. This is true bhakti, true yoga, true jhana. You may say that this peace is acquired by practice. The wrong notions are given up by practice. This is all. Your true nature always persists. These flashes are only signs of the ensuing revelation of the self. In reply to the first questioner Bhagavan said, The heart is the self. It is not within or without. The mind is its sakti. After the emergence of the mind, the universe appears and the body is seen to be contained in it. Whereas all these are contained in the self, and they cannot exist apart from the self. 14th December 1936 Talk 2 194 Mr. Parkai How is meditation to be practiced? Answer, meditation is truly speaking at Manishtha to be fixed as the self. But when thoughts cross the mind, and an effort is made to eliminate them, the effort is usually termed meditation. At Manishtha is your real nature. Remain as you are. That is the aim. Disciple, but thoughts come up. Is our effort meant to eliminate thoughts only? Answer, yes. Meditation being on a single thought, the other thoughts are kept away. Meditation is only negative in effect inasmuch as thoughts are kept away. Disciple, it is said at Masam's the man a car to be fixing the mind in the self. But the self is unthinkable. Answer, why do you wish to meditate at all? Because you wish to do so you are told Atma Samsthamana Kartati fixing the mind in the self, 
Why do you not remain as you are without meditating? What is that man of mind? When all thoughts are eliminated, it becomes Atma Sam's the fixed in the self. Disciple, if a form is given, I can meditate on it, and other thoughts are eliminated. The self is formless. Answer. Meditation on forms or concrete objects is said to be dhyana, whereas the inquiry into the self is vichara inquiry or nididhya sana. Explaining adhira papavadabhyam superimposition and its elimination, Sri Bhagavan pointed out that the first turns you inward to the self, and then according to the second, you know that the world is not apart from the self. 16th December 1936 Talk 2, 195 Mr. Natverlal Perk, a Gujarati gentleman who had attended the International Religious Conference as a delegate from Baroda, came here on a visit. He is a young man well-groomed, alert and quite conscious of his well-earned merit. He presented a note containing some questions to Sri Bhagavan. Disciple, pray help me realize Atma Paramatma Satchitananda. Answer, Atma Paramatma Satchitananda mean one and the same thing, in other words, the self. The self is eternally realized. Otherwise there will be no pleasure in it. If it is not eternal it must have a beginning, what begins will also end, so that it is only transient. There is no use seeking for a temporary state of affairs. The fact is that it is the state of effortless, ever alert peace. Effortlessness while remaining aware is the state of bliss, and that is realization. Disciple, I do not want intellectual answers. I want them to be practical. Answer, yes. Direct knowledge does not require intellectual discourses. Since the self is directly experienced by everyone, they are not at all necessary. Everyone says I am. Is there anything more to realize? Disciple, it is not clear to me. Answer, you exist. You say I am. That means existence. Disciple, but I am not sure of it, in other words my existence. Answer, oh, who then is speaking now? Disciple, I surely but whether I exist or not, I am not sure. Moreover, admitting my existence leads me nowhere. Answer, there must be one even to deny the existence. If you do not exist, there is no questioner and no question can arise. Disciple, let us take it that I exist. Answer, how do you know that you exist? Disciple, because I think I feel I see etc. Answer, so you mean that your existence is inferred from these. Furthermore, there is no feeling, thinking, etc. in sleep, and yet there is the being. Disciple, but no. I cannot say that I was in deep sleep. Answer, do you deny your existence in sleep? Disciple, I may be or may not be in sleep. God knows. Answer, when you wake up from sleep, you remember what you did before falling asleep. Disciple, I can say that I was before and after sleep, but I cannot say if I was in sleep. Answer, do you now say that you were asleep? Disciple, yes. Answer, how do you know unless you remember the state of sleep? Disciple, it does not follow that I existed in sleep. Admission of such existence leads nowhere. Answer, do you mean to say that a man dies every time that sleep overtakes him and that he resuscitates while waking? Disciple, maybe. God alone knows. Answer, then let God come and find the solution for these riddles. If one were to die in sleep, one will be afraid of sleep, just as one fears death. On the other hand, one courts sleep. Why should sleep be courted unless there is pleasure in it? Disciple, there is no positive pleasure in sleep. Sleep is courted only to be rid of physical fatigue. Answer, well, that is right. To be free from fatigue. 
there is one who is free from fatigue. Disciple, yes. Answer, so you are in sleep and you are now too. You are happy in sleep without feeling, thinking, etc. The same one continuing now, why are you not happy? Disciple, how can it be said that there is happiness? Answer, everyone says sukhamaham asapsam, I slept happily or was blissfully asleep. Disciple, I do not think that they are right. There is no suck of bliss. It is only absence of sorrow. Answer, your very being is bliss. Therefore everyone says I was blissfully asleep. That means that one remains in the primal uncontaminated state in sleep. As for sorrow, there is no sorrow. Where is it in order that you might speak of its absence in sleep? The present wrong identification of the self with the body has given rise to all mistakes. Disciple, what I want is realization. I do not feel my inherent happy nature. Answer, because the self is now identified with the non-self. The non-self too is not apart from the self. However, there is the wrong notion that the body is apart and the self is confounded with the body. This wrong identity must be ended for happiness to manifest. Disciple, I am unable to help myself. The engineer suggested surrender to the master. Disciple, agreed. Answer, your nature is happiness. You say that is not apparent. See what obstructs you from your true being. It is pointed out to you that the obstruction is the wrong identity. Eliminate the error. The patient must himself take the medicine prescribed by the doctor in order that he may be cured of his illness. Disciple, the patient is too weak to help himself and places himself unconditionally in the hands of the doctor. Answer, the doctor must be given a free hand and the patient must only remain quiet without saying anything. Similarly keep quiet. That is effortlessness. Disciple, that is the most effective medicine too. The other questions which he wrote down were. Disciple, convince me of the existence of God. Answer, realization of the self amounts to such conviction. Disciple, how is prarabdha past karma related to purish kara one's own effort here? Answer, prarabdha is karma action. There must be a karta doer for it. See who the karta is. Purish kara is effort. See who exerts. There is identity established. The one who seeks to know their relation is himself the link. Disciple, what is karma and rebirth? Answer, see the karta doer and then the karma action becomes obvious. If you are born now, rebirth may follow. See if you are born now. Disciple, help me to have jaya to darsana vision of light. Answer, darsana sight implies drash to seer. Find him and darsana sight is included in him. Talk 2, 196. Puvan, a shepherd, says that he knows Sri Bhagavan since thirty years ago, the days of Urpakshi cave. He used at times to supply milk to the visitors in those days. Some six years ago he had lost a sheep for which he was searching for three days. The sheep was pregnant and he had lost all hopes of recovering her because he thought that she had been set upon by wild animals. He was one day passing by the Asramam when Sri Bhagavan saw him and inquired how he was. The man replied that he was looking out for a lost sheep. Sri Bhagavan kept quiet as is usual with him. Then he told the shepherd to help in lifting some stones, which he did with great pleasure. After the work was finished, Sri Bhagavan told him, Go this way, pointing the footpath towards the town. You will find the stray sheep on the way. So he did and found the lost sheep with two little lambs. He now says, What a Bhagavan is this? Look at the force of his words. He is great. He never forgets even a poor man like me. 
He remembers my son Manakim also with kindness. Such are the great ones. I am happy when I do any little work for him, such as looking to the cows when they are in heat. 18th December 1936 Talk 2, 197 Mr. Cohen asked, Meditation is with mind in the Jagrat waking state. There is mind in dream also. Why is there no meditation in dream? Nor is it possible? Answer, ask it in the dream. After a short silence, Sri Bhagavan continued. You are told to meditate now and find who you are. Instead of doing it you ask why is there no meditation in dream or in sleep. You find out for whom there is Jagrat waking. It will be clear that dream and sleep are also for the same one. You are the witness of Jagrat waking Svatna dream and Sushapti sleep rather they pass before you. Because you are out of meditation now, these questions arise. Stick to meditation and see if these questions arise. 23rd December, 1936 Talk 2, 198 A certain visitor formulated a question, saying that meditation is more direct than investigation, because the former holds on to the truth whereas the latter sifts the truth from untruth. Answer for the beginner meditation on a form is more easy and agreeable. Practice of it leads to atmavichara which consists in sifting the reality from unreality. What is the use of holding on to truth when you are filled with antagonistic factors? Atmavichara directly leads to realization by removing the obstacles which make you think that the self is not already realized. 24th December, 1936, Talk 2, 199. Mr. Ayer asks Sri Bhagavan about the source of sound. Answer. The general opinion is that para sound comes from the muladhara, the solar plexus at the bottom of the spine. All sounds beginning from vake or thought form are contained in para which proceeds from kundalini, and kundalini is not different from the heart. In fact the whole shattered hara six fold center is contained in the heart. The sashima with its source kundalini is included in the heart. A visitor asked about antarana taluksendrayani. Answer in Dryoni together with the sashima nadi is contained lena in para. 25th December 1936 talk 300. A brahmachari youth who has graduated in science has been waiting here for grace for the last four or five months in order that some job might drop on him like a ripe apple from the tree. He has been making no other efforts to secure a job. His brother yesterday came here to take him away to his parents. But the youth declined to go. An appeal was made to Sri Bhagavan. Sri Bhagavan said, I do not tell anyone to come nor ask him to go. Everyone pleases himself here. He says he finds peace in the hall, and he also wants a job. Evidently the job must be found in the hall itself so that his peace may not be disturbed. Peace is not in the hall. It is in the repose of the self. It can be gained anywhere. Some days later the youth threw away his sacred thread and appeared before Sri Bhagavan with his limbs shaking, which the young man later described as his bliss ananda. Sri Bhagavan told him not to make a habit of sitting in front of him in the hall and ordered him out. Furthermore he continued, Even a fledgling is protected by the parent birds only till such time it grows its wings. It is not protected forever. Similarly with devotees. I have shown the way. You must now be able to follow it up and find peace wherever you are. The young man thinks that Sri Bhagavan gave him Upadza in the following words. The self in other words ego must be subdued by oneself. The man however has refused the offer of a job to him in one of the local schools and thinks that he has been given a mighty job by the hill or by Sri Bhagavan. What that job is the world will know later, he says. 
He had further anticipated all this day's occurrences some months ago, and had foretold them to his mother and to his friends. He is further happy at the happenings. Sri Bhagavan, however, compared him to another man who is in no way of the right type. And yet the boy thinks that he is Bhagavan in embryo. Later he turned mad and died. Talk 3, 101. A gentleman enthusiastically recounted several of his experiences on following Sri Bhagavan's instructions and incidentally mentioned that he and Sri Bhagavan were born on the same day of the week and bore the same name. Sri Bhagavan completed it, adding, The same self is in both. Talk 3. 102. A young man from Trichy asked Sri Bhagavan on the mention in Upadsa Manjari of Adianta Varajyam total dispassion as the qualification of a ripe disciple. He continued, What is Varajya? Detachment from worldly pursuits and desire for salvation. Is it not so? Answer, who has not got it? Each one seeks happiness, but is misled into thinking pain-associated pleasures as happiness. Such happiness is transient. His mistaken activity gives him short-lived pleasure. Pain and pleasure alternate with one another in the world. To discriminate between the pain-producing and pleasure-producing matters, and to confine oneself to the happiness-producing pursuit only is veragia. What is it that will not be followed by pain? He seeks it and engages in it. Otherwise, the man has one foot in the world and another foot in the spiritual pursuit without progressing satisfactorily in either field. A question was again raised regarding the function of the Kuru. Answer, because the man is not able to help himself, finding himself too weak, he seeks more strength in the shape of a Kuru. Talk 3 103. Mr. Eyer sought more light on not a sound. Answer, he who meditates on it feels it. There are ten kinds of nadas. After the final thundering nada, the man gets laya. That is his natural and eternal state. Nada jayoti or inquiry thus take one to the same point. The former are indirect and the last is direct. Disciple, the mind becomes peaceful for a short while and again emerges forth. What is to be done? Answer, the peace often gained must be remembered at other times. That peace is your natural and permanent state. By continuous practice it will become natural. That is called the current. That is your true nature. Nada, fadisms, etc., imply the existence of tripedi, the triads of cognizer, cognition, and the cognized. The current resulting from investigation for the self is sutta tripedi or pure triad, that is to say, undifferentiated triad. 26 December, 1936, Talk 304. A Swiss lady described a fadism she had to Sri Bhagavan. While she was sitting with her eyes wide open, she saw Sri Bhagavan's face becoming cherub-like and draped in glorious flowers. She was drawn in love towards that child, like face. Answer, the vision is in your mind. Your love is the cause. Paul Brennan saw me as a giant figure, you saw me like a child. Both are visions. The lady said, Paul Brunton asked me if I had any spiritual experience here, and I denied it. Now this happens. Answer, do not be deceived by visions. Disciple, if one is miles away in Europe and invokes your aid. Answer, where is Europe? It is in you. Disciple, I have come here. I would like Maharshi to come there. Saying it, she laughed gently. Silence for some minutes. Answer, you see the physical body and so you find limitations. Time and space operate on this plane. So long as you think of the gross body there will be differences found as different bodies. On the other hand, knowledge of the real Maharshi will set all doubts at rest. Are you in India now? Or is India in you? 
Even now this notion that you are in India must go. India is in you. In order to verify it, look to your sleep. Did you feel that you were in Europe or in India while asleep? You were nevertheless existing then the same as now. Space is in you. The physical body is in space but not you. Paul Brunton had his eyes closed when he saw the vision, whereas you had your eyes open, you say. Disciple, yes. But I have never had vision whereas he is a psychic. After a few minutes she asked, if it is an advantage or a disadvantage to see visions like this. Answer, it is an advantage. Three Bhagavan continued. Probably you had been thinking of a child and that appeared in the vision. Disciple, yes, only of Siva, of his child like face. Answer, that's it. Disciple, but Siva is the destroyer. Meaning, not a child. Answer, yes, of sorrows. After a few minutes, Bhagavan continued. You will shortly go to sleep. When you wake up in the morning, you will say, I slept well and happily. What happened in sleep is your real nature. That continues now too, otherwise it will not be your real nature. Get the state of sleep even now, it is Seva. Have we got a form? Find that out before you think of Seva's form. Did you not exist in sleep? Were you aware of any form then? Were you with form in your sleep? You existed all the same. The I which was in sleep is also now present. You are not the body according to your sleep experience. You are the same now that is without the body. Being without the body you are happy too in sleep. You are the same now too. That which is enduring must alone be the real nature. There was no body but only experience of happiness in sleep. That endures now too. The self is bodiless. If you are thus without body how can Siva be with body? If you are with body, Siva also is with body. If you are not, he also is not. Disciple, why is he then Siva? Answer, Siva means embodiment of happiness of auspiciousness. She was very pleased. After a time she left. Talk 3, 105. The visitors were talking among themselves and one of them said, we though familiar with our traditional teachings are unable to follow these teachings meaning Sri Bhagavans. How can the foreigners unfamiliar with our ways follow Sri Bhagavans teachings so easily? He seemed to sympathize with their attempts to understand us in spite of their handicaps and also to pity them for want of proper equipment. Sri Bhagavan remarked finally, Visions are better than no visions. They get interested in that way. They do not take to foreign ideas when once they do it they stick on. So much for their merits. Sri Bhagavan later referred to Siva Prakasam Pillai's vision. Visions are not external. They appear only internally. If external they must assert themselves without their being a seer. In that case what is the warranty for their existence? The seer only. Talk 3, 106. Disciple, there is something concrete necessary to meditate upon. How shall we meditate upon I? Answer, we have become rooted in forms and so we require a concrete form for meditating upon. Only that which we contemplate will in the end remain over. When you contemplate the other thoughts disappear. So long as you need to contemplate there are other thoughts where are you? You contemplate because you exist. For the contemplator must contemplate. Contemplation can only be where he is. Contemplation wards off all other thoughts. You should merge yourself in the source. At times we merge in the source unconsciously as in sleep, death, swoon, etc. What is contemplation? It is merging into the source consciously. Then the fear of death of swoon etc. will disappear because you are able to merge into the source consciously. Why fear death? Death cannot mean non-being. Why do you love sleep but not death? 
Do you not think now? Are you not existing now? Did you not exist in your sleep? Even a child says that it slept well and happily. It admits its existence in sleep unconsciously though. So consciousness is our true nature. We cannot remain unconscious. We however say that we were unconscious in our sleep because we refer to qualified consciousness. The world, the body, etc. are so embedded in us that this relative consciousness is taken to be the self. Does anyone say in his sleep that he is unconscious? He says so now. This is the state of relative consciousness. Therefore he speaks of relative consciousness and not of abstract consciousness. The consciousness is beyond relative consciousness or unconsciousness. Again reverting to Turavakagam, Sri Bhagavan said, All the four foremost saints have given out their experiences in the very first stanza. 1. Undifferentiated worship. 2. Never failing remembrance. 3. Unrisen thought. 4. The ego is not the self is. All mean the same. Disciple, but this truth is not realized. Answer, it will be realized in due course. Till then there is devotion bhakti. Even for a trice you do not leave my mind. Does he leave you any moment? It is you who allow your mind to wander away. He remains always steady. When your mind is fixed you say. He does not leave my mind even for a trice. How ridiculous! 27th December 1936 Talk 307 Mr. Shimana from Mysore asks Sri Bhagavan, Kindly explain Ahamsvirana, the light of I. I. Answer. I is not known in sleep. On waking I is perceived associated with the body, the world and non-self in general. Such associated I is Ahamvridi. When Aham represents the self only it is Aham's Furana. This is natural to the Jani and is itself called Jana by Janis or Bhakti by Bhaktas. Though ever present including in sleep it is not perceived. It cannot be known in sleep all at once. It must first be realized in the waking state for it is our true nature underlying all the three states. This must be made only in the Jagrat state and the self realized here and now. It will afterwards be understood and realized to be continuous self, uninterrupted by Jagrat, Svapnan Sushapti. Thus it is Akundakar Vridi unbroken experience. Vridi is used for lack of a better expression. It should not be understood to be literally a Vridi. In that case, Vridi will resemble an ocean, like river which is absurd. Vridi is of short duration, it is qualified, directed consciousness, or absolute consciousness broken up by cognition of thoughts, senses, etc. Vridi is the function of the mind, whereas the continuous consciousness transcends the mind. This is the natural, primal state of the jhani or the liberated being, that is unbroken experience. It asserts itself when relative consciousness subsides. Ahem Vridi, I thought is broken, Ahem Sphirana, the light of I, I, is unbroken, continuous. After the thoughts subside, the light shines forth. 31st December, 1936, Talk 308. A question was asked regarding untouchability. Sri Bhagavan said, the non-self is untouchable. The social untouchability is man-made whereas the other untouchability is natural and divine. Disciple, should the untouchables be allowed into our temples? Answer, there are others to decide it. A question was asked regarding the avatars of Vishnu. Answer, let us know our own avatara, the knowledge of the other avataras will follow. Again there was a question on Isfera. Answer. Existence of Isfera follows from our conception of Isfera. Let us first know whose concept he is. 
the concept will be only according to the one who conceives. Find out who you are and the other problem will solve itself. 1st January L9, 137 Talk 3, 109. Disciple, what is the difference between Aham Brahmas me I am Brahman and Brahmavaham only Brahman I am? Answer, the former is Pratyaksha Vridi direct experience whereas the latter is Paraksha, Jhana indirect knowledge. First begins with the realization of Aham I, whereas the later starts with the hearsay Brahman which cannot be apart from the self, if the same has been realized. Talk 3, 110. Mr. Greenlees. After leaving this Asramam in October, I was aware of Bhagavan's peace enfolding me for about ten days. All the time while busy in work there was an undercurrent of that peace of unity. It was almost like the dual consciousness while half asleep in a dull lecture. Then it faded out entirely, and the old stupidities came in instead. Work leaves no time for separate meditation. Is the constant reminder I am trying to feel it while actually at work enough? Answer, it will become constant when the mind becomes strengthened. Repeated practice strengthens the mind and such mind is capable of holding on to the current. In that case, engagement in work or no engagement, the current remains unaffected and uninterrupted. Disciple, no separate meditation is necessary. Answer, meditation is your true nature now. You call it meditation because there are other thoughts distracting you. When these thoughts are dispelled, you remain alone, in other words, in the state of meditation free from thoughts, and that is your real nature which you are now attempting to gain by keeping away other thoughts. Such keeping away of other thoughts is now called meditation. When the practice becomes firm, the real nature shows itself as the true meditation. Other thoughts arise more forcibly when you attempt meditation. There was immediately a chorus of questions by a few others. Sri Maharshi continued, Yes, all kinds of thoughts arise in meditation. It is but right. What lies hidden in you is brought out. Unless they rise up, how can they be destroyed? They therefore rise up spontaneously in order to be extinguished in due course, thus to strengthen the mind. A visitor, all are said to be Brahman. Answer, yes they are. But so long as you think that they are apart, they are to be avoided. If on the other hand they are found to be self, there is no need to say all. For all that exists is only Brahman. There is nothing besides Brahman. Disciple, Ribhu Gita speaks of so many objects as unreal, adding at the end that they are all Brahman and thus real. Answer, yes. When you see them as so many they are a sat in other words unreal. Whereas when you see them as Brahman they are real, deriving their reality from their substratum Brahman. Disciple, why then does Upaid Sasara speak of the body, etc. as Jada in other words and sentient? Answer, inasmuch as you say that they are body etc. apart from the self. But when the self is found this body etc are also found to be in it. Afterwards no one will ask the question and no one will say that they are insentient. Disciple, Viveka is said to be discrimination between the self and the non-self. What is the non-self? Answer, there is no non-self in fact. The non-self also exists in the self. It is the self which speaks of the non-self because it has forgotten itself. Having lost hold of itself, it conceives something as non-self which is after all nothing but itself. Then the discussion between the protagonists of various theories became warm. 2nd, January, 1937, Talk 311. The I which rises will also subside. That is the individual I or the I concept. That which does not rise will not subside. It is and will be forever. That is the universal I, the perfect I, or realization of the self. 
At 5 p.m. the Swiss lady complains to Sri Bhagavan that she gets a headache if meditation be prolonged for some time. Answer. If the meditator and meditation be understood to be the same there will be no headache or similar complaints. Disciple, but they are different. How shall we consider them to be the same? Answer, that is due to your outlook. There is only one and there are no differences. On meditation the relative consciousness will vanish. That is not annihilation for absolute consciousness arises. The Bible itself says, the kingdom of heaven is within you. If you consider yourself to be the body there is some difficulty in understanding the statement. On the other hand if you know who you really are, the kingdom of heaven and all are included in your true self. There are concepts arising after the ego has arisen. Direct your look within and make it absolute. With that absolute awareness realized, look without and you will realize the universe to be not apart from the realized absolute. Because your outlook is externally directed you speak of a without. In that state you are advised to look within. This within is relative to the without you are seeking. In fact, the self is neither without nor within. Speaking of heaven one thinks of it as above or below, within or without, since one is accustomed to relative knowledge. One seeks only objective knowledge and hence these ideas. Really speaking there is neither up nor down, neither in nor out. If they were real they must be present in dreamless sleep also. For what is real must be continuous and permanent. Did you feel in or out in sleep? Of course not. Disciple, I do not remember. Answer, if there was anything there that could be remembered. But you admit your existence then. The same self is now speaking. The self who was undifferentiated in sleep is differentiated in the present state and sees the diversity. The real existence is the only one devoid of objective knowledge. That is absolute consciousness. That is the state of happiness as admitted by all of us. That state must be brought about even in this waking state. It is called Jagrat Sushapti. That is Mukti. Disciple, the ego is the one which reincarnates. Answer, yes. But what is reincarnation? The ego remains the same. New bodies appear and hold it. The ego does not change. It does not leave one body, seek and find another. Just see what happens even to your gross body. Suppose you go to London. How do you do it? You take a conveyance, go to the docks, board the steamer and reach London in a few days. What has happened? The conveyances had moved but not your body. So you say that you travel from one part of the globe to the other part. The movements of the conveyances have been superimposed on your body. Similarly also with your ego. The reincarnations are superimpositions. For example, what happens in a dream? Do you go to the dream world or does it occur in you? Surely the latter. Just the same with incarnations. The ego remains changeless all along. Again there is no time and space in your sleep. They are concepts which arise after the I thought has arisen. Before the rise of the I thought the concepts are absent. Therefore you are beyond time and space. The I thought is only limited I. The real I is unlimited, universal, beyond time and space. They are absent in sleep. Just on rising up from sleep and before seeing the objective world, there is a state of awareness which is your pure self. That must be known. Disciple, but I do not realize it. Answer, it is not an object to be realized. You are that. Who is there to realize and what? Talk 3. 112. Mr. Kolkar of Pune. It is said know thyself or see who the I in you is. What is the way to do it? Is it by simply repeating the mantra mechanically all along or have you to do it remembering every moment why you are repeating the mantra? Answer. 
you are always repeating the mantra automatically. If you are not aware of the Ajapa unspoken chant which is eternally going on, you should take to Japa. Japa is made with an effort. The effort is meant to ward off other thoughts. Then the Japa becomes mental and internal. Finally, its Ajapa and eternal nature will be realized. For it will be found to be going on even without your effort. The effortless state is the state of realization. Mr. Kolkar again requested instructions from a practical point of view, in other words, suitable to himself. Answer, it is not external and therefore need not be sought elsewhere. It is internal and also eternal. It is always realized. But Yao say you are not aware. It requires constant attention to itself. No other effort is necessary. Your effort is only meant not to allow yourself to be distracted by other thoughts. The person was satisfied. Talk 3, 113. Mr. Greenlees. Bhagavan said yesterday that while one is engaged in search for God within, outer work would go on automatically. In the life of Sri Chaitanya, it is explained that while he sought Krishna, the self, during his lectures to students, he forgot where his body was and went on talking of Krishna. This rouses doubt whether work can safely be left to itself. Did one keep heart, attention on the physical work? Answer, the self is all. Now I ask you, are you apart from the self? Can the work go on apart from the self? Or is the body apart from the self? None of them could be apart from the self. The self is universal. So all the actions will go on whether you engage in them voluntarily or not. The work will go on automatically. Attending to the self includes attending to the work. Disciple, the work may suffer if I do not attend to it. Answer, because you identify yourself with the body, you consider that the work is done by you. That the body and its activities, including the work, are not apart from the self. What does it matter whether you attend to the work or not? Suppose you walk from one place to another place. You do not attend every single step that you take. After a time, however, you find yourself at your destination. You notice how the work in other words walking goes on without your attention to it. Similarly it is with other kinds of work. Disciple, then it is like sleepwalking. Answer, quite so. When a child is fast asleep, his mother feeds him in sleep. The child eats the food quite as well as when well awake. But the next morning he says to the mother, Mother, I did not take food last night. The mother and others know that he did, but he says that he did not. He was not aware and yet the action had gone on. Somnambulism is indeed a good analogy for this kind of work. Take another example. A passenger in a cart has fallen asleep. The bull's mover stands still or are unyoked on the journey. He does not know these occurrences, but finds himself in a different place after he wakes up. He has been blissfully ignorant of the occurrences on the way, but his journey has been finished. Similarly with the self of the person. He is asleep in the body. His waking state is the movement of the bowls. His samadhi is their standing still because samadhi equals jagrat sushepti in other words to say, he is aware of but not attached to actions. So the bowls are in harness but do not move. His sleep is the unyoking of the bowls, for there is complete suspension of activities corresponding to the release of the bowls from the yoke. Zil another example. Scenes are projected on the screen in a cinema show. But the moving pictures do not affect or alter the screen. The seer pays attention to the pictures and ignores the screen. They cannot remain apart from the screen. Still its existence is ignored. So also the self is the screen on which the pictures, namely activities, are going on. The man is aware of the latter, ignoring the former. All the same he is not apart from the self. 
whether aware or unaware the actions will continue. Disciple, there is an operator in the cinema. Answer, the cinema show is made out of insentient materials. The screen, the pictures, lamp, etc. are insentient and require an operator, a sentient agent. In the case of the self, it is consciousness itself and therefore self-contained. There cannot be an operator apart. Disciple protested that he did not confuse the body with the operator as the above answer would imply. Answer. The functions of the body were kept in mind involving the need for the operator. Because there is the body a jata object and operator, a sentient agent is necessary. Because people think that they are jivas, Sri Krishna has said that God resides in the heart as the operator of the jivas. In fact there are no jivas and no operator. The self comprises all. It is the screen, the pictures, the seer, the actor, the operator, the light and all else. You're confounding it with the body and imagining yourself as the actor amounts to the seer being represented as an actor in a cinema picture. Imagine the actor in the picture asking if he could enact a scene without the screen. Such is the case of the man who thinks of his acting apart from the self. Disciple it is like asking the spectator to act in the cinema picture. Somnambulism seems to be desirable. Answer. There is the belief that the crow rolls only one iris into either eye to see any object. It has only one iris but two eye sockets. Its sight is manipulated according to its desire. Or again the elephant has one trunk with which it breathes and does work such as drinking water etc. Again serpents are said to use the same apparatus for either seeing or hearing. Similarly the actions and states are according to one's point of view. Sleep waking or waking sleep or dreaming sleep or dreaming wakefulness are about the same. Disciple, we have to deal with a physical body in a physical waking world. If we sleep while work is done or work when sleep overtakes us, the work will go wrong. Answer, sleep is not ignorance, it is your pure state. Wakefulness is not knowledge, it is ignorance. There is full awareness in sleep, there is total ignorance in waking. Your real nature covers both and extends beyond. The self is beyond knowledge and ignorance. Sleep, dream, and waking are only modes passing before the self. They proceed whether you are aware or not. That is the state of the jhani in whom pass the states of waking, samadhi, deep sleep and dream, like the bulls moving, standing, or being unyoked when the passenger is asleep as aforesaid. These questions are from the point of view of the ajani, otherwise these questions do not arise. Disciple of course they cannot arise for the self. Who would be there to ask? But unfortunately I have not yet realized the self. Answer. That is just the obstacle in your way. You must get rid of the idea that you are an Ajani yet to realize the self. You are the self. Was there ever a time when you were apart from the self? Disciple. So it is an experiment in somnambulism or in daydreaming. Begavan laughed. 3rd January 1937 Drops of Nectar Talk 3 114 In yesterday's answers, Sri Bhagavan said that the self is pure consciousness and deep slumber, and he also indicated the self of the transition from sleep to the waking state as the ideal for realization. He was requested to explain the same. Sri Bhagavan graciously answered. The self is pure consciousness and sleep. It evolves as aham, I without the item this in the transition stage, and manifests as aham, I in item this in the waking state. The individual's experience is by means of aham I only. So he must aim at realization in the way indicated in other words, by means of the transitional I. Otherwise the sleep experience does not matter to him. 
If the transitional IB realize the substratum is found and that leads to the goal, again sleep is said to be a jhana ignorance. That is only in relation to the wrong jhana knowledge prevalent in the wakeful state. The waking state is really a jhana ignorance and the sleep state is prajana full knowledge. Prajana is Brahman, says the Asruti. Brahman is eternal. The sleep experiencer is called prajana. He is prajanam in all the three states. Its particular significance in the sleep state is that he is full of knowledge prajana gana. What is gana? There are jhana and vijana. Both together operate in all perceptions. Vijana in the Jagrat is viparita jhana wrong knowledge in other words, and jhana ignorance. It always coexists with the individual. When this becomes vispash to jhana clear knowledge it is Brahman. When wrong knowledge is totally absent as in sleep, he remains pure prajana only. That is prajana gana. Atariya Upanishad says Prajana, Vijana, Ajana, Sem, Jana are all names of Brahman. Being made up of knowledge alone, how is he to be experienced? Experience is always with Vijana. Therefore, the pure eye of the transitional stage must be held for the experience of the Prajnagana. The eye of the waking state is impure and is not useful for such experience. Hence the use of the transitional eye or the pure eye. How is this pure eye to be realized? Viveka Chudamana says, Vijana kos vila satya jasram. He is always shining forth in the intellectual sheath, Vijana kosa. Tripura Rahasya and other works point out that the interval between two consecutive Sankalpa's ideas or thoughts represent the pure ahamai. Therefore holding on to the pure eye, one should have the prajanagana for aim, and there is the vritti present in the attempt. All these have their proper and respective places and at the same time lead to realization. Again the pure self has been described in Viveka Chudamani to be beyond a sat, in other words, different from a sat. Here a sat is the contaminated waking eye. A sad vilakshana means sat, in other words, the self of sleep. He is also described as different from sat and a sat. Both mean the same. He is also a sesha sakshi all seeing witness. If pure, how is he to be experienced by means of the impure eye? A man says, I slept happily. Happiness was his experience. If not, how could he speak of what he had not experienced? How did he experience happiness in sleep if the self was pure? Who is it that speaks of that experience now? The speaker is the vijanatma ignorant self, and he speaks of prajanatma pure self. How can that hold? Was this vijanatma present in sleep? His present statement of the experience of happiness in sleep makes one infer his existence in sleep. How then did he remain? Surely not as a